heard a weird, creepy song on an unmarked cassette in my dad's attic. My mom and dad are typical boomers. They were hoarders of old vintage collectibles, toys and books, and in particular, music records. This one time in our attic, we decided we were going to clear out a lot of old, dusty, moth-eaten records to make some space in the attic. We thought we'd donate them to charity. It was during that time that my older brother and I came across a cardboard box. In it was their dad's old Sony Walkman. If you've ever seen Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, you know the main hero, Peter Quill, otherwise known as Star-Lord, carries a Walkman that he listens to all the time when he's fighting the bad guys. Well, it turns out that model Walkman is the very same one my dad owned. The Sony Walkman TPS L2. And it was right there in a box in our dad's attic. It was even the same color as well. Funny thing is, my dad thought it was... Well, funny thing is, my dad thought his was broken since he was... Well, since only one of the earphones was working. And thus, he kept it tucked away in a box and hadn't used it in decades. We soon found out that we all had to do was just replace the headphones with, you know, one of our own ones. Something which he had never really, never really occurred to him. And hey, presto, we got it working again, good as new. A lot of the tapes we found in there were typical 70s and 80s rock bands. The Eagles, Iron Maiden, ZZ Top, Aerosmith, The Pretenders, and Rush. We were actually blown away by the sound quality of the old 70s Walkman. These things were definitely high fidelity and exceptional to listen to even now. By this point, we were both completely distracted with our original task of clearing out the attic. The coolest thing about it was is that you could connect two headphones into it so two people could listen at the same time making it a far more sociable listening experience than those smartphones we all have now. But even more awesome was we found there was this little thing called a hotline button, where if you pressed it, you could actually speak to the other person over the sound of the music. This was by a microphone that was inside the device. When we found that out, we just kept laughing, all the while using it to communicate over the songs. It was amazing to us that they'd even thought to include a feature like that in it. It just seemed like such a cool gadget to have for such an old toy. They certainly didn't make stuff like this anymore. While we were goofing around, we eventually saw that there were six blank TDK cassette tape boxes, most of which were unmarked, which we examined out of curiosity. The ones that were, well, however, had black marker pen writing on them. Now, since the original Walkman did not have a record feature, nor could it connect to radio, these tapes must have been either made on another device or given to him by somebody else. The first three unmarked tapes were literally just blank, empty tapes with nothing on them. The fourth one, dated January 25th, 1981, it was a recording of the Super Bowl match between the Raiders and the Eagles. The next one was a short excerpt of a recording from KISS Radio dated oh, excuse me, KIIS Radio, dated on June 5th, 1983. Nothing much on it, just some random news segment. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. And then there was the sixth tape. It was cryptically labeled M.S. It had no date on it. Not knowing what to expect and feeling too bored out of our minds and curious to put it down, we just unthinkingly put it in the device and listened to it. At first, the tape was silent, although there was noticeable background hum. Like a lot of vintage tapes, it sounded like it must have had high DC bias. We thought at first this was another blank tape, but then we started to hear a person breathing 
heavily. Then, after a short while, a song came on. We scoffed. It was pretty standard for producers, especially those that experimented with avant-garde, to include ambience and strange noises to add atmosphere to their songs. The song we heard was strange. It sounded off-key and tuneless. It almost sounded like a song, and at the same time it wasn't. It was so weird to listen to we literally just stood there, weren't sure what to do. We didn't know exactly what it was that we discovered. We began to feel strangely unsettled, and yet, for reasons I don't understand, we chose to ignore our instincts and instead kept on listening to it. Have you ever heard a song that made you feel like you've already heard it before? But you aren't sure where it's from? Like in a dream from very long ago as a child. Because that's the feeling I got when I listened to it. It brought up strange feelings and obscure memories in me that I didn't even know were real or not. Unfortunately, while I remember most of the details of what went on that day, I just cannot describe the song in any meaningful detail at all. I can't replicate its melody on piano or guitar, or even sing it. It's like Schrodinger's cat in a way. It's there in my head, and yet it isn't. The only thing I can recall with certainty is that I felt very strange sensations upon hearing it. Ones that made me distinctly uncomfortable. We were both so mesmerized by what we were hearing that we didn't even use the hotline button to communicate over it. We just stood there in eerie silence the entire time. Another thing I can recall about the song is that it was long and monotonous too. I can't remember how long, but to us it felt like it might have been 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, even half an hour. We didn't have a clock or a wristwatch on, so we have no reliable evidence. And besides, it's not like we were counting. Then at some point, possibly due to pure coincidence, we swear we have no idea how this had happened, but the power and the lights had suddenly gone out. We were now alone, listening to this freaky psychedelic tune in the dark. But we were so engaged in what we were listening to, we didn't even notice. There is only one line I think I can remember hearing from the song, and it's pretty messed up now that I take a look back on it. I don't know if I remember it correctly, but I think it went something like this. I can hear the voice of God. He says it's time. Time for what? What kind of song was this? It was as though we had stumbled upon some freaky, cultish, psychedelic program in our dad's tape collection. I had no idea what it was. But what I did know is that my skin had gone completely cold and white for reasons I couldn't describe. And which just wouldn't make any sense for me at that time. I felt like something truly awful was happening. I got this really disturbing and unnatural feeling like we had found something we were definitely not meant to. Then eventually... My brother and I were caught off guard by the loudest, most horrifying, most agonizing, torturous, fucking loud screeching we had ever heard. It was just so sudden, so out there, and so painful to listen to. We panicked, dropped the Walkman on the ground, breaking both the Walkman and the tape inside with it. Suddenly the lights were now back on, and soon after that our mom came in, asking us what the hell had happened. She was angry that we spent around 30 minutes listening to music and not helping with the sorting of the old stuff. When she saw the broken Walkman on the floor, she was even more furious. we just smashed one of our dad's favorite childhood toys. In the days since then, 
I asked Dad exactly what kind of tape it was that we had heard. He said he had no idea. He remembered that the recorded tapes were given to him by a friend, but he had no idea what that MS tape was, much less what the initials could stand for. He had certainly never listened to it and was completely surprised when we told him our story, mostly because he still cannot remember how or where he even got the tape. We have nothing more to go on, really. And since the cassette and Walkman were both broken, in any case, we had no choice but to get rid of both the Walkman and the broken tape. We also handed the remaining ones to the charity shop. Now, I would normally chalk this story up as being nothing more than two young idiots goofing around and hearing an old, weird tape in the dark. Surreal, edgy music, maybe. But something very strange things would be happening to me after that. First off, the song in question, now and then over the past few months, I swear I've been hearing parts of it over and over again in my dreams. Some of the dreams ranged from peaceful and calming to frightening and absurd. It feels like there's some ghostly specter chasing after me. I've never listened to any song that's given me this kind of profound psychedelic experience. And what's so frustrating at the moment is that I just cannot describe it or sing it or try to hum it for any of you here. I can't even replicate it on MIDI software or music notation. All I remember is that one line. Even now, I'm amazed that after hearing a song that left such a vivid, forceful impression on me, I still can't remember anything about it. I've typed in the lyrics on Google and so far found absolutely nothing. It's like my memory of the song has been completely erased. Also, my brother for some reason never talks about it. When I reminded him about the tape, the one time we listened to it, he kept asking me if I was okay and that he swears I was exaggerating, end quote, or that he simply doesn't remember it. If the incident rattled him anything like it did with me, and he's not showing it. And that's not all either. Recently he's changed. I swear, he's become different. He no longer talks to me. In fact, he no longer talks to any of us. A lot of the time he just seems like he's someplace else mentally. If you've ever looked into the eyes of someone during a schizophrenic episode, you know how their pupils dilate and look like they're phasing out of reality. I swear I've noticed this happening in him. I don't want to sound like I'm being ridiculous, suggesting that a haunted tape did this to him. But he was certainly not like this before that day. On the outside, everything seems to be alright. He's still walking the dog. He still drives off to work. He still helps cook dinner with the rest of us. But most of the time, he just seems vacant and distant, like he's not actually there. I don't know what's going through his head or what's happened to him. Possible Paranormal Activity I'm a 45-year-old male living in a small house that we rent with my fiancé and daughter. Never in my life have I experienced anything ghostly or paranormal until recently. Although I have dealt with sleep paralysis and nightmares of spirits and unseen demonic things all my life. First thing I noticed that really had me thinking was about eight months ago. My daughter's picture in the living room had fallen down. I asked my fiancé about it. She said it may have fallen when we were walking through the house. Well, the only thing is, it was face down. It was a standing picture that leans back, so no way it could have fallen forward. Then today happens. First odd thing I noticed 
was when I went to the bathroom and I heard a very quiet dinging sound, similar to a bell. I walk out of the bathroom trying to listen where it's coming from, only for it to fade out before I find the source. Then, about ten minutes later, I was sitting on the couch, about 9 or 10 a.m., getting ready to play my PS5. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds like a ping-pong ball being thrown and bouncing through the hallway. It's just me and the cat at home. The hair on my body stands straight up. I look at my cat that's on the other end of the sectional, and she's like, what the hell is that? So, we both go to investigate. There's nothing in the hallway. But in the closet that's about a quarter of the way open, there's some Christmas tree ball ornaments. Nothing moving, but obviously it's the source. So I'm standing there looking like, what the hell happened? Then a reef falls in the same closet, scaring the shit out of me. It's a very, very small closet where the water heater is. My fiancé has a few things in there for Christmas. There's also a cutout in the ceiling that has a panel over it. This closet's always given me an uneasy feeling. I don't know, maybe it's just the cutout. Should be nothing up there. We don't have an attic or any vents in the ceiling, just a small frame, an A-frame. I assumed it's there in case they needed... Well, I guess they needed it for whatever reason. Maybe there's just insulation up there. Last thing I should note... Before I took my daughter to school, she was looking for her other AirPod that she had just discovered she was missing. Strange thing is, after all this happened, I was sitting on the couch, looked over at the table where she was standing, asking about her AirPod, and there it was. Right where she was standing, just minutes earlier, talking about it. I know the common sense thing would have been that it fell right out then and there. Well, no, we have hardwood floors, so we would have heard it. My fiancé said she would have noticed it there. So other than that, my fiancé says that she occasionally has heard strange noises. But she said hers is mostly at night. I've also heard strange noises, but attribute them to the typical house noises. Some of the stuff she's described definitely doesn't fall into that category. One last thing I wanted to share. Yes, until eight months ago, I've never experienced anything like this, not even close to it. But when me and my fiancé were renting a different place over ten years ago, we would occasionally be woken up by the sound of a phone ringing. Sort of faint, but obviously a phone. We would get up to check in the room and it was coming from, and the phone wasn't even connected. Keep in mind, not a cell phone, a landline. Well, it seems as though the activity is stepping it up, starting to freak me out and get me frustrated and aggravated. The noises are happening so regularly now. Not only that, there's been a couple of big developments. I'm getting off work at 7 a.m. this morning, and my fiancé calls and says I have something to tell you. Wasn't even thinking about what's been going on, so she said, You sure you want me to tell you? So I'm thinking to myself, oh no. So she tells me last night at 2.47 a.m. she wakes up burning up to the point of sweating, which she said she experienced the night before as well. Just seconds after waking up, she hears what she describes as a big ping sound. That's what my air fryer just did. The cat was sleeping with her at the foot of the bed. They both jump out of fear. Very shortly, she realizes the hanging mirror on the door, a door-length mirror. It's only hanging on by one corner. I'm thinking, oh boy, oh no, 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 no. So I get home and she shows me. Because she's already taken it down. It's attached to the door by three Velcro strips. Any normal person would think, oh, it's Velcro. It probably just came detached. And that's what I said to her. But it had three Velcro strips, two at the top, one at the bottom. It was just hanging by the one at the top right corner. Still, it's Velcro, right? This thing's been up for several years. Still Velcro, though. Could have just weakened, maybe. Well, not so practical, considering everything else we've been experiencing. Also, about her waking up the past two nights sweating and being hot in the room. Our thermostat, well, you can take a good guess. It's right next to the closet I mentioned in the initial post. So if what they say is true... Paranormal activity and drop in temperature coincide. It would make sense that it dropped the temperature near the thermostat, making it run harder and longer. Just a possibility theory of mine. So the more this goes on, the more I'm persuaded to believe it's something paranormal, and I don't like it. I've always been a skeptic about it my whole life till now. Had no reason to believe that kind of stuff, as I never experienced it. But geez, please, make it stop now.
First of all, I want to stress that I'm not the one to lie, embellish, or make stuff up. I'm just a laid-back, honest person trying to get through life minding my own business. So today, this morning, continued noises through the hallway as me and the cat are in the living room. All of a sudden, a loud thump toward the back of the house. At this point, I'm getting sick and tired of this. Go to the game room, which is the room right next to the closet hallway, to just sit and listen. My head's close to the window, just the way it was sitting. I do hear some odd distant screaming and other noises, but sounds like that. Maybe they're just near the window. Still, it could be anything outside, I suppose, but still kind of strange. What happened next is so unbelievable to me that right out of a paranormal movie amount of unbelievable sent chills through my whole body for several seconds. As I was sitting there on the couch with the closet to my right, this closet is right next to the closet that gave me the creeps, but just toward the back of it. So just think like one long closet section off into two. So right next to me, almost in my ear, I hear a beastly rattle. Clear as day, without a doubt, no TV or radio or phones on that can produce noise. I almost immediately froze, sitting in absolute quietness. I'm wondering what's going to happen now. So I peek into the closet that's already a quarter of the way open. I smell a strange stench. But I see and I hear nothing else. So I close the door, go back to the living room. To explain the noise, as crazy as it sounds, you've got to have seen the movie Predator. It's very similar to the rattle that he does. Some odd noises continue, like creaking and very subtle shuffling, like somebody walking and stopping. In the hallway, of course. I felt like someone watching me. I was so creeped out that I was in fear to even walk through the house in broad daylight as a grown-ass adult man this point I'm thinking I'm going crazy so I try to lay down and get some sleep in the living room because I'm not sleeping in the back at this point the only other thing that happens at this point is some casual noises mostly it was a point where my cat's somewhere in the hallway I hear a jump a thump and she lets out a little meow I raise up to kind of check on her and she looks a little confused looking at the crack under the closet door as though she sees something She's occasionally, you know, took the other car keys, of course, but perfect timing. So that's it for now. I messaged some of my strong faith friends, and they said that I could get somebody in there as soon as possible. I'm officially freaked out to the point that I don't know if I can stay there by myself. So Friday, I had my preacher friend from Florida call me and talk about what's been going on. He goes all over the country preaching. He gave me some useful information. He first told me about a couple of experiences that him and his brother had, but he kept saying he's not sure what would be bringing the stuff on. Him being very religious and knowing my lifestyle, he hinted at me still not going to church. And, well, I brought up not being married, which he knew as well. So he really said, first thing I need to do is get right with God. He wasn't really saying that's what's causing it all, but I got what he was saying. Definitely wouldn't hurt. I do pray almost every day. He also told me about some kind of preaching event that he went to. Apparently some well-renowned preacher that was teaching about certain things. He said he brought up the evil spirit realm, for lack of a better term. Evil or demonic spirits or whatever. He said he was explaining how between 2 to 4 a.m. is when they're most active. That my experience, or that it was pretty much all throughout the day. He said he couldn't remember exactly what he said, but he remembers it making a lot of sense. He was trying to go into a couple different things, but he said that it's getting really deep. He was saying something about fear, but had to go, so I wouldn't have been interested to hear what he had to say. But he did tell me I needed to rebuke it. Another Christian friend told me the same, that I needed to rebuke it before it got too comfortable. I felt like I'm in a dream. Never thought this stuff was real. After getting off the phone with him, I went straight home, going through every room, rebuking it with chills running all through me. So the weekend goes by with nothing really happening. Till last night, really. Me, my fiancé, and the cat are on the couch. Fiancé is asleep on my lap. I start hearing noises in the kitchen. Pops, shuffles, creaks, and tapping on the walls. I just have this uneasy feeling, extreme chills. Like almost something rummaging through the kitchen. And the feeling of something peeking at me. 
few times, and also recently, I think I see a small shadowy figure peek out from the wall and retreat really fast. I just chalked it up to my eyes playing tricks on me, because I tried recording in slow motion, but nothing. Also heard a little bang on the window where the cat was. She's just looking outside like she definitely heard something. Also, at one point during the noises, keep in mind she's pretty much asleep, I look at her and she has her nose up in the air, sniffing like crazy, like she smells something strong. Like I've said, I've noticed her doing this three times recently. Kind of odd for her. Forgot to mention, I did experience something a little odd Saturday during the day. Sitting on the couch and I heard three distinct taps on the window directly behind me. They're probably within the span of three minutes. If it was just one, you'd probably think something flew into the window, but the funny thing is, it seems we never experienced anything together, or, or if our daughter's awake. It's usually when we're alone. But if this continues on, even if just one more experience, I'm going to have to make a movie of some kind. My fiancé hates when I bring up anything I experience, and heck, I even hate talking about it, but she says I'm feeding into it and being weak. Maybe so. But she didn't hear what I heard. So surreal. She only notices the obvious things, but I'm more keen to details and little things. With the beastly rattle I heard combined with the noises, stuff being moved, falling, thrown, the cat being so spooked and sniffing like she smells something adds pretty much to all of it. If it was all the minus the rattle I heard, I'd probably be okay for the most part. There's just no way to explain it away. It's clear as day, right next to me, with complete quietness in the house. If someone could give me a normal explanation for that, I would be a hundred times better. The Owl Hole I spend a large portion of my time in the forest, and being from a small town in the mountains, with nothing else ever going on, I pretty much always have. I would hike up to 20 miles some days. Being able to just walk down the road to the edge of town and into the woods, where sometimes I'd even hang out well into the night before returning. A cold spring evening in 2020 was one of those nights. And I still think of it often. On this particular day, I would venture out quite far onto a new part of the mountain and into an experience that has since altered my perspective on life. I was out all day hiking, around 6 a.m., and with the sun now fading to dark, I decided I wanted to stay out and keep exploring. About an hour or two after the sun set, I was walking down a grown-in, sparsely traveled trail, when just ahead in the middle of the path, the light from my headlamp caught a shiny orange glimmer. Nothing about it was out of the ordinary, probably just broken glass or something of some sort. As I got closer, the reflection split into two tiny orbs, and stopping about six feet or so from it, I was surprised to see that the source of this was actually the eye shine from a small brown owl. I froze, not wanting to spook it, and hoping maybe I could get a quick photo of it before flying away. It sat there, staring at me, moving its head side to side in that quick, snappy but fluent owl motion. After giving me proper inspection, the owl just turned calmly and flew away. Continuing to follow the path, the wind started to pick up, indicating I was getting close to the side of the mountain. It was right around this time that I started to see other flashes of light-like orbs. First, just in the corner of my peripherals, but then becoming more direct, passing across in front of me, although quite a distance away. Red and yellow, they'd stream by, quickly up against the trees. I figured this was just an eye shine again, but maybe another owl, or perhaps the nocturnal flying squirrels, which are common in this area. That was until about a hundred yards or so ahead, in the darkness, coming right toward me. I spotted two large yellow orb-shaped lights. These ones were on my height level, and moving side to side in a swaying kind of motion. 
I interpreted them as flashlights, which in turn set off an alarm in my head, thinking I must have wandered onto somebody's private property or something. Instinctively, I turned and ran, overall not wanting to deal with the bullshit of having to talk and exclaim myself to somebody who just maybe me looking like a nutcase aimlessly trudging through the forest alone at 1am. So I shut off my flashlight. I put some distance between myself and the lights running through to the other. Went to a more defined trail. It was a full moon that night, so I didn't have much trouble navigating without a light source, and continued running over and down this big hill until a tree root sticking up in the path caught my foot, sent me tumbling. I sat up, looked back to see if there were any lights still following me. After a minute, I flicked back on my headlamp, get a good look around. I noticed that the trees were now much larger, older growth, and with less tangly thick brush in between them, giving it a sort of grove-like appearance. Then looking up, I was filled with disbelief in what I now was seeing before me. The light beamed into the old trees, revealing owls. Dozens and dozens of owls amongst the branches and the hollows. Their eyes reflecting back fiery red at me. Every which way I turned, more owls perched on the trees, and even more silently flying in to join. Every single one of them looking down right at me. This is where the fog set in. Not literal fog, but a fog of the mind. I fell into this strange, hazy stupor. It's the best way I'm able to explain it. The last thing I can clearly remember is standing there surrounded by an ever-increasing amount of owls and feeling this strengthening sense of dread overtake me. My memory of the next few hours becomes patchy. I had entered this weird, dreamlike state. I recall walking through thick rhododendron bushes, climbing on rocks well off any path in the middle of the woods. I remember being aware of what I was doing and moving slow and sluggish, but it didn't come to me as I was doing anything strange. I felt as if I was doing these things for a reason, like I had a goal or an objective or something. But at the time, I couldn't think about what that was simply because I already knew. It's hard to put it into words. This lasted through the remainder of the night, and as the sky shifted to a slowly brightening dark bluish purple, I kind of snapped back. Not entirely, but enough to notice how unbelievably hungry I now was, that I'd better start on my way back. However, any of the strange things that had just occurred causing me to lose several hours cosplaying as Bigfoot wasn't a concern that crossed my mind. I had no idea where I was, but the sunrise I was able to point myself in the direction knowing I had been traveling east, so walked westward until coming across the path. Some point on in the long walk home, I could feel myself slipping back into that foggy, autopilot-like state again, when the tree branches and bushes appeared to now be bent into shapes resembling owls. Following the old railroad bed which stretched miles for a decent portion of the way home, I'd randomly walk off into the woods through thorns and over fallen trees. I was walking through a thick marsh or bog where streams of water coming down from the mountainside divided. They cut through the patches of moss, making little islands you'd have to hop across and over the water. I stopped when I noticed, above me, higher on the embankment, someone was there, watching me. A tall man standing at the top near the railroad tracks was glaring down right at me. He was dressed in an older style of clothing, turn of the century, I'd say. Long, ratty brown overcoat, large bowler cap. Cast a shadow over the face, left no details I could make out. Not a moment after I had noticed him, the man lunged forward toward me. He was sprinting full speed, completely unaffected by all the thick thorn bushes, 
huge tree trunks and deep trenches of water that were between us. He was doing that as if there weren't even there. I could feel the ground shaking to the heavy thumping rhythm of his feet slamming the ground violently, carrying him closer and closer. I stood there watching. I felt absolutely nothing. I was completely numb to it, and I didn't care at all. No fear, nor excitement. Nothing. I could see the holes in his brown overcoat and its tattered tail of it flowing behind him. The stains on his hat and a shaded veil of black covered where a face should be under it. I didn't flinch or have any reaction as the man crashed into me, passing right through without any sort of physical harm or effect at all. Just like all the obstacles between us, he ran through me. Then he was gone. The rest of the way home I remained mostly absent-minded, still detouring from time to time to waddle through brush and bushes for no apparent logic reason. Finally, after almost four, maybe four and a half hours, found myself at the front porch of my house. It was still fairly early, but darker out from clouds bringing a light snow. I opened my door, throwing my backpack down, and slumped onto the couch, exhausted. Then something strange on the coat rack by the door caught my eye. The rack remains largely unused, since I'm lazy and usually toss my coat on the couch, so anything there would be out of the ordinary, and pretty attention-grabbing. Suspended off the ground from one of the hooks was the sprinting man from earlier. His limbs were missing, leaving just the torso in his head. He hung by the back of his overcoat, its ripped strands reaching to the floor. I was able to see his face this time, and his hat was gone. His head slumped in my direction with strands of thin, dark hair falling down over two black pits in his skull. His jaw was slack, dropping heavy to the side as if it was dislocated and hanging in place only by the pale bluish skin. Like before, I felt absolutely nothing staring back at this extremely morbid display hanging in my living room across from me. I attempted to turn my head away a few times, rubbing my eyes and looking back to rid myself of the hallucination, but every time the man still hung there no matter the effort I put in to try to unsee it. I sat there for some time staring at him as he faced me, his gaping holes of black piercing back. Slowly, I drifted off to sleep, locked in the hollow gaze of this mutilated corpse man without a care for it in the world. For more than a week after this all happened, I saw owls in everything. Spots in the walls would form into owls. The letters on license plates, in pictures, TV. Wherever I'd look, I'd see owls forming out of random things. Or they would just be there in general. After this all happened, I came to a life-changing realization about certain things that happened to me in my past. Certain traumatic things that are far too long of a story to discuss in any detail here, but my eyes were opened after this. It gave me an understanding that without it, it'd still be lost in the dark. It's strange, but these things just came to me. Can somebody please explain this? For some context, I'm the joint youngest of my mom's children, being one of five with a twin brother. However, I have twelve siblings altogether, but all the others aside from me, my twin brother and the three others share both the same mother and father. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but just to lay it all out there. As a child, I was fascinated with the paranormal. I fully understood at a young age what a spirit and her ghost was. My nan would talk about her many experiences. She's not a woman to lie. But that's a story for another time. If anybody's interested in hearing that. Before the encounter I'm about to tell you about, I hadn't had really any relay or remember. So... Just some spooky things that myself or one of my siblings apparently did or said 
But like I said, I can't really remember them, so I don't think they're worth mentioning. On to the story, anyhow. I was roughly about seven years old when my mom last minute decided to take me to work with her. She owned her own business, and I didn't want to stay at home with my older sister. My sister was asleep with me, and my mom left, wasn't aware that I wasn't at home. From my twin brother and sister's point of view, this is what happened. Annalise woke up. She yelled to the top of the stairs for me and my brother to come down and help tidy up. My brother apparently came straight down and helped. Meanwhile, my sister yelled once again, Come down and help now, while threatening to confiscate my computer or phone, especially if I continued to ignore her. Got angry and she shouted, Lily! Again, and instead of being met with silence this time, she heard, quote, unquote, me respond, I don't care, and also, go away. She heard this clearly and turned to my twin brother, Daniel, and promptly asked, What's wrong with her? My twin brother, having also heard, quote, unquote, me respond from upstairs, just shrugged. My sister left it alone and continued with some house chores alongside my brother. A couple of hours later, me and our mom came into the house. Before I could even take another step, Annalise came up to me and angrily said, What was wrong with you earlier? I asked, What? Genuinely confused as to what she was referring to. Annoyed, she rolled her eyes at me and said, you didn't have to give me such attitude earlier. I only asked you to help tidy up. At this point, I was extremely confused and not really being confidential or argumentative person. I started to get upset as that was usually my response to being yelled at. Our mom, who was just as confused as me, asked Annalise what she was going on about. To which Annalise responded, She wouldn't help clean up earlier. I called her name, and she was rude back to me. I looked at her mother with a pleading look and then back at my sister. You're lying. I've been with mom all day at work. My sister, taken aback by this, raised a brow and looked at me, then also at our mom, who nodded. We left this morning. I remember seeing my sister's angry expression fade she made a look that seemed as though she was deep in thought before telling us what she'd heard and why she assumed I'd been home. My twin brother later, well, later, confirmed that he also heard my voice earlier that day. I always doubted Annalise and Daniel's version of the events that day, as although I was interested in the paranormal, I was still afraid of the thought of a ghost being in our house. Well, the doubt continued until one night I was home alone. It was 2016, and I was 13. I used to play this game that doesn't really exist anymore. Small Worlds. Not that it's relevant, but I'd spend most nights on this game. I was hooked. Being home alone didn't really faze me. Oh, I was a little sketched out as we lived next to these woods. I felt our dog would keep me safe, despite only being this little Jack Russell. Anyway, back to the main point. A few hours into gaming and listening to music, my dog was sat on my bed asleep, and I heard the front door downstairs open and somebody walk in. Not thinking anything of it, I shouted downstairs. And Lee's. No response. So, I said my other siblings' names, expecting to hear one of them. I shrugged, not thinking much of it, and headed to my room. I picked up my phone and texted my older brother, Blake. Asked him if he'd just come in or not, as well as sending the same message to Annalise and to my other older sister, Katie, my twin brother, Daniel. Another few minutes passed, and I decided to just go down and check. Nobody's responded to me yet, so... As I get up to the landing, I hear my sister shout up. It's just me, don't worry. 
and the footsteps descending into her bedroom, which was on the other side of the house downstairs. It was Annalise who I had heard, felt a little better about it, but still had a weird feeling that I couldn't explain in my stomach. I decided to go downstairs and make a hot chocolate. While flicking the kettle on, I shouted, Annie, do you want a hot chocolate? I'm making one. No response. A little annoyed, I opened the door and through the small corridor, and I opened her door. Before I could even say anything, I noticed that her room was empty. Freaked out at this point. Thought maybe she just went back out and tried to rationalize everything. I went back to the kitchen. And that's when I saw something that made my heart drop into my stomach. The front door key. It was on the kitchen cabinet. Untouched and unmoved from where my mom had left it. Feeling sick at this point, I tried to handle to the front door. To my horror, it was locked. This freaked me out so much because remember earlier when I said I heard that door open and footsteps come in? Yeah. I thought, screw the hot chocolate. Made a beeline for the stairs. Getting back into my bedroom and shutting the door once myself and my pup were safely inside. I went to grab my phone to ring one of my siblings or my mom. To my disbelief, all of my siblings had replied saying that they hadn't come home. I called Annalise, wanting this to be some sort of stupid prank that she was trying to pull, as it was her that I heard. To my surprise, she answered. She never answers the phone, by the way. She said, what's wrong? I said rather abruptly, did you just come home? My sister sighed as if I'd asked the stupidest question in the world and replied, can you not hear the background? With that, I listened. It was rather obvious that she was at a party. At this point, I began to cry as I told her what had happened. She comforted me to the best that she could. She said she'd make her way home shortly and to just stay in my bedroom. Nothing else happened that night. But when my sisters got home, she asked me if I remembered that day. She told me what happened when I was about seven. And as if I had just unlocked memories I didn't realize were still there, I said, yeah, I actually do. And we just shared a look of slight disturbance. It was after that night I fully believed my sister's version of the events that day that she had heard me despite me not being home. There were a few other smaller instances of the same thing. A brother using the bathroom, realizing there was no toilet paper, had shouted from one of my brothers to go grab him some. He heard my twin brother shout, okay. And then, well, nothing. And then my brother realized that we were all at school and nobody else was home. He was supposed to be at school too, but he was skipping. And to clarify, in all of these stories, the person whose voice had been heard was not home. I've only told this story once or twice, and I'm usually met with people saying that it didn't happen and that I'm lying. But I know for sure what I heard that night, and I believe my sister and my brother heard what they did too. However, I'm 18 now. I still can't figure out what this was. If anybody can give me their opinions, or have had a similar experience, I'd be super grateful. It's been sitting heavy on me for years not knowing. I saw what I saw, but I don't believe what I saw. I'm almost 60 years old, and I'm a wildlife and landscape photographer from East Tennessee. I'm from Townsend, which is located in the Smoky Mountains. I no longer live at the location where this happened, but I'm still close by. On the night of the new moon in July of 2018, my best friend Deb came over to my house around 11.30pm. 
We are going to go up to the hill from my house to an empty rental cabin to take pictures of the Milky Way. So we're going to take pictures of it over the rich mountain. I know it was the night of the new moon because that's the best night of the month for night sky photography, since the moon will wash out the light from the stars. If you stood on my road where you turn into my driveway, it actually looks like you're turning into the driveway of the rental cabin because we shared that driveway. We pull into the rental and curve left down our long gravel driveway to the mobile home that we lived in before we moved into our house where we are now. Straight across the street from the rental cabin is what locals have always called the shale pit. It's just an empty lot, about an acre or two big. There's a family from Townsend who owns it. They use it to dig up shale for new driveways of houses. That was their business. They build driveways. But their part was just to dig it and lay down the shale. They also let the National Park bring trees there to use the space to burn them after they recollected them. When we'd have some bad storms and strong winds or heavy snow, that would sometimes happen. There wasn't a house there or any other form of structure, just a big lot with a couple of backhoes for digging. They did put a small mobile home on the lot for the owner's grandson, but that didn't happen until 2020 during the pandemic. Okay, here it goes. Deb and I had taken her car up the driveway to the rental cabin. We parked right in front of her car that was parallel to the road. The road was about ten yards from the car, and the entrance to the shale pit was across the one-lane road that we lived on. So about ten more yards. That means twenty yards total from the car to the entrance of the shale pit. We sat our tripods up, and we had each taken a couple shots of the night sky when I heard what sounded like tires on gravel somewhere down at the river. We have to cross a bridge over the river to get to my old house, and all houses on that road. Shale pit included, of course. I said out loud to her, Someone's down at the river. Can't remember if she heard it. Just a few seconds later, we heard a loud truck that sounded like it was crossing the bridge and staring up the road. It might be a quarter mile from the bridge to my driveway, probably less. I could hear that the truck was going really slow, and it sounded like it was really old and barely running. As it got closer, I asked Deb if she locked her car, since we were on the back side of the cabin and couldn't see it from there. She said she hadn't. Deb had thousands of dollars worth of camera gear, and she had a lot of it with her that night. Without speaking, we both took our cameras off our tripods, carried them in the tripods back to her car to lock it. I don't remember why we brought it all with us, but I think we both just had a weird feeling about that truck. I know I definitely did. I don't even know what to say other than it sounded like it was creeping around the area, because it was going so slow. I could have walked as fast as that truck was going. When we got back to her car, we sat our stuff in the back seat as the truck got to where it was. It was even with the cabin and us. It was a dark-colored truck, and it looked like it could have maybe been like a Chevy S10, made in the 70s or 80s. We couldn't see who was driving or how many people were in it. The truck stopped, turned into the driveway to the cabin, which means it was also turning into my driveway. It only got two wheels onto the property when it stopped and backed up across the street into the entrance of the shale pit. Its lights were shining directly into our eyes. It just sat there with its loud, sad motor running. Deb asked me what the hell they were doing, and I said, I don't know, but they're starting to piss me off because they know they're blinding us with their fucking headlights. I waited about ten more seconds before I reached into my pocket and pulled out a maglite flashlight and turned the dial around the bulb to high beam. I then turned it on and pointed it right at the truck. I had intended on shining my obnoxiously bright flashlight at them until they turned their headlights off or drove away. Well, they did turn their headlights off, and in turn, I turned my flashlight off. That didn't turn the motor off, though. This was creepy, and my stomach kind of churned because I thought I'd pissed them off and we were up at this empty rental cabin after midnight and my husband was all the way back down at the mountain house. The truck stayed there for about another half a minute, and then it finally turned its motor off. And it was 
gone. Yeah, I swear upon everything I've ever loved, that truck that just wasn't there anymore. We didn't see it fade away, it didn't turn off the light switch or television, it just wasn't there anymore. Then Deb and I both did something totally out of character for two old ladies. We ran to where the truck had been sitting. We couldn't say a word, but, well, Deb yelled over, What the fuck did I just see? I told her to stop screaming so I could call Jack my husband. I was hysterical and told him to get up the hill as fast as he could. He also drove up instead of walking. He was there in no more than two minutes. I told him a very short version of what happened. He went across the street to the shale pit, pulled in as far as he could. It's all just dirt and rock. There aren't even trees there, since they dug in the area. The only trees are the ones the park brings there to burn. There weren't any of those at this time. He came back across the street and said there's nobody, nothing over there, except the two black hoes. Oops, excuse me, back hoes. They must have left, and y'all just didn't see them. Well, then we explained the whole thing again, and he realized they couldn't have left without us seeing them, since we were standing right in front of them. So we went back over there on foot this time with my flashlight, since it had high beam setting on. Again, he came back and said there's nothing there. He said he even looked inside the cabs of the backhoes, just in case. There's actually a ridge above the shale pit lot, but it's vertical and about a hundred feet high. This one acre lot is literally just dirt and rock with nowhere to go and nowhere to hide, even for a person, let alone a whole truck. We didn't take any more pictures, we just went back down to the house and Jack went inside. I was outside with Deb and she said, Kelly, there's no need to go in there and try to convince him of what we saw. It's ridiculous and he can't expect him to believe you. It'll just cause an argument. We saw what we saw, but nobody's ever going to believe us. And now we don't even believe us. <laughs> we talk about it sometimes and laugh about it, but it's not really at all funny. Because even though we know we saw what we saw, what is it that we saw? If it were a scary movie, you'd think the truck would turn the motor off first and leave the headlights on and then disappear. But no. Turned off its lights and we could very clearly see the truck sitting just yards from us. The motor goes off when it was like I blinked and it was gone. Maybe even less than a blink. How can an inanimate object be a ghost? Not sure I even believe in ghosts at all, but I saw that truck disappear. And as I type those words, I full on understand how ridiculous and stupid it sounds, but it happened. But I don't even believe it. It's a weird place to be in, and Deb is in that exact same place. I believe in God, so I guess that means I believe in the supernatural, since God is supernatural. But I don't believe in disappearing trucks. But I saw one disappear. Can you understand what I'm saying? I don't believe what I saw, but I saw it. It drives me crazy. Pun intended. Very nice. Mexico City Haunting It was the day before Christmas, in 2009. We were all on the road, leaving my dad's quiet ranch in... I don't know how to pronounce this. Tequesquity. Teques... Tequesquity, Mexico. I'm probably saying that wrong. Well, they were headed to Mexico City. We've been on vacation in Mexico for about a week already. Planned on staying for another week or so. Me, a 14-year-old female, my mom, my dad, my sister Beth, and my cousin Jazz. We're all headed to my aunt's house to visit for three days. And we were going to drop off some things that we brought them from the U.S. Our first day there went great. We had fun talking, eating, and playing games. 
I had always been an animal lover. So when I saw that they had a little chihuahua, I instantly wanted to play with him. But when I got close, it would run to the top of the stairs and just stand there looking at me. So I figured it was a weirdo, left it alone. When night came, we all went to bed. Our aunt put the dog out on the roof patio like she apparently did every night, and my mom, dad, and me went upstairs to the guest room. Beth and Jazz were downstairs on the living room couch. This part of the story is told from my sister's perspective, as I wasn't there. Because she couldn't sleep, my sister stayed up playing her Nintendo DS. Around late, like three o'clock, there was a scraping sound coming from across the room at the dining table. She looked over and watched for a while, and something happened that made her want to shit her pants. One of the dining chairs pulled away from the table so far it was about three feet away. She then heard the sound of someone going through the pots and pans in the kitchen. And because the kitchen was around the corner, she couldn't see what was going on. The next morning she told us what happened. And of course, my parents blew it off like all parents do. But Jazz and I believe her. Me and my sister had been through enough for me to know that she was being serious. So that night, my sister and Jazz squeezed themselves into the small guest room with us. I was on the small couch in my room. My parents were on the bed, laying on the floor, smashed like a couple of sardines was Beth and Jazz. That night at three in the morning, of course, I had to pee. Scared from the story that my sister told, I didn't want to go alone. I begged them to come with me. So the three of us, Beth, Jazz, and me, walked down the dark hall to the bathroom. We took turns using the toilet, while the other two looked at the door, praying not to see someone walk by or something. When we were done, we opened the door to go back to the room that we saw him. That weird little dog was standing in the hallway watching us. I don't know how long we stood there, but eventually it walked away going around the corner to the stairs, never breaking eye contact with us. The second we couldn't see it anymore, we ran. Beth and Jazz threw themselves under the blankets while I hurried to close the door. But not before making act. But not before making eye contact with the small dog standing at the top of the stairs. The next day, Beth and Jazz were practic well, practically crying, begging my dad to just take us back to the ranch. But he was never the type to believe in ghosts or aliens or anything supernatural, really. So, of course, he laughed and said no. In fact, decided to stay a few days more. And when we asked her aunt about the dog, she assured us that she had locked it out on the roof patio like usual. For days we would hear things outside our room. The sound of little kids running down the hall. Things that sounded like bowling balls getting pushed down the stairs. And if I dared to peek outside the room, that dog at the top of the stairs watching us. Finally, the day came when we had one more night, just one more night to endure before we would finally leave. But of course, it turned out to be the most traumatic. In the middle of the night, while the three of us sat up listening to the sounds of kids running and bowling balls getting pushed downstairs, it suddenly stopped. We watched as something big stood right outside our bedroom door, and slowly, so, so slowly, the doorknob started to turn. Beth and Jazz hugged each other, shutting their eyes tight through tears starting to pray. I was frozen, unable to look away at whatever was on the other side. I 
was about to come in. Finally, the doorknob was turned all the way. Beth and Jazz were practically screaming their prayer as they sobbed. Felt like, felt like I was about to throw up when suddenly my mom sat up and yelled, Would you all just shut up? She then laid back, went to sleep. All was quiet. Even the doorknob had snapped back into place. Whatever was on the other side of the door was gone. The three of us looked at each other saying nothing, and for the rest of the night nothing happened. The next morning we all but flew down the stairs, put our bags in the car. My parents said their goodbyes and got ready to hit the road. I sat in the car waiting to leave. Wasn't about to go back in there. Looking at the house, I could see the dog standing up there on the patio looking down at the car I was sitting in. Never wanted to kick a dog so bad in my whole life. A few minutes later, Beth and Jazz came running out with some news. After telling her aunt about the nights that, well, she had just laughed and said, Oh, I forgot to tell you. Your late grandfather died on that couch you slept on your first night here. He's not really friendly to people sitting on his couch. But we see and hear him around the house almost every night. Nothing to be scared of. I didn't even know how to process that information. How do you just forget to tell your guests about the ghost in your house that's possessive of a specific couch in your home? Not to mention, according to my dad, he later found out that that house was built on top of several graves. But he still thinks it's just a coincidence. It's been 13 years so far. And this is still the worst paranormal experience I've ever had. But sadly, it wasn't for my sister. Woman and Child This incident happened a few months ago while I worked at a former police department here in the southeastern U.S. There was a patrol officer there, and our shifts at the time were 12-hour shifts, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I enjoyed working nights. A lot of fun and crazy things happened which kept things interesting. The night started as it usually does. A shift briefing, pass on, general pre-shift shenanigans. I'd say about the first three to four hours were pretty normal. Wrecks, domestic disturbances and the like. But I'd say 11.30 to 45 we received a call for a severe wreck. A black sedan rolled over and was upside down in a ditch. The callers who never, well, they never stopped. But they said they didn't see anyone in or around the vehicle. I was the second on scene with my sergeant being the first. Now I've been to some gruesome scenes, gunshot and stabbing victims, welfare checks to find decomposing bodies and other homicide-suicide scenes. I was generally okay with handling them, but nothing could have prepared me for this scene. In the car was an infant's child seat ripped from the restraints. My first hope was there wasn't a child in the car. The further investigation, the front windshield wasn't even attached to the car. It happens in a rollover, but about 30 feet away, knee-high grass. I saw a depression from what looked to be something displacing the grass. As I approached, I saw a mangled leg twisted and contorted. Then the body of a woman, 28 years old, based on her driver's license. In and out of consciousness, hardly able to speak. When I found her, fire was rolling on the scene. I radioed to them, found a victim. Despite the noise I heard distinctly, where's my baby? When I looked down on her, she was staring at me. My heart sank. There was a child somewhere either in the vehicle or ejected. I immediately began searching the field after telling my sergeant that a child was also in the vehicle. We searched and searched and eventually, and fortunately... That was the moment something in me just changed. After the mother and child were transported, 
we learn that the mother succumbed to her wounds. A single car, two fatality wreck. I was placed on admin leave. We had to speak with our psychiatrist for several days until that deemed it okay for me to return to shift. My first night back was routine calls that we usually had. The same as the second night. The third night we received the call. Once again a wreck. On the same road as before in the same manner. I was closer to the location and arrived on the scene first. Mind racing, heart going a hundred miles an hour. The memories flooded back from the first collision. But as I rolled up to the scene, nothing. No wreck, just an empty field in darkness. My blue lights were on, and so were my scene lights. Confused if I was at the right location, I radioed my dispatch to confirm to them that I had acknowledged I was in the right place. I scanned, and nothing was out of the norm. Nothing was disturbed. The ground looked the same as it had. thought perhaps this was a cruel prank call. Maybe an error on the caller. So I got in my patrol car, turned my blue lights off, and prepared to drive further down the road to search. As I placed my car into drive, I noticed movement out of the peripherals. But when I looked, there was just inky darkness. I shook it off and drove off. I never found the second supposed accident, and ended up being told to clear up as other calls were waiting. But later that night, when things began to calm down, around 3.30 a.m., I decided to drive down that road once again. As I turned left onto the road, I felt as if something nudged my right arm. Instantly, my hair and my arms stood up on end, and I got the chills. No one else was in the car with me, but I tried to rationalize it. I continued on down the road. As I approached the original wreck scene, I saw off to the side of the road what appeared to be someone standing the distance in the field. Despite the distance and being in the shadows of my headlights, I could tell what clothes they were wearing. Blue jeans, light shirt. But what caught me off guard was I could see the figure holding something in its arms. As I got closer, I slowed down to a crawl, trying to use my spotlight to see better. But went to look again, there was nothing there. Something in me told me to stop the car, and I did. As I got out, I looked into the field with my flashlight from the roadside. Behind me and on the other side of the road from where the field was, was a wooded plot of land. From there, I could hear what sounded like footsteps, but lighter. This was late autumn, but there was a lot of leaves on the ground. So there should have been more noise as something was walking around on freshly fallen leaves. I informed my dispatch that I was stepping out of my vehicle, and where? As I ventured out into the field, I found the original spot where the mother laid. Gauze, gloves, and various other medical bandages still laid there intertwined in the long grass. Despite being late autumn, the temperature was sitting around 55 degrees Fahrenheit. But as I approached, I could feel the temperature drop. I got the chills again, goosebumps, and a feeling as if I was being watched. I scanned again, still nothing. As I left the spot and began walking back to my car, I looked down as to not trip as I went. I looked up and my heart sank. Standing on the driver's side of my car, illuminated ever so faintly, but not enough to see a face, was a woman holding clearly a child in her arms. It was clear, the same clothes as before, but an obscured face. I called out to her and continued my way to her, trying to shine my flashlight at her, but as I did, I saw her step back into the shadows my flashlight seemingly not able to pierce the darkness. As I got to my car, I called out again, searched with my flashlight, even going as far as turning my scene lights on. Nothing. Paranoid, I searched my vehicle, searched the wood line, and the feeling of dread became just too strong. I eventually got into my car and left. Shaken up by the experience, I called my sergeant and told him what happened. PTSD, he said. I was told to take the next several days off and speak with the counselor. Mess me up. After everything that was said and done, I did return to work a week later. I just never went back down that road by myself while employed there. Several other people witnessed the same experience after I left. Even people who were never even on the scene during the wreck. All describing them 
saying they saw a woman holding a child in a field in the tree line. It's back. He saw it too. This is something I do not talk about. My husband is the only person that knows the entire event. I'm going to paraphrase to save time. About four years ago, we moved from Florida to North Carolina. My husband's in the towing industry. He went on assignment to Maryland for six months. While in our hometown with my dogs, I had a major shadow person infestation. My husband and I talked at night all the time, and he even saw it on a video call more than once. I felt like I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I didn't sleep at night, turned on every light in the house. My husband is Catholic and was very involved as an altar boy from 6 to 19. So much so, he had a free ride all through Catholic high school. This plays into the story later. Seeing these shadow things nightly had me to the point that I felt like it was possibly the beginning stages of a full-on possession in the making. When I say I saw them, it started off in the corner of my eye, and over time I could look at it straight on. So it wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. Something in my eye, perhaps, lighting, my husband saw it twice while on video with me. My whole personality changed. I looked like I had an illness, and an illness that was eating me alive from the inside out. My husband would come home every few weeks for two days. When he was home, the activity was virtually non-existent, with the exception of hearing noises that we couldn't explain. He wrote those off as noises from the woods near our house. But when he was gone, I would call him on the brink of a complete panic. I wasn't afraid that it could hurt me physically as much as the emotional, mental, and physical drain it put on me. We discussed it trying to take possession of me. He reached out to his Catholic priest who explained the stages of demonic possession. He told me first thing that seems to happen was a breaking down of the person mentally and physically. We were there. This all came to an end at one night. I was alone. I was freaked completely out. I had holy water in my home that was blessed by the Pope from the Vatican. I grabbed the holy water, walked around the house and just sprayed everything. At the same time I was screaming telling it that it's not welcome, that I wasn't going to be afraid anymore, and if it was coming to get me, then to fucking make it happen. I had broke. I could no longer live like this. The next morning the whole house felt different. That night I no longer saw the shadow figures in my home. It was an almost eerie quiet, with a whole new sense of calm. We do not talk about this ever. I can't even read or watch things having to do with shadow people because of my experience. I'm not saying it in the lightest terms, but I absolutely believe I have a form of PTSD from the events that transpired. We don't watch shows with it. We don't discuss it. So, fast forward a little over four years. We now live in a three-story home. Our bedroom is on the top floor. It's a very quiet country neighborhood, meaning at 9 o'clock everything shuts down. My neighbors don't have lighting on their homes other than their front porch light. We don't have parties here or police. It's very quiet and it's dark at night. We were sitting in bed on the top of the third story floor watching TV. And in my hallway... I saw like a flashlight flashing around the walls. It was very fast, but I sat there and stared at it. So it wasn't like in the blink of an eye. 
it was more like somebody outside was shining a flashlight on the house, and it popped through the window. This is on the third floor, so if it were a car, the light would never reach to the top level. It was only us in the house that we knew of. I looked at my husband and said, Do you see the flashlight in the hallway just now? To which he responded, Nah, and started to stare. He jumped out of bed and got his gun, his flashlight. He started entering the hallway thinking somebody may have broken in. He goes through the whole top floor, checks behind the curtain in the bathroom, turns on all the lights, finds nothing. We even looked outside on both sides of the house to see if maybe something happened and someone was out there with a flashlight. Nothing. Dark black silence, like every normal night. He was in full protection mode at this point. I told him maybe it was a car, maybe it was a reflection off the TV, a couple other things that it could have caused make him calm down. He sat down on the bed and watched his frozen face. He stared blankly and fixated down the hall. He said, Natalie, I'm watching a shadow go back and forth across our hallway. There's no light behind it can't see through it to the window. He said it crossed three to four times. He sat there with a blank expression. In 24 years I've never seen on him this sort of expression. He jumps up and turns on every single light again. He was clearly freaked out. It was starting to freak me out too. The minute he mentioned that shadow person, I thought they were back in my life again. I haven't felt this type of fear, panic, quite a few years. feel like I'm on super high alert today as I'm typing this out. I don't feel safe to go back into my bedroom. I cannot relive this event again. I looked at him and said, We do not talk about these things. We're not talking about what just happened. And we do not say the word shadow around me ever again in your life. You can think it, but do not say it. After a while, he calmed down enough to lay down and go to sleep. I haven't slept yet. I just had to get this off my chest a little bit so I can breathe. I'm already dreading tonight going to bed. I cannot have what I went through the last six months of my life to come back again. Shadow in the Tree Line This might end up being a pretty long story, but I want to be as detailed as possible. I work for my city's water department. My everyday job consists of repairing leaks or doing new installations for businesses and homes. There are two parts to our water department that key to everything running. Distribution, where I normally work, and production. Production deals with the chemical sides of things. They chlorinate the water and do water sample checks. Production is also responsible for the upkeep of our water well sites and our water storage facilities, like tall water towers you might have in your city. Mowing grass is one of those responsibilities. Both parts of our department are extremely understaffed right now so we sometimes give the production guys a hand with the grass when they need it. A couple of weeks ago, it was my turn, and here's where the weirdness begins. My city's in central Louisiana with a population of about 45,000 people. We're surrounded by wooded area. No matter which way you travel, into or out of town, you're going to see plenty of trees. As such, a lot of our well sites are located out in the boonies. Most of our city trucks are four-wheel drive with mud grips because it needs more often than not to have those. I had four sites to cut that day. I headed out just before sunrise to one at the end of a long dirt road, where, if trouble strikes, your phone better be charged because no one's going to be able to hear you yell for help. Surprisingly, this isn't where my strange encounter took place. The sun was rising as I was approaching my first sight. 
and on the road ahead of me stepped out a doe with her two fawns. Excitedly, I hurried to snap some pictures. To my surprise, the mama and her babies weren't afraid of the loud rumbling diesel I was driving. The speckled fawns made their way across the path as the mom calmly watched me in the truck. Once the babies were safely across, she looked back the way she came and then joined the little ones in the tree line on the opposite side of the road. I breezed through my mowing, loaded the equipment back onto the trailer, and texted my mom the pictures of the deer as I headed back into town. My mom messaged me back, saying, I've read that deer are an omen of good fortune. Looks like you're going to have a great day. Be safe. I love you. And I did have a great day. I knocked out the next two sites without issue and everything was going smooth. Until I reached the gate of the last place I had to mow. McKeithen's site is the biggest one that we have and it's closer to town. It's about the size of a football field. It's not in the middle of nowhere, but it's on the outskirts of the city. There's normally plenty of traffic that travels the road there, so there's really no feeling of seclusion, even though it's surrounded by thick woods on three sides. I've cut this spot plenty of times, but that day felt different. I pulled the truck through and hopped out to lock the gate behind me. Immediately I felt like I needed to go back into the truck as quick as possible. I made my way down the driveway to the park near the tower, like I have many times before. But after I parked and killed the truck, everything fell silent and heavy. I don't know how long I sat until I was able to will myself to open the door to get out. Instantly, I felt eyes on me. The feeling was coming from the back of the corner of the field outside of the fence, just in the tree line where the palmetto bushes grow. I calmed my nerves, reminded myself that I was surrounded by an eight-foot inclimbable fence with the gate locked. Yeah, if somebody had a gun, then they could have shot me if they wanted to. But they weren't going to actually get to me. If the barbed wire at the top of the fence didn't get them, a face full of weed-eater string blades would. I jumped on the zero turn and took off mowing keeping an eye in the back corner during every pass. After about two hours, it took multiple runs due to the overgrowth, I had the entire front mowed and it was time to hit the back by the creepy corner. I was about to head that way, but the mower blades wouldn't engage. I had to take covers off, pull grass out of the belts, and rip grass out from under the deck. I had to grease the pulleys and do all sorts of troubleshooting. I finally got the blades going and then the gaslight came on. Didn't realize it until later, but it felt like something was doing everything it could to keep me from going to that part of the lot. I finally got everything up and running and mowed the back as quick as possible, doing everything I could to keep my sight on that fence. I finally got done and loaded the mower. I still had to do a little bit of weed eating around the area, but when the weed eater wouldn't start, I knew it was time to go. I hadn't had an issue with it all day, but that was the last hint that I needed to get out of there. After pulling out of the gate and locking it behind me, I turned onto the highway to head home, but not before looking at the back corner one last time. That's when I finally saw it, the unmistakable shadow of a figure standing in the palmettos. It wasn't trying to hide or make itself unseen, it was there. Being at a safe distance from it, I stopped and watched. I moved to the side as if it were bending. Try to see me better at the road. It had no distinguishing features, no hair, no clothes, just a person-shaped mass. I decided I had to get as far away from there as I could. And though that could have been so close to it for so long and never saw it, it sent chills to my core. I called my mom later that night and told her what had happened. She told me that she did some more reading about seeing the deer and learned that they're also a sign of protection. Some people believe that a deer means that a higher power is watching over you. After my mom told me that, I couldn't help but think, what if I had not seen the deer that morning? Would I have even seen the shadow? Would it have been able to do something to me? Why did it choose to show itself to me?
Is it something about me or is it tied to that part of the woods? My mom texted me even later that night. She was sitting out on the back steps of my little hometown when she heard something rustling near her storage shed. She shone her phone light into the dark, and what stands there but a deer. A deer had never come into the backyard before, but that night a large deer stood tall staring back at my mom. She told me she felt like it was there as if to say, It's okay, he's safe, don't worry, we got him. Do not disturb my experience living in a historic old house. Back in the early 90s, I moved into an apartment that was in a house owned by my mother's cousin. The house was built in 1905 in what is called the historic district of my town, essentially just the oldest part of the city. This house was actually on the outskirts of a whole neighborhood of much older and grander homes but still had many cool features. Ornate fireplace and wood, pocket doors, stained glass, doors, two staircases, etc. I fell in love with it and decided to move in. The other apartment was vacant as well, so some friends of mine moved in upstairs. The house had a huge basement that was filled with intricate woodwork, removed from my cousin's other income properties that were stored there because it was the only house he owned with a basement that was always dry. My friends asked if they could set up band equipment in the basement. It ended up being a full band set up with multiple amps, etc. When they were practicing, the whole house would literally shake. They usually practiced in the afternoon to avoid any trouble related to noise ordinances. In the evening after the first lengthy practice session, we started to hear what sounded like a lunatic thrashing through the basement with a sledgehammer. My first thought was, oh god, all of that wood. And then basically, what the fuck? I knew no one was down there. Unfortunately, this was the first time I got to experience my boyfriend's absolute cowardice, as he refused to go down there until we got a crew together. Couldn't wait around for that, so I went down on my own. The basement was divided into two parts. When you first come down the stairs, there was a small storage area, newer than the rest of the basement. Not sure how or why it was added. And then an old door which led to the actual basement. The sound ceased as soon as I entered the first part of the basement. I grabbed the old door and whipped it open only to find nothing out of place or any evidence to explain everything that we had heard. I told myself there has to be some other explanation noisy old boiler or furnace. I closed the door and went back upstairs. We heard occasional sounds from the basement after that, but nothing like the first time. However, this was just the beginning of a long string of strange experiences, which included full-body apparitions. I don't remember the exact order each of these happened, so I'll just list them individually. The washer and dryer were in the old part of the basement. I ran down to put some laundry in the dryer and heard what I can only describe as the deepest, loudest, most heartfelt and mournful moan in the man's voice, seemingly coming from all around me. I froze at first, then immediately thought those assholes. I think it was my friends upstairs, playing some kind of prank. I immediately ran up the stairs and then back up the staircase into their apartment. It was completely empty, and obviously had been for a while. I told myself it must have been wind trapped somewhere in the ventilation system of the house. The guys saw a woman on multiple occasions that they always assumed was me practicing. But, because all the equipment was set up on the other side of the gigantic furnace, you could never fully see me. One day they asked why I had a dress on earlier. And I was like, what? I'd been in classes all day. My cousin came over one night with a spirit board, not a Ouija. She had to just see if we could make contact with anything. After getting some relevant and extremely creepy responses that there's no way she could have known, she wanted to see the basement. 
We went down through the well-lit first part, but had to get to the washer and dryer to pull the cord for the first light inside the actual basement. Bulb was apparently burned out. The basement was pitch black, so I felt my way around the furnace, looking for the pull cord on the other side. By the time I finally felt it, we were both starting to freak out due to the strange noises that we're hearing. I pulled the cord and the bulb exploded above us. We got out of there as fast as possible. We didn't mess around with that board anymore. My friend stopped practicing down there because it just kept getting creepier and creepier. I rarely even did laundry down there after the whole moaning thing. But one day I had no choice because I was in a rush, frantically cleaning upstairs because I was running very late and still had to shower. I ran down into the basement because I needed to put my clothes in the dryer. I come down into the first part of the basement, noticed that the inner door was already open, which was really strange. In my rush, I just kept moving, but I got closer to the door and I saw an old man standing there. He wasn't looking at me, he didn't say anything. He wasn't completely solid, but enough so that I could make out all the details and seem as clear as day. I actually leaned to the side so I could make it past him and into the basement when I completely froze. I turned around, ran back upstairs without looking back. I didn't go down to retrieve my laundry until I had other people with me. After that, I completely closed off the inner basement and barricaded the door with heavy boxes. I also didn't allow any further attempts to communicate with the spirits of the house anymore. Everything was peaceful from that point on. I never felt threatened at any time, nor did it seem like dark energy, but I felt it would be better to just leave them alone. Another strange thing I experienced on multiple occasions while this was going on were terrifying dreams of being killed in my apartment. They were very graphic and always sat within my apartment with me dreaming that I woke up and knew someone was in the house. Very strange, very scary. I'd never had any dreams like that before or after. The dreams also stopped after closing off the inner basement. Oddly enough, I always felt safe in that apartment and continued to live there for a couple of years by myself after my relationship ended, but... Seems common for people to experience spirit activity in attics and basements. Do you think they occupy those spaces simply to get away from the living? That's the only explanation I can think of, because while they were alive, I highly doubt that that's where they spent a majority of their time. Strange. My first experience happened two months ago. My fiance and I were hanging out together because she was off that day. She works from a turkey packaging plant. She's gone from 2 p.m. to anywhere between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. We heard a lot of rustling and movement in the bushes, trees next to our small house. So I went into my porch with a flashlight to see what was up. I'm still hearing the sounds, but not seeing anything, so I just brush it off and go back inside. Well, the next day she tells me that... Hold on, guys that are listening. I feel like I read this story yesterday. But with a different title. So my guess is this Reddit user posted this in multiple places with different titles. Let's not explain this. Let's just continue in case you didn't hear it last time, and I'll simply read it again. Let's go. But the next day she tells me that her grandpa heard stuff too, saw two glowing red eyes in the trees. He tells her whatever it was was taller than him, and he's six foot. I hear scraping on my metal roof, which I suppose could be tree branches. But the times I hear it, there's no wind. A few times I've heard light tapping on the side of my house. Sometimes I think I hear voices outside, but I'm always watching stuff on my phone, playing a video game. So I always try to brush it off as me just hearing things. 
My grandfather has a dog who roams around the property at night. At least when he forgets to bring him in, or when he falls asleep. Fluffy's been barking randomly at night, sometimes for a few minutes to a few hours. A few nights ago, I let my dogs out to use the bathroom. I have two leads for them because I can't trust them not to run off. I noticed while I'm getting my St. Bernard off the lead that my husky's staring up at the driveway at something I can't see. A few seconds later, she just starts cowering like she's scared ends up peeing where she is, so I yell at her to get inside, which she does, and I start taking her lead off when I noticed Fluffy race up the driveway and start barking, so I book it inside. My husky immediately runs into her kennel, wouldn't come out the rest of the night, not even for a treat. The day after the incident with my husky, I again let the dogs out. As I'm letting my dogs back in, I notice two red glowing dots through my neighbor's fence that's about 30 feet away from the position and I can tell that they're like four to five feet off the ground. I try not to freak out and do my best to calmly get my dogs back inside where I almost have a panic attack. This was at 7.30 p.m. My fiance got home at about 11 p.m where I gained the courage to go back out with my dogs where the lights were still there. When I went to investigate the next day, they were gone. No lights. Yesterday, I let both my dogs out again. I was out there for a few minutes. My fiancé comes rushing out and asks me if I'm okay. Apparently, she heard a loud noise like I fell and like my St. Bernard yelped like he was injured. I got freaked out, told her to stay outside with me, where she tells me how quiet it is outside, how she's getting a bad feeling. That's everything I can remember at the moment. I don't know what's happening, and I honestly feel as if I'm going crazy. If anybody has any answers or similar experiences, please leave a comment. I'll answer any questions as best I can. So I already suffer from anxiety, depression, and have been under an unreal amount of stress lately. But that being said, until I can get my mental health and stress somewhat better dealt with, I'll be pulling myself back from anything creepy or frightening, as I feel it might be making me more paranoid. I want to thank those of you that have read my story and commented and not thought I was crazy or making it up. It has helped just talking about it. Feel free to still leave a comment or a message. I will read and reply when I feel healthier. Thank you all so much for understanding. Now that I've gotten control over my mental health, I can finally update everybody on my permanent account because more has happened since I unplugged. One day my fiancé and I had to go to Fort Smith early in the morning, so I had to wake up at 6 a.m. to let my dogs outside. This was before the sun came out, so it was still almost pitch black outside. Well, as I'm trying to get them back inside, I see the two glowing red dots in the bushes and trees a few feet next to my neighbor's fence. I honestly just completely froze up at this point. I end up just staring for a couple of minutes when whatever it was blinks. So I finally get a hold of myself, book it inside where I have a mini panic attack. My sister-in-law at one point decided to visit us and had gotten to get up early to drive somewhere. She told me when she got in her car, she could hear heavy breathing from the bushes next to her. She couldn't see anything because it was barely light outside. Even though it's warming up here and the insects and frogs are finally making noise again, there has been a lot of nights where it'll be dead silent outside and you just get an eerie feeling like something is watching. I honestly don't know if this could be paranormal, 
But one night while we were keeping my nephew, we both heard what sounded like a barred owl. But somehow just a little distorted. It was odd. The next night I heard it again, but it was louder, like it was above my house in the trees. I'm not as frightened as I was when I first posted this, but whenever I hear strange noises, I still become a little unnerved. There's something in my backyard. My family's been renting out a house since I was around six or seven. We know that it's haunted as it sits on some old farmland that's burned to the ground, taking the farmer's daughter and I believe son. I don't have much communication with the son, but he's about four and sits in our bathtub. The daughter, however, is very active. Her name is Elizabeth and she's around 15. Me and my mother believe she is the watcher of the house as she's very, very protective of certain things. There's a lot of other spirits as well. There's a little poltergeist boy, around seven or eight, who likes to follow me around. He likes to sing at night and he has thrown toys at me before. He's called Gabriel. However, this isn't about them. Recently we got a pet dog. We don't have a doggy door or anything, so whenever she needs to go pee or something, we have to unlock the door and wait for her to be done. Now this wasn't a problem for a while. I take her out in the day, normally my dad or mom at night. However, I've been staying up late with assignments these last few weeks, and have had to take out the dog to pee late at night. I should also mention that there was supposedly witch burnings on the land on a house, well, where the house sits on. I don't know how true this is, though, as it's just something Elizabeth would kind of whisper to me from time to time. Anyway, as I said, I've been letting the dog out late at night, and every time I can feel something watching me. Now, as I live with many spirits, I brushed it off as Gabe or Lizzie following me and watching me as they both really like my cat, so I just assumed they like the dog as well. But recently I've been waking up with this sort of morning sadness and dread. Now I have no one to mourn. I have never had anyone to mourn. So I don't know where this sadness is coming from. As well as I don't feel dread often. Normally it's when something bad is coming my way, and even then it's rare for me to feel dread. Last night I woke up at three in the morning practically bawling my eyes out. My dad had gone downstairs for something to drink. And as I knew he was awake, I went downstairs to talk to him. He goes and sits on the couch and turns the TV on. I make some tea. And as I'm doing so, I could feel whatever had been watching me when I had been letting the dog out again. But this time, I knew it wasn't Gabe or Lizzie, and no one else really goes into the kitchen. Couldn't see Gabe anywhere, and I knew that Lizzie was watching over the new kitten that we had. I'd seen her standing near the bed. So I just brushed it off his nerves because how I'd woken up. Until I saw it. Our back door has a frosted window, and I swear on my life there was this inhumanly tall, stick-like shadow figure that was standing on the other side, staring. Blankly staring. I rush out, tell my dad... He watches me panic and break down. Didn't sleep for the rest of that night. I had been trying to talk to Lizzie or any kind of the spirits, but they keep ignoring me and it's not like they've just disappeared, because I've seen them all walk into my room. They would walk in with these sad long faces and stare at me while shaking their heads. Not even Gabriel, who's always by my side, talked to me. Had to let the dogs out a little while ago. Didn't. I refused to open the door. My mother yelled at me and said I was overthinking. Yet I know deep down she's just trying to brush it off as being a displaced spirit. We get those often. Yet it doesn't really explain anything, like at all. When we first moved in, we had an old outhouse. We were going to renovate it into a playhouse for me and my siblings. 
for some reason, my parents decided against it. So I did ask, and my mom just said, because there's something in there, it's probably a good time to mention that we're not allowed in the backyard. And I finally figured out why. Because there's something out there. Something is in my backyard, and I'm pretty sure it wants me gone, because it knows I can see it. It knows I know. I'm absolutely terrified. My dad thought it was just some anxiety, and he starts taking the dog out in the backyard again. A few minutes ago, me and my sister went downstairs to get a drink. My dad asked if we'd let the dog out. I told him I'd rather let her out the front. He told me to get over it, just let her out the back. My sister said we'd be fine, as nothing had happened to us, so I let the dog out. As I did, I told it that it wasn't welcome to touch me, Alice, or Luna, that it wasn't to enter the house and to leave us be. As I'm doing so, both me and Alice hear scratching on the kitchen window. Now the window is kind of too high for a dog to reach. Because of her paws, it would sound a lot different than, well, that. So we both started freaking out. Calm down quite quickly, trying to remind myself that all it can do is scare me. Alice is making a cross with her fingers and reciting Bible passages, which I guess it didn't like, because it went to go get my phone, and, or I went to go get my phone. I left the kitchen for a minute, and as I enter the kitchen, Alice asks me, Did you hear that? I ask her what she's on about, and she tells me, I just heard two knocks on the window. I get the dog back in and I repeat what I had said the first time. We tell my dad and he just tells us to be quiet and go to bed. So we both go back upstairs. Me and Alice talk about it and she tells me, even when I've let Luna out after sun goes down, nothing happens. That's the first time I've heard any kind of sound. Which makes me think whatever this is doesn't like me or can't do anything without my energy as physics and mediums tend to give off more energy than your average Joe. I'm planning to go down to the little witchcraft shaft at some point this week for sage and some obsidian. I'm planning to sage out by the door and place obsidian by the door, both outside and inside. We made them mad by moving. I grew up in a large farmhouse in Indiana. The house and 200 plus acres of farmland had been passed down through the family. It was like this since its original settlement of the area by my pioneer ancestors. Things would happen here and there. But everything hit the fan when my family hit hard times and we were forced to sell the house and the majority of the property. In the last three months before moving out, the activity became so bad that it's making me cry writing this. First, it started with growling. If you sat at the dining room table, the chair facing the entryway, you could hear distinct growling like a dog. My sister first noticed it sitting at the table with me doing homework. You could only hear it if you sat in that chair. Not stand, not next to, had to be in that chair. My sister looked up at me and started scolding me, saying I didn't let the dogs out. I told her, I don't hear it, and the dogs were outside. I had to get up and open the basement doors and the entryway door to prove her that the dogs were outside. She talked about it all the time, but she could hear it. Then she stopped sitting in that chair. Me, being the little opportunist, decided once to sit in her chair at the table alone. Ten seconds and I could hear the growling, low, mean, animalistic growling. The feeling of someone watching from the entryway where the sound was. Then lights and TVs would turn on by themselves. Things moving from where you left them and general awful feelings. 
One day after school, I took a left over out and meet the dogs. Excuse me. <laughs> One day after school, I took leftover meat out to the dogs. My personal dog was a Pomeranian, small, cute, not a mean bone in her. She was very submissive and always wanted to play and cuddle. I saw her lying on her stomach, seeming to be sleeping. She was facing a fence. I went up to her and knew that when she didn't respond to her name, something was wrong. I went to pick her up and couldn't. She didn't budge because one of the fence stakes was skewered through her mouth deep into the ground so she was pinned. It wasn't through her head. It was as if someone got her mouth open, pulled the stake out, and speared her through her tongue and bottom jaw into the ground. I swear this is true. We didn't have any neighbors, and I don't know anyone sick enough to spear a five-pound friendly dog into the ground. The pen was also in her backyard right up next to the house. I screamed and was hysterical to the point that my sister called my mom, who was working, and sent my grandma over to the house to see and comfort me. She was in complete shock. Words can't describe the hurt this caused me. To lose my dog this way was seemingly no reason. Things continued and started only staying in the house for a few days a week. My older sister was there alone sometimes to care for the pets while we went with my mom to another state where she was working. My sister would call my mom, losing her mind. Doors and cabinets would either all be open by the time she got home from school. Police didn't know what to do or think. There was no signs of break-ins. Plus, at this point, we all knew it wasn't anything normal. On the second to last right in the house, my mom, well, I think they meant night. On the second to last night at the house, my mom had me go around and make sure all of the lights were off before bed. Again, the house was pretty big, and we had been parking and cleaning all day. There was a small TV in the bathroom off the dining room. I found it turned on to TV fuzz, but no lights on. I turned on the light, walked over, turned off the TV, got to the doorway, and it was back on. Fucking ran up to my mom and grandma, who didn't want to hear it anymore, insisted I go back and make it stay off. My grandma came with me this time, and sure enough, I did it again as soon as we turned to walk out, and it was on again. Grandma told whatever was there to stop in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the TV obeyed this time and stayed off. The last night in the house was when we all experienced the raw power of whatever was mad at us. Things felt weird going up to bed. I think about 10 to 15 minutes went by and I couldn't sleep. I could feel something about to happen. Suddenly all the kitchen cabinets downstairs went nuts, banging open and closed. My older sister came into my room and was like, See? Come sleep in my room. We all ran back to her room, cabinets still going. Then they stopped. We heard my mom talking down there. Both got up to go to her. She was sitting in a chair in the kitchen looked up at us like we were interrupting her. She was talking to whatever was there. She believed her angry family, telling them why we had to leave and scolding them for making things so hard for us. I didn't think my mom even believed in ghosts until then. I was in awe of her strength to face them like they weren't fucking ghosts, entities, or demons, what have you. We left scared, still talk about it together, but it's hard. We can't forget, but I don't know if we would want to. I've been obsessed with ghosts in the afterlife since leaving, mostly just to validate it to myself that we're not having some crazy family hysteria episode. Something followed me home. 
Let me start by saying this story is 100% true. Every time I tell it or think about it, I get goosebumps. I'll spare you some time and avoid the lengthy post of details and hit the key points. A few years back, my son and I visited a historic landmark near our home. It's at Nima Collin Castle in Brownsville, Pennsylvania, to be exact. I personally have had experiences with ghosts in the past, and I wasn't opposed to having experience at the castle. It was well known that it was quite active. It was featured on My Ghost Story, if you're familiar with the show. For the intro, the tour guide told us about the history of the castle, the family that had lived there, the tragedies as well. I'll admit, I forget some of the other details, but I remember her encouraging photos from people on the tour. She mentioned that the possibility of capturing ghosts and mentioned the shadow man that's often photographed. Moving along, we went throughout the castle, from the top level to the bottom. There were a few rooms I had feelings in, but no sightings. However, I think they're worth mentioning. Room number one. We were taken to a nursery. It was furnished, and it had been way back, and it was occupied by the original owners. The story was that a child there had lived in the home had passed away suddenly, and her playful spirit remained. I believed it to be true, because prior to the story, I swore I had heard a child laughing. Room number two. This room has large windows and a small bed off to the side. The moment I walked into the room, I imagined a woman laying in that bed, older and slowly fading away. Her deathbed, if you will. The tour guide proceeds to tell us a story about a woman who lived in the room. I had to ask, Ma'am, what's her story? She replied, Well, she passed away in this room. She actually died in that spot right there in her bed. At this point, I'm thinking, Okay, I'm in tune with the spirits here expecting an experience. There were many other rooms, but besides being creepy, I don't have much to say on them, so I'm skipping those details. We took several pictures, as everybody does, when you visit a haunted house or a hospital or something. We even had the tour guide take a photo of the two of us. I didn't review any of the photos until going home, as I was mostly concerned with enjoying the tour. When we left, we discussed our time in the car. We exchanged our eerie feelings confirming this place was indeed haunted, and wishing we had seen something, maybe. That night my son went to sleep, and my wife and I were laying in bed watching TV. We were discussing the tour, and I heard a man's voice outside of her bedroom window. The window was closed, and it was winter time, but the voice was so loud from screaming I could hear that, You shouldn't be here. Are you out of your mind? I then heard another man yell, There's nothing you can do actually became irritated and opened the door of the balcony to go out and tell those men to stop arguing in the middle of the night by my home. I'm telling you guys, when I opened that door to find complete silence out there and nobody standing around, all of the hair on my body stood up. I knew something was going on. There was no way these men just ran off. I would have seen them. The street was too long both ways and my house stood alone. I heard arguing and two seconds later complete silence didn't make sense. My wife was pretty spooked, but I told her no worries, they must have left. So we decided to get some sleep. In the middle of the night, I had an experience that was just insane. I was having a nightmare that a man was attacking my wife and she was so upset and frantic and calling for my help and I was fighting this man off. Now sure that we all have nightmares, but here's the kicker. I woke up, but I could move. I was experiencing sleep paralysis. All I could hear was my wife next to me crying and trying to speak, but her voice sounded muffled. So I'm fighting this weight on me, and I, so I can try to help her. I finally can move, and I kiss her on the forehead and tell her it's okay and that I'm here. Look over the clock. It's 3 a.m., and without missing a beat, she says, I was having a nightmare. This man was attacking me, and you fought him off, but when I woke up, my body was stuck, and I couldn't move. I could look around the room, but I couldn't speak. I kept yelling for you, but nothing would come out. That right there freaked me out so bad that we both had the same nightmare and experience of the same sleep paralysis. I knew it was something from this place that we visited. Something bad followed me home. I finally got out of bed after talking to my wife, with no intention of going back to sleep. I offered to go get us both some water. I returned to bed and we continued talking until somehow we both drifted back to sleep. The next morning at breakfast we were just silent still freaked out. 
wondering if this was going to be an ongoing thing. My son comes down to join us and he says, Mom, when did you leave my room last night? My wife looks at him strange and says, What? I wasn't in your room last night. He kind of laughs and says, Yeah, okay, Mom, you definitely were, because I remember waking up and you laying down in my bed, rubbing my hair and kissing my forehead. It was like 3 a.m. exactly. I felt your hair when I rolled over, and then I went back to sleep. Listen, y'all, when he told us that I almost lost my mind, so you're telling me the exact same time we were being haunted, something appeared to our son in the form of my wife? Like, listen, I don't understand at all, but to this day it freaks me out. It's even crazier. Later that day, I looked through the photos I took, and there was a picture of me and my son with a shadow man, super tall, in between us. So at this point, I'm like, man, I gotta make this thing go away. My wife kept complaining about weird stuff happening in the house, and I promise you our house would be so dark inside. Even with the blinds open, it seemed like light wouldn't shine in. It got so bad that one day I just got fed up. I was home alone, and I remember yelling like a crazy person, saying, You're not welcome here. Mess with my family. It's not okay. This home's protected by the Lord. <laughs> I had enough at this point. Shortly after this huge weight was lifted off my shoulders and the home, light was shining in as it had prior. It was crazy to me. So there you have it. The craziest experience I could ever have, and I'll never forget it. Until I die, it will always be with me. I still want to know who it was and why doesn't make sense. It's attached to her. This story that happened about five or six years ago with the girl O was dating. I've always been sensitive to the paranormal as a kid. I used to see shadow figures in my childhood home, and from a kid till about 19, I had experiences around that house, and my aunt's house who lived right behind us, and the land was connected. So yeah, they traveled frequently. Sorry I'm rambling, but if you want to hear about those stories after this one, let me know. But anyway, here we go. So I went to high school with this girl and always had a bit of a crush on her. But our paths never really crossed like that. But fast forward to 2014. We linked up and it was magical at first. We spent so much time together it was insane. We talked about everything, including the paranormal. I shared stories. She shared some, including her telling me that she was being haunted by an entity. Like, I firmly believe in and have had so many experiences with the paranormal that I didn't think it was, well, that serious, but boy, was I wrong. It started off subtle. Me and her would spend time together, we would lose time, which is a no-no when it comes to the paranormal. Once we took a nap holding each other and when we woke up, we were sore. Like, I mean, running like three marathons sore. Later that same week, she was about to leave my house like normal. Well, I had opened the door for her. We were saying a final goodbye. And, like, something slammed into the door. Keep in mind, no one was home but us. We were in the middle of the room making out, as you do when no one was outside in a lived apartment complex, top apartment. Our neighbors had moved out three weeks prior. Someone lived next to us and it was in the middle of a school day. So all the kids around there were in school. Besides, there's nothing thrown at the door. And if someone did, I guess it ran or else we would have seen them. Before I go any further, one thing I forgot to mention is she could see it that she wasn't able to see it. Excuse me? She could see it. She was always able to see it. Okay. She could see it, and she was always able to see it. I only was able to feel its presence in the beginning, anyway. So, continuing to the next incident, it happened at her house. 
We were getting a bit frisky. Her idea, I swear, but anyways, we were doing our thing and I felt uneasy like someone was watching us. She stayed in the middle of nowhere and it was like 2 a.m. Well, as we were holding each other, I asked her, was it here? She says, yes, points to the corner of the room. And she said it appeared as soon as we came into the room. My skin was crawling after she said that. Later that night or morning, when I was about to leave, we were sitting in my car. We were just talking. She fell asleep while I was holding her. She was only asleep for maybe three minutes or so before she snapped awake and said it's angry. And I swear to God, Courtney, this huge shadow figure came walking by my driver's side window. I'm six foot three. This thing would have towered over me. And do you know how when you're sitting in a turning lane waiting for the light to change, and you sort of, you know, turn like a semi drives by you and your car shakes from the G-force? Well, as the entity went by my car, it felt just like that. The next instant, we were about to go out by our bar with our best friend and her boyfriend, too. I had just gotten off work. I had to come home and shower and, well, change before we go. Well, they picked me up at work, which was in a different town and county than where I live. And But when we pulled into my apartment complex, there was a shadow figure and it was waiting as we turned in. And before somebody says, maybe you were just seeing things, the driver, which was the boyfriend of my girlfriend's best friend, said, There goes the ghost. We were all very shook because we were just in a whole other county. And here it is, just waiting for her at my house. <sighs> the last instant, this was the last paranormal thing to happen before we broke up. Her ex upset her really bad one night. Backstory, they have kids together. So them talking was very normal. Continuing on it like storming really bad, I was pleading with her to just come over and stay the night at my house. She had finally complied, and she came over, and it was like 12 a.m. at this point. We ate some junk food, watched a movie, fell asleep. I wasn't awake for this. She told me that at some point she had said she heard like tapping on my bedroom door and a voice which sounded like her mom telling her to come out of the room. Now her mom... One, didn't know where I lived. Two, she was in Ohio visiting a sick relative. And now, oh, by the way, we were in Florida. So, assuming that my girlfriend told her mom where I lived and also lied about her being out of state, and also gave her a key to my house somehow, or just made this whole thing up, which I also don't know why she would. We weren't even talking about that entity that night. Thanks for checking this out. See you next time. What the hell happened to me? Was I really sleepwalking or was it something else? This happened around somewhere between the ages of 9 and 11. My mother, little sister, and I used to live in another city, but would come back down to our hometown every weekend. We would stay at my grandmother's house. Bit of backstory. I've always been scared of my grandmother's house. Bit hard to explain as I never really saw anything in her house. Just would always feel this horrible fear. It would be in the pit of my stomach like something bad was about to happen. Prior to us moving to another city, I would stay down at my grandma's house a lot, especially around the weekends as a child. She had two bedrooms upstairs, but had a bed downstairs in the living room because it was difficult for her to climb the stairs. I would always share my grandma's bed downstairs. I was too scared to sleep upstairs. Even after we had moved and all three of us would come down to visit and stay the weekend, my mother and 
sister would sleep upstairs, but I still refused to sleep upstairs with them. I always slept with my grandma. Never really had any issues other than breaking out in a cold sweat from fear. But this night was different. Bit more backstory is prominent to the story. I have an older sister who wasn't living with us and still lived in our hometown. She was meant to be coming down the next day to visit us. This is where it starts to get strange. I remember sitting up and getting out of the bed in the middle of the night, thinking that my sister was outside. The weird thing is, it was almost as if something was speaking to me, through me. I could have sworn I was talking to myself out loud. I got up and said, Big Sis is outside. And then I had to open the door to her. So I started walking, making my way to the front door. Another backstory. This is the last one, I promise. So my grandma's house layout was a bit odd. She had another room that we called the front room the front door was. So it kind of went front door, front room, living room. I hated the front room because it had faulty wiring. Didn't mind it during the day, but during the evening and night, I loathed it. It would always be, well, I would always be told to go in there and grab something for someone. I'd run in, turn on a light, and quickly try to grab whatever I needed to get and run out mostly due to the faulty wiring, but every time you turn on the light, it would go out for a few seconds. And when it did, it would literally freeze, and I would be frozen in fear. Then a few seconds later, it would come back on. All of this along with my fear of the entire house. I hated this room especially. So, going back to the story. As I'm making my way through the living room, I start approaching the front room. That's when fear starts setting in. It was pitch black in the front room, and I really didn't want to go in there as I was scared of the room, especially at night, like I said. So I tried my best to stop myself from entering the front room, but I had no control over my body. It was like I was a puppet on strings. The only thing I could move slightly were my eyeballs. So, by now I had made my way to the end of the front room. I unlocked the front door, opened it, stepped out, briefly looked around and searched my older sister. I think this must have been around autumn or winter time because a big gust of wind blew in my face and I regained control over my body. As soon as that had all happened, my grandma came frantically running out after me to bring me back into the house. They then started hiding the front door keys from me. Here's what confuses me the most. I've never had a history of sleepwalking. I've never sleepwalked prior to the situation, and I never sleepwalked after. It was only ever this once. Another thing that confuses me is that I always was under the assumption that sleepwalkers are really, well, never really aware of what's going on. When I feel like I was the most part aware, I just couldn't do anything about it as it wasn't in my control. Another thing I think might be worth mentioning, although this might be reaching and it might just sound insane within itself, it's that black magic is practiced a lot within my family. It doesn't help that my mother's sisters doesn't really get along well and probably all do weird-ass spells against each other for their own personal gains. The relationship between their mother, my grandma, was also a bit sticky. They would all compete against one another to be her favorite, so my grandmother's house was probably Hogwarts. This incident has always been on my mind, and I've always wondered what to do and what actually was happening to me because deep down, I've always never believed it was just sleepwalking. 
whether it's something paranormal or something to do with black magic or witchcraft, or just some sleeping disorder that I'm not aware I have or had, maybe just got activated due to stress. Connected mentally to aliens, or beings from another dimension, and saw proof in 3D normal physical plane. I'm 24 years old, and since when I was born, I was always interested in the philosophy of mind religions and why they exist. I was always a rational scientific person, until when I was 23 years old. Little backstory first. My vision has always been extremely good, never wore glasses or lenses, always a very visual person, one of those guys who constantly stops to look at trees because, like many of you I'm sure, I recognize the sacredness in everything. I was always quite spiritual, without even knowing what the spirit even is. I always felt also that my session of free thinking were guided by someone that wasn't me. Since when I was a kid, I always used my imagination, and I always was interested about the first person experience, mostly because I feel like the realms of philosophy and religion and science will one day merge. So, since I was a kid, I always used my mind for what it is, a viewer. I always felt kind of guided in my thinking. I would see images, concepts, answers to questions I had about society and religion and so on. I always felt like I knew something else before my birth, but never paid much attention to these thoughts, telling myself they weren't really real. When I was 21, I finally started to take meditation more seriously, and my exploration into my mind received a great upgrade. At 23 years old, I started to realize that the UFO phenomenon, to which I had always felt attracted to, was probably real. One day I was discussing this with my family at dinner. Of course, the members of my family were kind of surprised by the subject because they always saw me as maybe a more smart person and UFOs are for crazy people according to popular belief. So mentally I told my guides in my mind, I said, if you really exist, and I'm not talking to myself right now, that means you can listen to this. And if you can listen to this, you can show yourself to me. Now if you do, I will give my life to this cause. If you do not, I'll get family and I will presume that I should do what my human peers tell me. Materialize on this physical plane so I can see with my own eyes. Or the party's over and I'll forget you forever. Next morning I was up at 4.30 in the morning. I didn't use cannabis the night before, so I was completely sober. I went upstairs and made a coffee. I had the intention of working out. I started to walk toward the park and not even a minute into the walk, I see my first UFO in my life. It was 5.02 in the morning of the 23rd of September of 2021. My heart started racing. I knew that they were them, my guides. I saw these four lights in the sky flying very fast in formation. Then the formation broke and they spiraled amongst themselves. They disappeared one after another, extremely fast, extremely close, and almost magical. Absolutely no sound at all. And it couldn't be a satellite. I always look up and always know what I'm looking at. After some months of realizations, I asked them in my head to give me the answers of what this place, Earth, is. They told me mentally. Alien interview from Roswell Crash, written by Matilda. 
I didn't know the book or its title before asking, of course. They didn't really tell me with words, but more like with images. I found the book and read it, and I was floored. I still don't know if these aliens are manipulating us and me, and they're actually enemies. But they're so subtle, and they respect our free will so much that they don't give me this impression. It feels like they want to help us all. In the book, they basically told us that we're immortal spiritual beings, and that we're trapped here because we're imprisoned. You cannot kill one like us, so you can only trap them. In the book, my favorite quote is, I sense your disbelief about you being a spiritual being. You want the proof of that? Be above your head now. For the first moment of my life, I realized the obvious. I am not my head or my body. I became aware that air, the alien, is an immortal spiritual being, and so are we all. Basically, according to Errol, we cannot remember our past lives because the people controlling Earth makes us go toward light that erases your spiritual awareness. And then on Earth, through mind control and false memories installed by the people we love, they ensure we cannot remember who we are and where we come from. Read the book before dismissing it, as it's kind of written in the preface. What is true for you, is true for you. Possessed Haunted Mirror and House I used to live in a house with my parents, which both myself and my parents had very strange experiences in. However, my parents didn't let me know that they had them, and so they didn't want to spook me any further. My room was particularly bad with the activities that used to happen, and this would be all the time. Just to name a few experiences. There was someone knocking on my door, saying my name when everyone was asleep. My guitar plectrum, which is a pick, was thrown at me from across the room and my guitar was often strung, all six strings, all at the same time. Obviously, if a string goes out of tune, sometimes one will strum, but all six was definitely no accident. Anyway, I've had this antique mirror for as long as I can remember. It was a past relative's, and I always used to notice handprints and fingerprints on it even though I never touched it that much. They were everywhere from top to bottom. My parents, obviously not wanting to let me know that they were also aware of the paranormal things going on, said to me, don't worry about it. It'll probably was just me touching it. Maybe I was just a mistake I was making. They seemed so sure that this was the case that I forced myself not to think about it and I would carry on as if nothing weird was happening, which was very hard as something was definitely going on. Eventually, my mom told me that she was also concerned about my mirror and needed to speak to me about something. She'd seen, other than handprints, something else was there. She never showed me the photo that she took because she didn't want to scare me, but she said in the prints on the mirror, was a perfect face of a devil. She showed my dad and his friend this before taking a photo, and despite them not wanting to believe in this side of things, they both could see it. Obviously, I didn't know how to react, and thought perhaps something was after me. I mean, who knows? Mom decided to get some advice. So she had gone to a shop near me called Spellbound, they sold things of all types, but mainly they were all to do with the supernatural types of things, healing and crystals. As you can imagine, the people who work there are all very aware of the spiritual world and the other different types of paranormal experiences, 
So my mom felt this was the best place to get some advice. She spoke to a guy there about my mirror. They said that they had a few options, which were as follows. Smashing the mirror completely to get rid of any negative energy. Moving the mirror away from the reflecting on me while I'm sleeping. Saging the room for me to wear a black tourmaline, either in a necklace or bracelet form to help protect me. I wasn't worried if we needed to smash the mirror, as I was pretty terrified by this point. However, my parents didn't want to do this, as it used to belong to one of my relatives who wasn't with us anymore. So, my mom brought me back the black tourmaline, and we went on from there. I still noticed the fingerprints and handprints, but not so much strange experiences, so I felt perhaps the tourmaline worked. Mom did go back to Spellbound and spoke to the same guy again regarding that. She thought maybe the tourmaline worked, but there's still handprints where he'd said again. Might just be worth smashing the mirror. He began to explain how mirrors can be portals for demons and another life, and by keeping the mirror, we could be potentially be letting them directly into my room, which, he cautioned, was extremely dangerous. My parents still didn't want to smash the mirror, typical. So I ended up taking it with me when I moved out a few months later with every intention to smash it in my own time without them knowing. Well, when I first moved in, I did use it now and then to get changed while I looked for a new mirror. But I would hang a towel over it when I wasn't using it. Anyways... One day my boyfriend put it up a bit higher in the bathroom to shave or something, I don't know. He made sure it was secured so it had no way of falling. I had put it in the same position before, and I can literally 999.99999% tell you it couldn't have fallen, but as you can probably tell, it did. He left it for literally a few seconds to grab a towel, and within that time, there was a huge bang, then a smash. The mirror had literally shattered into tiny pieces like, even if I wanted to repair it, which I definitely didn't, there would have been no possible way. To this day, I believe that some sort of guardian or angel or fate broke that mirror, because as soon as I moved in with the mirror, the flat felt uneasy, and as soon as we disposed of it, I felt so much better better living there. Whether whatever was attached to the mirror followed me to the flat when I took it, I don't know, but nevertheless, I am so glad I'm no longer dealing with that anymore. Please don't ask me about why I didn't smash it sooner. It's hard when you're under 18 living with family, trying to get your way, as I'm sure you're all aware. Creepy experiences that solidified my belief in the paranormal. I live on a reservation. I'm Lakota, Native American. There's quite a bit of superstition amongst our culture, which is normal. There's all kinds of stories told to us from generation to generation. So you can imagine the spookiness. Maybe you can't. I don't know. But essentially, we have good, tricky, and sort of negative spirits. We Wheelas are said to be little people who just mess with you, I guess. Little shadows you might be seeing darted around the room super fast. And other spirits who've been known to show their victims their melting face in dire times, usually. They seem to all serve a purpose. So I'm not going to lie and say I'm a skeptic because there's too much weird shit in this world that is just obvious. Oh, well, anyways, I didn't really get the vibe that one spirit visited the house. It felt like several coming and going over years. 
Never really felt evil or anything. But I guess over the time, it was a bit of a nuisance. Chairs would move on their own. Stuff would fall in the night. The usual shit that I tend to justify with common explainable things. But one experience was not explainable at all. It was when I was 14 or 15. My room in the basement, technically, but it was more of a split-level type house with the kitchen, living room, a couple of bedrooms upstairs. My room along with like five more rooms downstairs. It's the common cookie-cutter house you see on any res, but it was fairly large. I remember I was burning sage and sweet grass earlier that evening. That's a big thing in our culture, to cleanse and keep good energy. Some people say that sweet grass can bring about positive and negative spirits, but I really can't attest to how true that is. So I was dozing off with my little lamp on, but it was dead quiet. TV wasn't on for some reason. All of a sudden I woke up alert as fuck. Soon as I came to, I seen my bedroom door start opening very slowly. I was like, what the fuck? Kind of scanned the room, but my focus was immediately shifted back to the door. It felt like somebody was coming into my room. I fucking froze. Felt the spirit walk right up to the side of my bed. I was definitely spooked, but as I gained my courage, I looked around my room again, trying to rationalize this shit. But my window was closed, and in the middle of the night, our doors are all locked. There was no draft. I mean, there was no explanation like a sixth sense the same way animals react. Anyways, I feel like this is getting too long, so I just add that I feel like one of the spirits would mimic my family. Maybe more than one, I don't know. But one night, I was older and pregnant, I woke up to what sounded like a demonic vision of my mom. She was yelling my name. Shit definitely scarred me. So eventually moved out of my mama's house. Many years go by with no activity. Cut to January 2022. My hubby and kids are sleeping. I knew this because my kids are on the couches next to me. My husband said he's going to lay down because he wasn't feeling well. I'm working on drawing and open to YouTube. I forget to start a video. And if I recall correctly... The first, like, ten seconds of the video plays when you're just browsing. So that had happened. And now it was just on the main page on my TV. I sat there for maybe twenty minutes in utter silence. Despite our heater, and out of the fucking complete silence, I hear Brook, my name, clear as day. So I can scream bloody murder and immediately yell back, what? I was genuinely scared and seriously pissed thinking my husband was trying to scare me. But the thing was, is that voice came from very close to me in the kitchen, not even ten feet away, and the voice sounded exactly like my own, as if I was trying to sound masculine, like it was deliberately trying to scare me. I stood and yelled again for my husband. No answer. I looked at my kids to see if they were up or talking in their sleep, as they often do that, but nope. I got up and walked to the back of her house to where my husband was on the bed, sound asleep. What the fuck? I woke him up and asked him if he was just messing with me, but he was genuinely sick, said he was passed out the whole time. Man, that shit shook me up. But oh well, I guess. I mean, what else can you say? The most we'll ever know about other realms will come when we pass on. Until I think there's no explanation. I'm not looking for answers or anything. And if you don't believe, I understand.
I work security for a hundred-year-old hotel, and I've seen some strange things. For context, I'm highly skeptical, but no stranger to the paranormal. I'm the type that believes demons exist. But most ghost stories are overreactions of easily explained phenomena or simple hoaxes. About three months ago, I started working security for a hotel that was built back in the 1920s by a major hotel chain that changed hands multiple times. And it's now owned by one of the biggest hotel chains around. I'm not saying which, so the company can't sue me. Nice. Now, from what I've been told, paranormal activity is not a common occurrence in the hotel. But some years back, the Make-A-Wish Foundation started sending some children here. Because, well, it's a major resort, one of the most popular beaches on the East Coast. Why wouldn't they? However, the hotel was not informed of this, and didn't realize what was happening until several children died in their rooms over the course of a few weeks. Supposedly, on quiet nights, you can hear children playing with a ball in the North Tower. For years, guests complained of children playing ball loudly next to their rooms. Even when security would check, there would be no one there. This hasn't happened in a while. Going into this story, you should understand that my opinion on the cause of what I've seen may be warped by being told this story. Now every shift we do a floor check, especially on night shift when I work. First, I never noticed anything strange. Got a little creeped out by the quiet of the floors at night, but nothing supernatural. The hotel has two separate towers separated by a restaurant and shopping area that connects them. About a month into the job and suddenly I started feeling like something was following me on my floor checks, especially in the ST which is the biggest and tallest where I understand most jumpers choose, because of all of the rooms facing the ocean have sliding glass doors with a short railing in front. You can put the rest together from there. Anyway, it got really bad in October. Maybe the spooky season had an effect on me, but this feeling of being watched and followed never went away. As the weeks had gone on, I started seeing distorted faces and windows as I passed by to the point I no longer looked at them. The floor pattern sometimes reflected on the glass, and the mind could easily make a face with the pattern. But some of these faces were up further on the glass, where this wouldn't have really been possible. When I focus up there, sometimes I can almost hear whispers in the back of my mind, urging me to commit suicide or lambasting me for the mistakes I've made, or even telling me insecurities I have about myself I've never told anyone about. In the last few weeks, some strange physical and auditory phenomena have occurred. Part of what we do on floor checks is close doors that we find open. Some of the doors lately have been more difficult to close. One in particular I had to use all my strength to slam shut. The ice machines on each floor sometimes make a banging noise while in operation, so I usually attribute any noise I hear from the vending area to that. But sometimes it almost just sounded like something was rummaging in the garbage cans. When I'd go to investigate, I'd hold my keys so they wouldn't jingle in case it was a person. And as soon as I do, the rummaging noise will stop. On a couple of occasions, I felt what I can only describe as hands touching me while closing curtain doors. Certain doors. Sometimes just a tickle, and other times a brush against the back of my hand. Even a feeling like someone on the other side of the door is pulling it in the opposite direction against me. I now dread the floor checks, especially after 3 a.m., I'm not trying to make this seem scarier than it is, but these things intensify the closer it gets to that hour. Whatever they are, they aren't friendly, and I think they know I can sense them. They really don't like that I can sense them. Like some nights that watched and followed this feeling is more like a burning hatred directed toward my existence, like being stalked by an enemy or a predator. I'm pretty religious. Whenever these things happen, I always pray to God, 
when I do, it usually goes away, whatever it is. Scariest thing, though, was the last time it was that intense I heard something growl next to my ear. Never been hurt by them, so my assumption is they can't hurt anyone physically. But they try to communicate often and want their presence acknowledged. Almost as though that's where their power comes from. My grandmother told me once that demons truly have no power. They're only capable of whatever we believe them to be capable of. My mounting fear is feeding them whatever they like. My experiences could just be me seeing things or looking too much into something completely unexplainable. I don't know. This is just what I've seen and heard. Whatever it is that's haunting me at night, my co-workers don't know about it. Or at least they aren't telling anyone. I am bipolar, but medicated. I've never had hallucinations. Maybe I'm just crazy and seeing things. But if that's the case, why am I not having any other signs of a manic episode or psychosis? Why am I only seeing things in that one part of the building? My Very Unexplained Previous House This all would have taken place roughly 10 to 11 years ago, over a period of two years. We had moved into this older house in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates after living in another house in a city for two years. It was a creepy house very normal and in a pretty populated area that was gaining more popularity. The house was quite old, built well on the outside and made from concrete, but showing its age on the inside. I never felt anything weird about the house, just annoyed at how often a pipe would leak or paint would need to be touched up. However, I very vividly remember two moments in that house. First, I was sleeping in my sister's room with my sister and mother. I must have been around ten years old, my sister being five. I didn't like sleeping alone, and neither did my sister, so we often shared rooms with her parents. I remember randomly waking up in the middle of the night, no idea why. After a few minutes of lying there awake, I would hear a surprisingly loud female scream. It scared me woke my mother and said, Do you hear that scream? To which she would respond, It was probably just the cats. There were many stray cats that lived in the area, but I knew it wasn't cats. It sounded as if a woman was screaming briefly and definitely sounded as if it came from inside the house and it wasn't our cat. He'll be asleep with my dad. I eventually fell asleep again, didn't bring it up, never found out what that was. Secondly, one night I was lying in bed with my dad and my mom in another room with my sister. I was trying to fall asleep and my dad was reading a book. We then both heard what sounded like a large plastic container being dropped. Me and my dad got up to investigate. My sister and mother were asleep and there was nothing noticeable that had fallen. My dad explained that it was probably her cat that had knocked something over. We went to bed and the next day I basically ignored the experience again. Didn't talk about it. But we never found any signs of something falling over. After two years in the house and no other events happening to me, we moved to another house in the same area. It was newer and bigger. Nothing happened again. But a few years later, I bring up my story to my mom one day, who then reveals that I wasn't the only one to experience strange things in that house. She explains how one night when me and my sister were sleeping in our own rooms, my dad had gone to bed to read a book, while my mom stayed in the living room to finish a cup of tea. My dad was lying on his side reading, when he vividly remembers feeling my mother get into bed with him, he even said, you finish that tea quickly. 
that when he turned around, no one was there. My mother was still drinking tea in the living room, and me and my sister were asleep in our own rooms. He struggled to fall asleep that night. Another time, my mom's friend had come over to meet my mom and see the house for the first time, while me and my sister were at school. My father was at work. My mom's friend, we'll call her Linda, was sitting on the living room while my mom was making coffee for the two of them. Linda then sees my father walk up the stairs to the second floor. She greets my dad. Let's call him John. Hey, John. Good to see you. My mom comes out of the kitchen with coffee and questions who Linda was talking to. Linda says she was greeting my father. But my mother explained how my father was at work. No one else was in the house. Linda was adamant she saw a man walk up to the second floor. My mom and her go upstairs to check, find no one there. Linda left immediately and took a few months before she would come back. Finally, the scariest of them all. My mom was watching my sister while I was at a friend's house. My dad was at work. My sister was playing in her room while my dad, or excuse me, my mom read a book in the same room. My mom got up briefly to go to the kitchen to pack some stuff away. When she gets back, my sister is coloring with some crayons. My mom's confused as she keeps the crayons at the top shelf in the cupboard with the door closed. Because my sister went through crayons crazy fast. She asked my sister where she got the crayons, to which my sister replied. The man gave them to me. My mom was alone in the house and had left my four-year-old sister alone for only two minutes. This freaked my mother out a lot. She never told me about it. Told anyone, really. After moving out, many of our friends told my parents of how they disliked coming to our house. They couldn't say why, but said it had a strange feeling to it. My mom never told me about the instance, as to perhaps not scare me. Ten years later, we haven't experienced anything ever again. But we all still very much remember and dislike talking about that house. Friend I had over summer might have been imaginary. When I was 11, we moved to California, near the Yosemite area. Lots of forest and small lakes where I lived. I moved right around when summer was ending and school was starting. So I took a bit to get settled and get used to everything. Summer rolled around the next year. My family's pushing me to get out of the house and do something besides staying inside and playing games all day. There was a lake with lots of dirt paths and such that was easy to explore, so I'd go around there a bit and just walk around. Especially this one spot that had a cool little waterfall into a smaller lake from the bigger lake of that area. But one of these days I'm walking to the lake, and I spot someone by the waterfall. She's a girl around my age, orange hair, freckles, and an accent I wasn't really able to understand at the time, which I think was a Tennessee accent. I've always been horrible with names, but I remember her name being a very common one. Something like Alice or Casey or something like that. As a young kid, I never really had crushes on girls. Most of the time, if it was a friend or someone, them being a guy or girl didn't change much of how I interacted with them. And she was definitely the same way, because we immediately got along. I remember us going to the lake and just walking around a lot. We talked a lot about living in Washington, what school was like and video games, something I could tell went right over her head. She said she was visiting her grandma over the summer at a house down the road from mine. I remember I had her number saved, so I'd text her whenever I was planning to go on a walk. She'd meet me at the end of the driveway of the house that she was at. I remember her saying her grandma didn't want her going to my place, which was understandable. I'm a stranger to this woman, and so would my family. But Alice didn't want me to come and visit the grandma either, which I remember feeling weird. I remember my friend Eric, who lived near the lake that would come by, wanted to come with me to walk around. 
Alice told me that she'd rather just be the two of us. Maybe it was because she didn't know him, but she would only come with me on these walks alone. I remember one time we walked out a bit further than usual, one of these dirt paths I was telling you before. This one was a bit awkward because of a kind of a high incline on this hill. She'd have to pull me up for us to walk around and jump down when we walked back. Well, cut to near the end of summer, she's still hanging out with me, even meeting me on the end of my driveway. I remember one time I was having trouble finding my jeans, so I didn't get cut in the bushes. And we walked past and told my mom before she went to work to tell Alice that I was going to be a little bit late. I'll explain in a bit why this is important. On our last day walking around, we went to the rock that kind of overlooked the lake that we just kind of sat at. I remember she was talking about her family and how she much preferred being there in California than where she was from. Something I don't remember if she ever told me specifically or not. Well, I said bye to her and said I'd try to meet her at her house before she took off. I never did. I think I was forced to go to school or school shopping that day. So I sent her a text telling her she didn't seem upset, though. I don't know if I just never checked in with her or if I'd forgotten her, but I never saved her contact. It was an old flip phone my parents had given me at the time when I was so young, and they didn't have good texting or calling plans at that time. Cut to a good while later, like 2021. A lot of drama's happening in my family, which I won't go into, but topics about my childhood and how I was treated or being brought up. I asked my mom about that year being forced to go outside more, and if that was her decision or my father's. Spoiler, it was my father's. I brought up how it wasn't bad, though, and that I had Alice to hang out with. That sparked a bit of nostalgic happiness I hadn't felt in a while, thanks to how bad that in the previous year was for us. Well, my mom dropped would tell me something that I would continue to think back on over and over again. That imaginary girl you walk around the lake with? I immediately thought she was fucking with me, but she looked serious, and thought that the time I asked her to tell Alice I was going to take a while, that I was talking about an imaginary friend, because she claimed she never saw anyone when she went down the driveway. I know I had interacted with this girl, I know I had gone with her to this lake many times, but I never ever thought about how I was the only person who ever saw her. Never my friend Eric or his brother who sometimes went to the lake with me. Not my family, not even met her grandma. I can't confirm if I'd even had this girl's number, or if I'd even ever texted her. It threw me off a good bit, but then I remembered one thing that made me know I was right and she was real. One time in July when I was walking with Alice to the lake, my grandma had stopped to give me a soda while she was heading to the house to give Dad something. Well, when I had next talked to Grandma, I'd brought it up. Didn't know what I was talking about. Not until I brought up Alice. Oh yeah, I remember. Your dad always brought it up how you and some girl would walk around the lake. And I thought it was cute. Weird that he thought it was a real girl and not one of your imaginary friends. This shit still rocks me to the core. There's no fucking way that I imagined all this. I still have no idea what she could mean by one of your imaginary friends. If I ever found that old phone, if I even still have it in a box somewhere... I'm getting to the bottom of this. She has to be real. Otherwise, who the fuck else have I been imagining this whole time? Strange experience in an old Italian home. So I want to preface this story by saying that I don't fully believe in ghosts. What I encountered was truly weird. I can't really explain it to this day. I'm about 99% sure what I experienced was paranormal. Also, that the happenings in this house only occurred for about two weeks until we had the house cleansed by someone. I'll explain later. From 2019 to 2021, I served at Aviano Air Base in Northern Italy in the United States Air Force. During my time there, I moved in a house with a close friend of mine from tech school and his wife. We moved into an old house in the small town of Gaias. G-I-A-I-S. I'm not Italian. I'm going to call it Gaius. 
And this house is where he went from not believing ghosts exist at all to becoming almost positive that they do. I still don't fully believe because I don't think any of us truly have an answer for the weird shit that happened around us sometimes. And I won't claim to know exactly what it was that was going on in that house. The first few weeks in the house were normal. After that first week had passed, I started having very intense nightmares every night. I do not remember what these nightmares were about, probably for the better. All I remember is waking up with sleep paralysis most of those nights, and that I do remember. Every time I have sleep paralysis, as soon as I realize what's happening, like clockwork, I get a quiet whooshing sound in my ears. It progressively gets louder until almost deafeningly so. On one occasion, I remember waking up in a cold sweat and not being able to move. The whooshing sound starts. When it gets to the point of being fairly loud, I'm looking around the room and at the foot of my bed. I see a dark figure raising up, starting to lift my legs off the bed. It was at that point that I snapped back to reality, most likely from adrenaline. Now, I know there wasn't actually a figure there lifting my feet. I was half asleep and dreaming that it was happening. But it felt so fucking real that I was genuinely terrified. I had more sleep paralysis experiences like that in that house. But that one was really the only one worth mentioning. My roommates also complained of nightmares, but nowhere near as intense or as frequent as mine. During the night when I would wake up after these nightmares, I would sometimes hear noises coming from downstairs. My roommates who also slept upstairs heard them too sometimes. These noises consisted of what I think were cabinets opening and closing, as well as silverware and pots and pans being moved around. Although I'm not entirely sure, as I didn't dare go out of my room to investigate, I was already shitting my britches from the nightmares. My roommates were more experienced with paranormal happenings, and how to deal with them. They went to a store and picked up some dried sage as well. They also picked up some bead necklace for me that they said was for protection. Even though I was skeptical, I never took that damn necklace off when I was in that house. When me and my roommates tried to burn the dried sage in the house, it wouldn't light. It wouldn't even burn a little no matter how long we held the fire to it. Weird part is, is, when we took the sage outside and tried to burn it again, it immediately lit on fire. Took it back inside, tried to burn it again. Same thing, wouldn't burn no matter how hard we tried. Now this could be due to humidity in the house or something, I'm not sure, but really did creep us out quite a bit. The same night that we tried to burn the sage, me and my buddy woke up at the same exact time. We left our rooms and happened to meet in the hallway. We both wanted a midnight snack. It was quiet in the house. But as soon as we got close to each other and greeted each other, the noises started. The same noises I described earlier. Me and my buddy both stopped in the hallway above the stairs and just listened for a minute. Just trying to decipher exactly what were these noises that we were hearing. When out of nowhere, and I really mean out of nowhere, because both of us were standing completely still just listening, the necklace they had bought me exploded. It broke with nothing touching it or catching it. The beads scattered all over the floor. Me and my buddy just looked at each other in the eye, said goodnight, went back to our rooms. The final straw was when my roommates had apparently seen the entity. I'm not sure if I believe them entirely, but this is what they said they saw. When they were eating in our kitchen one day, and they were at the table both facing the glass door that leads to the patio. From that door, in the reflection of the glass, you can see into the door to the hallway that sits right behind the table where they were. They claimed to have both seen an old lady walk past that door. They told me that neither of them said a word to each other. They just looked at each other and quickly made their way upstairs to their room. I say this was the last straw, because after that encounter, they called a family friend who was a bruja. The Bruja informed us that they were in danger due to an evil entity being in our home. He would try to perform a ritual and try to move the spirit from our house. I don't know what he did, but it fucking worked. And I was just glad to finally get a good night's rest in. After he did what he did, there was nothing happening in the house after that. 
We were even able to burn sage in the house after. Edited out some details for Reddit, of course. But this one comes straight from the childhood. Feel free to ask questions. Also, yes, the real Ed and Lorraine Warren actually visited. So years ago, my dad owned a hotel in England. It's a family from Scotland. The hotel was a creepy-ass place. And the shit I could write a book of these stories... I was very young, can't even imagine the shit my dad and his partner would remember. As a result of this stuff, the hotel, as well as my dad, ended up on a TV on a show. The episode he was on was part of a section called A House Possessed. He was part of that section because their residence at the time was part of the hotel. It was a whole thing. The real Ed and Lorraine Warren visited as you can imagine, the episode was seriously exaggerated for TV, in the sense that no one really had spirits, you know, talking through them. The exorcism took days rather than just one night for dramatic effect, and it sure as shit didn't get resolved as quick as the TV show said it did. Poltergeist Activity The first thing I'll talk about is the poltergeist activity. No one ever got properly hurt but we did regularly have things thrown at us. There were times where you'd be sitting on the couch and it would feel as if someone walked past the back, kicked it as hard as they could. It was against a wall. The curtains would pull open and shut through the day. These are just the basics, though. More things happened. Saber, my dog, when I was like a toddler, German Shepherd, by the way, Saber was never harmed, but he was definitely afraid of whatever the hell was going on in the house. The biggest incident with Saber was when he went missing one night. All of the hotel bar regulars were out looking for him. All of my dad and his partner's friends were out looking. Even the local police were out looking. It was a tight community. My dad had gone to bed and his partner had stayed out all night looking for Saber. So my dad got up in the morning to prepare a room for a guest arriving that day. As he went in, he greeted Saber laying on the bed. This might seem like someone put him there without saying anything, but they would have had to get the keys to the room and the key box for my dad to put them back in his pocket without him realizing as well as we set an alarm on the key box. Not to mention, actually getting the big German shepherd to follow them when he knew he wasn't allowed in the corridor with the rooms. Apparitions the one that always comes to my mind with this is the guy that me and my brother always used to see. This was to the point that we weren't even bothered by it anymore, and just assumed he lived there. We were both literally children. The less okay ones were the ones everybody would see through the night. There were stupid things like people going to order a drink or trying to get a room or weren't there. And in the same kind of time, they were the ones who would always appear in the corridor of the hotel room. Made one of the cleaners quit her job, because apparently he just stared at her one day. This one actually comes up in the TV episode, but a bit more dramatized than what actually happened. They have my dad in a script for some things, so you'll be sitting or laying on the bedside. Some would be as if they would disappear until you properly looked at them. At night, they wouldn't always reappear straight away. It would take a few seconds. There would sometimes be a dark mist at night that would block your vision completely. This story is one that only me and my dad remember. There was a bowling green in the garden behind the hotel bar. Not on this particular day, it wasn't open for use. And I asked my dad why people were out playing if it was closed. By the time he looked out, there was nothing there. Later on, he was checking the bowling green, and there were obvious footprints and bowls, prints in the grass, as if a few people had been playing, as recently as ten minutes before, perhaps. All access to the green was locked off. I think this one sticks with me because it's a vivid memory of me actually seeing multiples at one time. 
Random stories from the house and hotel. I used to go into the bathroom and my dad would hear me talking to someone. When I'd come out, he would ask me who I was talking to, and every time he'd ask without fail, I'd say, The bathroom man. My brother had similar encounters. Whenever we were asked what he was, he would always look and say, He's looking at the corner. My older sister's main issue was around the staircases. That was abnormal because we all had the same issues there. You know that feeling when you're walking up the stairs and it feels like you're being followed? Well, imagine that, but you could hear them walking and sometimes feel as though someone was trying to grab your legs but kept missing. Very often there would be a strange smell around the stairs too, but that was only there when you experienced the feeling of someone behind you, or if you walked past the top and saw someone standing at the bottom either looking up the stairs or away from them. All in all, the hotel was creepy as shit. In the past, it was a courthouse, and the car park was the gallows. Odd encounter in my old flat. We'd moved into a flat in a completely new area when I was around 13. Nothing we experienced was immediately, oh my god, it's a fucking ghost. But they were just a little... odd. Encounters that got us questioning how exactly they would happen. The quote-unquote odd experiences started on the day after the move. It was just me and my mother. We were sitting down watching TV. My mother stood up to go to the toilet as I remained sitting down. After about a minute of her being in the bathroom, I hear her shout. Why have you just walked into my room? But I hadn't. I was still sat on the sofa watching TV. Hadn't moved at all. When she came back, she told me that she had heard footsteps walking down the corridor and into the bedroom on the right. This could be explained logically, though, as her downstairs neighbors were quite loud we could hear them talking and banging around at some points, so it wouldn't be a surprise if we heard their loud footsteps too, but I just thought I'd mention it anyways. The second encounter was when I was cooking. If I remember correctly, this was a couple of months after we moved in and I was helping my mother make dinner. I was in charge of making the cheese sauce. I'm just there, whisking away, until I turned around for a few seconds to grab my drink, check my phone. As I was turned around, the whisk somehow managed to flip itself out in the saucepan and onto the floor, which confused both myself and my mother. Now, me and my mother never saw it happen, but we were both confused at how strange it would manage to do that. I'm sure I didn't knock it with my hand or arm because surely it would have come with me. I didn't leave it on the top of the saucepan. I left it leaning toward the side of it, inside of the sauce. It was almost as if something picked it up, dropped it on the floor. Could this be logically explained? Before I move on to my main odd encounter, I thought I'd mention two little things that also used to happen. Whenever I was alone, I'd always see something out of the corner of my eye, as if something was standing behind me or watching me. It would disappear as soon as I would turn around. Again, it could just be a shadow of myself or something, maybe something else around or just where I was standing, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. Things would also go missing in that flat, randomly turn up in the most random of places, or in the spot where we originally left it. For example, we'd lose cutlery or pieces of clothing, can't find it anywhere. We give up and a week or so later, it's back. Is this a normal thing that happens? We're just too blind to see the right thing in front of us? Or was Casper messing around with our things? 
Sorry that this post is already a bit too long, but one more story and I'm finally done. My terrible grammar probably doesn't help with how long it is. <laughs> this is something that only happened to me. It only happened once, but it's something that still keeps me up at night. I was around 14 when this happened, and it was around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., and I was getting ready to go to sleep. Since my sleep schedule was totally fucked back then, still is a little bit now, I turned off my TV and turned around to face the wall. After about a minute of me turned around, it felt as though something was touching and moving my hair around. I just assumed it was because I turned around too quickly. I then began to feel really cold, almost as if I went cold-blooded for about 20 seconds. Then everything went back to normal again. I heard a little bit of movement in my room. Then all of a sudden I hear something whisper breathing into my ear, almost like an exhale and I immediately shut up, seeing nothing but the darkness. Thought I heard it again so I immediately turned my TV back on. Didn't go to sleep until 5 in the morning. The hair touching and me feeling cold could all be explained logically. But I find it hard to find a logical, well, a logical explanation for the breathing I supposedly heard. It couldn't have been the wind since my window and vent weren't open. It wasn't my mother or her boyfriend since both her bedroom doors were shut, so... Was I just overtired and hearing things? I don't know. But I still get the chills and I'm terrified to go to sleep almost every night now. Thinking perhaps... I'll hear it again. The Room in the Back When I was a kid in the 90s, I would often sleep at my grandmother's house. It was in the middle of a small village in the Jura region of France. The bedroom I would stay in was called The Room in the Back. As the name suggests, it was one of the last two rooms at the end of the main corridor shaped like an L. There wasn't anything special about that bedroom. It was pretty small, contained, had a bed, shelves with books, some other basic furniture. Yet for some reason that room creeped me out felt an unwelcoming presence, and I would always struggle to fall asleep, scared of whatever invisible forces seemed to be lurking in the dark. One night there, when I was around eight, I woke up scared and confused. I found myself lying down on the floor in total darkness. I feel I need to meet... Well, I just stumbled over my words. I feel I need to make two things clear here. This is the only time in my entire life that I've ever awoken outside of whatever bed or couch I had been sleeping in. The second thing to note is that despite the fact that the house is located in a small village, it wasn't particularly isolated, and the streetlights outside would always leave a bit of light filtering through the closed blinds at night. So here I was, a child, surrounded by total obscurity struggling to understand why it wasn't in my bed. I tried my best to stay calm and touched around me, hoping to find the side of the bed nearby so I could climb back onto it. Simply could not find it. I tried for several minutes, but it just seemed not to be there, which was extremely strange considering that the bedroom wasn't that big in the first place. I therefore decided to move forward in a single direction to find a wall, one that which I could then follow until I would find the bed. Things just got even stranger as I tried to find a wall. I would bump into furniture I would not recognize, and despite all my efforts, I simply could not find one. Everything around me was completely and utterly unfamiliar. I thought about calling for help. My mother was sleeping in the bedroom on the other side of the corridor, 
than my parents in the living room. However, I imagined them finding me screaming on the floor and decided not to, not wanting to face that kind of embarrassment. Finally, I fell asleep on the floor, giving up on finding the bed. I woke up the next morning in that damn bed and under the blankets. It was like the entire event had been nothing more than a weird dream. Yet, it absolutely did not feel like a dream. I'm a natural lucid dreamer, and even back then I was kind of already very familiar with how dreams feel. And this just wasn't one, or at least I don't think it was. A few years ago, a long time after this strange occurrence, I went to England to visit my aunt, who's from the other side of my family. She claims to be a witch and is into a lot of the New Age stuff. I've always been skeptical, but I had to admit, she's done and said a few strange things that got me to go from not believing her to being a bit more neutral about it. We were all talking about her respective families. She went on about one time where she had been in my grandmother's house. This is when I was a baby. I thought it was a good opportunity to see if she had sensed anything unusual there and asked her, making sure to keep the question open enough not to influence her. First thing she said, Ah yes, the room in the back. She said in English and had no idea what we called it in French. There's something wrong with that room. I was spooked. Today I got back to France. I decided to confront my mother about it. Since she'd spent her childhood in that house, as soon as I asked her what the hell was wrong with the room in the back, she froze and her face became white. She explained to me that when she was little, she went in that bedroom with a few friends. They tried to invoke spirits for fun. They sat down on the floor in a circle holding hands and said, Spirits, if you're here, knock three times. They immediately heard three violent knocks and ran off screaming. She told me that ever since, that room feels weird. And that's it. Nowadays, the room's kind of different. Still used as a guest bedroom. Still feels weird. But I'd say a lot less than when I was a kid. I know my brothers who are ten years younger have also complained about feeling uncomfortable there for some reason. They never had any unusual experience there. Ask Reddit. My story is from 2005, when I was a sophomore in college. Around Halloween, my friends and I were looking for a suitably spooky experience around the campus that we could take advantage of. This was in Bowling Green, Ohio. And an internet search told us the story of the Holcomb Road. As the story went, a school bus full of children crashed in the 50s or 60s on the road, and the bus driver and several children were killed. I was able to find a story in an old newspaper confirming the crash and mentioning the death of the bus driver, but nothing on the children. Our plans were to wait until Friday night after classes, take one vehicle to the site. However, my friend started bowing out early in the week, but I was still interested, knowing my mom and aunt were wanting to visit called them and explained the plan. The idea seemed fun to them, and my aunt even volunteered to bring her at the time state-of-the-art digital camera. We drove to Holcomb Road around 8.30 on a Friday night in October. Stories online gave various accounts of what you might see or hear, so we decided to simply park and walk the entire tree-shrouded length of the road. The experiences started almost immediately. We had parked at the very end of the lane and began walking the one-mile stretch of road. My aunt began snapping photos immediately, pointing the camera, shooting, and then moving the camera to take another picture. I heard it first. The slow crunch of footsteps on dry leaves. There were four of us. My mom, aunt, little brother, and myself. We were all walking on the asphalt surface of the road. 
nowhere near the leaves strewn across the forest floor. I pointed the sound out to the group and we stopped to listen more closely. Silence. I turned on my flashlight and swung it around the area. We saw nothing, thinking I had just imagined it. We continued walking. As soon as we did, I heard it again, the distinct shuffling and crunching of a human walking through dead leaves. This time, though, everyone heard it. We stopped moving and the sound ceased. Still snapping photos, we started walking again. Sure enough, the crunching followed us, sounding no more than five feet away. My brother and I took my flashlight, shined it across the road, wondering if perhaps the acoustics of the woods were making a squirrel or deer sound much louder and closer than it was. As we did, my aunt kept shooting her camera, my mom at her shoulder. Suddenly, they both screamed. My mom is unflappable. She is resolute and tough, stoic in the best way to kind of describe her. She was the most stoic of all of us. She was the most skeptical of the whole trip. Hearing her scream and seeing my aunt and her sprinting down the road, my brother and I didn't ask questions. We simply sprinted after them. Coming out of the woods, breathing heavily, I got the story from them as I was scanning the forest on the other side that my aunt took a photo and the flash illuminated a man standing not ten feet away. According to my mom and aunt, he was tall and wearing what appeared to be a bus driver uniform, similar to the one in this picture. I didn't see it, but I was eager to examine the photos. However, what we had neglected in our panic was to run in the direction of our car. We would have to traverse the woods again to reach it. My aunt and mom refused to go. They had seen something unexplainable, and they were shaking from fear and adrenaline. Bracing myself, I took the keys, sprinted through the woods, my flashlight casting a bobbing beam in front of me as I panicked. The movements were flying all over the place where I threw the flashlight in my hand. To this day, I swear I heard the sound of leaves crunching and the sound of breathing and whispered words as I ran. I made it to the car, drove through the woods way too quickly, picked up my family, drove back to my college. At my dorm, I'm sure we made a strange sight as we crowded around my PC and viewed the pictures on my aunt's memory card. In every one, there was a yellow light that stretched and bent in the frame. No matter where the photo was taken, the light remained. These pictures were taken on an abandoned country road with a foreign light source for miles. Nothing could have caused this. In the photo taken when my mom and aunt claimed to see the bus driver, all that can be seen is the yellow light across a blank white background. It's been 12 years. I've graduated college, gotten married, became a father, served in the army since then, but I still remember the lights of Holcomb Road. The clinic where I work is haunted. So I'm a fresh nurse, just finished school and hospital experience, waiting to graduate. However, where I live, we're in a high demand of nurses. So you're allowed to work once you've passed school. Anyway, so I've been working at this clinic for a couple of months now. It's a private clinic so the interior basically looks like a house. It has a pharmacy, a doctor's office, and two other offices down the hall, a waiting room and a back room. So this starts about two weeks ago. I was called into work a full day, meaning 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., because my other co-workers were tested positive for COVID. So I came in as usual, Brought my coffee, sat down waiting for people to walk in. We didn't have any appointments that day, so I was just chilling. 
then I heard scuffling in the back. First, I thought it was the ceiling fan, since it creaks from time to time. But the more I ignored it, the louder the sound got. I got annoyed, walked to the back thinking maybe the dog got in. The doctor's house is attached to the clinic. But as I walked to the back, I got a feeling of dread, as if I continued walking, something bad would happen. I stopped halfway down the hallway, decided to let whatever was back there stay there. Though I didn't think it was paranormal or anything, really. It was just the last thing to cross my mind, actually. But then, it was around 6 p.m. on the same day. I was attending to a client, bringing up her medicine, and the box of aspirin at the top shelf just fell. It startled both of us, but again, didn't think anything of it. Placed it back on the shelf, the client left, and I sat back down waiting for closing time. When closing time came, I remember I had left my purse and sweater in one of those offices. I wasn't thinking much, so... I went back to gather my stuff. As I gathered everything, I heard the door open and the chime went off. So I stepped out and called from the hallway. Sorry, we're closed. There was no response. I walked out to check, but there was no one there, not a soul. I locked up, left for the night. The next day I came in and we were pretty busy with clients. So the events of yesterday didn't cross my mind. At 5 p.m. the doctor called it a day and left to go home. So I was all alone once again. I was on my phone scrolling on Instagram. That's when the lights turned off. I thought, great, power outage. But as I looked up, I saw the lights in the waiting room were still on. I looked next to me, where the switch was, and it was off. That's when I got a little freaked out, but I switched it back in and continued scrolling on my phone. Got up to use the bathroom, left my phone on the counter. When I came back, it wasn't there. I thought, maybe I did take it with me. So, I went back to the back of the bathroom wasn't there either. I looked in the hallway where I had walked to see maybe if it had fallen. Nope, there was nothing there. I remember thinking, I'm really going nuts here. When it came back to the front, my phone was on the shelf next to the bottle of aspirin. Loss of words, but stuff like that kept happening every day until recently. My co-workers just got retested again. One of them still has COVID, but the other doesn't. So that means she comes in and I get a few days off. On the day before I left for my day off, about two days ago, I was once again sitting at the front counter reading a book this time. This is when I heard footsteps, wet footsteps coming from the back room. I thought enough was enough really thought someone was messing with me now. I switched on a light to the back, peered into the room. No one was in there. Shook my head, turned to walk down the hallway, but I stopped. Down the hall were visible wet footprints. It was as if somebody was following me. I closed up early, took my crap, went home. I got back in tomorrow. I'm convinced that there's something haunting my workplace. These are just some of my experiences that I've had. Many more, though, from when I was at the hospital. What did I see in the desert on the shores of the Persian Gulf? So just a short story from when I was in the UAE. I had two locations, the LSA, which was where we were camped and contracted to vent tents and a military installation on the shore of the Persian Gulf. 
There was a radio operator on a night shift. On the base itself. Super cool place. Emiratus training around the constant lapping of the waves on the gulf, and her TOC was well heated. Gets cold as shit on the shore at night. The only wild thing about the base was that around our little TOCs, each battalion had their own, there were a few abandoned and condemned buildings. I was on watch toward the end of exercise process, almost home, and I was smoking a cigarette outside our tactical operations center tent. Went to the bathrooms that we had set up, used the facilities, then started the 50-odd yard walk back to the TOC. Between the TOC and the head, a big contracted trailer with toilets and retrofitted, there was an abandoned, condemned building. As I was passing it, I heard someone cry out. It was strange, because it was 2 a.m. The only people up were the command staff for the night, in shifts, and the radio operators themselves. And I guess the area security forces. I think there's guards at the gate. But they were 150 plus yards away, and shouldn't be leaving their posts for any reason. Me being a somewhat capable Marine, and having known that there were a few security mishaps and surveillance probing attempts, I figured I should check it out. I had no rounds for my rifle, but an M4 can make a mean club if you've got the fighting spirit, and I kept a large knife on my belt. So short of staring down an AK, I felt good about my chances. And I shouldn't have. As I walked closer to the building, maybe ten yards, I could hear the cries a little more clearly. It sounded like a shot bear. Baby cryish plus dragging a cement block across concrete made my blood cold. At this point, I wasn't feeling great about the encounter. But also, I figured someone in this building might need some help. Can't just turn away even though every fiber of my being was telling me to get away as fast as possible. Then, silence. Nothing, just the darkest room I've ever seen in my life. It felt almost oppressive, like someone had put my head in a vice and started cranking it. I could hear the cry, but this time it was like it was coming from inside my head. I dropped to the floor and rolled out. When I was rolling out, I swear I saw two large eyes attached to the largest person I've ever seen. Darker than the black of the room around it, it was searing into my brain like saucers. Glowing yellow. I turned and ran. It wasn't very far away from my TOC. Behind me, I heard something come out of the building. The scratching like a dog makes trying to get purchase on a wood floor. I got back in the light of the street lamps that lined an access road. I wound between the tents and the equipment bays and heaved. I threw my hands on my knees and tried to catch my breath. Then it occurred to me that I had only really moved 15 or 20 yards away from the building. It felt like I had just run a full marathon, exhausted. When I looked out past the building, I could see something standing illuminated in the moonlight, maybe 50 yards past the building. It looked like a kangaroo mixed with a fox. Maybe five feet tall, it was up on its haunches, swaying side to side like it was moving with the wind. But its eyes, I'll always remember its eyes, glowing yellow, the size of tea plates, and almost took up too much space on its face. It gave out a weird little cry and ran into the night. I shook my head and said a quick prayer, then took a breath and walked back to the TOC. When I walked in, the gunny on duty looked at me. When ship Mac, you look like you just saw a ghost. I didn't tell him what had happened. A friend of mine had died recently in an accident, and I was pretty fucking sad. Even though I tried my best to head down and work, they knew I had taken it kind of hard. The last thing I needed was someone thinking I was losing my gourd and putting me in a Balboa, the military mental hospital, but less than a year out from EAS. So I just kept it to myself. Maybe someone here can make a guess as to what it was. 
I still have a nightmare about it about twice a month. When I'm out and about in the forests, I keep a rosary in my pack, just in case my old friend ever pays a visit. My Haunted House Let me just preface this story and say that I've always witnessed and experienced strange supernatural things since I was little, currently a 27-year-old female. I was much more open to it when I was younger, and I can tune in or tune out, but I have myself distanced it at the time. The experience below was one of the most profound supernatural experiences I've ever had, and something I still think about. Back in and around 2010, my family relocated and moved to a home in Arizona. At the time of the story, I'm about 14. The home was built in the 80s with some sort of strange floor plan and had only one previous owner. From what the neighbors told us, an elderly couple had lived here. The wife passed a few years before, and the husband lived there alone after that. The neighbors said as he got older, he was going a little senile digging holes in the yard and coming up with strange projects like putting out globs of rock and cement into the yard. He was moved to an old folks' home, passed away shortly after. That's when my family moved in. Right off the bat, I felt that home had strange energy. As I mentioned, it had a strange floor plan. The dining room was in the center, sort of walled off into a circle. When he walked to the front door, my parents' room was to the right, then continuing around the circle... You'd be in the living room, then kitchen, then you'd be facing the office, and to your right there was a wing that went down the hallway to my room and my brother's room. From above the house looked like a lollipop. Hope that helps visualize it better. Well, we started renovations pretty quickly after moving in. Painting, cleaning, ripping things out in the backyard. We found a large human tooth in the bathroom drawer one day. Weird and gross. But I've heard about spiritual ties to human teeth, so I wanted to throw that in there. For some reason, whenever I think about this house, I always think of that tooth. While living in this house, I always had the feeling of being watched. There were strange noises and eerie feeling, and when walking around the circle, I always felt like something was right behind me. We all felt sort of creeped out in the home, but nothing serious had ever really happened until one night. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I heard someone in boots running the house. It sounded like they were doing laps around the circular dining room. Thought this was odd, sat up in bed, slept with my door open, and across the hall I could see my brother in his sleeping room. My parents slept with talk radio on every night, every night. Strange, I know, but I could hear the radio on the other side of my house and could hear my dad snoring. These footsteps sounded heavy. Didn't think it could be from my mom. Mentally, I was ruling out that it was anyone in my family making this noise. The stomping continued, and I was getting concerned. My dog typically slept in the office on the couch. I thought to myself, if he starts barking, then I'll get worried. Right after thinking that, I hear the footsteps run to the office. Papers start rustling around. My dog starts growling and barking. The paper stops, my dog stops, and it's quiet for a moment. Thought that it was over, till I hear the footsteps running down the hallway toward my room. I'm absolutely frozen, believing that I'm about to be met with either a spirit or an intruder. My door is to the left of me, open. As the footsteps come closer and get louder, they suddenly stop right before where my doorway starts. Sat there frozen, waiting for someone to peer their head around the corner or something. But nothing it was silent after that. This whole scenario lasted maybe three minutes. The next morning, I confronted my mom. I asked her if she'd been running around the house in boots. She told me, nope, I must have just been dreaming. She told me that her and her dad were in the room all night. Her and my dad. I started to maybe think I had imagined it. A week later, she told me she wanted to talk. She didn't want to scare me at the time, but told me that that night she had heard it too. The footsteps, my dog barking, the papers rustling. She said that she was about to get up and check, also worried that it was an intruder. 
but had come to a stop. All doors were locked that night. Nothing was stolen or left ajar. We lived in an extremely safe town. Both her and I believe it was a spirit. Likely the old man who lived in the house before us. We continued to feel watched. Could feel a strange, passive-aggressive presence, but never experienced something to this capacity again. We still talk about this experience from time to time, and I'm glad I wasn't the only one who was awake in my house that night to hear it. A few years later, we had moved out, and a strangely a friend of mine had moved in. When I found out he'd lived in that house, I asked him if he felt a strange presence or even had anything happen to him there. His dad and him both looked at me wide-eyed and told me that, yes, they felt it too. My beloved dog came to visit after I took in a foster dog. I've had many dogs, all of which were wonderful. But I think for most people, there's one dog that was the special one. For me, that was my dachshund hunter. He was amazing, sweet, smart, loved everyone, and just a joy to have in my life. He died at a somewhat young age for a doxy, ten years of congestive heart failure. Needless to say, I was devastated, especially as they had told me when he had first got diagnosed that he had up to two years to live if I took good care of him and took his medications. Even though I was diligent with his care, and he didn't even look sick at this point, he passed away after only three months. In an attempt to cope with my grief, I signed up to be a foster for a local rescue group. I was by no means ready to adopt another dog, but I thought perhaps it would help me heal to help rescue a dog while at the same time, maybe I could help get a dog ready for its forever home and adoption. The first couple of weeks or so with my foster were uneventful and my foster dog turned out to be very sweet and well-behaved little guy. At first I crated him, then let him sleep on my bed next to my bed, or rather on a bed next to my bed, and then eventually he was sleeping on the bed with me like Hunter had in the past. One night in the middle of the night, when I was dead asleep with my foster dog in the bed with me, I felt a dog jump off my bed to the right lower corner. I assumed it was my foster, but right after it happened I felt my foster who was laying against my left side lunge towards the spot where the jumping had occurred, implying that he felt it too. I grabbed my foster dog in mid-lunge, held on tightly with my eyes closed in fear, now realizing that it wasn't him who jumped off the bed. The next morning after finally falling asleep again, hugging my foster all night and in daylight, I searched the entire room and the closet for anything that might have caused what we both felt that night before. There was nothing on the floor, nothing anywhere near the bed, nothing at all in the room that could explain it. I sleep with the door to my bedroom closed and locked and live alone. And while I do have a sliding glass door in the bedroom leading to a small outdoor patio, I rarely go out there, and the sliding glass door was locked with a deadbolt on top. I ended up searching the entire condo. I found absolutely nothing. My foster dog also never reacted to anything. And if you know Dachshunds, they're hunting dogs with great noses. They'll find anything hiding in your house. My initial reaction was that the foster dog jumped off the bed, came from, you know, maybe Hunter was alive there, or a few times he jumped off the bed in the exact middle of the night from the exact location. I remember the times because dachshunds are not supposed to jump because of their back issues, and would always scold him for doing so. Plus, it would sort of wake me up like it did this time. 
To be honest, it was too heavy of a jump to be anything smaller than a dog, as it was the exact force of when a hunter would do it, and from the same spot on the bed. I might have been, well, willing to chalk it up to a very vivid dream, if not for my foster dog's reaction. He literally lunged at the spot right after it happened, so we felt it enough to wake him up and have him react to it. I truly believe Hunter came back to visit me, but I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe to see my new foster dog and what he'd look like, or to tell me that he wasn't happy that I had another dog in his bed. My foster went on to get adopted by a wonderful couple who I handpicked, and I didn't adopt another dog for another two years. I never had another instant like this again, but I didn't see a pet medium at a street fair one time. I thought, what the heck, it's only $20. Well, he told me that Hunter had been trying to get back to me since he left, and that he watches over me. Hashtag grain of salt, but who knows. I still remember Hunter and think of him almost daily. It was a sick day I'll never forget. It was summer, and I was too sick for summer school that year. So one day my grandma arranged for me to go to my friend's house across the street the next afternoon. I was to stay at her house the night before, so I didn't have to spend all day by myself at my own house, or have my mom drive me in the morning. It was the year 2000-something. I had a great night with my grandma. We played cards and talked and did beads and embroidery all night. Then we went to bed like any other night. I would stay with her during the weekend sometimes, but this particular night... She had to leave for work the next morning. I was a big girl, and I was ready to have half a day alone. So anyway, I got up and had breakfast that morning with my grandma before she went to work at 6 a.m. She told me to have a good day and not to get into trouble, like she did every other time we parted ways. I told her to do the same, and then she said that she would call and wake me up later in case I fell asleep. It was a little early when she left, so I took a nap on her couch thinking if I went back to bed I'd sleep all day and not make it to my friend's house in time for lunch. That was a wee thing. We couldn't have made lunch, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't too comfortable. A while after falling asleep, or so I thought, I felt my blanket fall off of me, and it was cold. So cold that I shot up thinking something was wrong realizing a few seconds later. The world slowed, and about halfway through sitting, the rest of the way up a wave of nausea and bone-deep chills hit me as fast as they would fade. I see some movement across the room, quickly go to put on my glasses to see who's home. Excited that it might be my grandpa home from driving truck, fumbled a bit. I find my glasses, put them on, and realize it's still dark outside. I look around, all the lights are on in the living room where I was sleeping, and the ones in my grandma and grandpa's room down the hall were on as well. I don't remember turning them on, but one next to the couch. I then think for sure Papa's home and call out for him as I walk toward the bedroom. No answer. Not a problem. He has a hard time hearing from driving trucks. I take another step. Chills and nausea waves rush over me once more. I was noticing a dial tone on the phone in the bedroom. Suddenly, I was sick to my stomach. I take a hard left before the bedroom into the bathroom, like an instinct. Right before throwing up, barely making it to the toilet before vomit erupts out of me like a science experiment gone rogue. A minute later, the nausea spikes and drops as the heat returns to the room following the figure as it crosses past the open bathroom door with me kneeling in front of the toilet. I'm peering out of the corner of my eye, pretending I didn't see a thing, increasingly tensing up. 
When it passes fully, I collapse and sit down, waiting for the nausea to pass before venturing out of my current known safe zone. Bang! I hear the door close and the dial tone go from a buzz in a distant room to now being so loud my little self was willed to go and hang it back up, no matter what was going on. I leave the bathroom, go into the bedroom where the blankets on my grandma's side of the bed were folded open, almost perfectly for it to have been done by her. And atop the covers, the phone lay with the line open. The hairs on my back stood up as I grabbed the phone to hang it up. I'm now too scared to be by myself in their house. And with the sun finally coming up, I'm thinking it's 7.30 or so. I leave the house, sat outside until Grandma called later on around 9 to wake me up. I pretend to just be waking up. Her not realizing I was sitting outside grasping the garage phone in my hand increasingly tightly for the last hour and a half. I can't recall ever telling anyone besides a school friend about this, let alone my grandmother for fear that she might not feel safe at home alone without us during the week. I'll never know if it was a home invader or just Bill the next door neighbor coming to grab something and I startled him, so we just left without a word. It may have been the mind of an anemic child writing the line of life and death, or a ghost. I would flatline a week or so later at the hospital from blood loss due to my illness. So who knows? The Reaper might have had his schedule off. Came for me at the wrong day, so he just let himself back out the way he came. Who is to say for sure? Doll Possession Leads to Phobia of Dolls I grew up in an extremely, extremely haunted duplex. This duplex could have a book written behind it. What I'm explaining doesn't even touch the surface, it's just grazing. You see, I have very little memory of this duplex since I was about six to seven. My family lived there for two years, but it felt like an eternity. I have a couple of memories, most of which being paranormal. But because I remember so little, I've been really wondering, did something happen with the doll that I've repressed? I'm sure a lot of people have family members who gift the new babies in the family a porcelain doll. I was born in 95. No idea if people still give newborns porcelain dolls or if it was just a Greek thing. Either way. I had this porcelain doll with light blue eyes and a dress, white frills, curly blonde hair, attached to a swing. She never came out of the box until I was around ten or so. I also loved the big comfy couch. I had the little Molly doll with the plastic head, yarn hair, and stuffed body. She had these cardboard pieces you could put in a bow or like a thought bubble or something. I was obsessed with Molly growing up. She was my favorite doll when I was really small. I don't really remember playing with her, but my mom said she was glued to me. She definitely looked very loved. I just don't remember. Anyways, sorry this is so winded already. So, after moving into my new home, years and years go by and I'm digging through the teddy toy box. I find Molly and I'm excited. I've always slept with far too much on my bed, even to this day. My bed is all pillows, squished pillows, and big massive body pillows felt connected to Molly all of a sudden. So she stayed in the corner of my bed, against the wall and the bed frame. She stayed like that for a few months, until I started having these nightmares. If you've had messed up dreams, you know where you're in someone's house, but it isn't the house that's necessarily set up. It was like that. Things were in slightly different places. My cousin's bedroom was where my uncle's bedroom was. Remember, this is a dream. I'd walk into my cousin's bedroom, and Molly would be kind of lay sitting against my cousin's pillows. The room was pink and purple, very girly. The sun was setting. The room looked pretty. I enter the room, and my attention is immediately drawn to Molly. I felt so uncomfortable and on edge. By that point, I'm walking into her bedroom. I have this nauseating, horrible feeling hit me. Anxiety hits hard can't look away from Molly. 
when suddenly, of course, she slowly stands, still facing away from me. She's looking to my right, straight ahead. She levitates up and starts to turn toward me. The room goes dark, and I'm sprinting at the light switch. Can't find it. Once I do, it doesn't work. Grab the door, feel her behind me, throw the door open and run down my uncle's hallway. I turn and I see her floating behind me. My grandma, my dad's uncle's mom, is at the end of the hallway. She isn't dead, by the way. So I run to her. Her eyes are red and she's just staring ahead. I'm screaming at her to do something. Then I jolt awake, normally sprinting to my light switch, terrified it wouldn't turn on. She was on my bed when this first started happening. Remember. I had that dream a few times. Each time some stuff altered, but it was always the same. Until I got so fed up of these dreams that, well, I jumped down my uncle's stairs past the hallway. They were like 20 plus steps. When I dived down, my head hit the ceiling part that leads you down the stairs. Pretty sure I broke my neck or something, but the last time I had that dream, I dove down the stairs and I died. After these reoccurring nightmares, I tied Molly in a pillowcase, threw her under my bed. Still didn't feel safe, so she ended up in the crawl space. When my family moved nearly 10 years later, my mom took her out of the crawl space and I started to cry, like laugh cry, but because I was so uncomfortable, I ended up giving her away. Turns out those Molly dollies can cost a lot nowadays. The duplex I lived in had a demonic entity. It approached me as my childhood dog when I lived in the duplex. I don't know if the demonic entity tortured me via toys and dolls. Now the porcelain doll. I had her on my wall hanging on her swing, but I would stare at her at night expecting her to turn her head, float or crawl to me. The stereotypical horror movie stuff. I ended up throwing her in something into the crawl space, got rid of her too. I know it's rude since it was a baby gift, but I cannot stand dolls. Possible Paranormal Encounters in Shaw AFB, South Carolina. This happened on Shaw AFB in 2005. My now ex-husband was an E6 and he worked nights on the F-16. I would be home overnight for our two sons, aged five and two. First, I need to describe the house. It was a long hallway with rooms on either side. Partially open floor plan from the dining room to the kitchen, where there was a half wall for part and then a whole wall. From my bedroom door, I could see the back door straight through the dining room and part of the kitchen. We had a large rack. It was by the back door where we stored dry goods. Military housing never has enough, you know, storage space, in my own opinion. One morning I was woken up by a noise in the kitchen. I jumped out of bed, afraid my younger son was getting into trouble. He's 18 now, and still a P-I-T-A. I didn't grab my glasses, and without them, I am legally blind. I can see colors and rough shapes. That's it. I looked toward the kitchen and saw what looked like a man in an Air Force uniform. Again, I can barely see. So I'm going off of color and shape. The figure is holding a box and facing the rack. Of course, I assume that this is my husband. And I say, hey, you want me to cook you something? The figure moves so that it's facing me. The box drops to the floor, and the figure moves to the part of the kitchen that I can't see. So, my ex-husband was very unpredictable and emotionally volatile. So my assumption right here is that he's mad at me for something, again, and I'm going to need to deal with this attitude. I turn back to my night table, get my glasses. Then I walk to the kitchen. This entire action takes maybe 30 seconds. It's a small house. I'm talking as I walk to the kitchen, 
did something, you know, something happened at work, you know, to diffuse the situation. No response. I turn into the kitchen and there's no one there. It would not have been possible for anybody to get to the back door without me hearing it, because the door squeaked. Again, this was only 30 seconds, tops. I walk and glance through the living room, which is also empty. Then I look at the time on the microwave. 0617. My husband didn't get home until 8. Also, a box of Annie's mac and cheese was on the floor on the front rack. This happened 16 years ago, and I still try to sort it out in my head. I don't believe in ghosts. I can say we had a few other uncomfortable incidences in that house. There were two bathrooms, a full one and then a small end suite to the master bedroom, which was our older son's room. He had toys and stuff. We didn't need the space. He refused to use the end suite. He said it was creepy. One time I was taking a shower in there. Can't remember why I wasn't using the normal bath. And I saw movement outside the curtain. I glanced out and I swear I saw a man in a uniform looking through the window, then dropping real quick. I screamed for my husband and he ran outside. No footprints or anything. I ran a daycare out of our house and occasionally would hear stuff moving around in the daycare area, especially at night. That stopped after we got a dog. So I can't rule out South Carolinian giant water bugs playing with the pretend kitchen. I don't believe in ghosts or the paranormal, but I know what I saw and heard. I was wide awake by the time I was in the doorway and saw him, which rules out hypnogosia. I don't know what I experienced. I'm okay without knowing. I thought this would be of interest for others, though. I've not shared this story before. I think my instincts saved my life. This was last night. I'm currently here in Arizona. The full or almost full moon was up. Now, if you live like in a city or somewhere near a forest, you probably don't know how bright it can actually get on a full moon. For some reason, I've gotten really into mapping. Me and my little cousin made one big crudely constructed map of the desert surrounding our campground. We wanted to explore more in the night. So, when darkness set upon the desert, we ventured out into the dark. My grandpa made this super cool wooden sword for me that spikes all around it. It would hurt really bad if you were hit by it. I guess that if some crazy person or a coyote came after us, I could either scare it off or beat it away. We moved around half a mile from camp. We came to the wash. For anybody who doesn't know, when it rains, yep, it rains in the desert. Water can flow and create rivers. When the water is gone, the empty rivers are still there. These are called washes. Some can be huge, some can be a few feet wide. This one about a hundred feet wide. We were walking down the wash. Being able to see everything and having a spiked club, we weren't really scared of anything. We went to see the dead, the skeletal body of a falcon, which we dubbed Anakin after the Jedi who was cut to pieces by his master, then returned to the wash, being careful around shadows case anything was hiding in them. 
after about 20 minutes of exploring, we came to a part of the wash where the walls curved in by a few feet. This change was barely noticeable, as the wash was still huge. However, as we were about to enter this small spot, I got this terrifying feeling in my stomach. I wanted to run, to ditch my cousin and get away from there. Instead, I grabbed his arm, told him that we should go back. He turned around and walked back to our camp, the whole time blabbing about a custom Smash character. I followed him, and I got that feeling again, but around five times stronger. I stopped walking and turned around. Standing where the walls curved in, was what looked to be a man. He was huge, at least seven feet tall. It looked naked in the light, but I didn't see any sort of genitals. The legs of the creature were bent backwards under the knees, like wolves and dogs. Said legs were small, and the monster's arms were longer than I was tall. I'm 5'10". I couldn't see its face, but I highly doubt I wanted to. If the thing stood on its back legs, it would maybe be 10, 14 feet tall. The creature didn't attack though. All it did was crawl. Yeah, crawl. It crawled back up the wash wall and into the bushes. The crawling was perfect. The knees didn't even touch the ground. It wasn't like a baby crawl, it was more of a girl from the ring crawl. The moment it disappeared into the bushes, I ran. I grabbed my cousin's arm and dragged him all the way back to the campsite. I have no doubt in my mind that if I had gone any further, I would be dead right now. I don't think my pathetic wooden club would do any damage to that thing. I told my family that I saw a coyote, and that I was freaked out by it. They wouldn't believe me if I told them what I saw. I don't want to leave the trailer now. I don't want to go outside at all. I want to know if anybody else has seen something like this in Arizona. The thing is still out there. I want to know what it is. Weird Encounter in the Swiss Alps This happened while I was doing my army service in Switzerland. I'm not really allowed to talk about what we were doing, but I'll try to keep things clear. I know that this sub is for real paranormal activities, and I know that everybody writing here will claim that his or her story is real, and me too. But this really happened to me back in 2011. My company had installed a huge antenna, and it had to be guarded by two soldiers, day and night. We were on the top of a hill, far away from any city, and near a huge forest. It was 1800 hours. I had just started my watch of six hours with another soldier. Everything went fine. We smoked cigarettes, kept ourselves occupied until our watch ended at midnight. Then we received a call from our superior. He told us that one of the soldiers that was supposed to take the watch couldn't come, and one of us had to stay for another watch of six hours. Well, we tossed a coin to see who would stay from midnight to six. With temperatures of around negative 20 Celsius. Of course, I lost. I had to wait for the other soldier to come and join me for the night watch. They didn't send the best, because uh, I knew he would sleep all night when I saw him climbing the hill with his sleeping bag. And that's what he did. He immediately took place in the tent, fell asleep. It was the coldest and longest night of my life. But nothing special about it. The weird part happened in the morning. 
we received another call from our superior. He told us that we had an NBC exercise. It means that we all, well, to wear all day long our NBC suit. That's short for an anti-chemical suit. The one with the gas mask and everything that goes with it. I was really upset and exhausted because I wasn't able to sleep with that thing on. And sleep was my only reward after that 12-hour watch. Well, I got out of the tent, and this is where I saw something. There was a woman standing next to our antenna. She wasn't moving, she was just standing there, five meters from the tent. I couldn't see her face because the sun was starting to rise behind her, like a locked fighter in Tekken, really. I knew she was a woman because she had really long hair, and she had curves. Remember, we were in the middle of nowhere, and this lady was standing there, not moving like she was frozen. Started to freak out. Called the other guy to show him. Show him what it was that I was looking at. I don't know why, but he wasn't scared at all. He told her to leave because she isn't allowed there. She didn't make a move. She just stood there looking at us, or at least in our direction. And this lasted for at least a minute or two. I was so confused how a woman could ignore two soldiers telling her to leave a forbidden area. I mean, we're in Switzerland. The army's not that impressive, I know, but people usually don't do these kinds of things. They would just move away, especially when it's six in the morning. And what was she doing in the middle of nowhere? Obviously not dressed for this cold weather. How long was she standing there? And how did she end up here? I didn't hear any footsteps. So many questions ran through my mind at that moment. The other soldier didn't think twice, started walking towards her. When he almost reached her, he started running very fast. She ran directly into the forest nearby. I saw her getting deep into the forest and she disappeared from our sight. I'm really a rational thinker. I question everything and think that there's always an explanation. For me, the explanation is that she was simply a jogger because of the way she ran to the forest. But almost three minutes had passed between the first time I saw her and the moment she started running away. Three minutes of not moving at all, looking at me, dressed in something really tight at negative 20 degrees and in the middle of nowhere. A real letter from the other side. So, if this isn't a legit message from the other side, I'm not sure what is. I don't even know where to start this story. So, I guess I'll start at the beginning. Here it goes. I met the love of my life in 1996 when I was 16 years old. For privacy reasons, we're going to call him John. He was my first love, and in many ways, the only love I've ever known. Fast forward 20 years... And though we hadn't spoken much and were both married to other people, I could honestly say that I was still head over heels for this guy. Unfortunately, he passed away from cancer a few years back, and the loss was devastating, to say the least. I can't get into all the details, but suffice it to say... John's death robbed me of any hope that I would ever experience real love like that ever again. I could go on and on about this, but I'll skip ahead to the interesting part. A few weeks ago, I was going through a box where I keep pictures, letters, and other things that remind me of John, and all the experiences that we shared. I found a letter I wrote him after he died that I'd completely forgotten about. 
In the letter, I asked him to show me a sign that he was still around and still with me. I told him that I needed it to be a big sign, one that couldn't be mistaken for anything else. Not a flickering light or a simple coincidence. I needed a big, real, unmistakable sign. So I looked up and said out loud, John, I'm still looking for that sign. Well, a few days later, I got a text from my mother. She sent me a picture of an envelope, a junk mail advertisement from a local insurance company. She had received three of these advertisements that day, one addressed to her, another to my father, and a third addressed to John's father. Now, John's parents live in the same city as my parents, but they do not live nearby each other. According to Google Maps, there's a two-mile, which is like a six-minute drive, between their houses. There's a major thoroughfare that divides the city, and my parents live on one side, his parents live on the other. Their addresses are not even close to being similar, so that couldn't have accounted for the mix-up. I obviously can't show the actual addresses, but his address is like 5 Smith Street, my parents' address is more like 8932 Lakeshore Drive. Not at all similar. Both of our family's last names are unusual and uncommon and are not spelled or pronounced the same in any way. Again, I can't give too many details, but they are as different as Hamertia and Calcino. Both odd and usual names, but not even close to being similar. My parents and his parents aren't friends. They don't belong to the same clubs or churches. I don't even think that they're Facebook friends. So, how in God's name did a letter addressed to John's father end up in my parents' mailbox? The town they live in has a population of about 30,000. What are the chances that this letter that was supposed to be delivered two miles away ended up in the wrong mailbox? A mailbox that just so happens to belong to my parents. I asked for a sign. He gave me one, right? I mean, I suppose it's possible that the letters got stuck together somehow, as they were being sorted perhaps, but how? They weren't stuck together when my mother found them in the mailbox. And in any case, what are the odds that John's dad's letter would somehow get stuck to one of my parents' letters out of all the other thousands of letters it was being sorted with? Pennies and Dimes Anyways, when I was four years old, my great-grandma died. She was my mom's mom's mom. I remember her a little bit, and I remember finding out that she passed, but I was four at that time. I don't think I was ever told this until I was older. But after my great-grandma died, dimes started showing up, randomly. My family member would find them in random places. I don't remember this as I was very young. My great-aunt, who is one of my grandma's sisters, and one of my great-grandma's daughters, apparently after my uncle got in a car accident, she checked the road where it was and everything. There were dimes on the road where the car crashed. Just dimes. When I was eight... My mom's brother, my uncle, he passed away. I was eight, so I remember all of it. But I wasn't super upset by it. Don't get me wrong, I was still really sad I lost my uncle. But I was never, like, crying about it. Until recently, after finding out what happened, I've been upset. This isn't about how he died. Now, after he passed, pennies started showing up randomly. My 
my mom would find pennies under her pillow, which doesn't even make sense because she doesn't keep coins in her pocket or near her bed whatsoever. Then as I got older, I started finding both dimes and pennies myself in odd places. I was ten. It was summertime. My older cousin who lives in another state just had twins, and they're my grandparents' first great-grandchildren. So they went to go see my cousin's wife and his kids. My grandparents have a dog, though, so me and my mom decided to stay at my grandparents' house while they're gone to look after the dog. We didn't stay there all night and all day, but we'd sleep there and stay for little bits during the day. There wasn't much to do one night. We decided to play Monopoly. We set it all up right there. Then the dog wanted to go outside, so we took her outside. When we got back, on the Monopoly board was a dime and a penny. We didn't put them there. No one else was in the house while we were gone. Like I found dimes on the seat of where I sit on a school bus. And I'll say that my great-grandpa left it for me. But realistically, somebody else was sitting there and it fell out of their pocket. But still, why specifically a dime? Same thing when I find the pennies most of the time. But finding both the dime and a penny on the Monopoly board doesn't make sense. They weren't there before when we went outside. And also, my great-grandparents' house is old. My great-grandparents lived there with my grandma and her siblings. Then my grandparents lived there with my mom and her siblings. So my great-grandma did live there at one time. And so did my uncle. And sometimes I'll even hear footsteps upstairs there when no one's upstairs. And the footsteps are coming from my uncle's room. I still don't have an explanation for what happened. That was a few years ago. And I still think about how the coins got there. Recently, my uncle's death has been, well, it's been upsetting me. Last Saturday night, a lot of things were upsetting me. My uncle's death being one of them. With all that, I was crying. The next morning, we're going somewhere as a family would. We were going for a long car ride. So just in case I got really bored, I grabbed a book. When I grabbed the book, a penny came out of it. I haven't touched that book in months. I never put coins in it. I was legitimately about my uncle's death the night before. And then that happens. The Dark Thing When I, a female 33, was 20 years old, not too long after the 2007 housing crash, my family and I moved into a house in Martins Ferry, Ohio. It previously was a duplex that was converted into one large house. It had two floors, six bedrooms, four on the second floor, two on the ground floor, one bathroom next to my bedroom, and a very short basement. I couldn't stand up straight in it, and I'm five foot nine. I lived there with my two older brothers, A and E, 22 and 21, and little sister H. 13. Our rooms were on the second floor, as well as my mother, 52, and stepfather, 45. I also have an older sister, D, 27. I didn't come from a great home life, and eventually my stepfather was put in jail for DUIs and driving without a license. Everything was fine when we moved in, at least. We all had previously experienced paranormal activity in other homes that we lived in. This wasn't something unusual or frightening, because we lived in an oldish city. Other than seeing, hearing, and smelling some weird things, nothing was outstandingly frightening. Dee lived with her husband at the time, along with her two children. Her husband was financially abusive, and was also an addict who got Dee addicted as well. One day Dee called me crying because her husband had spent all their money on drugs. 
left her car on empty and had left her alone at home with the children and no food to eat. I spoke with my mother and we came up with a game plan to get my sister out. I advised her to pack everything up that she could fit in her car, pack up the kids and meet me at the gas station. She lived a short 20 minute drive away across the river. I met her at the gas station and while I filled her can with gas, I hugged her as she cried. I bought her a pack of smokes and we both drove back to the house. But what we didn't know was that Dee was just starting to the worst few years of her addiction. Due to all of the negative energy, something dark had attached to her. The first thing I remember was how dreary the house felt after she had moved in. She eventually was fired from her job as a nurse because she'd been caught stealing meds from her patients. She decided to get back with her husband and he moved in because he couldn't afford their housing payments due to spending all of his money on drugs. And she also had a boyfriend she was cheating on him with. It was a very tumultuous time because Dee is the type of person who thinks all other women are out to get her and steal her man. She assumed that I was trying to sleep with her husband because I tried to be civil around him. I was engaged to someone else at the time. After a day full of my sister trying to physically attack me, this is when the dark things started to materialize. At night, I'd be in my bed. I'd feel like something was watching me. Anytime I was doing schoolwork, it felt like someone was standing behind me while I sat at my desk in my bedroom. It evolved into things in my room being moved around when no one else was able to get into my room. Then, my blankets would be pulled off of me in my sleep. Eventually, I started hearing something walking around my room at night. Then the scratches started appearing. I would wake up with random scratches on my legs and on my back where I couldn't reach them. One night, I was grabbed by my leg, ripped off of my bed by something I wasn't able to see. I'm not a small woman by any means so it would take someone quite strong to yank me that hard and that fast off my bed in dead weight of deep sleep. Another terrifying night, I heard it walking around the hallway outside my bedroom. I lit some sage to cleanse my room and started chanting a protection spell over and over for nearly half an hour. My fiancé, Jay, 19 at the time, called me extremely upset, telling me something was in the house outside his room growling and he felt like it was going to be a, maybe attacking him if he'd left his room. The next day I went over to his house. I lived in the town I grew up in where my sister and her whole family lived before he moved into this new house. There were gouged scratches into the wooden door from where it had been waiting. I asked him if it had left anything, or if he had left anything at his house within the last few days. And I looked around, and I saw my own watch on the windowsill by his bed. I used to have lunch with the wind. This place where I used to work at is located on a small boulevard, behind which an alley which separated the businesses from a residential area, a typical suburban zoning. It was my habit to walk to the nearby deli to get lunch, then find a nice spot in the adjoining neighborhood to eat it, typically on a curb, the shade of a tree. One day while looking for a likely place, I noticed a tree whipping around much the way they do when the wind comes heralding, like an approaching rainstorm. But this was a warm, still sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. I looked at the surrounding trees and shrubs, but all was calm. This one tree and this one tree alone was aggressively swaying to and fro. I decided to sit upon the curb opposite it, observe the situation, see if I could determine the source of this activity. As I watched, it became clear that there was no external wind which shook the leaves and branches, and indeed, there was no single direction in which they moved. It was as though it was being cavorted in, through and around the tree, 
never going so slow as to disturb the grass or roil the dust in the gutter below, but content to remain up in the branches, twisting itself this way and that, seemingly delighted in making the leaves and branches flutter. I tried to see if I could use the movements to determine the directions that maybe this being was traveling, the course which it took, and so by doing get an idea as to its shape and form. But it was not possible, so I resigned to sit and eat my lunch as I watched the extraordinary display. When my break was over, I went back to work, leaving the tree unabatedly dancing. The next day I returned to see if it was still there. It wasn't to my disappointment. I tried to communicate telepathically with it. Didn't receive anything, nor saw any indication it was aware of my presence. It was like sitting in a park watching a child play, blissfully unaware it was being, you know, observed, or watching a dog cavort about not knowing it was seen. The rest of the week, I would come, sit, and marvel. I figured that what I was witnessing was one of those two things. Either I was watching a discarnate being desperately trying to affect physical reality for purposes unknown to me, or what I was seeing was a small wind amusing itself. I came to accept the latter. I kind of figured a soul, whether it be a human or a jinn, would recognize my attention, try to capitalize on it. But the being was blithely content to ignore me. I have since learned that such elemental incarnations are part of a development of souls, one of the many rungs on an eternal ladder. I myself have been such a force, learning my lesson as I assert myself over my environment playing with clouds and birds and trees and fallen leaves, whipping the waters to and froth, gently rippling their surface. Astoundingly enough, now that I look back on it, I got bored, took to finding someplace less royalsome to have my lunch. In retrospect, it was my inability to interact with it that lost my interest. Curiously, I never approached it, I never stood beneath the tree as its leaves and branches spasmed about. And recall that, then as now, I felt honored to witness the wind at play, to have been given evidence that there is more, and that it was not for me to intrude. To this day, many decades later, when I drive past my old job place, I look down the street for the tree and think, that's where the wind was. Last Night August 2019 It was about 1 a.m. in the morning. I had just put my phone down and decided it was time to go to sleep. I was staring straight into the corner of my room for a couple of minutes when I saw a black figure head first slowly come down from the ceiling. I could only see up to his shoulders before I screamed my lungs out and thrashed around my bed trying to find my phone to shine a flashlight at it. But as soon as I did, it was gone. My throat hurt so bad from my scream, but my brother didn't hear me. Oddly enough, my four-year-old dog didn't react to the figure. I'm not sure if she was just that tired and didn't sense it. But it's safe to say I didn't get any sleep that night. I stayed up talking to a friend on the phone until 4.30 a.m., then decided to bring my oldest dog, Toby, into my room for comfort. Two weeks later, my big boy, Toby, passed away. October of 2019... I had just gotten ready to go to a Halloween party. I was taking selfies in my bedroom mirror, which is located directly under where I saw the black figure two months prior. 
A few weeks later, I was looking through those selfies when I noticed one of them had a strange, smudge-looking figure in it. In that photo, my four-year-old dog is looking directly at the figure. For a second, I thought my mirror was possibly dirty, but the figure only appeared in one photo. I showed it to friends, and they thought it looked like a face or a dog. I didn't know how to feel about it whether to think it was my Toby who had just passed, or something else. I'm not sure how to post photos on here, so if you guys would like to see it, please teach me how to post the photo up. Anyways, last night around 7pm I decided to wash my bed sheets, including my mattress cover. The mattress cover is the type you have to zip onto your mattress. It's sort of easy to unzip and remove, but incredibly hard to put back onto your mattress and zip up, especially if you're doing it on your own like I was. During the whole process of washing the sheets and cover and placing them in the dryer, my cat, Nova, had wandered into my room and sat down. Thanks to my poor planning skills, I finished my laundry at about 10.15 p.m., and was now attempting to zip the cover back onto my mattress. In doing so, I had to lift the mattress and place it on my knee to hold it up, while using the bed slats to support my foot, I was wearing slippers. I was halfway done with the zipping when I heard my cat's bell ring immediately after I felt something gently rub against the bottom of my slipper, with enough strength to lift my foot up. It almost felt like when a cat rubs his body against your leg. I yelled, Nova, thinking my cat had gotten under my bed, but she's never done before. I instantly lifted the mattress from my knee and looked underneath it to get her out, but nothing was there. I then looked behind me and noticed Nova hadn't moved from her original spot. She was still facing the same direction away from me indicating that she hadn't moved at all. I know what you're thinking. Maybe she got out before I looked. But the only thing is Nova is mentally delayed. She's incredibly slow with everything she does. She needs help with the simplest activities. Normally, once she finds a spot to sit, she doesn't move for hours. I honestly just began laughing while still holding the bed up. I was so confused. That really just happened? Kept running across my mind. I'm honestly not sure what to think of everything that's happened so far. I haven't told my parents anything. I'm not sure if they've experienced anything in the house or if it's just me in my room. Wife saw a dead friend 90 days after he died. Back in 2010, 2011, I met a World War II veteran who I became very good friends with. His wife passed away in 2012. Didn't have much of anyone left as he outlived his whole family. His parents were born in the 1880s and grandparents served in the Civil War. My mother often made dinners for him. We became very close. We spent a lot of time together. He was like a father I didn't have, and I respected and loved him as if he was my own. Fast forward to May of 2021. He had a fall at the nursing home. He broke his hip and a couple of ribs. He later fell again at the nursing home and broke his clavicle, three more ribs just a few weeks after his first fall. Sadly, that was the beginning of the end. He stopped eating and drinking and died in mid-July. He always had a fascination of ghosts. He told us a particular ghost story that took place in the 1950s. I remember I asked him to visit me if he could. He said he would try. The last time I saw him, he said, I love you, passed away shortly after. 
I was thankful I was there, but I think he held on just long enough for me to, you know, see him. So I wouldn't have to see him pass away. He died five minutes after I left. Now, back to the 1950s ghost story. He used to live in Kansas City around 1953 to 66 in a house that he had thought was haunted. If they had guests over, the guests often felt a presence or had a lingering feeling that something wasn't right. They would sometimes see shadows and hear things too. The house was built on an old Native American graveyard, but the ghosts that haunted their house seemed to be very friendly. My friend always treated the ghosts like a member of their family, so maybe the ghost was friendly because of this. One day in 1958, he went upstairs to go check something in the guest room, opened the door. He got hit with a cold blast of air and all of the curtains were completely horizontal toward the ceiling. He called his wife over who always saw it. The curtains remained that way for about five minutes before they slowly rested on their own. He left us the house and we kept it so we could remember him, keep his legacy alive. I would have dreams about him occasionally, nice dreams too left me feeling calm and at peace. We would sometimes hear footsteps and doors close in the house, but he didn't pay much attention to it, but one day I heard a crash in the master bedroom and the curtains had fallen off the wall somehow. I put them back up but couldn't figure out how it could have come off the wall. The scariest one was around 3 a.m. in the morning in mid-October. My wife and I were sleeping, and she heard a man talking. She couldn't quite make out what it was, but it sounded like he was telling a story of some sort. Something he always liked to do, by the way. My wife thought it was me talking. I turned around to see what was going on. She realized I was asleep. I saw a shadow man standing next to the window right beside me with a triangular-shaped hat, completely opaque. It even blocked out the light from the side of the window. She got scared and screamed and turned on the light. The figure was still there, but disappeared about 15 seconds later. I woke up and she said I stared right at it, but I didn't see anything. Could this have just been sleep paralysis? She was able to move and talk, but I couldn't see the figure. She always has been a little sensitive to some degree. My apologies about formatting. Reddit is a pain to type on. Tell me your creepy experiences from Alaska. Ghost. I've lived in Alaska my whole life. Half of my life has been in my secluded village. The other half has been in the city. I ask this question because I want to know what more there is. Most of my hauntings have happened in my village. The most recent ghost sightings I've had is when I was working as a maid for a hotel near the mall on the south side of Anchorage. While I was looking for the girl who was training me, I walked into the main room where the beds were. I turned back and started walking to the door to leave when I saw somebody, a whole person, walk past the bathroom door. I immediately stopped, thought maybe she just came in and started in the bathroom. I peered inside the bathroom, didn't see her. I looked in the shower. No one was in there. Leaving would have been impossible since there was only the door, which I was blocking and the tub windows that opened out. They were closed. I got spooked, left immediately since my fellow housekeepers told me that there was a spirit of a man who watched the maids clean. And, if he didn't like you, he would attack. Usually stays on the third floor, 
that was working in the first at this time. I'm not 100% sure if it was him, but I didn't want to find out. UFO Anyway, the only other story I have are very short, and they're in my childhood. Due to traumatic instances I've experienced, I cannot remember most of my childhood. Just bits and pieces. But I do remember seeing a huge metal thing. It was hovering up in the night sky. It had propellers like a helicopter. And I would have thought it was a helicopter if it hadn't been for the fact that it was storming like hell that night. I'm talking 40 to 50 foot waves crashing on the bank side. Wind and rain that soaked my hoodie within minutes. I'm not sure what it was, but my friend and I were standing on the bank looking at the inlet for the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, I know. This is when this thing showed up and hovered above up. It was close enough we couldn't see pretty much the whole thing, but far away that we couldn't touch it. Anyway, we both screamed and ran back to the boys and girls club where we told an adult. He said it was a weather balloon. All I remember is that it was made of steel and it was hovering. Never saw it again after that. Boogeyman. My brother and I decided to sleep in our old brother's room. He would keep this room pitch black couldn't see anything at all. No light. We slept in there watching a movie, and the TV turned off by itself after not being in use for a while. I woke up feeling my brother get up and walked out of the bedroom to the bathroom where I saw the light turn on, and dim as he closed the door, my feet were blazing hot. So, I did what you're never supposed to do. I hung them off the end of the bed. As they were cooling, I thought there's no such thing as the boogeyman or whatever. I laid there staring at nothing. I was waiting for my brother to come back so I could sleep in peace. I felt a hand swear on my dog's grave. A hand with fingernails, fingernails, scratching the sole of my foot very quickly. I hid underneath the covers and started begging God or whoever to make it go away. I waited maybe 30 more seconds before I poked my head out, then heard the toilet flush and the door finally open. Never told my brother since he was at the side of the bed, unknowingly protecting me from that thing. I was up against the wall, kept my limbs inside the blanket all night. Encounter with a demon or a shadow person. About ten or so years ago, I have the house to myself, still living with parents at the time. I'm having a friend staying over. The night's going smoothly and pretty normal, playing co-op video games, as teenage boys do. But eventually we both end up on our phones scrolling through Tumblr. My friend stumbles upon a 40 to 50 minute audio tape file of a private investigator talking to a high school campus about his experience during a murder investigation he's conducted. I believe it took place in Texas. Long story short, towards the end of this audio file, it all leads up to the PI believing that the victim was exposed to a demon or an evil entity. Who was the reason for the death of this person? He states at the very end testimony of this case that this demon feeds off of your fear. The more you think about it, the stronger its energy and presence gets. As far as we could both tell, it was a real testimony and not a parody or creepypasta. So me and my friend heard the whole 40 or so minutes of the testimony. We were just enthralled, almost hypnotized by it. And afterward, we try to go back to playing our games. Well, not five minutes later, the power in my room and my room just goes out. 
no big deal. So I just go and flip the breaker, turn it back on. Three minutes later, boom, again. Flip the breaker again. One minute later, boom, again. This continues with shorter time frames until the power in my room just won't come back on. The first time it happens, we think it's mere coincidence. But by this point, fear is really happening. And the thought of this entity is in our heads. At this point, about 12 to 1 a.m., my friend decides that this isn't worth it for him. Heads back to his place. <laughs> Thanks, leave me to myself. So the night goes on a little bit. And after the friend leaves, I spend the rest of the night in my living room. Lights on, I crash on the couch. I wake up with the TV still on. It's between 3 to 4 a.m. And I don't know what the fuck possessed me to go back to my room to sleep, but for some reason, I convinced myself it was all in my head. So I went to bed to go to sleep. I fall asleep incredibly fast. My dream begins with me in my bed in my room, just as I was laid out in real life, in the pitch black. This was extremely vivid and an exact replica of my room. I was as lucid as I would have been awake, but on top of one of the corners of my room, where the wall meets the ceiling, I saw a pair of angry, dirty-looking eyes. They were on a pitch blacker than black. It was hanging on my ceiling, staring into my soul. It was fixated on these eyes, and they were fixated on me. I was just in shock, couldn't move. But the second I tried to move at all, the figure just zoomed to another corner of my ceiling, and then launched at me. I woke up in a sweat just before I got contacted. The dream felt so fucking real and vivid, I woke up literally screaming. There was a real sense of dread that took over my entire body in that moment. I felt mentally and physically sick. Power was still not working in my room, so I went out to the living room again, finished the night with all the lights on, not sleeping at all. Nothing more ever came from that night, but as far as I can tell and find, that audio tape never existed. I spent days upon days trying to find it multiple times all over the internet. Nothing even close comes up in my search results. By the way, power to my room worked perfectly the following day, at least after the sun rose. It's worked perfectly ever since. More crazy experiences I've had that may connect to my last post. I've got a few more stories to tell. My boyfriend and I moved out of the apartment and into a trailer, and everything was quiet for a while, which we were extremely thankful for. After some time passed, we started seeing a tall, inky black shadow figure that was so too tall to stand upright completely. We would see a black mass shoot out of her bathroom door that was about a foot away from her bedroom, and it would disappear into the wall across the hall. We would hear weird whisperings that we couldn't explain. We just ignored it as best we could, hoping that it would just go away. It stopped for a while again, at least for me it did. Fast forward a couple of months. I was in a horrible dark place mentally started again with me at work. I would feel kid-sized hands on my thigh. I would hear a young kid's voice calling my name and asking where I was all throughout my shift. One day, my manager asked me to check to see if the door that leads outside from the stairwell was shut. I'm going to try my best to describe the layout of the stairwell, so bear with me. So when you walk in into your right, there's a deep recess under the stairs for storage that's typically pretty well lit. Then the stairs start, and standing at the bottom, you can look up and see the handrails going up all the way to the top. If you walk past the stairs, there's a narrow walkway where outside is. This was my first time going in, so I looked around to find the door my manager was talking about. 
when I looked to where the storage recess was, I saw this sickly white skin and bony thing crouched into the corner looking at me. Anyway. I saw this sickly white skin and bony thing crouched into the corner looking at me. It had these long bony fingers and hands that looked almost as if it were its feet. I ran to the end of the room and found the door, so I slammed the door shut and turned around to run back out the way I came. As I ran past the stairs, I stupidly thought to look up. When I did, I saw the thing from the storage hole crouching on the railing about seven stories up, jump down to the second floor railing, ran out of the room and down the hall outside, told my manager that I don't want to be in the laundry room for a while because it was right across the hall to that room. I did have to go in there again a couple days later, but there was so much more light in there than the last time. But when I asked my co-workers that use those stairs often, they said it's always super bright in there. I was telling my boyfriend about it a few days later, but he cut me off before I could describe the thing I saw, and said he's been seeing the same thing that I saw at our trailer watching him from behind corners of walls. We decided to ignore it the best we could, stopped with him. But it got worse with me. I won't go into that now. So, I may post the other experiences that made my boyfriend and I leave her place for a few hours because it got so bad. But fast forward about six months. I was unemployed. So, I was home alone during the day while the boyfriend was at work. I started seeing black masses watching me behind corners getting closer to me on my bed every day and I would hear voices in the trailer all day. But I kept it to myself, because I thought I was losing it. Well, there was one day I had had enough, because I saw it looking at me from the corner of the open bathroom door a couple of feet away from me on my bed. So when my boyfriend called me on his break, I told him about everything happening, and he tried to ease my mind by saying that I may just be tired of be seeing things that aren't there. Well, when I started agreeing that he may be right... I saw a huge handprint with what looked like long, pointy fingernails slowly sink into the memory foam mattress we had propped up against the wall in front of her bathroom. I freaked out. This thing was trapped me in my bedroom. The only way out was through a window that won't open or go through where that thing just showed me its hand was. I said goodbye to my boyfriend, grabbed my shoes, and ran through where the thing just was booked it outside and stayed outside for hours until my boyfriend came home. I saw a demon. Scientists have come and can't find any explanation for them, but that's not what this is about. This place is deep in a wooded area, and on top of a mountain that you can see for miles when you get to the top, where the lookout is. It's about 45 minutes to an hour drive from our home. We left a little after 11 p.m. It was a pretty clear night. Well, by the time we reached out, all the way to the top of the destination, a huge storm had come out of nowhere. It was lightning and thundering, raining really hard. It had been my idea to go there. But as soon as my husband turned off the truck, I was struck with fear began to cry. I told him I wanted to go. He asked me why, and I just kept telling him I didn't know why, but I didn't want to be there. So we started to drive back down the winding dirt road. About halfway down the mountain, lightning struck. It was so close, I jumped to the floorboard of the truck, and my husband threw on the brakes. I said, what the hell? He said that the lightning nearly hit the truck. Climbed back up on my seat as he began moving again, and I spotted something glowing red about 15 feet into the woods. I couldn't pull my eyes away. It was looking at us, too. It was completely black, except for its red eyes. It had something similar to, like, bat-like ears and wings. They were tucked behind on its back. But you could see them over its shoulder. Pointy wings. It was about three and a half feet tall, and it was mid-stride when we spotted it. It was the feeling that it brought with it that was so scary. I felt heavy, thick darkness. Like dark, the whole world was dark black. That's the only way to explain it. Like nothing I'd ever felt before or after. 
I felt a little poking around in my head and now realized it was trying to read my thoughts, but couldn't, and was slightly annoyed by that. I don't know how I know, I just do. My eyes and its eyes were still locked. It was only a few seconds, but it seems like time wasn't moving. As we continued driving past, neither one of us, me or my husband, said anything for a few seconds. Quietly, without looking at my husband, I whispered, Did you see that? He looked at me and said, You saw it too? I said, Yeah. Then he looked at me and said, What the fuck was that? We were driving fast now, trying to get out of the woods and away from that mountain. I said it was a demon, I think, and my husband doesn't much believe in things like that. But he said he never wanted to think or talk about it again. It scared him. I could tell. And he didn't get scared. He didn't know what it was. His words were, It was nothing good. And not from this world. We've talked about it every now and again. We even thought about it later. But a few seconds after the lightning had almost struck our truck, and that it somehow connected. It was too weird for the lightning, and then a second later that thing's right there mid-stride in the woods. I'm firm that it was a demon, because the feelings that surrounded it were dark, and turned everything dark around it. I just want to know what demon it would be. I've looked for years now online, and never found anything that looked like it. I'm also thinking that those pointy ears were black horns, maybe not ears. It didn't have any features on its face, just the eyes glowing red, pointy wings folded back, and all black it had two legs it was walking on. It was three and a half feet tall, but terrifying. It was intelligent, it saw us, and could think like we were. I don't know how, but I do. Maybe it told me in a way it just popped into my mind. It was just as intelligent as we are, actually smarter than we are. I know all this because while our eyes were locked, the creature said this to me, but not out loud. So anybody, or anyway, could anyone please tell me if they know more about this creature, maybe? The place is Dover Lights. I think it might be a place for things to pass through easier, like a portal or something. If you know anything else, let me know. Very curious to find out why we came across this thing, and if it came through with the lightning or something. No, this sounds crazy. Women's Refuge Slash Ghost A women's refuge is for women who have escaped abusive relationships. Sometimes the women are found, beat, kidnapped, or sadly killed on the property. This was a two-story home, three bedrooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs, along with the kitchen and lounge. First instant, my first night there. I was last awake upstairs, having a meal in dim light. In the corner of my eye, I see a tall shadow figure walk out of the room of one of the other women's doors. Thought it was hallucinating. I was extremely fatigued, previously starved and sleep deprived. Incident 2 My son woke us up after midnight screaming. Never had he screamed like this. I would sue them. But every time he looked back at this one corner of my room, he would scream all over again. Pers personally, I didn't see anything, and again, didn't think too much of it. Incident 3 Now this one happened every night, and all of us women on the bottom floor thought nothing of it, until we all talked about it. One of the women mentioned it, so every night... Us on the bottom floor would always hear the kids running around, stomping and playing. We found this weird purely because the children upstairs always went to bed well before we ended up in our rooms. But we never questioned it if the noise wasn't a problem. It wasn't until the mother told us her kids stay asleep once they go down that she wouldn't let them stomp around even if they were awake, as these incidents always happened late at night. 
Oh, the next incident is what freaked me the fuck out. Downstairs, there's a door that's always opened. It leads to the stairs. This door was never closed. My room was furthest away from the store. And outside my room was a decent-sized area. There was a couch, a computer on a desk, a computer chair, and across from my room is the washer and dryer and a shower. Note. When you walk downstairs, this room is on the left. As you enter this door, you have to turn left again, which you will see three doors of our individual rooms. It's night. We're all upstairs in the lounge. We hear a thud. Nothing major, but I decided to go down and check my washing that was in the dryer. As I reach the stairs, I see that the door downstairs has been closed. Weird, but I carry on. I walk down, open the door, and notice the hallway light was off. That's when I felt really creeped out. I just got an uneasy feeling. Now the light that was falling in from behind me kind of shined some light into the dark hallway of where our rooms were. I looked in the door to the left. The computer was off. And just as I noticed that, the computer chair turned slowly toward my direction. I noped the fuck out of there, went upstairs and just waited for someone else to get down there. I followed them. I've had many paranormal experiences in the past, which I've told people about. They called me crazy. So, no, I did not share this one with the others. Many other small things happened here. Always at night. But I try not to be fearful. And sometimes acting oblivious or ignoring it was my way of not entertaining whatever was here. Sometimes it's okay to not want to know what's going on. I learned this the hard way in the past. There's some things you can't unsee, and some things you can't unhear. If I wasn't clear in the beginning, women and children had died in this house. Haunted Gymnasium When I was 17, I worked at a gym as a coach to teach kids gymnastics. I won't disclose the location because it was a local gym, but it was huge and had several different areas. A movie theater, a big pool, indoor for swimming lessons, and a karate studio, etc. The entire place was run by teenagers my age and a little older. Needless to say, it was a madhouse every shift, in the best way. It's probably the most fun job I ever had. My manager was always stoned out of his mind. The owner was never there, so we didn't have to worry about getting in trouble, and we'd always fuck around after the close of the gym. Never got a bad feeling from this place. Maybe because I used to go there when I was younger for gymnastics. And even though I can't ever go back there, it still holds a special place in my heart. So weird things started happening in different increments. For instance, the first time something not necessarily scary but definitely eerie happened was during a stormy night. I know, cliche, but just follow me. We decided to close the gym early because of lighting. Lightning. There wasn't anywhere safe to put everybody, so all the kids and their parents left while me, my coworkers, and our manager began closing up for the night. Closing duties were pretty standard. Sweep the floor, pretend to sweep. Mop the floor, make it look wet. Check security cameras, we never did. What can I say? We were young and didn't care. We all went to different sections around the gym, and keep in mind, this place is big. I was in the back room of the swimming pool, where I got a call on the radio from my manager. He said for all of us to go into the office to seek shelter. There is a tornado near us. So we did. And of course, we didn't care. We were laughing and yelling and throwing things at each other. It was all just careless fun. Then we heard a deafening sound, like a chandelier shattering. We thought either somebody broke in, or lightning struck right next to us. We went to look, and turns out one of the beam lights from above came crashing down, breaking into a million pieces. 
we didn't think anything of it. It's an old building. The only scary thing is having to clean up the mess and tell the owner about it, so we did. Then we heard knocking on the windows. This place was full of windows, so we didn't know where it was coming from, but checked it out anyways. Couldn't find anything, not a single person, yet we kept hearing a loud knocking on the windows. This was when we all collectively said, nope. We booked it out as fast as we could, didn't even bother turning the lights off. I contemplated quitting, but realized that this was probably just some teenager fucking with us. So the next day I showed up for work again. This time, it was even weirder. We did the usual sweep, mop, bullshit, clean place. We began closing up for the night. All of a sudden, our manager came by, saying he can't find the store key. We helped him look for hours. Couldn't find it anywhere. He said we can't leave until we find the key, or else it was his ass that would get blamed. Around an hour or so later, my coworker called us all back and said, with an annoyed look, that it was on his desk the whole time. My manager swore up and down it wasn't there before, and that something or someone must have been messing with him. Surprisingly, at least for horror story standards, we all believed him. So, we once again booked it out of there as fast as we could, but it wasn't over. Right when we drove away, all the fucking lights began to flicker. We were terrified out of our minds, but my manager toughened up, braved the place. We all decided to go with him. I swear on my life, dead ass no bullshit, we saw a little girl. We all saw her. She was wearing a pink dress, Mary Jane's, and her hair was tied in a ponytail with a ribbon. I know, I know. It sounds corny as hell, but we all saw her and probably will never forget her. We didn't say a word. We looked at each other and, say it with me, we booked it out of there as fast as we could. We all quit the next day, never stepping foot inside that gym again. Don't believe in ghosts, but I might soon. Don't really know where to start, but here goes. We recently moved house. Been looking for years. And this place was actually a fair price. Yet it needed some redecorating. The previous people smoked inside, but nothing major. So, bargain, right? Well, it started by hearing footsteps upstairs. My hubby and I joked about it being haunted and put it down to the neighbors. Maybe it just sounds like it's above our heads, when in reality it's just next door in their house upstairs. So this goes on for months and becomes the norm. Well, next door went away a few days ago. But the footsteps continue. Summertime rolls around. Good few months ago. I'm the type of person who feels the heat. Usually I get the hands on... Excuse me, I'll get the fans full blast. Well, not in this house, it's constantly cool. I even needed a jumper on the summer. Another odd thing is the smell of toast. At night, we randomly smell toast. This happens around once a week. After a while, I googled it and apparently it could mean that there's an electrical fault or dust in pipes. So we get the plumber and electrician round. Family friend. Everything checks out. We also smelt one up near the hallway at night. Also, while I was finishing cleaning, I found a small card for a hotel on my sofa. I'd literally just tidied. There's no way I would have missed it. So I take a photo, sent it to my husband. He responded to me and said he'd take a look into it. Came back five minutes later and said it's a Spanish hotel that was demolished ten years ago. So we're stumped on that one. A few weeks ago, Hubby and I are watching TV in bed. He goes to the toilet, comes back to bed looking pale. I ask what's wrong. He lets out a deep breath and says, Something ran at me. I ask what he meant. He said, I came out of the toilet and in the corner of my eye it looked like a figure ran at me. This place is fucking haunted. He doesn't believe in ghosts either, so hearing him say that sent chills down my spine. 
but we put it down to eyes playing tricks, illusions, light trickery. Anything but ghosts, basically. And last week, my children come screaming down the stairs with a look of pure terror on their faces. They're eight and six. My eight-year-old says someone was knocking on the door. Where's Dad? Dad was at the shops. And the door unlocked itself. I calm them down and ask them to show me what they mean. So we all head upstairs. My eight-year-old demonstrates and shows me the lock. I suggested that maybe it wasn't locked properly, and maybe the knocking was a rat in the loft. I don't know what else to suggest at this point. I almost forgot about this one. A few months ago, I was sitting in bed, and I heard creaking behind me on the top of the stairs. You know when someone's deliberately making a floorboard squeak by moving to pressure from one leg to the other? <coughs> for about 40 seconds was constantly squeaking. My children liked to play a spy game, so assumed it was one of them. I smiled and said, I know you're there. The squeaking ceased, but I get no response. So I get up to go talk with them. They're not there, they're downstairs. We're still in contact with the people who used to live here. But sometimes we'll get each other's posts, so one of us will drop it off in the other. They're friendly enough, and often we'll have a small chat. Well, I jokingly said, Don't suppose you had any strange happenings while you were there, like not being haunted or anything. Started laughing. Her face dropped, and she said, No, of course not. Anyway, I got the pot on the stove. Better make sure it's not boiling over. Take care. And shut the door abruptly. More information... We have a dog who hates everyone apart from us. He's not bothered by the house. thought animals were supposed to be more in tune with paranormal stuff. It's just weird at this point. Half my brain is screaming ghosts. The other half thinks there must be a logical explanation. I don't know anymore. I feel like I'm going crazy with the amount of strange noises and things I see at night. Before I get into my experiences, I need to give you a picture of where I live. I live in Arkansas, about 20 minutes from a very small town and 40 minutes away from Fort Smith. My fiance and I live in a one acre plot of land quite a ways from the highway surrounded by trees. We have neighbors, but none super close to us. My fiancé's father and grandfather live on this land with us, but they're in their own separate buildings. The first experience happened about two months ago. My fiancé and I were hanging out together because she was off that day. She works from a turkey packaging plant and has gone from 2 p.m. to anywhere around 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., we heard a lot of rustling and movement in the bushes and trees next to our small house. So I went onto the porch with my flashlight, wanted to see what was up. I'm still hearing the sounds, but not seeing anything. So I just brush it off, go back inside. Well, the next day she tells me her grandpa heard stuff too, saw two glowing red eyes in the trees. He tells her whatever it was, it was taller than him, and he's six foot. I hear scraping on my metal roof, which I suppose could be branches, but the times I hear it, there's no wind. A few times I've heard light tapping on the side of my house. Sometimes I think I hear voices outside, but I'm always watching stuff on my phone or playing video games, so I always try to brush it off as me just hearing things. My grandfather has a dog who roams around the property at night when he forgets to bring him in and falls asleep. Fluffy has been barking randomly at night, sometimes for a few minutes to a few hours. A few nights ago, I let my dog out to use the bathroom. I have two leads for them, mostly because I can't trust them not to run off. I notice while I'm getting my St. Bernard off a leash that my husky's starting up the driveway at something. I can't see it. A few seconds later, she just starts cowering like she's scared. Ends up peeing where she is. So I yell at her to get inside. We 
what she does, and I start taking her lead off when I notice Fluffy race up the driveway and start barking. I book it inside. My husky immediately runs into her kennel, wouldn't come out the rest of the night. Not even for a treat that my fiancé, who she adores. The day after the incident with my husky, I again let the dogs out. And as I'm letting my dogs back in, I notice two red glowing dots through my neighbor's fence that's about 30 feet away. And from the positioning, I can tell that they're four to five feet off the ground. I try not to freak out. I do my best to calmly get my dogs back inside where I almost have a panic attack. This was 7.30 p.m. My fiancé got home around 11 p.m. where I gained the courage to go back out with my dogs when the lights were still there. When I went to investigate the next day, they were gone. And that night, no lights. Yesterday, I let both my dogs out again. And we were out there for a few minutes when my fiancé comes rushing out and asks me if I'm okay. Apparently, she heard a loud noise like I fell and like my St. Bernard yelped like he was injured. I got freaked out and told her to stay outside with me, where she tells me how quiet it is outside and how she's getting a bad feeling. That's everything I can remember at the moment. I don't know what's happening. Honestly, I feel like I'm going crazy. If anybody has any answers or similar experiences, please leave a comment. I'll answer any questions as best I can. I had to tell my husband that he died. In October 2017, I lost my husband while seven weeks pregnant. The day he died, I left to work in a hurry. We shared some texts after he woke up about a phone interview that he had later in the day about him having some pain in his leg. Then a quick phone call, a couple hours later, to tell me that he was running to the pharmacy for pain meds. I attempted several calls about an hour later to make sure it was home safe. There was no answer, which wasn't like him. I tried calling him for hours until finally a woman answered his phone, stating that he was in the sheriff's department. Asked me to come home. At the time I worked in a prison, and out of fear that he'd gotten into some sort of trouble, left my post, got to my car, and sped the whole 30-minute drive back to town. Upon turning to our parking garage, I see a large white van that read Coroner. As I walked up to her home, I was greeted by the same lady on the phone blocking my view into her home. She let me know that my husband suffered a heart attack, later confirmed as a pulmonary embolism explaining the leg pain he mentioned the morning of his death. Apparently, my husband made it back home and into the house and locked the security door before collapsing from a heart attack. He screamed for help, our neighbor and her son heard and ran over to help, but they couldn't get into the house due to all the doors and windows being locked. The son later apologized for not breaking a window, stated due to the shock and panic he'd lost all sense of reason. They were able to talk to him through the door while they called 911 but unfortunately he stopped responding a few moments before help arrived. He was pronounced dead on arrival. A week or so after his service, his best friend's wife offered a cleansing and a card reading by her mom. Although I was skeptical at the moment, I was desperate for any kind of communication with them or closure. She mentioned a lot of interesting things in the reading. But the most prominent for me was that he was currently in a stage after death where the soul relives its whole life. She compared it to when people say their life flashes before their eyes. She said it was a place every soul visits after death as a way to reflect on the way that they lived their life and the person that they were. She told me his death was so sudden that he hadn't realized he had died yet, that I'd need help for him to cross over. She said she felt that I was... Well, I was the one that would help him, and instructed me to light white candles in a jar of water to guide him to peace. Fast forward a few months later, and I moved into my parents' house. I was laying on the couch and started to feel very heavy, as if I'd been administered anesthesia. It was definitely some type of sleep paralysis that I was feeling. 
When I could finally open my eyes, I was still laying on the couch in my parents' living room, except my husband was sitting on a chair right in front of me, as clear and as real as before he died. Before I could speak, he began telling me he was nervous for his phone interview, the one he was supposed to have the day he passed. He told me he was excited and hopeful that he'd get the job, and wanted help preparing for it. I looked at him with pain and tears, and he began to repeatedly ask me what was wrong. I apologized. Baby, I'm so sorry. Do you remember the pain you had in your leg? You had blood clots. One made its way to your heart. You aren't going to make it to the interview, baby. You died. I'll never forget the look in his face. It was a long period of confusion that turned into realization. I apologized again, told him I loved him, and begged him to respond. He just sat there with a strange look in his face. I immediately woke up. The chair from my parents' kitchen table now sat right in front of me, empty. I never dreamed of him after that. I pray it's because I helped him get closure that he needed to cross over. We have a five-year-old son now who dreams very specific dreams about his dad. He wakes up talking about things that he couldn't possibly know unless it came straight from him. Losing my husband was the first real experience with death, but it brought me peace to have my own bit of confirmation that there is something more after life. Ghost from Europe haunted me for over two years. This is my very real story that happened in 2014. My family flew from the U.S. to Wales for my brother's wedding. We stayed in a very old remodeled barn party house in Abergavenny. It was right below the canal. And we had a free day before the wedding party. I was meeting at a local pub that night. I got back from a run at the canal, showered, and had time to take a nap still a little jet-lagged before dinner. As I'm lying in bed, I feel the presence of a woman, and then feel the front side of a hand stroke my cheek. Then feel the entity jump on me and pin me to the bed, struggling, finally get free. I then hear a woman's cackle and laugh three times, like, ha, ha, ha. This was witnessed. My door was half open. There was a sitting area outside. My mom was sitting there and she saw me laying in bed struggling. She didn't hear the laugh. Nothing else happened during the trip. The next month I started dating a woman who would eventually move in and become my wife. This is when things started getting weird. Anytime she would spend the night, if we fall asleep with an arm or leg touching each other, we would both have terrible nightmares. I don't ever recall having bad dreams or nightmares. One that I recall vividly was an extremely old and wrinkled woman in black and white screaming at me in a foreign language I didn't understand. We would make a point to sleep far apart as possible to avoid the dreams. Then one night I have a dream. I'm in this astral plane. Everything is blue around me. Standing in front of me is a young, petite woman. She was short, like five feet tall. Looked very European, with a round face and dark blonde hair. She was dressed in a very period-correct plain cloth from a long time ago. Wasn't wearing any makeup. She walked up to me and said, My name is Abigaila. And nothing else. I tried talking to her, but that's all she said. Now, I've never heard the name Abigail in my life. If I Google it, I'd see it's Eastern European for Abigail. After that, Abigail got really spiteful and tried to wreck our relationship. A couple of key things happened. Pulled my wife's hair. She was walking up her steps and was talking to me. And I see as if somebody grabbed her hair and yanked her down each step. She froze and we just looked at each other, bent her engagement ring, it was on the dresser, and one morning she showed me that it was so smashed she couldn't get it on her ring finger, and to me, loaded a conversation from Google Hangouts when I was talking to another woman before I met my wife. I didn't even have Hangouts installed on the phone, I 
conversation happened on my previous phone. Thankfully, it was date stamped, and I settled her down and showed her. Other small things like hiding stuff. Stuff was going missing constantly. One time we bought a bunch of meat, and it was in this huge bag. We had set it down on the basement to put other groceries away, and it was gone. We looked everywhere. Didn't find it until a year later when there was a bag of rotting meat in the basement. As the next couple of years went on, things started to die down. And when we married, they stopped. I guess she finally gave up. Never had any sage cleansing done, or had a medium visit the house because I didn't want to make things worse and present a challenge for the entity to fight. But I was researching mediums, and I was close. Did anyone else experience this? I don't really believe in ghosts or supernatural in a traditional movie way. But I like to think of myself as an open-minded person. I don't know why I never made myself share this story. I've been sitting on it for about five years now. This happened in my college years during a class that was notoriously known as the nap time, because the professor had a habit of turning off the lights while doing presentations, and had a really, really soft voice. Not a good combination for somebody who wants to pass classes. I was sitting near the window at the time, looking through it while trying not to fall asleep for the ninth time. The weather was awful, and the rain was followed with strong gusts of wind which swayed the trees. All of this is important information for the story. You know when you look at the window at a certain angle, you can see light reflections and shapes from the other side of it? Shapes of buildings, streets, and people that you'd have to physically move to see. But because of the way the light bounces, the image just reflects like film. Like when you look at a bus window and lock eyes with a passenger that's six rows away from you. I'm not sure if I explained it right. Because of the way that window was open, I had the perfect view of the balcony of some building that was down the street. The lights were on, so the silhouettes were really clear and sharp. I was looking at the swaying branches when it happened. There was a humanoid shape swaying across the balcony. I can't even call it swaying. The way it was moving was as if somebody took a rag doll and aggressively threw it from side to side. But in a really organic way. At first I thought, maybe it's some branches that got stuck together or something. But when you spend 20 plus minutes looking at said branches, you tend to notice the difference. What cemented that was when a moment later a silhouette of a dog appeared on the same balcony, appearing to chase it. Honestly, in retrospect, sounds like a really funny sight. But it wasn't. It was like the movements of the dog just amplified the way that rag doll-like shape moved. I wasn't sleepy anymore. I also couldn't stop looking at it. Can't even explain why it got me so unnerved. It wiggled with every aggressive movement. It was also kind of floaty. It was like the dog was moving in 25 frames per second while the shape was 100. Another reason I can't say that it was my mind playing tricks on me was the trajectory of the movement. While the trees swayed from top to bottom, almost at 60 degrees maybe, the shape moved along the balcony from left to right, constantly, just agitating the dog. I don't even know if it was chasing it or not. Now that I'm sitting and writing this, I can imagine I could have just leaned in and tried to see what it really was, but I didn't. I was just frozen in my seat, looking at them moving from left to right the whole class. I didn't even look away. I was just watching the same spot and trying to, I don't know, wait them out. I didn't, and the class ended, packed my things, and left. Could have just been my instinct of don't fuck around and find out at play. It's been a really long time. I'm not sure how accurate my memory is. 
but the image I attached is probably the closest I remember it looking like. I'm trying to see if anybody here had similar experiences or knows anything. Even if it was just my mind playing tricks on me, I think it makes an interesting story at least. A happy way of looking at it would probably be that they were just playing around. And for my peace of mind, I'm running with that theory. I've seen ghosts all my life, but only ever encountered dangerous ones twice. Once at a theme park, I saw one at a wave pool at the very top of the wall on the far side. I also saw one at the middle school where I was racing my friend down the hall. I had looked over and seen a man that looked like he was in his teens wearing similar clothes to the area of the Industrial Revolution. Another time, I had seen one on the bridge over the river near my house. It looked like he was about to jump off. The weird thing about that encounter is that the entire car went quiet when I had seen him. Nobody else said anything, but I had clearly seen him. There were about six kids and two adults in the car, so it was very odd that it had just went suddenly quiet. Now that I'm older, I've encountered a few spirits. But more recently, I've encountered ones that seemed darker in nature. The first one I encountered in my old apartment I lived in about a year and a half ago. I had one of the sleep paralysis dreams. I don't really ever have nightmares, and if I do, they're very few and far between. But this night, I had a dream of some sort of entity walking down the stairs behind my closet door. There are no actual stairs behind my closet door, but in my dreams there were. I was trying to open my eyes, but I was frozen. Just as the entity opened the door, I woke up. It had shaken me so much that I couldn't go back to sleep. Someone in the trailer park I'd lived in died a couple of months previous. He was left there for about a month until somebody did a welfare check. He had died of AIDS, I believe, and just rotted there for a month. The other time I encountered something, I had just moved into my current house. It's a mobile home, and an old one from the 70s. It's been here a long time with many different owners. When we moved in, one thing I disliked about the place is that the closets have mirror doors. But because I'm renting it, I can't do anything about them. When we first moved in, I had felt a little weird about the place, so I blessed my bedroom and prayed over it. Not long after, we started hearing weird noises. I have a daughter who's young, and she was about five months at the time. We would hear her crying, go check on her, but she'd be fast asleep. Other times, we would hear moans like a woman was crying in the same area. My daughter's room is on the other side of the house. We've heard knocking on the windows and all sorts of things. It seemed to go away since I've blessed the entire house. Though only once in a while I'll hear a weird noise or hear a baby cry, my daughter will be fast asleep. Just wondering if anybody had any thoughts on this. Should I record any happenings? I do have a video camera that I could set up. Update. So I guess the ghosts don't like to be talked about. They hate gossip. Because today they came back. A lot more aggressive than before I heard my own voice this morning. And then a few minutes, another baby cry. 100% not my daughter, as stated in the comment, because she was right in front of me. They went silent for a bit until my boyfriend came home. Then they came back. My daughter woke up from her nap, crying a lot more than usual and very unsettled. Not long after, a pole that was used as part of my shoe stand where we put our shoes when we come in from the door, fell on its own. Then we heard maiming again, which was followed a few minutes later by knocking. It sounded like my daughter's bedroom, where most of the activity comes from. I'm going to make another post so I can share the video, because I don't think I can do it on this one. But that's not the first time I've heard knocking on a window. Today has been the most active we've seen in two months. Just creepy. Really creepy. Weird 
as fuck closet. I live in a modest house. I live there with my mom, her boyfriend, and my brother. I'm the only one in the family who truly believes in ghosts. We have two cats and a dog, a variety of animals in my room, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. The house doesn't have much history, it has only had three families living in it before us. Back in September, Mom noticed one of our cats, Wilbur, who would always stand in front of and pull open a closet in her laundry room. It had a large machine of some sort that helped power the house. Very small, not any places to hide that might entice a cat to explore it. The day after she pointed this out, I walked past the closet to get to the garage. Goosebumps grew all over my body. I'll admit that this could be contributed to my slight paranoia about it, but it felt more severe than other times I've gotten chills over something scary. Things progressed over the next few weeks. I went outside through the front door one morning. Everyone was either gone, at work, or asleep. To clean something for my animals, and when I went to open the door again, it was locked. It's the kind of lock that you twist to the side, like a control for a stovetop, and it requires a bit of force to turn. When my mom came to answer the door after about 10 minutes, she said her ring alarm never went off. The doorbell only rang once, even though I pressed it multiple times. In my room, there are two art pieces that my grandma made and let me keep after she passed. They're made of planks of wood and crushed soda cans, and curly hair made out of what I can only assume to be very thin metal. Sometimes when my boyfriend is drilling holes in the wall, the hair on one of these quote-unquote people trembles. Though it can't be heard over the sound of the drill. However, in the middle of the day, one strand of hair started shaking much harder than the other times and wouldn't stop for a good hour, despite there being no drilling going on. After those weeks of weird things happening, it came to a climax. Wilbur was almost screaming at the closet door, pulled it open constantly, even after we'd close it. None of the pets in my room came out to get treats, which they get each day at about the same time. They only came out to get sips of water. When I saw them, they looked sluggish. My phone also went to shit. My keyboard would randomly start lagging. The charger I'd been using for almost a month gave out on me. And at one point, the phone restarted itself without being manually turned off. I still have a lot of issues with it to this day, from getting overheated quickly to having to do a total restart at least once a week to keep things running. Our usual reliable Wi-Fi, usable, excuse me, our usually reliable Wi-Fi has been very poor since that day. So yeah, maybe there's something there, or maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. But all of this just seems very suspicious. Thanks for hanging out. See ya. The Weird Cat There was one night that always seemed to replay through my mind. Even years later, I still can't get over it. Ten years my brother spent the night with me as I began living with my grandparents, for very personal reasons. It seemed odd, but I remember we were in the front room of my brother was on MySpace. 
I think I was watching what I remember to be Full Metal Alchemist on the TV. Our grandpa had a habit of turning the thermostat to below room temperature because he would get hot easily. As I was watching my show, I noticed that I could see my breath as I breathed. Condensation. I looked at my brother and expressed how ridiculously cold it had gotten in the room. I decided to get up and change the thermostat until I noticed the most strangest thing as I entered the other room. The other rooms in the house were basically room temperature, but the dining room was practically freezing. My grandparents only had one unit, and that unit would keep all the rooms the same temperature when being used. I walked back into the dining room to tell my brother what was going on, till something ran past my feet and I stumbled. Now, I will state that my grandparents have a cat. His name is Harley. He is dumber than a sack of potatoes, but very lovable. However, this wasn't him. Harley was sleeping on the sofa in the same room that we were in. I looked up into the next room, and on the top of this old sewing machine that my grandmother had was this strange cat-like creature. Description Sitting on the top of the sewing machine was this somewhat large cat. It had ears, but no mouth, no nose, just two black pits for eyes, white organic fleshy material for skin. Weirdly enough, it had a hue of purple on its back. But the main attention was its dark, gaping eyes, as if they were lifeless. It stared at me for about 20 seconds before jumping down, walked toward the wall and just faded out like someone photoshopped at the opacity, just turned it down till it vanished. My mind was stumped and shocked. I turned to my brother realized that he had a shocked look on his face as well. I remember the exact words that came out of his mouth. This was that night after seeing it. Dude, did you see that freaky ass cat? This guy jumps up from the computer and yells, You saw that too! I wish we had smartphones back then. I've had three incidences which I could have taken a picture of the weird crap that goes on. But it never crosses my mind because I'm trying to process what the hell is in fact going on. The strangest part of this is that after that faded away, there were voices coming from the kitchen, as if a number of people had appeared and were throwing a party. And let me just say, these voices were loud. However, no one in the house was woken up from it, aunt and grandparents. Neither did the cat, which was freakishly odd. It was 3 a.m. when this all happened. It lasted till 3.04, 3.06 a.m. I know that from research that 3 a.m. is the witching hour. But it's just a coincidence. Or has anybody else experienced something like this? All the crazy things that happened at my house. So I live with my boyfriend, my eight-year-old son, my boyfriend's uncle, and myself. So it's just the four of us. We had little things going on all the time. One time the vacuum cleaner was just sitting there like it always does. It's not in use. And all of a sudden it just fell over and hit a glass door of a cabinet with enough force to shatter the glass. I was standing in the same room and literally watched as it happened. Also, things go missing constantly, then would turn up hours or even days later in a super obvious spot like right out in the open where there's no way that we could have missed seeing it before. This happens regularly. All kinds of random things in the house too. Literally makes me go crazy sometimes. There's also the shadows. We have shadows that you can see even in a dark room. Like the lights are off and the room is almost completely dark, but there will be this human-shaped area that's just way darker than the darkness around it. 
It's scary to be laying in bed watching the shadow of a person walk across the wall. There's no light sources to make a shadow. There's multiple shadow entities, because I've seen more than one at a time. I'll also occasionally glimpse them in the daytime moving around, but they tend to stay in the darker areas of the room, like the shadowy corner. Maybe being in the shadows makes them feel like they can't be seen or something, but I can definitely see what looks to be a super dark shadow on the top of regular shadows that are there. Plus, they move when all the regular shadows just stay still. Then there's the back bedroom where my boyfriend's uncle sleeps. It's one bedroom at the far end of the trailer all by itself down a hallway where my washer and dryer are. If you're in the living room, you can look straight through to the kitchen down the hallway and see the bedroom door at the far end of the hallway. So if the door is open, you can see straight into the bedroom all the way from the living room. Mo well, my grandma was over that day, and she was standing in the kitchen cooking. But that side of the kitchen was hidden by a partial living room wall, so I couldn't see her standing there. I looked down the hallway and saw what looked to be her standing in the uncle's bedroom, just facing the bed and staring. So, knowing Grandma is in the early strange stage of dementia, I was wondering what she was doing in Uncle's room, so I started to walk that way. As soon as I get past the kitchen wall, I can see the whole kitchen, and I see Grandma standing there at the stove. I looked back down the hallway, and the person, or whatever it was, wasn't there anymore. Uncle's also woken up to see shadows in his room staring at him, as well as some friends who stayed in that room before Uncle moved in. They actually stayed for a couple of weeks. Didn't see anything at first. Then one night the girl woke up with a horrible feeling and saw a person standing by the bed watching her. She freaked out and went under the covers. When she came back out, the person was gone. All she could say was that it was an older lady. The guy staying with her in the bedroom didn't see anything that night, but he did say that he didn't like sleeping in that room it gave him a bad feeling. He didn't end up seeing something, but it scared him so bad he refused to talk about it. That's when he left. The girl left a few days after he did, saying she didn't really like sleeping alone in that bedroom. A couple of months later is when Uncle moved in. He said he's seen some weird shadows, but that so far really nothing bothered him. I've also slept in that room once and felt fine, so maybe it's only certain people. There's probably other things that happened around here that I'm missing, but I think this post is long enough already. So anyways, I'm pretty sure I share my home with not only living people, but at least one ghost and possibly shadow entities. I posted about strange things going on outside my house. So here's what's going on inside. The first thing that happened was when my husband and I, boyfriend at the time, we were playing hide and go seek. We decided to take a break and watch a movie. I had to use the restroom, so away I went. I went into our guest bathroom which is the only one downstairs besides the one in our master bedroom. It's located in the corner hallway next to the two spare rooms in the house. Currently, his office and our son's room. I went inside and quickly did my business. I don't like being alone for obvious reasons, I feel. Started to wash my hands. The sink is right next to the door. While I was drying my hands, I heard and saw a shadow of the door. Someone run up to the door, stop, turn around, and run into one of the adjacent rooms. Figured it was my husband. Maybe he was ready to start the game again. Ripped open the door. Fully searched each of the rooms and didn't find anyone. Which should have if it was him. There was no way for him to run by the time whatever it was moved from the door. And I opened it. I clearly saw the shadow go right toward the room, not to the left, toward the living room. The second thing that happened was my husband and I were playing pool, which is right next to our front door. Right after we broke, we heard a loud knock on the front door. 
We looked at each other, obviously confused as pretty late at night. We both went to the door and answered it. There was no one there. We both stepped out onto the porch to take a look around. We stayed out there for about 30 seconds or so to take a look around and headed back in. We were both shocked to see that the pool balls were in a straight line down the center of the pool table. It was very shocking since I had just mentioned. It just broke and the pool balls were scattered when we exited. The third and most recent thing that happened was when I was alone in the house. Shocker. I was sweeping the steps since some of the plaster-like stuff on the ceiling had started to flake off and make a huge mess. I was cleaning up the landing at the top of the steps when I started mouthing off at the energy that I was feeling around me. I felt unwelcome in my own home and that pissed me off. I know I shouldn't have said the things I did, but I was pissed as this is my house. Well, right what I said here, but I still live in this house. I don't want to put those words back into existence. You'll see why. There are three rooms upstairs, and all doors were closed during this time. Once I started getting really belligerent, all three doors started to shake violently in the door frames. It was as if there was someone behind each of them, just shaking and banging them against the frames. I immediately started having a panic attack, sank to the floor. I screamed out for whatever it was to stop and that I was sorry. And it did. I bolted down the stairs to find my phone and call my husband. As I was about halfway down, I felt a hard and violent shove at the center of my back. Almost caused me to tumble down the remainder of the steps. My husband has never felt threatened in our home, but I constantly feel it. Even before I made all those comments. And this all happened before the car started showing up. They were all several months apart. Update. I think I am a conduit. So I'm not a drinker anymore. I was as a teen, but not so much now. I just get bored of it. Never finish more than one drink before it's like, ah, I don't have to. So I decided to have my one drink as my girlfriend went to bed. We have LEDs on at night pretty much all night, till I sleep, because I operate during the night watching her sugars, if she's without a CGM, type 1 diabetic. And I have terrible eyesight, so we don't want me getting hurt. I also have other medical issues that could really be, well, I could get really fucked up if I do a misstep or something. She deals with it and is a good sport. So as I was laying in bed, I got the insane urge to get out of bed. I would watch her sleep from the foot of it, and I did for like five minutes. Then I looked beside me, and I just saw this dark but very clearly there in a blue light, just a figure standing shoulder to shoulder with me. I didn't feel threatened, but I felt more calmed. Then all of a sudden I felt fear, hopped into bed and woke up my girl. Shadow was gone. Then a few days pass of no activity, and our cat comes into our room. Her name's Neo. She's this super tame, super calm, lovey old cat. Well, after a short while, she puffs her tail out, gets her hackles up, or the cat equivalent to hackles, and starts hiding behind me and my girlfriend. It starts bugging us, so we're just being affectionate to her. So I go to kick her out. As I near the door, she starts getting upset, so my girlfriend makes an offhand joke about the movie Lights Out. Like, oh, there's going to be someone behind that door like in the movie. And I shit you not, when I opened that door, there was indeed a shadowy figure standing there. 
the same one I believe as I encountered before. I was very obviously shitting some bricks, but I tried to play it down for my girlfriend. She gets very scared any time something starts happening. So the cat loses its mind, and we just decide to stay in the room for the rest of the night. We had treatments for her if she went low, so we were set. She went into the bathroom later in the evening, though, and she ran back into me because she heard someone whispering her name to her through the crack under the door. There have been other minor things, like electronics glitching out and making almost cartoonish glitch noises. Sometimes with voices ringing through the static and bugging. I really hope someday we can catch this stuff on film. Maybe while making a YouTube video or while I'm live on Twitch. If so, I'll put it up with any updates I do further. Once again, I respect your opinion if you don't believe me. And I thank you guys for not being rude about it. What a wonderful community there is here in this subreddit. I hope to read some of your stories as well. I'd like to point out that it's getting stronger, whether it's in a bad way or a good way because now it's consistently showing itself to me. Before, we would catch glimpses, but now it's like there's something right there. Any ideas yourselves about what's happening here and why it shows itself and doesn't hurt us? We saw the same hitchhiking ghost three times on the same road, years apart. I grew up in North County, San Diego. I don't live there anymore, but this story pertains to the road leading through Lake Hodges, a reservoir and hiking spot in Escondido, California. It's a gorgeous but spooky area. The lake is surrounded by sleepy canyons filled with yapping coyotes and old farmhouses spread out among big lots. There's barely any streetlights on the residential streets cradling this lake. The lake itself has some dark history only locals might know. A high school girl got raped and murdered while jogging along the main trail when I was around the same age. My best friend's sister and her friend found voodoo dolls and knives stuck to some oak trees along the trail once. Creepy shit. San Diego looks like nothing like the Deep South, but Lake Hodges has a similar complex about it. It feels like something unspeakable has happened there. When I was in high school, think 2009, 2011, my friends and I would drive around and smoke cigarettes. We listened to new music and had existential adolescent conversations. Often we would drive around at night. I believe the first time this happened was in late winter of 2010. We were driving down the windy road past the point of separating the dam from the rest of the lake. As we were about to turn a corner, we saw this figure of a tall man standing by the side of the road. He had his thumb up, looking to hitchhike, perhaps. His hair was wet and black, and the best adjective I can conjure for him is slimy. He was wearing this wet trench coat, and his face was... Juan. W-A-N. His face was wan. When her headlights met his eyes, they looked vacant yet melancholy, staring off into space like a zombie. But still, there was something soulful about them. Can't explain it. It's been over a decade, so I've had plenty of time to reflect on the strange sorrow I've witnessed in him. Anyway, he vaguely resembled a drowned pirate. We were all terrified. A few months later, same thing. 
we saw the same figure hitchhiking a bit further down the road. This time we were even more mortified. A hitchhiker in the same place in the same clothes twice. A year or so later, I'd returned from college for spring break and was catching up on my same friend, barreling down the road. Somehow, the topic of the hitchhiker came up. My friend told me that she had just seen him again recently at a different spot down the same road at night. We commented on how we knew he was a ghost, or just not human. My main questions are still, why would a hitchhiker always be looking for a ride along the same road, always at night? and seemingly only in the early part of the year. And how the hell is it so obvious he's dead? Full body apparition seen floating in our room last night. Kind of blown away right now after just having a conversation with my wife. Last night she saw a floating woman figure in a flowing gown or robes above her bed and looking out toward the window. We live in a mobile home. It was bought new and given to her. There's nothing weird about the trailer park where it's located as far as I know. No one has ever died in the home and we have zero other paranormal things that happen. Like nothing goes missing, no doors slam, no footsteps, no voices. But we've now both seen this floating figure. The first time was around three years ago. My dad had just died in a car accident with his longtime girlfriend. At the time, I saw twice or three times a floating woman figure above my bed upon waking, which would quickly vanish. I chalked it up to like a combination of sleep paralysis and the trauma of the loss. At the time, I thought it looked an awful lot like my pop's dead girlfriend. I didn't really care for her, not sure why she'd be visiting me. But anyhow, it scared the balls out of me at the time, but I rationalized it away. A couple years later, I found out that my wife had experienced a similar thing around the same time. We started discussing it, because our young daughter, maybe six months at the time, would wake up screaming sometimes. She would appear to be fixated on the ceiling of the room. Paranormal came up, and that's how we wound up sharing our stories with each other. Both of us are pretty rational, so I just chalked it up to sleep state or something similar. Anyway, after finding out that we had both seen the same thing, my wife said that she wanted to get rid of this antique cabinet that she'd inherited from her deceased mother, in case there was something attached to it. It had been bought at an antique store, so we give the thing to her sister. She later found out that her own daughter was waking up with night terrors talking about a lady or something following receiving the cabinet. But we had no more unusual behavior from our daughter, giving this thing away, so we probably forgot about it. Oh, we also burned some sage around the thing, around the same time for good measure after we got rid of it. Then last night my daughter wakes up screaming, like straight terrified, inconsolable. She's two and a half now. My wife and I take turns putting her back down. She wakes up, it was her turn. So she goes to put her to sleep and my daughter's prone, being curled up tight in a ball. My wife tried to pick her up, but she didn't want to move or uncurl. So she laid down next to her and glanced up toward the ceiling and saw the woman floating vertically facing toward her window. She couldn't see a face. She thought, oh, there's that thing again. So she closed her eyes, tried not to freak out for her daughter's sake. My daughter refused to look up or turn over when my wife laid down. She just buried her head into my wife's armpit. Kept saying something about the fan. Maybe the ceiling fan wouldn't really calm down. Eventually I went in to help calm our daughter, which we eventually successfully did. She went back to sleep. While my wife was putting her back down, she texted me something about seeing a ghost, which I don't see until later. And when I do see the text, I kind of missed it trick a light or something. We only just now talked about the extent of it. Kind of blown away. No sleep paralysis or drug use or any other reasonable explanation. She says she saw it plain as day. 
When I saw mine, it looked very clear to me. The best way I can describe it is like a scene from Ghostbusters of a floating ghost, but more transparent and ugly. Now I'm thinking my own experiences were real too. True story of how my daughter knew death was coming. The story happened a few years ago. I lived in a building with my daughter who grew attached to my neighbor's husband, Teddy, as if he were her dad. One day while talking with my neighbor's wife, my daughter, who's two and a half years old at this time, came running to the door. But rather than running into my neighbor's apartment to go cuddle up Teddy, she froze at the doorway. She told his wife and I that I needed to be quiet as Teddy was sleeping. Teddy was not sleeping. He was, in fact, sitting on the couch, watching TV. Teddy stood up and called for my daughter to come see him. Again, my daughter looked at his wife and I and told us that Teddy was sleeping, that we needed to be quiet. I could see she was getting upset at the fact that we were laughing while telling her that Teddy's awake and wants you to go sit with him. Teddy started approaching the doorway, where we were standing. My daughter began to cry, ran to our apartment screaming, No, Teddy's sleeping. I could feel the goosebumps running across my body. That same day my daughter went to a relative's place for a sleepover. I had invited my neighbors to come over for a bit. Teddy came over and explained how he wasn't feeling the best. Now he was breathing in and out of a paper bag before coming to my apartment. I insisted he go to the hospital to make sure he was alright. On the way, Teddy fell ill, asked to pull over so he could be sick on the side of the road. As he was kneeling beside the car, Teddy suffered a major heart attack passed away while on the way to the hospital. When the service was held for Teddy, it's such a strong feeling that I had to bring my daughter with me. She brought her favorite blanket with her, of course. When my daughter and I got to the funeral home for the viewing, we were greeted by everyone in Teddy's family. They all knew who my daughter was, as Teddy used to talk about her all the time. I held my daughter close as we walked up to the casket where Teddy laid. My daughter leaned down almost as if she was going to whisper to him. She then told me that Teddy was sleeping and that he was really cold. She took her blanket, tucked Teddy in, then looked at him and said, Oh, he was happy and warm now. That night, as I sat alone in the living room, my phone began to ring. Four or five rings later, still no name appeared. I quickly answered the phone in the middle of the ring, only to hear the dial tone. The call didn't even show up as an incoming call afterwards. It felt like Teddy called to say goodbye to us. It was so strange that my daughter knew there was something wrong with Teddy before anything even happened. A few months later, we went to go visit my grandmother who was passing away from pancreas cancer. My daughter refused to enter my grandmother's room. She kept saying how grandmother was sleeping, that everybody should go leave her to let her go to sleep. I instantly began to cry. Only four days later, I got the call that my grandmother passed away in her sleep. The Haunted Racetrack At the time, I was 17. My town has an abandoned horse racing track. Now, for context, this building is tucked back from the road. It's at the point of falling apart, like can't go upstairs falling apart. 
Me and my dumb friends, of course, are enticed by this place. So one night we decide to go. After walking to the track from the main road, your body is just filled with the eerie sense. We decided to enter through the main entrance this time instead of the back. Upon walking in the shattered glass doors, there's about five or six of us going this time, me entering last. The glass continued to crunch behind me and my friend Colin. He allowed me to use his name, so Colin. Colin confirmed to me that he heard it too. So we first headed the basement. Down here not much happens besides some odd bangs and clanks, which could be anything. But the real fear set in when we went back to the main floor. Now this floor is huge and open, windows on all sides. So we couldn't use lights since we were trespassing, didn't want anyone to call the cops after seeing the lights. We enter the middle of the floor and stand in the darkness. The only light coming from the moon through the windows which is when we started hearing steps above us. Of course, in my head I'm saying, fuck this. But we decide to wait a little longer. This is when shit got scary. We started hearing more and more noises. To one side, we could see a shadow figure walking briskly across, only to be outlined by moonlight. And then to the other side, the same damn thing. But they didn't look like normal people. They didn't move the same way is the only way I can explain it. At this point, it seems like these figures are surrounding us. My fight or flight says get the fuck out. And so, that's what I told my friends to do. We booked it out of there and didn't stop running until we were back at the car. So now back home... I keep this brief since it's not the paranormal parts. I look up possible deaths at this place. Turns out two girls were murdered on the train tracks behind the building. Some people died working there as well. This is probably about a month later. Only three of us this time. Colin again and I'll say Jay. We do the typical walking around and dumb provoking. The typical noises of bangs and clanks. So we decided it was too boring and it was time to leave. And that's when Jay says he wants to wait a second alone while we walk back to the car. Not even a minute later, he's sprinting past me. Jay never gets scared. So Colin and I decided, oh fuck, let's run. We get back to the car where Jay tells us he was talking out loud, asking if anyone was there when he heard a voice behind him. Instinctively, he turned around, and that's when something pushed him from the way he was just facing. Since that instant, I never returned. Partly because I turned 18 and didn't want to ruin my future being caught. Partly because I felt like something evil was there. Is it possible to get cursed from a movie? Or has anybody had the same experience? I just watched Juon slash The Grudge tonight for the first time. Honestly, a great movie, in my opinion. The 80s and early 2000s always feel the most suitable times for me for horror films because of the low budget animations and shitty quality cameras especially films made in Japan, as the people there really know how to set the fucked up mood. Anyways, the movie was probably on a scale of 7 or 8.5 for me, the creep factor. Wasn't the worst horror experience I had, but it's probably been numbed down for all the shit I've been put through myself in the past just to get a little spooked as the feeling is pretty addicting. After I finished watching it and turned off the TV, I snuck outside through the window for a quick smoke break before bed. Keep in mind that it's 2.30 in the morning. 
The window I have to go through is above the fridge in the kitchen and leads outside, not far from the ground. There's a ledge that's reachable from the window and the ground, so I use that as a median to get myself up and down every time. When I finally got down, I suddenly felt a really fucked up feeling, as if someone or something was out there watching me. I immediately started hearing creaking noises from my neighbor's yard to the left of me, but they started far away and started to get closer. I brushed it off and assumed it was the wind and lit my cigarette. Then after the noises stopped, I started hearing the swings and the creak in the neighbor's yard to the other side of me on my right. This is when I finally built up the courage. I decided to peek over the fence. Could have sworn I saw a figure on the swing. Don't know for sure, so I keep my cool kind of huddled where nobody could see me. Finally, that noise stopped. But once again, I stood back up and swear to fuck, I saw a lady in the back window of the house behind mine to the right. She was staring right at me. I saw her whole body, but it looked like her face was 100% blank. This was not a hallucination, because after seeing it, I immediately climbed back through my window. It took me like five minutes just scrambling to get inside. Looked out my window just to see her standing still in the same position, staring at me just as she did before. My mind was racing. I didn't know what to think. Was this a full-blown spirit? Some creepy mannequin that some weirdo decided to leave there? Or was it just her neighbor who saw me sneak inside, not being able to make out my face thinking I was some intruder? All these thoughts managed to scare the fuck out of me, so I ran upstairs to my room, turned on my Mac, told my friend everything. He was sleeping, so I went back down and checked the window again. She was still there. Weird thing is, as much as she could be a mannequin or something, that could be made out of, well, looks like a woman, but an obvious head was pointed straight in my direction. It gave me eerie ass vibes. Can't sleep one bit. I'm going back down to check it again through the window and brush my teeth. Haunted for two years in a house. I'm just trying to get input from others. I've had a lot of experiences off and on in my life, but my experiences weren't things that built up and became more well, malicious. They relatively stayed consistent in how they showed themselves. I rented an apartment upstairs in an old house. I noticed that the closet in my room constantly reeked of curry. It never went away, and it was noticeable even before I moved in. My kids were too scared to sleep in their room because the closet different closet in their room, which was a long, narrow closet that went into the living room and opened up on the other side. There was an instance that I was playing hide-and-seek with the kids. The game goes on for like 10 minutes. I think I hear one of my kids hiding by their room, like I hear movement. I jump out and I say, boo, and all the kids' toys in their room light up and make sounds. Scared me more, too, because my kid wasn't over there at all. Nobody was. Another time I was in my bedroom with the door cracked. There's a linoleum floor, a little hallway in the front of it, and it's also next to the kids' room. I'm hearing walking on it, it sounds like pacing back and forth. The way it sounded was like those old penny loafer business shoes. Finally, I go out and open the door, thinking it was my partner. It wasn't them. There was nobody there. I had a shelf above my kitchen stove to hold my spices and stuff. Just small things. You could see the kitchen from the living room. It was a small place. Instead of stuff falling down like it usually does with gravity, it projected straight across, violently. It would fly straight across horizontally and hit the wall across from it. It happened so frequently that even guests started seeing it happen. 
I was in my bedroom, my partner was asking me about having intimacy in the dark. I declined. Nothing to that, I thought. Fast forward and during a tornado, siren going off. We're all in that long closet I mentioned before. The one that connects to the living room, the kids' room. My partner was behind the door facing the living room, and I was on the side facing the kids' room. When the tornado stuff went away and the siren stopped, he asked me, Did you write this? I asked what he meant. He didn't want to tell me, because he said it would be inappropriate and the kids were there. So he shows me, well, what had been behind the door, which I probably never saw because I used that closet for storage. Had it huge items, boxes, furniture in there. Nobody could fit in or walk in there without taking everything out. Nobody went in there. It said, Do you want to have sex in the dark? But the letters were all askew, and they trailed downward toward the floor. At the time, my kids were too young to be able to write this as well, so... Not that they would, anyway. They don't talk like that. After that, I was absolutely terrified. My kids slept with me in my bed after that. We could hear something moving underneath it, and we could feel it moving. It was weird to me because there were boxes and stuff under there, but I figured it could be a cat and tried to reassure the kids. The bedroom door had been closed, mind you, so any pets that would run out of there I'd know. So I turn on the light, look and move everything. There's nothing there. I lied to my kids that it was a cat. Can't sleep. I feel like something's watching me from the bedroom closet. The Haunting of Dobby Story 2 The Event A month had passed after the floating man had appeared. Me and my brother were still bugged. We were needing answers to what had happened. Mostly because no one would believe us, not our parents, nor our friends. So we decided to grab a camera and a candle for the brave mission of finding proof. After two hours of going room to room with no luck, we ended up in the master bedroom of our grandparents' house. Nick laid the candle on the bathroom sink in the bedroom. I went to take pictures in the darkness. Out of nowhere, the camera dies. We were weirded out because the batteries were brand new, as I was the one who opened the pack and slapped those energy-filled babies in. Confused, I changed the batteries with new ones that were in my pocket, which strangely also died. With the loss of our camera, no Energizer Bunny batteries, we decided to give up. I looked at Nick and said, Dude, how can we suck this bad at ghost hunting? We laughed, and we turned on the light and decided to leave. But I noticed Nick had forgotten the candle. I decided to fetch the strangely now extinguished candle, and as I entered the doorframe into the bathroom, I froze. I noticed something was staring at me. Description The master bathroom is made of two rooms, one with a giant mirror and a sink. Then on the left side of this room is a doorway to another room. That has a shower and a toilet. As I look down toward the left doorway, there is a little shadowy figure peeking over the doorframe. It leaned in more to get a better look at me. It was solid black, darker than the darkness in the room. All except for its eyes. They were solid white. I jumped back about six feet from the bathroom. Nick, looking at me, goes, Dude, what's wrong? I looked at him in disbelief and replied, Look in there, and look at the bottom left. He sticks his head into the bathroom, and not even three seconds later he screams, grabbing the door, slamming it. What the fuck? That's all he could say. I pulled the camera out of my pocket 
and tried to turn it on to get a shot of it, but with no avail. We looked at each other and decided to take another look. He opened the door and the little ghost was gone. Weirdly, he didn't see this thing at the time, so in my curiosity, I needed to know what Nick had seen. After asking him, his description was shocking to me. He described that he saw a three-foot-tall little man. This little man was peeking around the corner with white eyes. Freaked out, we decided to leave and process what just happened. As we walked out of the master bedroom, the camera came back on at full battery level and working properly to our disbelief. We later named that ghost Dobby like the elf from Harry Potter. My Imaginary Friend So when I was three or four, I had this imaginary friend named Alice. I used to play with her 24-7. I used to take up biscuits for her, my mom, and make a plate of food for her whenever we were eating. We were just best friends and my parents thought nothing of it. They just thought it was normal, because it is normal for children to get imaginary friends at some point. But some weird things started to happen. The first thing my mother told me is that one day she left a baby monitor on upstairs. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. It started to pick up white noise, as if something was trying to communicate. You would have thought that maybe it would have been connecting with the other baby monitors in the area. But she told me that our neighbors had no babies, so there'd be no need to have a baby monitor on. It was probably just a minor glitch in the baby monitor, so no big deal. But it is slightly weird. Another thing that used to happen is that whenever I would be downstairs or at school, my parents would just be chilling upstairs. They would hear footsteps. At least footsteps upstairs. And it would either sound like somebody was playing in my room when I wasn't there, or walking down the hallway. Obviously, they would go up to check, but there would be nobody there. They were just basic things. Nothing too drastic. You could put them down as normal things, but the next thing I'm about to tell you is quite creepy. One night my mother was putting me down to bed. She tucked me in, she was about to leave the room. But as she was about to leave the room, I said, Good night. And it genuinely freaked her out. When she asked me about it, I went on to say that that wasn't me, that was Alice. So I'm not sure what went on there, but if I thought that it was a joke back then, but you know, another thing I should mention is that I was a very bad sleeper and also a very bad behaved child whilst living in that house. I used to almost sleep in my parents' bed every night or have my mother stay with me until I fell asleep. I was just a different kid, according to my parents. We left the house when I was about seven or eight, can't fully remember, and before leaving my parents used to joke about, aha, uh -huh, don't forget to pack Alice. But when we left the house, I never spoke about Alice ever again. I also behaved better and slept better too. It was as if I was a different child. My mom once asked me about Alice, and she said stuff like, oh, where's Alice? Don't need to play with her anymore. Have you got a new friend? And apparently, I looked at her blankly and said, What do you mean? Alice doesn't live with us. Alice lives back at the old house. I think it's strange. Another thing I do want to quickly mention is that I don't remember anything about this. I don't remember anything about Alice at all. I remember the house so well. I remember everything about the house. I have memories about that house, too. I only, well, the only thing I don't remember is Alice. 
I don't remember anything about her. But maybe that was how it was meant to be. I don't know. Unexpected Verbal Interactions For context, I'm an engineer by education and profession and have always been a bit of a skeptic with regard to paranormal experiences. However, my wife is very interested in the topic and much less of a skeptic. She said that there have been a few things that I and we have experienced which I can't explain. The most dramatic slash hard to explain thing happened when we went on a walking ghost tour in St. Augustine, Florida in September of 2022. A month or two before going on this trip and the tour, she had gotten a Reiki massage followed by a tarot card reading. During said massage, the masseuse commented that my wife was surrounded by an unusually high amount of energy. Subsequently, during the tarot card reading, she told my wife that she had or has a guardian angel following her daily to protect her, and that this angel was the Archangel Michael. I just took it in all with a grain of salt and didn't really think much further about it, to be honest. So, on this walking ghost tour, my wife is wheelchair-bound, by the way, it was just the tour guide, another couple, and ourselves. We were perhaps midway through the tour and were all in a narrow alleyway while the tour guide told us about the history of this particular alley, when the event I can't explain occurred. The tour guide had provided us all with various detection devices, and at this point, we all had EMF meters. At first, they were all basically silent. But a little while after the guide begins retelling the history of this alley, the EMF my wife was holding became very very active, pegging the gauge multiple times. However, the EMF I was holding while standing more or less right next to her was silent. Likewise, the guide's EMF detector was also silent. The other couple kind of had wandered off a bit but came back to where we were at this point and their EMFs were also silent while my wife's continued to single the presence of an EMF field near us. We then sort of began testing, found our EMFs would go off too if we got particularly close to my wife and then silence again if we moved away even a foot or two. At this point, the tour guide, who is now using a spirit box sort of device, which I see as sort of a detuned AM radio, had just been static noise up to this point. They asked, Is there somebody here with us? And pretty quickly, all we heard was the word yes. Then it came back to static sounds. All five of us did in fact hear it, Note here that at this point no mention had been made about her Reiki experience or Michael to her guardian angel. No one present other than she and I knew that story at this point, so after getting the yes response on the spirit box, the tour guide asks if the entity that responded, its being present, could tell us its name. Then the static stopped and all five of us clearly heard the word Michael. Color me really, really surprised. Actually, shocked might be a more accurate description. After this occurred, she shared her story from the Reiki experience with the group, and a few moments afterwards, the tour guide asked the entity, Michael, are you here to protect her? A moment later, all five of us clearly heard the word yes from the spirit box. Honestly, I was flabbergasted. Really don't know what to make of that experience, or whether it was something that one of us somehow manifested, or... Really what? But there was no way anybody else in that group knew about her guardian angel Michael experience. How did it happen? I had no idea really, but I do know that it happened. Collecting Mystical Moments Real Stories of the Unexplained Story 1. The Surprising Grandma So here's a crazy story. At 37, I unexpectedly became a grandma. Before this, for about a month, I kept having this dream where a little girl around three years old would run around me. She'd climb into my knees or ask to be held. I was like, what's going on? Am I going to have a baby? I mean, I was still in the baby-making age range. 
The girl in my dream was cute, chubby with blonde hair and black eyes. Then I find out my 16-year-old daughter is pregnant. Family meeting time. Should we keep the baby or not? Education and all that. Everybody wanted an abortion, but I said, no way, we're having this baby. I saw her in my dreams. Fast forward, my granddaughter is now 13, blonde with black eyes, just like in my dream. My daughter got her degree and it all worked out. Story 2. The Confused Shopkeeper Last week I had this weird experience at the store. My mom and I go there every week for treats. I went alone this time, and the cashier smiled and asked, The usual? I said, yeah. And then she gave me the wrong stuff. I told her what we usually get, and she said, But you always buy this. I was like, no, you must be mixing us up with someone else. She insisted, Can't mistake you, you always come with your mom to get this. We stared at each other for a bit. I didn't argue, and I bought what she gave me. It hit me later. Maybe the Mandela effect kicked in. Something similar happened with my older son. We were reminiscing about the past, and it turns out we remember the same event differently at crucial moments. Back then, I thought it was just childhood memories fading. But the cashier incident... I'm speechless. Story 3. Dreaming the Future Kids A long time ago, I dreamt I visited my cousin with a baby boy in my arms, breastfeeding him. At the time, my cousin had a month and a two-year-old girl. Oh, a month or two-year-old girl. Fast forward two years. I had a son and visited my cousin with my baby boy, just like in my dream. Another dream had me walking with a girl with two ponytails, realizing she was my daughter. Now I have a daughter with two ponytails, just like in my dream. She was born 12 years after my son. Story 4. The Identity Crisis After the Accident I woke up in the ICU after a car accident, and my second thought was about who I am, whether I'm a man or a woman and what my name is. My concern was for my daughter and husband, who were with me in the car. I thought, this is in the end. Even mentally, it was scary to articulate. Another woman younger than me came to the same ICU after a similar accident, and her husband died on the spot. The child survived, but in critical condition. I don't know how, but my daughter only had a minor concussion, not even scratches. My husband was physically fine, just lost his memory. While I was in the ICU, I had intense deja vu moments, knowing what would happen in room ten minutes before it did, who would say what and who would do what. Girl on the River When I was around 13, me and my dad went on a canoe trip. It took three days, but it's a pretty calm river and quite beautiful. The first day was amazing and fun all the way around. The sun and water and nature. It was an amazing time. Night came, we took up shelter on a beach for the night. As we sit by the campfire, I see the water in the river splashing. I remember it almost rapidless and calm. I tell my dad, and he looks and says it's probably some fish. Thought it was multiple monster fish, if so. We finish up and retire to the tents. In the middle of the night, I wake up to reposition, and I swear I hear a girl and a guy talking. It's faint, but nobody should even be close. It's not that loud, so I shrug it off and go back to sleep. Next morning we head out again. It's a great day, and I swim and relax in the beaches. Not a person around, but Dad. We eat lunch at the beach and continue down the river, and as it hits about 4 to 5 p.m., my Dad tells me we need to consider finding a good stopping point. Minutes later I notice a girl on the bank in a tree. But she's like at the top, and the tree is huge. 
freaks me out because we're in the middle of nowhere. And who sits in a tree 60 feet up just chilling in this remote area? Night comes and the same stuff occurs. And we eat and start a fire. It's about 10 p.m. We're going to turn in. I hear cracking sticks off at the wood's edge. I glance over and it's the same girl from the tree. I instantly freak out and tell my dad to look, but by the time he looks, she's back in the tree line. I'm scared, so I ask to sleep in his tent. He agrees, seeing how spooked I am. Night goes by uneventful. Besides the constant limbs cracking, which was more than usual, maybe I was just uneasy. The final morning arrives and we load up to leave, and I realize the fire is smoldering. I soaked it with buckets of water, and it appears there's more wood in it. This kind of sketches me out more, but last day, let's go. We load up and start going down the final eight-hour canoe. The afternoon was fun doing the same stuff. Got to two hours till load off. I'm checking out the scenery and my heart drops. On the beach, in full view, is the same girl, beaten and bloodied up. Very rough looking. I make eye contact as we pass by. My dad sees her clear as day at this point. He starts paddling faster. We get about 10 to 15 ahead. Excuse me, 10 to 15 feet ahead. And she screams the scariest scream I've ever heard. She starts running down the bank beside the river and she's like unreasonably fast. We're paddling hard and I'm screaming, but we can't gain much ground even with the current. We get even with her again and she stops running. We keep paddling like our life was invested. And as I look back to her, she stopped on the bank and she slowly starts walking into the water without reaction until she's under. We paddled fast as humanly possible, and the last two hours took like 30 minutes. I don't know if it was crazy or just a ghost or I don't know. Never went back since though. I saw a faceless man in the dark black hoodie run and go into the ground. feel extremely confused still, honestly. It was 2017, so quite a few years ago at this point, but I still to this day cannot wrap my head around it. I was 11, maybe 12 at the time. I'm 19 now. It was around 7.40 a.m. and the sun was out and shining bright on a weekday. My mom and I were driving to school, and just a minute past my house we were coming up to the railroad tracks, which we did every day. Except this morning, we saw a man walking. I thought nothing of it except it was odd that he was wearing all black. Black jeans, black zip-up hoodie, black shoes. It was bent over, seemingly, when we were just starting to see the figure. Then it stood up. I think it had its hands in its pockets. He was walking on the left side of the road, off onto some grass with his hoodie up over his head. It began to walk, but as we got close, it whipped its head around and looked at us. I expected to see a guy's face, but I saw nothing but pure blackness, darkness, a shadow where a face should be. I was staring in disbelief. The thing seemed to be scared, oddly, and began running. I have no idea why, even then I was so confused. Ran for a few seconds, which seemed like a while to be seeing what I was seeing. Then it slid down onto the grass on its butt and leaned on its right side and hopped off like it was on a ledge. Mom kept driving slowly, and we watched the figure disappear into the ground. We both stared at the place where it went and it was just gone. A second later, as we finally began to go over the tracks, I uttered, Mom? And she looked over at me and just said, I don't know. I asked if she saw it and she said, yeah, yeah, I saw it. And then we both just sat there, I guess, thinking. In this experience, I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel like it was planning to harm us, but it was so confusing. 
Why did it not have a face? Why did it run? Why did it act like we weren't supposed to be able to see it either? Why did it go into the ground? Why is it wearing such a stereotypical stalker, robber, scary man clothes? Does it mean hell is real? Did it go there? Was it a demon? I've never been a believer in the paranormal. I've always rejected the idea of God or religion in general. They still can't get into that. As time went, I kind of ignored this memory. Kind of ignored how it affected me. I now recently have been thinking about it and I cannot wrap my head around it. No, I'm not crazy because my mom saw it too. And can describe it the same as me. I just can't comprehend how it was real, but it was just as real as any other person walking the street. I don't know why I'm posting this, I just need someone to relate to about this, I guess. I've been feeling emotional about it lately. Is there anyone out there who can maybe help me understand this? Anyone else experience a similar thing? I've been to the spot multiple times since. Never saw anything. Haven't seen anything paranormal since, in fact. Thank you for reading if you got this far. It means a lot. I just feel so alone and confused in this experience and sometimes life in general. I don't know how to process there being other things. Need advice. My property is haunted. Last week, my husband and I invited our friends to spend a weekend in our country house. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. or 1 a.m. We were chilling around the fire pit. The whole property is surrounded by a white fence. There aren't many trees and several light sources. So pretty much everything is visible. My husband goes, huh? and gets up to check something in the corner that we're facing. When he gets back, I ask what's wrong, and he says, he's probably just quote-unquote seeing things. Okay, so I brush it off. As we're getting ready to go to bed, he goes to turn off the lights in the patio. He comes back to say that he saw something yet again. I start questioning him, and he says that his eyes are playing tricks on him. We all kind of laugh it off. Now, I understand he didn't want to scare me. The next day, we sit by the fire pit again, and our friend says, Ha! Now it's me who's seeing things. What he saw was an orb moving from our patio to the sauna, and then disappearing behind it, maybe about two meters. The first one was the size of a basketball, and then another one the size of a tennis ball. He's a 100% skeptic, so he didn't feel scared at all explaining it all by light hitting weird angles. The same night I saw a blue light, almost like a light bulb, in the same direction but in a different corner of the sauna building. I watched it for maybe 30 seconds, trying to understand what it was, and then it disappeared almost as if someone turned it off. I'm sure there's no light sources there, let alone blue ones. When we left that house and headed home, I finally made my husband say what he had seen. Turns out, the first one was a black human figure moving next to the patio, so he went to check on it. But it was the second one that gave my goosebumps. As he was turning off the light in the patio, which is covered in mosquito nets, for a split second he saw a human face and hands pressing against the net. He went on to say it wasn't the only experience that he'd had there. He had already seen dark figures a number of times all in that same area. A little background on this property. Due to a family issue, we didn't visit the place for 12 years, so it was basically abandoned. I don't know about anyone dying there or anything of that kind. The atmosphere there doesn't feel scary or heavy. Last year, my husband and I started visiting and renovating it. I don't know if it's important, I hope not, but this year we're finally getting to you know, cleaning and using the sauna. It was used for storage space before. We found a lot of trash underneath its foundation, bottles and buckets. The creepiest thing was a bag full of human hair. I felt really uneasy when we found it. Maybe it's a stretch, but it was really weird. 
So maybe there's a connection since we see strange things in this particular area. Or maybe there's no connection at all, but additionally, we all see different things. So I don't even know how to describe what we're all experiencing properly. Anyway, my question is, what should I do? Maybe use some sage? Or any other way of cleansing the place? Or should I just do nothing as it doesn't feel evil or threatening? I want to spend time there without thinking about anything creepy. I've had a ghost following me home from a store, and it's been seven years of their shenanigans. I used to work in a store that everyone claimed was haunted. I was told it was either a woman or a drag queen, because my co-workers would hear heels clicking around the store at night. I didn't believe any of it. Even when I closed up shop and opened the next morning, and the the pet beds had all been neatly lined up on the ground, down the whole aisle, and yet the alarm was never turned off or went off because of the motion. I also came in one morning to see a half-eaten candy bar on the floor, one that we didn't sell. I laughed it off, swearing my co-workers were just messing with me. Well, one night I was closing up. I had already walked the entire store and was with another co-worker. We heard a noise of metal scraping the floor. We wanted to see if anybody had snuck around while we were on our walkthrough. It was a very small store, four or five aisles at most. Nothing. So I went back to the closing of paperwork and we locked up. The next night we heard the heel clicks of someone coming down the hallway toward our back room. I got up to confront whoever it was, but no one was there. My cashier was absolutely horrified wanting to stay with me instead of doing her closing duties alone in the store. Well, I left that job, but I noticed some weird stuff starting to happen at my house. My roommate would ask me why I moved certain things, and I would tell him I never did, and vice versa. At one point we heard a child's toy, his kid, under our couch playing music. We moved the couch, went to take the batteries out, but there weren't any in there. We also heard heel clicks clicking around the apartment throughout the day and the next, well, the next night, too. He assumed ghost. Kind of believed it after that. I moved from there to a new place out of town with my newlywed husband, not thinking about the ghost until stuff started falling off tables and shelves, and once again, I could hear heels clicking around my apartment. The problem was, we had carpet everywhere and cheap plastic-like floors that never made clicks when I walked on it with heels. Now I've moved back to my hometown to a nice apartment, but this morning I caught my shoes moving on my door camera. It was like someone pivoted them completely. Their placement together hadn't changed, but the angle. We hadn't been over there. The motion video also didn't show actual motion, just that my shoes were suddenly not in the same place anymore. This past weekend, we were relaxing on the couch when suddenly something in our pantry was banging around. We assumed the cat must have been locked in there by mistake. But the cat came running into the kitchen to see what the sound was. We opened the pantry and saw two cans of nearly expired manwich which had fallen on the ground. But they weren't the only in the upright shelf before, so also behind a lot of other cans too that seemed untouched. Also, they were on the bottom shelf, so... It should have made so much banging on the way down. I don't know if at this point I should get rid of the ghost because the cans are about to expire. I was forced to see it when I picked them up. So maybe it was telling me that. Plus, my shoes I noticed had a bad odor to them, which I'd never known if they hadn't been moved, since I don't wear that pair often enough. The ghost is just being aggressively friendly, and I don't want to be rude. Ask Reddit. When I was 17, one of my best friends died. It was the first time I experienced death so close to me. We were on and off again best friends, honestly. 
Our personalities just clicked, but we were both emotionally disturbed teenagers on drugs. He was the school drug dealer, and I was his distributor and number one customer. His dark path was bad, adding poison to a pill and trying to get me to sell it. Of course, I couldn't, and I don't think either of us fully understood the severity of his actions. Soon after, we were in a rough patch because finally his mom caught him with the drugs and he supposedly blamed it on another friend. I took the side of the friend. He was brutally ousted from our friend group in the snarkiest and meanest teenage fashion, spearheaded by me. Even with my friend's flaws, I was unnecessarily cruel. I think I was truly mad about the pill thing, the dark path, and maybe a little bit in love with him. He was just a young, fucked up teen, and this was the only way to express it. He responded in equal brutality. I was also ousted from the friend group and quit drugs. He proudly pointed and laughed at my excommunication in the hallways. Several months later, I ended up calling him for a friend to buy weed. He was the local drug dealer, after all. He and his girlfriend ended up hanging out, and I apologized for my part in being an asshole. He was shocked, but god damn, I missed him. Especially as a friend, even with his fucked up antics. He was visibly shocked and accepted my apology with almost bewilderment. Then the next week, he was dead. He had mixed the wrong combination of drugs and didn't wake up. I literally heard people whispering about it in the hallways. I was reeling, cried for hours. Wrote his name on my wall and went to sleep that night. I was standing in a little grassy area on the side of the school, waiting for the bus with crowds of syrupy dream students waiting for their ride. A couple of feet in front of me is Tyler, also waiting for the bus. I can only see the back of his head. I gasp. Tyler, I thought you were dead. I attempt to run up to him, but he's simultaneously fleeing from me. I continue to chase him. He's obviously avoiding me. No, 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 he finally says. You're the one I can talk to. I'm still chasing him. My sleep brain doesn't understand what this means. Finally, he gets on a bus, and as it pulls away, I'm grabbing some of the cloudy dream students, and I'm pleading with them. That's Tyler. He's supposed to be dead. We can't let him leave. And as I'm crying and begging people to help me get to him to stay, they're dismissing me. Tyler's fine. He's alive. I'm sobbing, doing my best to recruit others to help me stop this bus. Finally, in desperation, I turned around and I'm face to face with his favorite teacher. It was her, exactly. A perfect image. She wasn't a seer big dream person. I could see the fucking pores on her face. And she gasped at me. Mouth open, glasses slipping down her nose a little bit. It was so real and shocking that my whole body lurched, waking me up in a wide-eyed cold sweat. The image of her shocked face is forever burned into my brain. I've always wanted to ask her if she was there too, following Tyler's reluctant ghost. But part of me just knows she was. And this wasn't the end with Tyler's spirit. I wasn't born alone. Okay, the title sounds creepy as hell, but it's actually true, according to what I've been told. I wasn't born alone. I had another spirit with me, and I'll explain how I found that out. I never felt like I was from Earth, never felt human. I've always worried about where I came from, what my mission on Earth is. Mind you, this is when I was a child. I don't think like this anymore. I was a very spiritual kid and one of those kids who would say weird things to their mom about their past lives. I've also always had vivid dreams and have a deep interest in them. And I keep this information as it'll become important. I was also constantly afraid of being watched. I used to worry that a spirit was watching me when I went to sleep. With time, I randomly started to worry that a ghost girl was sitting on my bed and watching me. It felt a bit too real. I had many nightmares that someone was chasing me, especially a dark figure. When I woke up, I usually ran out of my room. Then when I was 11, this dark figure actually caught me for the first time. I was forced to look at its face. 
was a girl similar to the one I imagined sitting on my bed. She held me in place and asked me to do something for her, and if I did it, she would let me move away. I didn't even listen before agreeing because I was so scared. She laughed and jumped at me, which made me wake up. That was my first sleep paralysis. I remember looking around with just my eyes, unable to move my body and seeing the girl laying down next to me. After that, I constantly had dreams about her. And not only dreams, sometimes I could interact with her by just closing my eyes. I would get into a trance and she manipulated my mind. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but it's what happened. If I closed my eyes and I imagined her, my imagination would soon become almost vivid, like re reality vivid. She controlled herself in my imagination. It's like I couldn't control what she did and the way I imagined her. She would often just smile and give me jump scares, literally jumping and grabbing me. It always left me with a weird sensation all over my body, like I was vibrating. I also had a few out-of-body experiences. One time I was just sitting down and stood up. But instead of standing up with my physical body, I stood up with my spirit. I turned around and saw myself, then re-entered my own body. It was a very scary moment, and there was a bunch of people around me when it happened. So I had to pretend nothing happened. This is how I remember it. I was still a kid. After a few years, my mom called a medium to help me with my situation. I honestly didn't understand much of what happened in my sessions with the medium, but the girl stopped appearing to me after them. My mom didn't explain it all to me until I was a bit older. So she told me that the medium found out that the girl I interacted with was a spirit from a past life that I had. Someone who loved me, and she was still attached to me, so she couldn't move on. She wanted to stay with me, so she chased and grabbed me. That would explain why I was so spiritual and felt disconnected from the world. I had someone from my past life right there, always by my side. I had an encounter with an old friend. I had an encounter with an old friend years ago. Back in 1999. I'm a musician who's been in a few bands back in the day. We had a studio to play and practice in and everything. I was the singer. An old friend, Kevin, came down, filled in for drumming while we were looking for a drummer. He couldn't commit to the band, but was willing to help out. I knew him for years before this. Anyway, we found our drummer and thanked him, and he was on his way. Months go by and we lose the lease in our studio, so the band broke up. A few months later, I get a call from a guitar player in a country band. So now I'm playing guitar. Things are looking good. We have a CD and a financial backer who owns the record studios. They also wanted to buy us a bus. Couldn't get any better. Long story short, though, the singer, well, who doesn't drink, gets drunk. Cusses. They wind up cussing out our financial backer. We lose it all. I pack up and head for the Great Lakes. Found a band and started gigging. A year later, I transfer from my job back to Virginia. Every year, there's a band or a jam or a competition here in my hometown. This year, I'll just be watching. So I go to the stage area and listen to one of the bands. I get a push from behind. It's my old buddy, Kevin. He is with a beautiful girl. Never seen her before. Not his wife. They both looked great. He looked better than I'd ever seen him. We chit-chatted a while about music and what I'd been doing. Then he told me he sold his drums and hadn't played that much. Which floored me. Then he was like, Do you want to get another beer? I said, sure. So we went to the kegs and he poured himself beer and me. We continued to drink and listen to the band. Well, that band finished up. And there was time before the next band started. The perfect time for a bathroom break. When I came back, Kevin was nowhere in sight. So I hung out for a little while longer. It was boring now. For some reason, me, the guy who knows everyone and everything, didn't know anybody there. So I left. Two weeks go by. 
I went to see some musician friend of mine, a singer friend who married another drummer friend. She asked if I had gotten up to the band jam. I said that I did go. She asked if I'd seen anybody that we knew. I said that I'd seen Kevin, and that we hung out for a while. But besides that, I had seen no one else. She became infuriated. Bullshit, she kept saying. She was pissed. She didn't even want to hear what I had to say. She told me that Kevin had been dead for almost a year now, and that I was full of shit. I'd never been treated like this before by her. She wouldn't let me explain. She said that he was in Florida and stepped out in front of a bus and he was run over and died. Anyway, she was so ticked and being unreasonable that I went home. I did speak with his widow just last year and she confirmed he did sell his drum kit. I told her the story. She just said, oh, that's interesting. I kind of just left it at that. I don't think she thinks I'm all that sane now. I know what I experienced was real, though. Well, that's my story. Got to hang out with an old friend for about 30 minutes, even though he had passed away. I thought maybe he faked his death. After talking with those that went to his funeral, well, he went into the ground. It happened. I saw and spoke with him, had a beer with an old friend. Creepy things I've experienced. One. When I was a child around eight, it was a summer's day. I was playing in my scooter near a road. I walked past a house, and the door was slightly cracked. I saw what appeared to be a really weird red devil-like face looking at me through the bottom of the door. It didn't look human. But it didn't look exactly, well, didn't look exactly creepy. Maybe it was another child. Maybe I imagined that. I don't know. Two. I was around 14 years old. I was in my bed relaxing, trying to go to sleep around one. I saw this thing peek around my door. It had just a blackness for a face. Looked like it was wearing a hood exactly like a monk. It had long pointy fingers that bent around the door. From like it was grabbing on it. Ran into my mom's room shitting myself. Woke her up. The next day she asked my auntie, who's a medium, to find out what happened. Apparently the thing I saw was a monk called Samuel. And she said that he was a good spirit, and he was a protector. My entire estate was built around an old masonry for monks. I believe they meant monastery. The east coast of England. 3. The last one I was 19 in my house. Middle of England, different to the above house. I lived with my friend and we were getting ready to go out into town. I was in the bathroom having a pee, and I shouted her name. She called me from her bedroom, told me to come up. I was walking up the stairs to her room, and it was quite dark, only the lights from the street lights outside. I saw my friend in her room wearing what looked like a black dress. She kind of skipped and jumped out, then went behind the door, I went into her room, turned the light on, asked her why she changed clothes. When I went to go look behind the door, no one was there. I shouted her again, freaked out. She answered from the bathroom where she was. 4. This is one I've just remembered now. I didn't add onto the previous post. So this occurred in the same house as the story above. So this house had an, well, an incredibly eerie vibe to it, especially on the middle and top floor. As you went up the stairs, it kind of felt you were cut off from the world. It was just very uneasy. I was laid in bed with my dog once. She started going weird looking around the ears pointing back, scratching on the wall. 
Then the curtains just blew. A strong gust of wind blew them, but the window was shut. There were other things, like random creaking, hearing pennies dropping on the floor of the room above me, which was wood, cupboards banging when me and the dog went up to go to bed. Haunted Taco Bell When I was 18, I took an evening job at Taco Bell. Well, let me slightly back up. I live in Ogden, Utah. The Taco Bell I had encounters at was the one on Harrison Boulevard. There's only one on that 10-mile long street, so there's no mistaking which one I'm talking about. When I turned 18, the year was 1996, when Taco Bell was still serving the chili cheese burrito. It was right around then that the gordita was introduced. So I worked the closing shift. I was so excited because I loved their food. I learned fast. The guys whose team I just joined were quick to let me know that the store was haunted. I grew up on JW, so the whole ghosts and spirits were instantly dismissed as bullshit, some harmless hazing. They insisted, though, that it was the truth, and would learn soon enough. They weren't wrong. Sleeves of cups and lids would fall off shelving. If you know fast food, you know that mostly packaging and cups are often kept in boxes that they're shipped in. So, no rolling off the shelf. There's no way they'd end up on the ground unless they were intentionally tossed to the ground. At one point, I wanted to challenge the theory. So, I meticulously stacked all the stuff, making sure it was sturdy and not likely to end up on the floor. That shit still ended up on the floor, no matter how I positioned it. Then there were the bathrooms. The hand dryers were flipped on and off randomly. At night until about six, then it would quiet down. Never when working a random lunch shift. Never during the day. Yet, once the doors were locked, my already dying JW sensibilities were basically put on life support after my time there. We were a walk-up friendly establishment. If you don't know what a walk-up is, well, it's what you would do if you had no car, but were really craving a Santa Fe chalupa. Then it took you forever to walk there, so by the time you arrived, Taco Bell was closed. What do you do? You walk up to the only place you can place an order. The only available portal to all that Taco Bell greatness. The drive through This is where the last bit of this takes place. I was sweeping the floor behind the counter. I look up and it's a really old dude. Guessing he looked to be about a hundred. Frail is a word I would say about him. I glance away to prop the broom, begin walking over. Only as I got within six steps of the window do I glance up to see no one standing there. I walk over and I'm searching around for the guy. He was gone though. 24 hours later, I still didn't see how this helpless-looking man could have possibly sprinted around and out of sight in that amount of time it took me to drop the broom and walk over a few steps. If you go work there, you have been warned. Possible Ghost trying to get my attention. I worked night shift at a medical lab. That's where I had a bit of a creepy experience a while ago. There's an area of the lab called STATS. This is where we process specimens that need to be tested immediately. It's kind of isolated from the rest of the lab. And usually, there's only two people at this station. Earlier in the night, one of my co-workers and I were exchanging scary stories that had really happened to us. 
it got me in a really spooky mood because we talked about a lot of hauntings and paranormal experiences. At some point when I was on break, I was walking down the long empty hallway. My face was in my phone and I suddenly felt like someone was walking right behind me. I thought it was my coworker. He liked to prank me and scare me a lot. But when I turned around, no one was there. The hall was completely empty. There was nowhere anybody could have hidden. So that freaked me out a little bit, especially after talking about scary experiences with my coworker. But I didn't read into it too much. Figured I was psyching myself out. At some point between 2 and 2.30, I was working at my station when I felt a distinct tap, tap, tap on the back of my chair. I turned around and was startled to see that no one was there. The only other person nearby was my partner on stats. She was working at another computer station, a good ten feet or so away from me. I had reacted to the tapping immediately. There was physically no way she could have tapped my chair and jumped back to her station in the split second it took for me to turn around. That tripped me out, but again, I figured ghost stories had to be psyching me up. I was imagining things. But that tapping felt very real. I remember hearing the sound right before, feeling my chair vibrate like somebody was tapping on it. At this point I should mention that phones aren't allowed in the stat station. So, mine was in the locker, which was nowhere nearby. When I got off work around 4 a.m., I discovered that my girlfriend had been trying to call and text me for almost two hours. I called her back. She said how she'd had a nightmare where I was hurt, and it gave her really bad anxiety. She'd been trying to call and make sure I was okay. I assured her I wasn't hurt. I got home safely, helped her calm down. Later on, I looked at her texts and calls noticed that they'd started around 2.30. I asked her what time she woke up. She said a little after 2. So she woke up within the same time frame that I thought I felt that tapping on my chair. It's most likely a coincidence, and again I probably imagined the tapping because I'd been sharing ghost stories and psyched myself out. But I also don't necessarily disbelieve the supernatural. And ever since that experience, I loved to entertain the idea that a ghost was trying to get my attention and be like, Hey, your girlfriend needs you to go check your phone. So I'm convinced that I saw my mom's dead best friend the night that she died. So this happened when I was around 7 years old. I'm 17 now. I only realized how strange it was years after the incident happened. So, when I was around 7 years old, I was staying at my aunt's house in California with my mother. I don't remember why we were staying there, considering it was 10 years ago. All I remember was that it was a very sad time for my mom and my aunt. Everything was fine up until we went to sleep. I'd sleep at my aunt's house before this several times, so it was a space I was at least semi-comfortable with. My mom and I always slept in the same guest bedroom together. Same as this night, and I remember falling asleep pretty early in the evening. That was until I was woken up in the middle of the night, probably around 12-ish if I had to guess. I woke up to the feeling that someone was staring at me. I guess my subconscious could somehow feel that someone was there even though I was dead asleep. I opened my eyes to see a woman standing at the foot of the bed. She was wearing some kind of gown and just staring right at me, with this sad expression on her face. She had mid-length hair and bangs and was just taller than my mother if I had to guess. She was also slightly glowing a light blue tint like I could see her face perfectly even if it was in a dark bedroom. First, I thought it might have just been my mom, until I looked over and saw her sound asleep next to me, 
After that, my memory goes blank. And all I can remember is waking up the next morning with this feeling like I knew it wasn't a dream. Fast forward to around a week ago. Up until this point, I think about the incident sometimes, but I just chalked it up to being my aunt or something. I was having a conversation with my mom at dinner when she brought up the topic of ghosts. I decided to tell her about that night and about the woman I saw so many years ago. When I told her it all, I was around seven on a trip to my aunt's house, and her face completely changed. She completely went silent for a few minutes before telling me about why we went to my aunt's house that day in the first place. It was because her best friend, and we'll call her Natalie for privacy reasons, had attempted to take her own life three days earlier. Natalie initially failed and was kept in a hospital near my aunt's house for the next three days on life support. This was until her family had to make the ultimate decision to take her off. This is why we went to my aunt's house that night, because my mom wanted to say goodbye to her. The night she died was the same night we stayed with my aunt, and the same night I saw that woman at the edge of the bed. When my mom told me this, my blood ran completely cold. I asked my mom to show me pictures of Natalie, just to be sure. And even now, even to this day, that face was undeniably identical to the woman's. Same bangs, same eyes, everything was the same. I shiver just thinking about it now. But the main thing I wonder most is, if that really was Natalie coming to me, my mother as a final goodbye, then why was she so sad? She looked as if she was frowning, her ghost, I mean. The most sad I've ever seen anyone with this look of pure sorrow on her face. The day I realized death is not the end of a human life. Everything took place about two years ago. When it happened, all I knew about it, it messed with my mind with a week or two, and I told some of my friends this crazy story, bringing literal chills to the both of us after the story was told. I kind of forgot about it. I found this subreddit a day or two with some posts that reminded me of this story I'm about to tell. For context, my grandmother on my mother's side died from breast cancer five or six years ago. I knew the death of my grandmother affected my mom mentally, it was challenging for her to not cry on the daily. A year passed and my mother started to focus on other things and let my granny rest peacefully. Also, I knew very much my mother believed in signs for my grandmother. For example, when driving back from home from the funeral, she thought all the semi-trucks with big headlights were a sign of her presence. I was in the basement, late night, watching TV. I was pretty calm. I always hated being in the basement, though, and I still do. Bring some type of odd feeling. Suddenly, without any previous signs, I heard a loud knock on the door behind me. I quickly turned and stared for a couple of seconds. I then figured it was just the wood cracking. Not even a couple of minutes after, while still on my guard, another knock. But this time, it clearly wasn't the wood. I ran upstairs without even thinking, and my mom woke up because of all the noise from me running up the stairs. She asked me what was going on, and I told her about those really weird and abnormal noises. She seemed surprised and kind of scared. She told me that it was probably just the water pump or the wood. I told her it probably was, and I went to sleep. No news after that. A couple of days pass. Something else occurred. I was in my room, maybe 10 p.m. or so. I thought me, my sister, and my mom were home that night. I was on my cell phone scrolling through YouTube, I believe, when I heard a slight whisper in my ear. It was really soft and quiet. I thought I misheard something or that it was my sister making noise in the bathroom. The whisper occurred again, exactly like last time. I figured it was something weird. I assumed it was my sister. I got up and banged on the bathroom door. It was unlocked. Lights were off. I checked her room empty and dark. I absolutely shat myself. My sister was not home. I ran down the stairs and found my mom on the couch and told her everything. She gave me the exact same look as last time I told her. She said it was pretty weird. I stayed with her. I didn't want to go back to my room alone. 
When I got tired, I quickly went to sleep and forgot about it again. I would say a week or two passed, and I was at a restaurant with my dad, mom, and sister. We were driving back home, and my dad just kind of wanted to talk, so I listened. On both of these nights, my mother prayed exactly 24 hours before I reported what happened to her that my grandmother shows herself in some kind of way. I was absolutely mind-blown. My dad told me I must have had some paranormal skills because I was the only one to witness those events. I'm not done. On the second time when I heard the whispers, it turns out when I was explaining the situation to my mom, the flipping music that was playing at my grandmother's funeral was playing on the TV. When my dad told me this, I was baffled. I believe in the presence of dead ones since then. Feel free to MAA. The Crying Girl We moved into a house when I was tenish years old. There was nothing special about the house, but I got a room in the basement which was way bigger than my old room, so I was thrilled. That didn't last long. The very first night we slept there, come bedtime, I headed to my room. As soon as I got to the stairs, I instantly regretted picking that room. It was dark and secluded, and it freaked me out at night. I made my way downstairs and climbed into bed. I fall asleep, and I wake up at 2 to 3 a.m. to hear a girl sobbing. It scared me badly, but it was coming from the side of the room the door was on, so I dare not make a run for it. The crying goes on for 5 to 10 minutes and then slowly winds down. I finally calm myself and go back to sleep. This happens every single night for months. I didn't want to tell my parents, so I asked my brother to sleep in the room with me. Every time he slept in my room, not a sound would be heard. It's frustrating, but weird enough, I finally got used to it. Sometimes I would even wake up, but... I know deep down it was occurring even while I was asleep. I then a few months later started dreaming of a girl in a wedding dress, but it looks like she was in a car accident. She was disfigured and scary as hell to me. She would always be sitting holding something, but in the dream I was too scared to look. This dream also kept reoccurring for quite some time until the sound and dream were every night events. This goes on and on and on. And as time passes, it bothers me less and less and less. Then one night I wake up and hear the same sobbing. I roll over and try to go back to sleep. But before I can, I notice the cry starting to switch. It slowly goes from crying to a deranged laughter. This scares me badly for some reason. I panic. I get up and run toward the door, even though it's toward the sound. I get to the door and the sound is right next to me. I don't know if the door was locked or if I was just too panicked, but I couldn't get it open. I started screaming and screaming. I hear footsteps of my parents running upstairs to get to the stairs. I hear them running down the stairs, and I'm in complete panic. The door starts shaking like they're trying to open it. As this is happening, I feel like somebody's grabbing my arm and I lose my shit. I'm ripping at the door to try to get it open with my parents on the other side. I get it to finally open, expecting my dad on the other side, but nobody is there. The door is open, so now I run upstairs, screaming and crying. Now I'm upstairs and my parents hear me, and they come out of their bedroom. I tell them everything, and they just kind of looked lost. I told them I would never go back down there again. They let me start sleeping in the living room. And I never heard it again, and I never went back downstairs. Months later we moved, and I kind of got over it. But that was one of the scariest moments of my childhood. Old Folk Song 
know this title sounds weird for a ghost encounter, but just bear with me. This had been my one and only ghost encounter. It happened at my parents' house around ten years ago, and I still remember the encounter extremely vividly. After the ghost experience I told my family the next day, they didn't believe me, and still don't to this day. It all started when I got up in the middle of the night to get some more water. I walked out of my room and walked past the stairs to my parents' room. I had to turn left to walk up three steps to go into the kitchen. I turned the light on, went to the fridge to get a new bottle of water. Once I got the water, I closed the fridge, turned off the light, and I left the kitchen. Walked back down the three steps, turned to walk past my parents' stair to my room. As soon as I got to my parents' stairs, I heard the kitchen light flick on, illuminating the very area I just left. I froze for a quick second, as I wasn't prepared for that. Brushed it off, as I didn't really think anything of it since we've been living here for a few years. Nothing paranormal's happened yet. As I turned around to head back to the kitchen to turn the light off, I heard music. I froze again. The music wasn't loud. It was at what I would describe low to moderate. As I listened, I could hear a banjo playing in a sort of old folk music type of way. When I heard music playing, that's when I started to get a little scared, to be honest. I froze this time for about two minutes. It was a mix of me being a deer in headlights and me trying to listen if one of my family members was tricking me. The only thing I heard was the music playing. Eventually, I shook myself out of my frozen state and was about to turn left to ascend the three steps to the kitchen to turn the light off. However, as soon as I took a step, the music stopped and I heard footsteps running away and little kids laughing. I froze for a third time. Then I thought, hurry up and see who it is. So I hurried into the kitchen and silence was all I found. Silence and an empty, illuminated kitchen. Thought maybe it was one of my siblings, because their rooms were on the other side of the kitchen. So I went to check their rooms. They were both closed. I also checked the living room and found no one. Confused and creeped out, I walked back to the kitchen, turned on the flashlight from my phone, turned off the light, and slowly walked back to my room with the safety of my flashlight. As stated before, none of my family believed me. I'm quite sure it was a ghost of some sort, and also some things to clarify. The first floor I was walking on that was by my parents' stairs was carpet, so my footsteps would have been muffled and hard to hear. And if it was one of my siblings, they wouldn't have been able to hear it, since it's much louder at night. And as for the little kids laughing, the youngest person in the house was 12. Anyways, that's my little story that I thought would be fun to share. Since then, the only thing I've encountered over those 10 -ish years is the kitchen light flicking on two or three times. My childhood imaginary friend was a ghost. I've been thinking about my imaginary friend from childhood a lot lately. I just have so many questions. At this point, I'm looking for any kind of help or answers as to what was going on. To preface this, I was always able to see ghosts, especially as a child. There have been interactions between myself and some of them. Some that I was scared of and some that stuck around. Enter Suki. When I was very young in the mid-90s, I formed a friendship with Suki, my imaginary friend. I always referred to her as imaginary friend because nobody else could see her. I didn't get the same vibe that the other ghosts gave me, so I guess my child brain went the route of thinking she was an imaginary friend. I never questioned it, probably because I was an incredibly lonely child. Hindsight is twenty twenty and I now recognize that she was absolutely a spirit. We did so much together. We always hung out, watched TV, went on vacation together. Driving, she never flew, though. 
and one of our favorite things to do together was climbing down the cliff face at a coast to explore the beach. She always sat in the middle seat in the back of the car with us, between me and my sister, and I always bucked her. She told me that her name was Suki, so that was never a question. I was keenly aware that this version of the name was not Americanized like being short for Suzanne, but of a different origin. She wasn't a child like I was, but she also wasn't very old either. To me, she seemed to be maybe in her mid to late teens, but she was very dainty. As far as her appearance, she always wore a long white dress, had very long black, uh, disheveled hair. And her facial features were very sunken in, especially her eyes. She never smiled. She was also very pale. Does this sound familiar? Because it should. She looked exactly like Samara from The Ring. Imagine how utterly shocked I was when I saw that movie for the first time as an adult, jumping up and screaming, Oh my god, that's Suki. The Ring came out many years after this started. And this also predates Netflix deliveries and Google. It couldn't have been influenced by any ghost or horror media because, well, readily available knowledge that you could just look up online simply didn't exist back then the way it exists today. I also didn't have any physical media of anything like that lying around the house. That was not a genre that my parents were into. I'd been researching this for some time. The closest thing to her that I can seem to pinpoint is she seems remarkably similar appearance-wise to the Yuri from Japanese folklore, which I can only imagine that Samara is also inspired by. I'm not too familiar with the inspirations there, though. I was never afraid of her. She looked scary, but she never scared me. She never gave me any kind of threatening vibes. I just want to make that very, very clear. At the end of the day, as I got older, I just stopped seeing her at some point, which kind of makes me sad, but I don't feel like she ever left. I think about her nearly every day. It's my Roman Empire. This is one of the many events that have happened over the course of my life. I moved into my current home about four years ago in a decent neighborhood. My house happens to be near the junction of two rivers and apparently heavily contested with the Native Americans during the expansion of the nation westward. Present day, the river is relatively swift it gets very high and moving after it rains. Back in the time of expansion west, it was probably a serious obstacle, as it and several other rivers populate this area. After moving in, I noticed that I would go through short periods where I would get very overprotective of my children, to the point of me blowing up and yelling at them whenever they did anything that might be misconstrued as dangerous. They're six-year-old twins, and are ADHD, so they can be pretty damn nuts when wound up. After freaking out and yelling, I would get these very intense feelings of loss, sadness, and of failure, and an overwhelming urge to be extremely vigilant, and a strange urge to teach my kids to swim. So, after settling in a few weeks, I got curious about the attic entrance in my room, which is above your head as you walk into the room. So I brought a tall stool to stand on, opened the hatch, the trap door, square piece of wood over the entrance. I put it aside on the floor. As I stood and began to break the plane of door insulation, it just rained down into my eyes. For whatever reason, after cleaning my eyes, I just put the hatch back and went about my business until I decided to take a nap a bit later, maybe 3 p.m. During my nap, I dreamt about walking down the hallway of my house, which seemed to now be a hotel of some type. As I got to my room, I'm standing in the doorway of my room, looking at the attic entrance, and the coat closet opens up, and a woman takes a step out and follows my gaze up to the attic entrance, and back to me, and she says, That's where the big one lives. About that time, the attic hatch slides out of the way, the woman goes back into the closet, 
I'm picked up by what feels like a large hand placed against the wall. Never saw anything in my dream, but the message I remember thinking in my dream was, I can hurt you. After that, I was let down on the floor. So after I wake up, I walk around the rest of the day wondering what the fuck. So, that evening I go to bed at whatever time, I go to sleep. For whatever reason, I woke up just after 3 a.m., checked my watch afterwards, and at the exact moment I opened my eyes, one of my son's large dinosaur toys about two feet from my face is roaring. How the toy got there is weird as fuck because my kids were with their mom that weekend and the toy wasn't there when I went to bed. After the dinosaur stopped with its roaring, I decided the best course of action was to be a tough guy and say, yeah right motherfucker. And I rolled facing the wall and went back to sleep. I can share many more if anyone's interested. Instances like this have happened to both my kids and every guest that stayed in my home. The Haunted Staircase The first strange thing happened not long after we moved into our house. One night I was sitting on a couch in the living room facing the TV, which was also in the direction of the stairs and the entry to the kitchen, just able to see both with the peripheral vision. I then noticed movement going up the stairs, so I call out to my wife and she's going to bed. She calls out, No, I'm in the bathroom. So I say, Never mind, just thought I saw you walk upstairs. Noticed it a couple more times, and eventually I tried to investigate it. Figured maybe it was just a shadow caused from car lights driving by. But after several cars passed by, no shadows were made. My wife asked me why I kept looking at the stairs and front door. So I told her, I, well, I could swear I see a shadow of a person out of the corner of my eye. But when I look, there's nothing. She just kind of looks at me semi-worried and says, You mean on the staircase? Turns out she's seen it multiple times, but always just wrote it off as well. I started joking that we had a shadow man in her house. She told me to stop because it seems kind of creepy. Can't remember how many days later it was, but another night we were laying in bed, both scrolling on our phones. We hear a strange thumping sound coming from downstairs, growing slightly louder. Both of us are freaked out, and unfortunately, being the man, I got my handgun out of the dresser drawer and got out of bed as quietly as I could in case something was about to attack us. The thumping stops. Wait a few seconds. Silence. I open my bedroom door and quickly step around the corner with my gun raised and ready. There is no one there. I see the front door is locked and there's no light out downstairs. So I look around and find all the windows and doors are locked. The next day, while I was quickly walking upstairs, I realized that the sound of my feet hitting the steps was the same sound we heard the night before. Something was on the staircase. Now I flash forward to just a few days ago. Me and my wife are in her dining room, opposite side of the staircase from the living room with the door to the half bath under the stairs the same room, getting our daughter ready to go to the stores. Now I had my back turned, so I didn't see it happen, but my wife saw a wire frame reindeer that we have on a shelf, sitting on the right side of the metal frame tissue holder on the left, above our toilet, fly forward several feet, hit the baseboard on the opposite wall, left side of the toilet and then lay still on the floor. I put the deer back on the shelf and again attempted to recreate it somehow, falling or bouncing off the toilet to get where it landed. But the only way that it fell, it landed on the toilet that was open or bounced off the rim to the right of the toilet. I don't get the feeling that whatever it was causing it was strange or that it was malevolent, but it certainly wanted to make its presence known. The best of my knowledge, no one had died in this house. Didn't ask when we bought it. But for whatever reason, it's only confined to the staircase and not the whole house. We've also noticed her daughter look up the staircase at times and talk and reach up toward the second floor, then laugh and run away like to play chase, run around the house. She can go up and down the stairs by herself and tells us when she's going upstairs to her playroom. So again, very strange. A 
Ask Reddit. I used to collect pocket watches. Many years ago, I bought a cheap but interesting one at a junk shop in Chinatown. It was of the variety that needed to be manually wound, which I consider to be an appealing trait. Upon purchasing the watch, I wound it up, and for the next day or so, I had a streak of monumentally good luck. Everything meant my way. A girl that I liked agreed to go on a date with me. A webcomic that I was running got 15,000 unique views. And the lottery ticket that I bought, purely on a whim, resulted in me getting something like $150. Clearly, it was the watch. I was tempted to keep using it, of course, but I don't want to wear out whatever charm that it had. As such, I stopped winding it and resolved to only take it out when I needed a little bit of random fortune. That was when everything went downhill. As soon as the watch stopped, my luck reversed entirely. I wound up in the emergency room on the day of my date. The webcomics artist quit. My car's back tire blew out on the highway, and the damage cost well over $150 to repair. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. As though the debt of good luck that I'd incurred was being repaid with an incredibly steep amount of interest. Once again, I was sure that the watch was to blame. Needless to say, the implications were astounding. If I was willing to steel myself against a potential calamity, I could be assured of having exceptionally good luck whenever I wanted. Might even be able to use the bad luck to my advantage. Unfortunately, ha, things didn't work out that way in the slightest. Regardless of what I prepared myself to endure, the consequences of using the watch were always without fail of a nature that both completely undermined its own benevolence and left me off worse than before. Once while hoping to hear back about a job to which I applied, I wound the watch. Within hours, I received a call from an enthusiastic hiring manager who immediately set me up with an interview. When the day of the interview came, which was not long after I had stopped winding the watch, the bus I was riding broke down. I had to take a very expensive taxi ride to my destination, and upon arrival, I was told that the position had been filled. Since then, I've tried winding the wretched thing a handful of other times. I've always regretted it. The price in bad luck is never worth the brief increase in good fortune. Someone once recommended that I simply keep the watch wound indefinitely. But what happens if I forget one day? I shudder to think about what could occur if I went a week, a month, or even longer with nothing but good luck only to have the watch's hands grind to a halt. Perhaps my heart would stop with them. I'm not a superstitious man by nature. I can think of several rational explanations for why my luck appears to change when I use that watch. But that hasn't stopped me from wrapping it up in a paper towel and hiding it in the deepest recesses of my closet. I'm kind of freaking out here. I think I'm tapping into the spiritual world but I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't know much about it. As I'm typing this, my heart's beating out of my chest. I was laying in my bed and I had this weird feeling in my gut out of nowhere. Can't explain it. I was just incredibly uneasy. Then I noticed my bedroom windows were all open and my curtains were wide open. It's the middle of the night and I thought this is weird. I always close the windows because winter nights are very cold in the UK. The little light was on in my room. And it was bright enough for me to see every piece of furniture in my room clearly. And everything just felt off. I kind of told myself to calm down. It didn't feel like I was nervous. It just felt like something was really bad. One of my hands are shaking extremely hard as I'm typing this because I'm still so shook up from everything that happened tonight. For your information, I'm really bad at math. I could just never get it. I wanted to know how many days there are until a certain date, and I heard a faint whisper coming from inside my pillow, saying how many days there were. 
wanted to laugh. Then I searched it up and it was correct. That's when I started to feel so sick and nervous that I was dizzy. I stood up, closed the windows, and turned off the lights and returned to my bed. I realized I should post about this on Reddit because all my friends are sleeping and I can't message them for at least a few hours. It's 4 a.m. in the UK. So just before I go on Reddit, a random song I've only listened to two or three times in my entire life just springs to my mind. I wouldn't stop playing, and it quickly became an earworm, so I decided to just play music on my phone so it would stop bothering me. I shuffle all my music and that exact song starts playing, which just makes everything so much worse because it feels like someone or something's messing with me. I know as I'm typing this, my head is spinning. I can't even concentrate, the world feels so silent even though I have music pretty much blasting in my ears. Now every song that I play, even if it's a song I've never heard before, it feels like I've listened to it a thousand times before. I want to find excitement in this new spiritual paranormal lifestyle, but I just feel so dead, but at the same time almost anxious now that I know that they're real. My life's getting so crazy. I'm a weird person, so this should interest me. But it just keeps getting worse, and I'm beginning to get a little scared of what's going on outside, because I don't want a bad spiritual experience to happen. People before told me that maybe there was a gas leak in my home, but these events have been happening for at least three weeks now. So if that was the case, I'd probably be dead from the poisoning. Maybe I did die and slip into a different reality, but I have no proof to back that up, yet. I've suspected it before, though, after I did something bad and felt like I was dying, and then suddenly everything was okay with my health. I don't like to post about things unless I feel, well, unless it feels very real, because then I'll have to post about every little weird thing that happened to me in the past month. Experience intense physical pain that happened simultaneously with my grandpa's death. A couple years ago in March, I was traveling with my dad. I was traveling to tour a college that I'd be going to in the fall. A couple of months before this, I'd lost my grandma to Alzheimer's. Both her and my grandpa had very progressed Alzheimer's and dementia. My grandpa needed the support, so my mom was staying with him in a different state while my dad and I flew to visit a school. We were on the plane, close to descending. I was feeling fine, not stressed, listening to a podcast. My dad was across the aisle from me. I suddenly felt immense pain and pressure from within my jaw, the left side of my face. It was sharp, constant, and felt like I needed to pop my jaw, but couldn't move it at all. I had no idea what was going on, and had never felt this before. I could only try to breathe through the pain and wait for it to pass. It took a couple of minutes before it could sort of begin to subside. I was very scared. It occurred before and while the plane began to land. I considered it to be pressure related to the plane, but it was too localized and unique. Couldn't even turn my head to let my dad know something was happening to me. I was wondering if I was having some sort of seizure on the side of my face. After we landed, I considered trying to find a coffee stand, try to get a cup of ice to hold against my face, but no luck. Within an hour, it was gone. As we were driving to the school, my mom had let us know that my grandma had passed. Between us getting off the plane and what time I imagined it took for my mom to gather herself to let us know, I believe this all happened within the same hour. I called her. She believes that I felt pain as a signal of his death. 
which I believe as well. I've found studies saying this isn't entirely uncommon, but I've struggled to find other personal stories like mine. Terms like empath, bereavement, hallucination, and sixth sense come up when I try to Google the possible term. Anytime I begin to feel strange pain at an intense level, I think of calling my loved ones to make sure that everything's okay. Nothing like this has ever happened since. While I don't know what specifically was the cause of death for my grandpa in the moment, I wonder if it involved any pain similar to what I felt. I would love to hear any similar stories or thoughts on what happened to me. Grandpa Bob My grandfather died after a brutal battle with pancreatic cancer when I was 17. When I was 21, I became pregnant with my elder son. We lived in a tiny Section 8 apartment in a rural town and had little decoration, no familiar pictures at all. My son was born with a defect, I guess you could call it, in his ears. Didn't hear very well. Well, mostly communicated with signed English. Once he was around one years old, I would hear him at night chattering away. Couldn't understand what he was saying, but he would laugh, and it really sounded like a conversation. Appropriate pauses. One day, my sister-in-law and I were sitting on the couch. My son was on my lap. As I showed her a memory book my mom had made me for Christmas. On the second page were several photos of my grandparents and great-grandparents from both sides. They were labeled. But let me remind you, my son was about 14 months old. I flipped to this page. He laughs, points at my maternal grandfather in his wedding photo, and clear as anything says, Look, Grandpa Bob. Yes, his name was Robert, and yes, we called him Bob. As a bonus, my second son also chattered in his room at night. I asked him once who he was speaking to. He says, Gamma Ruth. She says she's sorry. My dad's mother was named Ruth. And she was a very, well, for lack of a better term, unkind lady. I have no photos of her and have never spoken about her. Even if I had, I didn't call her Ruth, just Grandma. I am an atheist. I do not believe in the soul. I have no explanation for these occurrences. I leave my mind open. And if I ever have incontrovertible evidence, I guess, I am willing to believe. ETA. A lot of comments on how early my son spoke. Both of my kids spoke fluently very early. With the elder son, he was hard of hearing, so of course his speech wasn't clear. However, he did use signed English fluently. He was also in speech therapy because of the hearing deficit, which obviously increased his fluency. He's now 21, so to be honest, he may have been 15 or 16 months, I'm not positive. I know we moved to our first station when he was 17 months, and this happened a while before we moved. Ghost Cat, Experience Two Different People, and Another Short Story That May Be Related. I've been wanting to share this for some time, so here goes. There's two different stories, 
One is short and may or may not be related to the main story. Since they could be related, I'll include it here instead of a separate post. This took place over a long period of time. Me, a 40-year-old male, got a cat when I was in grade 4. I'm an only child and my mother's a single parent. My cat's name was Clancy. He was my best friend. Not sure if it's relevant to the memory, but Clancy was found at the front step of a shelter that we got him. They believed him to be well, about two at that time. Clancy lived a long life. He was two at the time that we got him, and then he would be 22 when he left this world. Because this took place over such a long period of time, some of the details are a little blurry. I guess the best place to start is with the ghost cat itself. See, Clancy wasn't the ghost cat. Clancy was very much alive, but he apparently had a friend. Not sure if he even knew he had a friend, but he did. So throughout my childhood and into adulthood, I'd always have this strange experience when I slept. As I lay in bed and closed my eyes, I would feel the presence of a cat on my bed slowly walking up toward my head. Every little footstep was felt, the pressure and weight exactly like a cat. Was it Clancy? Nope. I always slept with the door closed, clicked shut. The reason for that is that I liked to sleep in and didn't want to hear my mom get up in the morning. Plus, sleeping with a cat on the bed sucks. It takes all the space and I don't want to roll over on him. I think people might say it must have been our cat, he just didn't really realize. It wasn't. Occasionally my cat would bang on the door to my room and I would let him in or tell him to go away or spray water at him. But not that often. We had him for 20 years, so really he didn't like to come into my room at night very often, once a year or so. The ghost cat would visit every night, though. As soon as the light was off and I was in bed lying, it would jump up onto my bed and walk slowly up toward my head. It was definitely spooky, but not threatening in any way. And it was silent. Having a cat, you know what it feels like to have them walk on your bed when your eyes are closed. Cats make sounds when they jump, and when they walk up to your face, you can hear them purr, and they'll sniff you or lick your face. The ghost cat was silent, though. No jump noise, no purring, no sniffing noise, and no licking. Just the subtle weight of its steps all the way to your head. Many times I was wide awake thinking to myself, am I crazy? Eventually I just figured it was all in my head and accepted that, well, when I sleep I would feel what I thought was a cat on my bed. Not just my cat, because he was sleeping in the hall or somewhere else. Oh well. This experience was so gentle and non-threatening that I never talked about it. No need. Since it was just some trick I thought of my mind, maybe it was just playing something on me when I was going to bed. An experience I want some insight on. So I've experienced one of these situations before, but it hasn't happened in years. I'm sitting on a bed in a rehab facility visiting my grandmother. My aunt is also present. I'm reading an article on my phone as two people walk in. So I do the polite thing, sit up so they can sit down. However, I put my phone away and I continue reading the article. Or rather, I don't. As I'm reading the article, I'm noticing all the active listening comments going on, like, yeah, oh no, that's good, etc. I start randomly listening to the conversation as I'm reading. Not knowing what is being spoken about, I would ask myself, huh, is she talking about her daughter? And I'd notice someone would make an active listening comment like, yeah, right after I had asked myself the question. And then a sentence or two later, the lady said, yeah, my daughter and me. I tuned back out, and now another story. No clue who's being talked about. I ask myself, is it her brother? I hear a comment of, no, in disbelief. Then I ask myself, is it her father? Must be him in response to her next few sentences. I hear, yeah. Then a few sentences later, she says, my father. Anyways, this keeps happening. I tune in and out, asking myself questions about the topic or the conversation. 
And I hear a yes or no, just random listening comment that ends up being the correct answer to my question right after I ask myself. I start thinking, oh, this isn't real. You're imagining things. Or the guy says, listening comment, oh, you shouldn't do that. Then I convince myself it's in my head. I proceed to ask myself, was that in my head or is this reality? I hear a good chance of it not being in your head, guy replying to my aunt. Then as the lady's talking, I think so, this is reality? I hear a, yes it is, my aunt replying to the lady. I start internally freaking out as everything goes quiet. Then as I think, I don't think I can handle this. The lady goes, well, all right, I think we've taken enough of y'all's time. And they leave. Has anybody experienced something similar? What do you think was really happening? Was I relating the comments I knew weren't in reply to myself and having a confirmation bias? If it was confirmation bias, then how come I don't remember one instance of the comments being wrong? The next time I experience a similar moment, what are some things I can do to test the validity of the experience in a way that would definitely disprove or prove the reality of it? If something like this was happening to you, would you want it to be proven as a real thing happening? I think it's my perception being altered and trying to relate unrelated things, but I can't make sense of how it's so accurate, at least when it happens, and how it always stops when I get uncomfortable with it. Anyways, I hope this made sense and I can't wait to hear from the Reddit hive mind. Hopefully someone can give me an explanation, theory, or can relate and share your own similar experiences. Alaska. Haunted homestead. Multi-person experience. Seemingly sentient lights. My great-grandfather homesteaded in Alaska, before all of the housing developments and heavy traffic. It used to be a really quiet area, very swampy, super cold in winter. You walked through the swamp and hit patches not quite frozen all the way through, even in the deepest part of winter. Now that in and of itself isn't unusual. Running water doesn't always freeze. It's a geologically active area, but there's reasons for that. However, my great-grandfather spent time in Ireland before settling in Alaska, and he liked to tell how when he was there, he rescued a pair of fairies and made a pact with them in exchange for being able to see things nobody else could. He'd take them with him and provide alcohol to their liking. When he settled in the homestead, so he liked to tell it, he brought the fairies with him, so long as they had a drop of alcohol in good company in the cold of winter, there well, they'd stay. Now, we did see them on occasion at the swamp. Not just as kids, but the adults too. They looked like fireflies or balls of light. Mostly in white, but you'd see one in red or blue now and again. Not like slightly red or slightly blue, like red M&M &M or blue M&M, &M, but glowing type like red or blue. We also saw them inside the cabin. Sometimes they'd follow you, or all collect nearby while we were chopping firewood, but not always. The red one was almost always around when someone got hurt, and we were all fairly convinced that it made bad things happen. I'm not sure if people outside our family saw them, but I do know that everyone within my immediate family had at least a handful of direct experience with them and at least one negative experience with the red light, or fairy, as my family always called it, present. The cabin had a sort of lodge-style design. The rooms were lofted, and either side of the living room, kind of like in hotels, where there's an open middle section, banisters surrounding it, with rooms on opposite sides. It doesn't really matter, except that from the upstairs, you can see either side of the wall dividing the kitchen and the sunroom. And on more than one occasion, you'd see the little balls of light would hit the wall and just keep going out the other side. You'd also hear whistling, sometimes. Kind of an echo of what my great-grandfather sounded like when he was drinking. And as he liked to say, 
chatting with the fairies. It was putter room. It would happen when you were in the swamp and in the house, and when you were the only one on the property at all. The homestead burned down shortly after my great-grandfather passed away, maybe seven years ago, and so far nobody's in a hurry to rebuild it. I do wonder sometimes if the lights are still out there, or the whistling, but I'm not in any rush to go find out. Saw something undeniable in the woods. I'll preface this by saying I've never seen a ghost. I believe in them in my youth, and I've been rather agnostic about my beliefs for a very long time, simply believing that anything could exist. The older I got, however, the more skeptical I got. This happened last night, and I can now firmly say I am a believer. My friends and I were in a local park last night. We were walking along a trail, and right away something was off. One of my friends has always seen the paranormal. He was extremely uncomfortable. He was seeing figures hearing footsteps throughout the extent of the walk. My other friend and I couldn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary, so we kind of laughed it off and said he was just scared, which I now regret. It wasn't until we sat down at a tree that things took a turn for the worse. Both of my friends reported feeling of cold dread washing over them, that I didn't feel and assumed was anxiety. And then my ghost-seeing friend stared at the tree line. I asked him if he was seeing one. He said yes. I looked into the woods and I saw it. It was a small, wispy figure. It had a white-gray coloration seemed to be made out of smoke or mist. It was in constant fluid motion, inverted into itself as if it was barely staying visible. It would bend from just a smoke ball to a small humanoid figure. Not childlike, just small, and it would wave. I pointed at it, asked my friend if it was between these two trees. He said yes. I described what I was seeing. He said, Oh God, you see it too. We ran out of there after that. I felt the same dread my other two friends felt. I couldn't shake the feeling for the rest of the night. It's all I can think about now. What was that? It didn't feel like a dead person. It didn't feel like a person at all. It also didn't feel mocking, but it felt like it was trying to act in a way that was abnormal for it. I don't know. I'm coming to you all as an ex-skeptic begging for answers. My friend and I both saw the same thing, and all three of us felt the same thing. Best comparison, like a freight train landed on my roof. So to set the scene, I was living in a trailer. The park was hit by a horrible tornado years prior. It was really bad. Most of the park was destroyed, and it was so bad the ice company was using their trucks to transport to the morgue because of the amount of losses. It was pretty bare landscape-wise, like zero mature trees or anything, very flat. Trailers are pretty spaced out, especially since not a ton had moved in for a while after that. So one day, my husband at the time says that he heard the craziest thing that night. That it was so loud and hit the roof, he doesn't know how to describe it. 
but he doesn't know how no one else woke up. It was like probably dreaming him, a light sleeper. I'd have heard it. He worked nights and went back to work that next night. About 2 a.m. I'm finally in bed and I was just dozing off when it sounded like something landed on the roof. Mind you, I had two small kids on the other side of the trailer, so the lights in the living room and kitchen were on, in case I needed to go check on them because one was only 10 months old. But all of a sudden, whatever it was takes off down the roof. It sounds like a train, like a constant, not like footsteps. And you can hear it moving and getting further away. As it goes to the other end, you can see the lights and things shaking, but not all at once. Only in each room that it's over. Like the kitchen light first, then it stopped in the living room, and then it turns back and comes up the other side. Same thing. Lights shaking, but in reverse order. Then nothing. Like it ran off the roof. Too big to be a raccoon or something. Although I'm not sure how that would have landed like that with no tree or anything around. You would think you would hear something climb up the side, especially right next to where it was laying. I ended up calling my brother to come check things out because I was freaking out. Never in my life heard anything like it. No, it sounds crazy, but I felt nuts. But I was curious about others' opinions, even logical explanations I haven't thought of. I did Google search years ago, and the only thing that came close in explanation was some weird paranormal creature, supposedly spotted in Indiana. By the way, this also happened in Indiana. At least for me, it didn't really help. We were surrounded by cornfields everywhere. Give me the creeps. Too many scary movies, I suppose. All I kept picturing was the creepy thing from Jeepers Creepers coming to eat me. In the same trailer, one night laying in bed watching an orb of light travel through the house. Went into the boys' room. Out, then into the next room. Out, into the living room. Gone. I checked everything. Went back to my room into the bathroom. And as I was standing at the mirror, it was like a cold hand on my shoulder. I jumped, but... More just startled. Didn't feel scared. It felt like, well, I'm okay, just checking in, kind of a feeling. I think my grandpa was checking in for the second time. The first time I think he did was just nuts. And the second I got my car door, I broke down in tears. Left me this long enough for the moment. I need to share this ghost story with you. My girlfriend and I went to her sister's a few days ago. We were invited as guests in a family meeting. We had a great time and I was questioning a few things. And one of them was about a cemetery, about a hundred feet or thirty meters approximately away from the house. I cracked one or two jokes about ghosts but the atmosphere didn't follow my vibe. Girlfriend told me that, well, for a long time she was seeing ghosts in that house, and her sister told me she's seen it too. This is how their story goes, and it's really interesting. Fifteen to twenty years ago, my girlfriend was like ten. Her sister was in her early twenties. Sister was living two blocks from the main house, near a cemetery. It was her father's old house. As the girlfriend had bad times as a kid in the main house, she was often escaping to her sisters for a sleepover. And over some time, they were sleeping together in the same bed when she was seeing a real woman in white with white hair and a young face sitting just a few feet away on a chair and looking at her. After a few nights, she asked her sister, What is that in the chair? Sister was petrified with the question because she was seeing the same woman for months maybe even years, often in that same chair. Imagine she was ignoring it, God knows how. They were speaking to me in one breath, how women looked like and the details were absolutely the same and incredibly detailed at that. The ghost didn't bother my sister, but it did bother my girlfriend. She was sitting on her back when she was sleeping face down. We were sleeping on our chests and Sister literally kicked my girlfriend out of bed to turn on the lights. The ghost just disappeared. I don't remember why the ghost stopped to show himself daily, but for years it was gone. My girlfriend already went out of the house, but then the sister seen it again. 
ignored it, never talked about it. When sister was 32, she was with an old neighbor going through pictures. And in those pictures, they saw a ghost from the chair. She literally started crying and shaking, and believe me, she was a strong woman. Her question was, who's that received incredible answer? That is the first wife of your dad that fell from the balcony where you sleep now, when the house was in construction and she was pregnant, buried on cemetery near house. She hit with head left over cement. Her dad never told her about death of his first wife. He had three in parentheses. Sis went to church, asked what to do. They instructed her to light up candle on grave. She did as told, and that was end of ghost. I usually never believe in ghost stories, but witnessing two people that I know talking about me about the same thing simultaneously changed my mind. Paranormal Entity Moved into an apartment with my wife six months ago. There's been a progressive amount of events that have taken place. We're not really sure what it could be. For some background, I'm agnostic. My wife practices witchcraft. My wife has a hidden altar that looks like a small closet built into the wall. Relevant later. Since moving in there, it's always been this odd energy in the air. Notably, our cats were terrified for weeks. Maybe not odd. Cats hate change and usually take a while to adopt to a new language. Adapt. The odd part is that they would just sit at the door and stare into the darkness for hours. To this day, they're not comfortable and relaxed unless me and my partner are in the same room. Then it started happening. Me and my wife at different times started to see a humanoid shadow. It would usually be standing in the doorways or the archway into the kitchen. I have insomnia as well. Sometimes I get out of bed and go into my office as to not disturb my wife. She's told me that several times she's woken up and still felt that someone was in the bed, only to find out that I wasn't there. Thought this was a little crazy until it happened to me. I woke up and felt like my wife was curled up behind me. I believe she was still in bed, even rolled over to kiss them only to find the bed empty. Can't express how strongly I felt that my wife was present that night. She was in the office after not being able to sleep. Then one night we're laying in bed. At the end of the bed, the springs pop and sound like somebody either stepped onto the bed or sat up from the bed. Mind you, the bed is a hybrid and very new, so I don't believe it was a matter of a spring getting stuck. Another night we're watching a movie with the door open. The cats are laying down with us in the office. In the corner of my eye, I see a shadow moving quickly toward the bathroom and out of view. Odd. Maybe it was just me seeing things. Look back at my wife and she's pale. She asks me if I was okay because I looked pale as well. Then proceeded to tell me that they saw a shadowy figure standing in front of her altar, then quickly moving toward the bathroom. I admitted to her that I'd seen the same. We were both spooked, had to leave the apartment and get out for a bit. When we returned, things were calm. Later in the week, I used the restroom, washed my hands, closed the door, and as I walked toward my room, the bathroom door made the opening sound and creaked open. Quickly got back into bed and went to sleep. Since this, me and my partner have continued to see the bathroom door open and close. We've heard loud crashes and bangs when our cats are sitting in the same room with us. This apartment is older and was built in the early 70s. Even though my wife is a witch and practices witchcraft, they haven't practiced for several months. Could this be someone that died? Something angry at my wife's altar? Or maybe something else? It doesn't seem dangerous yet, and for the most part we ignored it and tried not to give it attention. It's also odd to me that it seems to always be in doorways. Am I crazy? My latest experience was pretty tame. 
I was hanging out with a few friends in between some buildings where people park their cars, where some storage buildings and a football pitch are located. It's a pretty old area in my city, mostly populated with old people. When we were getting ready to head out, I look up to one of the storage sheds. I see a pure white wispy figure with no discernible features, about 160 centimeters tall, kind of hovering five centimeters above the shed's roof. It looked as if it had a cloak over it, like a solid mass, but at the same time translucent. After I double take at it, it faded away rapidly, as if being taken by the wind. It's late at night, and I might have been high on weed, but not enough to hallucinate such a thing. My other occurrence was when I was a little kid. Might have been six or ten years old. Honestly, don't remember. This one is not tame at all and was pretty scary. So much so that I feel obligated to share. I was in my house going from my bedroom to the kitchen to get something. I turn on the light in the hallway, or my, you know, that would be to my right, and that would be the living room. We had one of those big-ass plasma TVs. They weighed a ton. The light from the hallway was just enough to illuminate it was enough to illuminate the living room pretty confidently. You could see what was going on in there. I first hear some scary steps coming from there. I couldn't tell the source. At this point, I had just taken my first step into the hallway. I then hear some giggling. I look over and I see a small girl. She was looking at me. I had just come into full view of the living room. She had pigtails and was wearing a dress. I think it was black. I just freeze and stare at her. She now quietly heads over to the TV and hides behind it. When our eyes contacted each other, I just ran into my bedroom and hid underneath the covers. I have had minor experiences all my life until the time where I stopped being afraid of the dark. I would hear my name being shouted on either sides of streets or at home. I would see things move as if there was an air current, like tissues or plants, bed sheets being tugged on, breath on my face while trying to fall asleep. But one day, out of nowhere, I stopped being afraid of the dark. Not by choice, I just woke up and I was no longer afraid. Caught on camera. Over several weeks, it progressed from little things to very, very strange things. We tried to get it blessed one day. This was the day I seen it with my own eyes. They were going from room to room, saying prayers, and saying what people say when they're trying to get rid of spirits from a home. This house was an old house. The doors have this glossy clear coat, so you can still see your figure in the door. I was standing at the door while they were blessing this one room. As they started the prayer, I see something go past me in the reflection on the door. I also felt a gust of wind. I tried really hard to talk myself out of actually seeing that. I was sort of in denial of what just happened. While talking myself out of it, I was still very curious, wanted to know if I was going crazy or if that actually happened. Wish I hadn't felt so curious. The next day after blessing the house, it was less active, but we all decided to go out in the memorial, leave the laptop camera on to see what happens when we're not home. We go out and it's all good. We forget we left the camera on and just go about our day. After a few hours, we call it a day and head back home. 
once we hit the driveway, we got excited to see if we caught anything. We weren't expecting what we saw and what we heard. We grabbed the laptop. It automatically stopped itself at some point. And we start watching it. We had it face down the hallway from the end room, which also captures the front door through the kitchen. My uncle waves at the camera, closes the front door. As soon as that front door closed, something was thrown at the room door from the closet. It was in the room that the laptop was in. We seen just the arm of something in the corner of the shot, as the camera was not in the closet. The item that was thrown looked like a black book, and what followed was a demonic voice. It was saying things we couldn't understand followed by little kid footsteps running around the house and crying. We were so scared by what we had witnessed, we didn't want to watch the end of the video. We tried to look for what was thrown at the door. There was nothing. We felt a heavy urge to delete that video and not talk about it. As this happened after the movie Paranormal Activity was released, we feared it would get worse if we shared our evidence. This was maybe eight to nine years ago, the first time I've spoken about it. A scary memory, actually traumatizing for me. I was about six years old and my sister was about seven, living with my grandparents in Winter Park, Florida. It was around midnight, maybe early morning, but still dark enough to where your eyes had to adjust to your surroundings. My grandfather built a dog pen, what extended across the backyard with the opening contained by a fence door. It opened up on the far end on the left side of the dog pen. Our bedroom window was on the right side of the house in the back overlooking most of that side of the backyard. We had one adult female dog, and she had four baby puppies. At night, that's where they slept, also containing two dog houses my grandfather built for them. So one night the dogs were barking constantly, and usually that doesn't happen unless a small animal's out there and they can't get to it. But this night, I decided to look out for some stupid reason. I wanted to see what was going on. I guess my intuition told me these weren't normal barks. I peeked out my window to the right, nothing, then to the left. I can see what looks like a man, very charred or burned, because I can see his silhouette, but not his physique. And it looked like he was sitting in a red wagon. I know, sounds crazy. And he was opening the door to the dog pen, but it's as if he stopped soon as I peeked out of the window, like he sensed me. I'm getting goosebumps and shivers just typing this because I barely ever talk about this experience. I closed my window because I got spooked. I don't know how or why I got the courage to peek out again, but I did, and immediately looked to where I saw the man. But he wasn't there. I scanned the dog pen, and when my eyes got closer to the right side of it, the thing was right there by my window, so close to my window but still had no facial features, because he looked burned or charred. I couldn't do anything but stare, and his eyes were so red, and he was freaking smiling at me with white, sharp teeth. I stared couldn't blink for what seemed like two minutes. Of course, the scarier things are to us, the slower time gets. I snapped out of it, though, woke my sister up to look out there with me, but it was gone. Next morning, one of the puppies were dead. His head was there and the skin of his body was there, but his organs and his bones were gone. It was like someone carved everything out of him and just left his head and skin. My grandfather saw it, said it was a snake. Huh. Of course, I didn't believe that. What other explanation could it be other than an animal doing this? We buried him and cried. Suppressed that memory for two years and never looked out the window at night until I was about 22 years old, now 30. Pray to God I never see that thing again, but sometimes I can't help but feel it's there somewhere. I don't know, this is just my story. I made this account hoping to get some answers. Something. I can't be the only one. I failed the rule.
rules of the Ouija board and may be haunted forever. I was 15 when I decided to start messing around with the Ouija board. It was something the neighborhood parents would drill into our heads to not play with. As kids, we were intrigued. It was my best friend, a 14-year-old female, my neighbor, a 14-year-old male, and myself, a 15-year-old female, playing it one evening. That's when my neighbor thought it was a big joke and made fun of us for playing. He tried to light the Ouija board on fire. It refused to flame. It just wouldn't burn at all. My best friend and I thought he was being crazy, but we didn't understand the severity it caused us. About a month later, I was sitting in my mother's room with my best friend and my little sister listening to music. Because my mother had the best sound system in the house, she was gone for the night. My sister was sitting on my mom's bed. My friend's back was facing the window, and I was facing my friend but couldn't help but notice a blue man standing outside my mom's bedroom window. My friend seen my demeanor change, and when she looked out the window, I seen the color drain from her body as she started to cry. I left my mother's room with my friend. We locked ourselves in the only room without windows until my mom arrived home. We assumed it was a peeping Tom for the longest while after this. Now fast forward to another two to three months after that happened. My neighbor called me, and my friend was in a panic saying that he needed to come over. It was an emergency. So we told him to come over immediately, and he did. He explained to us that him and his friends... Not the best group of individuals, but given their age, the decisions kind of make sense, unfortunately. Decided to light an abandoned car on fire. He said he took a picture of it engulfed in flames to send his friends as a joke, saying, Campfire. When he revealed the photo to me, my friend, she again lost the color in her body and started to cry. I immediately noticed in the blue of the flame that same blue man that was outside of my mother's bedroom window. I could move, speak, or feel anything. He questioned us on what it was, and the only one who could make out the words for us was my little sister as she told him, that's the blue man that was outside my mom's window. Message from the Other Side This is a true story that spans 30 years. Back in the early 90s, I was just starting high school. At the time, I had a long-term girlfriend named Kara, but she attended a different high school in a different city, about 20 miles north of where I lived. Kara and I had our typical evening routine. We would talk on the phone for about an hour talking about her day, making plans, or talking about the latest episode of Beverly Hills 90210. Typical high school shit. We were two typical teens that were in love, talking about our future plans as if we were going to be together forever. Sometimes we would discuss her drill team schedule and the upcoming competitions that I would attend with her. Kara was on the drill team for her school, and they would compete regionally with other schools in the surrounding districts. I was still teaching myself how to edit audio, and I'd often make her mixtapes that her team could create routines with. That shit was a pain in the ass, too. I didn't have a computer capable of doing any of the editing. I was literally teaching myself how to physically splice physical tape using audio cassettes. I became damn good at it. My family didn't own a cordless phone at the time. Instead, we ended up you know, those wall-mounted touch-button phones with the 800-foot coiled phone cord? It would constantly get tangled up by itself, you know that one? This usually meant that I was in the kitchen, where the phone was mounted, when Kara and I were having one of our evening phone sessions. 
One night as Kara and I were discussing her upcoming drill team competition, my mom started calling out for me from the living room. I walked from the kitchen into the living room, still talking to Kara, when the local newscast came on. My mom told me to keep watching as she saw something very alarming on the news. It was the top story that evening. A young girl's body was just found just outside her high school that same morning. I remember being on the phone with Kara and watching the news as they covered it. It was December 14th, 1991. The name of the girl whose body was found was named Sarah Yarborough. She was on the drill team for her school. Apparently, she had gone to the school early that morning and planned to meet with the rest of her team to prepare for the local drill team competition, a competition that my girlfriend Kara and her team were scheduled to compete at. Her body was found partially clothed and was unfortunately sexually assaulted and strangled. Now, if the similarities weren't already kind of freaky, the moment they showed a photo of Sarah on the news, chills ran down my spine. Sarah had curly, fiery red hair. So did Kara. In fact, they even shared similar facial features. I immediately told Kara to turn on her TV to watch the news with me. We both thoroughly got creeped the fuck out. Weird Encounter at the Park Was walking the dog at the local park. It has quite a bit of development around it like some car dealerships, a few plazas across the street, and so on. It's also located a few miles from the local jail. I've taken the dog there quite a bit over the years, sometimes on leash, sometimes off. Encountered a moose or two at night, but never anything beyond that. As I'm following the path back to the main park, I'm on a divided section that is surrounded by fencing on both sides. The car dealership on one, and their storage lot on the other. This stretches pretty much until there's a clearing half a mile ahead, which is really an empty lot that's fairly large. The fencing on both sides is fairly new, but there's a cutaway section on the south side as you approach the park. We're walking west, passing all the dealerships, coming to the clearing where the fencing ends and the big lot opens up. I see a Native American fellow walking toward me. He was wearing all black. I think he also had a hat on, fairly skinny, with long hair. He kind of had a smile and a smirk on his face, but overall didn't give me any type of vibe or feeling. I was actually more concerned that the dog would misbehave since he was still young and prone to being overly friendly with strangers. My dog didn't even react. We passed by each other. At that point, I guess I felt a bit sketchy. Just wanted to look back for a quick glance. I look back and I don't see him. Mind you, it's not even 20 feet from where we had just crossed. I was a bit puzzled since I felt I should have seen him as soon as I looked back. Naturally, this got me curious. So I go back to Venture and see if he's crossed this big open lot, but I don't see anyone. I think, okay, maybe he's hopped the fence. It's in the car lot. But again, I didn't see anything, and I definitely didn't hear any fence rattling. At this point, I figure I'm just bugging out and he must have slipped out somewhere and I just didn't check. I head back past the open lot and pretty much back to the park. I again look back again and I see a coyote looking right at me. The dog hadn't reacted this entire time. He's extremely reactive, so I just figured let's get out of here, sprint a few feet more and look back again. The coyote hasn't moved and it's still staring. At this point, a lady on a bike is approaching the coyote's way. I figure this is a good time to end the walk and depart.
kids and I lived in a haunted house from the late 1800s. For the first few months, the house seemed pretty normal. But then one night, my son came screaming down the stairs in what I would call a night terror. I assume he woke up from a nightmare, and it just kept going. He finally took a deep breath and said, I was sleepwalking, I'm okay. Went back up to his room. Then the weirdness started. One night I was down in the basement doing laundry. I heard a small child's voice behind me. Hi there. When I turned around, no one was there. At that point, we started finding toys in the basement in obscure places. My first thought was that the children who lived there before had hidden them in the crevices in the walls. Then one day I noticed a box of old marbles appeared where I had just cleaned. None of the toys belonged to my kids. I also set up a cheap dollar store alarm system around the office area, so I knew when the kids would sneak into the office to try to find birthday and Christmas presents, little stinkers. They did it often. One day when I was in the bathroom, the alarm went off. I yelled from the bathroom, Hey, get out of my office! Since my son and I were the only ones home, I heard him yell from upstairs, I'm not in your office. As time went by, we could hear a piano playing at night that I thought might be the neighbors. Sometimes the lights and ceiling fan would go on and off. I blamed old lighting. The front door would sometimes open if not double locked. I told the woman to own the home before the new landlord bought it as our kids were kind of friends. She told me the reason why she put the double lock on the door is that someone would open the door at night, and the reason she finally sold the house is because of all the weirdness surrounding it, including the piano. And this photograph was pasted over another photograph at the end that I wrote, and it's now gone. After that, we started looking for another place to live. It was during this time that really strange stuff started happening. My kids would feel like they were getting pushed up the stairs when going up. And then one night while my son was asleep in his room, he heard an old woman's raspy whisper from the closet saying, I'm gonna kill you. The kids would see shadows of figures going from out back in the porch area to the small building that belonged to our old house next door that was supposedly a candy store. It had burned up inside years before, but the outside remained undamaged. At this point, we moved. This was my first, and hopefully last, experience. This isn't the crazy story, but it sure creeped me out. This was a few years ago when I was like 28. So I was working out of town, in a very small town. It was in my province. It was old and was historical, and this town is known for a lot of drugs and violence. We stayed at a motel that looked super sketchy, and I've heard from many people that the place is really haunted, and weird stuff always happens there. I do believe in the paranormal, but never experienced it myself. I usually just jock most of these stories as being fake. I was getting ready to go to bed in my room for work the next morning. It was 8.30 at night in wintertime, so it was dark. I have a bright, hot, pink scrunchie I always used to sleep in. I left it on the bathroom counter when I took a shower. Right on the counter. It was a very small bathroom. It was the sink counter. You know, with one long leg in the middle of it. Basically set up, went to grab my brush in the other room and put my hair up. Go back to the bathroom, the scrunchie was gone. What the fuck? The bathroom is small, so I checked it over three or four times, and in the shower. It wasn't there. Went into the room where the bed is. Beds are still made. I checked the desk. Looked in the backpack. 
I haven't even opened my luggage yet. Went back and forth between the room and the bathroom another couple of times, though. I got angry and yelled, what the hell is going on? I was on the verge of tears because I just wanted to get to bed and not have to deal with this. But then something clicked about the motel being haunted, and maybe it was a spirit messing with me. So I said, put my scrunchie back, damn it. I went back into the bathroom, and there it was, sitting on the sink counter. I checked many times before, and it wasn't there. It's hot pink, and I would have seen it. The counter was so small. Something was definitely in my room that night, and it was messing with me. The story of that motel is a lot of junkies and prostitutes stay at that motel, because it's one of the few in that town. I was told quite a few people have died there, and have been killed, and a lot of overdoses. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if no one crossed over and just roamed the motel trying to mess with people. It was terrifying for me, and I covered my head under the sheets. I finally get to bed, and I keep hearing little things in the night. Not really loud stuff, but maybe something's moving around or being touched. I convinced myself that I was just scared. And that previous incident just messed with my brain at this point. In the end, I'm glad it was something silly and not something violent. I don't think I would have been able to keep it together emotionally in that room. What did I see? Basically, I was lying in bed, starting to fall asleep with my girlfriend on the phone. I'd already started with some weird feelings in my body that made me open my eyes multiple times. Usually, I'm the type that's asleep before my head hits the pillow. I had some weird pains in various places, my chest, arm, and head mostly. At one point, I was even thinking I was about to die have a heart attack or a stroke. Not that the pain was unbearable, but just such weird pains they were. Last time I opened my eyes, I somehow turned my head to the side, where my windows are. Everything is closed to my room. It has curtains that let no light pass, so the room is usually as dark as it can be. This is where I saw something. Panicked, started basically shouting for Google to turn on the lights. That didn't work, because I was on the phone, of course. Between my bed and the windows, I saw a human-shaped outline. Not really big or menacing or anything, but a human-like shape. It was transparent. I could see the curtains through it, but like I was watching through heat. Those little waves you see rising from roads and cars when it's really hot. The outline was a bit lighter. Not white, but definitely not dark. But I saw a distinct outline. This is what made me recognize the human-like form. However, still it made me panic. I actually tried touching it, tried to push it away while trying to get my lights on, but I didn't feel anything, only saw it slowly moving toward the bed. Now I'm left wondering what this was. If at all it was anything else from being half asleep and having some blurry vision. Hoping anybody here can give me some information or had a similar experience. To end this all, I have to give some extra information. The house itself isn't that old. It was built at the end of the 70s. No known weird things. Also, nothing weird happened in the previous four years that I've lived here. Been with my girlfriend for two years now. She's spiritual and religious, Latin American girl. And she's had encounters in the past that she says, but mostly as a child. She also used to lay tarot cards up in the first few months of our relationship. Talked with her about this, of course, and she thinks I was visited, but not necessarily by an evil or bad energy, because I saw a transparent shape with a more white outline. Not something dark or red or anything that would symbolize evil. She even says it could be an angel or my guardian angel because of the brighter outline. Now, as a non-religious atheist and someone who has no experience with the paranormal, I don't directly believe in, but it does have me thinking, especially since this was my first time I'd ever felt like this from anything unexplainable in all my 30 years of living. The Man in the 
his suit. My mother and uncles, when they were all kids, around 9 to 15, I think, played with the Ouija board. Now back then, when they were kids, that sort of thing was advertised as a fun game. Kids would get one for Christmas or their birthdays. They would go down to my grandparents' basement, I live in the same house now, and play it, thinking of it as some stupid game. One time when they were playing with it, a spirit or demon whose name was Annie and aged seven started cussing my mother out like calling her a bitch or telling her to fuck off. But one thing is, they didn't take it seriously. Therefore, they didn't say goodbye or play it properly. My uncles were playing it by themselves one time. Came running upstairs, refused to tell anyone what happened or what the board said. They ran outside, threw it in a dumpster behind Burger King, thinking that that was going to be the last of it all. I think that made the spirits connected to the board mad. And then the next day when my uncle was going to school, he looked behind the Burger King and the entire dumpster was burned and turned into ash. Back in 2014, my parents were downstairs at my grandparents' house. My dad walked outside and sat down. My mom came down a few minutes after him. When turning the corner after walking down the stairs, she saw some man sitting in a chair in the middle of the basement. He wore a black suit and had no face. She blinked and he was gone. After going outside with my dad, before she had the chance to say anything about the man, my dad told her he saw a man sitting there when he looked back, thinking it was her, looking at him. They both saw the exact same ghost or entity that night. Fast forward to now. I live in my grandparents' house now. The same one they played the board at years back. And the basement is surely haunted by something. When leaving my room a few months ago, I looked behind me and saw a little figure of a girl standing behind my bed. She didn't say anything. Then again, I ran before she could. I sometimes hear things or see shadow figures in that basement. Try to ignore them. Still think this is all happening because of what my uncle and mother did over 40 years ago. My village is haunted. I come from a small fishing village. It's in Alaska. Our residents never surpass 400 people living in the village at a time. Back in the 30s, the village was relocated due to constant flooding. In our new village, we have homes, a school, two tribal offices, a boys and girls club, a post office, a church, and a graveyard. The graveyard sits on top of a big hill down by the beach, away from the rest of the village. Recently, we had to expand the graveyard because we were running out of plots. This is relevant to what I'm going to say. My village is haunted. Not just one or two houses or the school, the whole village. The spirits wander and have been seen walking up and down the roads going into buildings or homes. Per every small town, everyone has a story. Some hear babies crying in the woods, hear their dead relatives calling to them, see dead relatives walk past them, disappear just as they catch up to them. Like everyone else in my village, I've had a couple of encounters that will stay with me. I've told them here on Reddit, what I can't understand, however, is why they're wandering the earth. I have a couple of theories I thought I'd post here for some feedback. 
Theory 1 After being forced to adopt Russian Orthodox Christianity during the Russian colonization, I don't think my ancestors are pleased about the whole being buried for all eternity bit. Maybe we're not supposed to be buried. Theory 2 They have unresolved issues and don't know that they're dead. They seem to be going on about their day, not attempting to reach out or see us. Theory 3 My village is cursed. My grandma tells me of her mom's uncle, who was a shaman. She said he tried to curse a man, but my grandmother's brother got in the way. My grandma's brother drowned at 12 years old. The shaman was so upset he cursed the man's entire village to always be thirsty. My grandma said her friend from that village always chews on ice, which makes her question that curse to this day. I wonder if that curse ended up cursing my whole village for decades to come. I talk about the curses because recently we've had two to four deaths a year for a few years now. Seventy plus year old haunted house. My grandpa, Nan, and father all passed away inside the house, so there's history here. The first time I experienced something in this house was quite a few years ago. I was with my friends and we were playing a prank on another friend who was sleeping at the time. We were going to barge into the room that he was sleeping in and wave sparklers in his face, make a lot of noise to wake him up decided to film this, share it with my other friends. This is when I looked back at the footage the next day while we were preparing to barge into the room. We were trying to be quiet, not to wake him. There was a very clear voice in the video, a voice that didn't belong to anyone there. It had a very thick American accent and said, Get out of my way. None of us heard it in that moment, only in the video. Another time I experienced something in the house was when I was having an argument with my girlfriend. Mid-sentence, all the taps in the house turn on at the same time. Now this could be due to faulty plumbing, but it scared the crap out of both of us enough to stop arguing. Not too sure if this is paranormal or not. I've been touched by something on my neck while washing dishes. I was home alone and washing dishes late at night and felt a cold, almost wet touch stroke the back of my neck. It made the hairs on my neck stand up, sent tingles down my arms. But now we get to the interesting stuff. So because the house is very old, we've had it renovated and now the activity has multiplied. Just last night, I heard someone walking down my hallway stop outside my bedroom. No one was home, just me. Doors are open when I know I've shut them. Doors are closed when I know I've left them open. But the weirdest one has only started in the last few nights. When I'm in bed at night, I hear someone walking on my roof. Not an animal, like human steps. I've rushed outside with a torch to check, thinking there was something or someone actually on my roof, but nothing. This happened every night at around midnight without fail. Just someone on my roof. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff over the years, but this house is definitely haunted. But I don't feel unsafe. I feel as if my family are making it known that they're here with me still. Does anyone know of a demon that's a dark shadow with a wolf-like head? Growing up at my parents' house, it was clear that it was haunted, even from a very young age. 
I was one of six kids, and we all agreed that we were constantly experiencing various different things. I had a friend who slept over one night, but left in the middle of the night and refused to come back to my house, even during the daytime. I can list all my experiences here, and it would last weeks. But to sum it up, I've heard voices, seen dark shadows, felt presences, and both me and my sister suffered from sleep paralysis, quickly saw things. However, me and one of my sisters were the first two people to move out when we had each gotten married. And thankfully, both of us have since almost completely stopped experiencing anything altogether. What I wanted to ask was about today. It's an experience that stuck with me. I dreamed that my father was going to ask me to take down the Christmas decorations. I brought each bag one by one filled with decorations into the basement. And as I brought down the nativity set, I consciously thought to myself that I'd better make sure baby Jesus is not face down, because he'd probably be sacrilegious. Well, on my next trip down with more bags, I noticed that the baby Jesus had consciously made sure it was faced up, was now face down. Immediately I thought, oh shit, that's not good. When I looked up, I saw what looked to be a seven-foot pitch black shadow humanish figure that wasn't directly facing me, but more toward the side, giving me his profile. His head was not a human-shaped head, but rather almost like a pitch-black shadow of a wolf's head. Without moving its mouth, it spoke to my mind in a deep voice, repeating, I found you, I found you, I found you, until I woke up. Immediately upon waking up and going downstairs, my father asked me to take down the Christmas decorations. I was like, fuck that. Does anybody else have an idea of what I experienced or what I encountered? Ironically, enough of the apartment me and my wife moved is actually connected to the backyard to a cemetery with tombstones less than 500 feet from the bedroom window. I've never felt creeped out here, but in my parents' home, it was like a constant depression. The feeling of always being watched, and pretty much everybody who spent time in that house has experienced things. Hell. Even my friends have heard stuff through my Xbox mic. But I've always wanted to know what the fuck it was that I saw in my basement in that dream. Because I know in my heart that it was the entity that was in that house. For a while after that dream, my experiences had escalated. Strange creature keeps visiting apartment. For the past two years, there's been a tapping sound coming from my bedroom window. It started one Halloween night. I know this sounds like a bad movie. And a few times a month, sometimes more often, something taps at my window. There's nothing around to hit the window, and it sounds exactly like a finger tapping the glass. Me and my siblings are used to it. A few days ago, my brother started complaining that something was communicating to him from outside the dense window. Keep in mind, we live in an apartment complex, so we always have the blinds closed. He says that whatever it was just kept saying hello to him in a robotic, high-pitched voice. The rest of our family just shrugged it off. The day after, we go outside and there's small tracks leading up to all of our windows. I don't know what animal could have made those tracks, because I think it's bipedal. Later that day, I was in my bedroom, laying in my mind. It's next to my window. Blinds closed. I jump out of my skin. Someone's loudly banging against the glass. I ignore it. I just assume it's one of my siblings sneaking up on me. I then find out that they were both together at that moment. In the house while it happened. They hadn't been out for hours. The next night, my brother complained about the voice outside his window again. We told him to ignore it. 
If it's something supernatural, we don't want to mess with it. Yesterday, while we're all preparing for dinner, my entire family and I heard the creature screaming outside. I was too shocked to move and grab my phone and record it. It kept yelling, Hello, come out! Exactly how my brother described. It was so loud we could hear it clearly from the loud kitchen and dining room. We didn't want to look outside. This morning more snow had fallen, but fresh prints were there. I was able to take pictures before they melted. I don't know what to make of any of this, but it's impossible for this to be a prank because of the lack of human prints in the snow. I'm going to keep my phone on me tonight so that I can record the creatures talking if it comes by again. Pretty sure they will. Night shifts in an old warehouse. So four years ago, I got hired to do night shifts as a security guy. It's in a very old building. Dates back to 1917. But fairly good and renovated. Except for some parts. I've worked here for two years. Part of the job is leaving the front desk and walking two big closing rounds, as they call them, to check for any dangers, like open windows, potential fire dangers, electronics that are still on, mostly at the selling desks and the magazine rooms backstage. The first time I got spooked quite heavily was because of the mannequins. When doing my first round, I walked past quite a lot of mannequin, and at the second floor, there's a lot of designer clothing. I like them. So I remembered how some of those mannequins were positioned. The second round, I walked some of the mannequins and they were facing the opposite side as they previously were. This was within my first, maybe, month of working here. About three months later, while checking the stock rooms, the radio was still turned on at the third floor. While walking toward it and checking the clothing hanging there, I saw a vague pale face with black long hair staring at me from between some of the clothing hanging there. I full out sprinted toward the door. I was scared shitless. I couldn't be a person since, well, it couldn't be a person since the clothes hanging there were fairly high up, but I didn't see any legs. At this point, I was questioning my decision to work here. Called in sick for a few shifts. Decided to try again. One more time. Fast forward a few months while checking out the kitchen. I heard whispers coming from the freezer area. Scared as fuck, but I wanted to be 100% sure. So, I took out my phone, started recording a voice memo. Got closer to the freezer. After being there for more than maybe five seconds, realizing it got louder, and I had actual proof on my phone, I ran downstairs. I waited at the desk to finally be able to leave this place. I kept listening to the voice memo. I never realized something like this would actually happen to me. I'm a very down-to-earth guy, never believed in paranormal stuff, but this shook me to the core. After this last occurrence, I stopped working there. Living with Ghost Dogs I work with kids, so I'm pretty substance-free and of sound mind. The man who killed his two dogs and himself in my house are still here. The dogs, too. A German Shepherd and a Malamute. So, backstory. I got the house cheap, 
because of its history of a very gory previous owner's suicide. He'd also attempted to murder somebody during his mental breakdown, but I don't know the details. He was a nice person, had no mental health support, decided to kill his beloved dogs and himself. I thought how horrible, but man, I need a place to live as soon as possible. So I braced myself against superstition or the creeps. The weirdness started immediately. Pounding and moaning like the house is being hit by a bulldozer. Neighbors can hear it from outside sometimes. Huge dogs howling from somewhere inside the house. Bedroom doors opening and closing. Footsteps through the kitchen hallway every night at 4 a.m. It is nerve-wracking, but also sad. More than once I've awoken thinking my house is being broken into. Sometimes I feel somebody sitting on my bed, and more than once I've had my quilt put on top of me. This quilt is in my closet, so it had to be carried out and placed on me. Then I started seeing the dogs. Walking across my bedroom carpet and standing at the foot of my bed staring at me, startling the heck out of me because I don't have a GSD or Malamute. I have a Sheltie with an overbite and can only make fff noises. My own dog, Kelly Barkson, went crazy fff at the ghost. I ran over the house making sure it was really spirits. Kelly now sleeps under the covers with me. We see their fluffy tails and watch them disappear into the closet. I don't think he's a bad spirit, and the dogs are certainly innocent. Often things go missing. I ask him and the dogs to help. The missing things reappear in totally odd locations, like my lipstick showing up in the freezer or my headphones under my dresser. A residual hum or something more. My first paranormal experience. So let me preface with some info about me. I'm obsessed with occult things, and I watch ghost hunter shows daily, literally. I love exploring the metaphysical unknowns and contemplating dimensions and paranormal, etc. Despite this, I've never had a paranormal experience. I grew up in a highly religious household, Christian, and had conversations about spirits. They were shot down expediously. Ironic, right? Anyway, last night I was packing my PlayStation to return to my apartment in another city. I was at my friend's house. They were in the back of the house in their bedroom sleeping. We had stayed up the night before almost all night playing games. This was around 7.30 p.m. It had been dark outside for about an hour, at that point at least, and there's only one TV in the house, and I had turned it off at maybe 10 to 15 minutes prior to packing my bag. My iPhone was beside me, locked and on silent. Suddenly I hear a soft hum in a female voice. The hum was to the tune of Na 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 Boo Boo like they were teasing me. It was so clear that I believed it to be my friend. I went back to the bedroom and woke them up to ask if they had hummed. They said no, as they had been asleep this entire time. Their phone was also on silent. Very shook up because the hum was so clear it sounded like it was in the same room as me. Better yet, I heard it right next to me. The house I was in is a small house. The only neighbor is a 90-year-old lady who was definitely in her house at that time. Also, my friend has a ring camera. Nothing was captured on it at that time. I know from a friend that the family that had lived there before had her daughter that died from cancer. She didn't die in the house, but she lived there for many years. I had to tell this story to someone, because I just had to get it off my chest. 
Who was humming? Why was it so clear and audible? Was it the girl who had passed, or something else entirely? I'm left shaken but in awe at this experience. Like I said, never mentioned the paranormal before. Final thoughts. I feel as though I'm very intuitive. I wouldn't say psychic, but my intuition is very strong, as is my mother's and grandmother's. I didn't feel threatened by this hum, just shocked. It was like they were letting me know they were there and they saw me. Do we have a ghost? A little bit of backstory myself. Male 31. My girlfriend, female 26. Recently, like six months ago, moved into a block of flats next to a busy train line and on the site of an old granary. In her first couple of days of living here, my girlfriend was doing the dishes. She felt a tap on her shoulder, turned around expecting it to be me. No one was there at the same time I was coming out of the main bathroom. I saw what looked like a foot. It was retreating to the bedroom, which I followed into the room and then the end suite. Called for her, for her to then call back from the kitchen. We've then had a lot of interesting, what can only be described as interactions, with what we assume is a spirit. We have a TV and the surround sound in the living room that the sound bypasses, you know, the speakers to the TV to the surround sound, which can be manually turned on. Late one night a couple of months ago, I woke up to a glow down the hallway and a sound went through to find the TV and surround sound turned on with normal TV playing, which we never use because we couldn't have left this on and the sound turns off after a few minutes with no active sound. We also bought an Xbox 360 when we moved in and that was working fine for the first four months. A couple of months ago, every so often, this would randomly turn on and the disc tray would open and it would stay on until one of us would manually turn it off. While I was at work and my girlfriend was at home, three weeks ago it happened again. She thought she would ask out loud if it was our ghost friend, put the disc tray in and out. We since then have had this happen more frequently and it started responding through the disc tray. When I asked if it died here, it turned off the console. Now when it seems to have enough of our conversations, it turns it off. This morning it woke me up turning the Xbox on again, and it's done it a few times today, whenever I've been in the room. My girlfriend and myself went for a shower. She had no marks on her when we came out, had sex, and once we finished, the Xbox turned on again and kept doing the disc tray thing until we went through. I asked it if it liked me, and it responded when I asked if it wanted us to go back through the bedroom to turn off the console again. We got back through the bedroom and we noticed some red scratches on my girlfriend's lower stomach area. We've had a few early pretest signs recently. Maybe she's been pregnant, feeling a bit off that makes these scratches. Well, they've turned up. When I was young, I had a ghost experience. This is my encounter. When I was 10 years old, I lived in Whitby, Ontario. One night I was up late doing homework. I was never a strong student, so this was an often occurrence in my youth. Before I go on, I must say this is by far one of the strongest memories, and the family members involved also recall it. So I was in my kitchen with my mother, struggling to finish my homework, maybe around 9 to 10 p.m. Once I was finally done, I raced off to head upstairs to get ready for bed. The kitchen exited into the front foyer. Then at one end of the foyer was the stairs with French doors into the living room. The French doors were 90 degrees to the base of the stairs at the end of the foyer, 
So in order to go up the stairs, one must approach the living room doors, then turn right to go up the stairs. So I exit the kitchen, cross the foyer, and as I'm approaching the French door to go upstairs, I see something on the other side of the French door. Standing maybe two feet in front of the French doors as something materializes on the other side. Just like the stereotypical ghost. A small amount of gray foggy smoke formed into a transparentish gray boy. He appeared to be about my age, tenish, and about the same height. He was dressed in an older style clothing with overalls. Almost like dress clothing one might wear to a formal event. He appeared at first with his head down and his body facing perpendicular to the doors. As soon as he appeared, he began to walk while keeping his head down, like one might do if they were very sad or upset about something. When he got to about my position, maybe three to four steps, he stopped, raised his head and looked me in the eyes. I was frozen with fear and couldn't bring myself to do anything other than watch. He then lowered his head and continued a few more steps, then vanished in the same way that he had appeared. A small amount of gray smoke. As soon as he was gone, I erupted and ran back to my mother in the kitchen, screaming I saw a ghost. As an adult, 32 now, when I reflect on this event, I'm still unable to reconcile any conclusion. Did I actually see a ghost? Did I imagine it? Was it something else unexplainable? Is it a false memory? Regardless, I'm completely agnostic on the topic, and I don't think I'll ever know what I really experienced. My little cousin has a strong connection with departed ones. My little cousin the son of my mother's sister, was born diagnosed with hemangioma as an infant. Hemangiomas, when an infant during their first few weeks of life, has an excess of blood vessels. This causes a rubbery reddish bump. My cousin had his on his left cheek, which caused a massive amount of inflammation. His left cheek was visibly larger than the right. One year before his birth, his grandmother passed away due to cancer, and that apparently grew on her left cheek, literally the same spot as my cousin's hemangioma. My mother is of, well, she's of Japanese descent, and she's a firm believer of reincarnation. The rest of the family, however, isn't as religious, and we didn't see it as big deal. We just thought it was some one in a million coincidence. Two years after his birth, however, we were showing my little cousin pictures of the family. We happened to come across a picture of my late grandmother, the one I mentioned earlier. My cousin then proceeds to point at my grandmother and says, Look, Mommy, it's me. What are the odds of that? Also, when my cousin was two, my grandfather passed away. My cousin lives in the States, and I live in the Philippines. When my grandfather passed, my cousin's family came to the Philippines for his wake. We have a condo unit in Manila. We would bring my grandfather along with us there a couple of times, like playing in the casinos nearby. He had his own room that only he would use when he would stay there. As his funeral location was closer to our condominium than our main home, we decided to stay there the night before the funeral. All rooms were full due to relatives from the U.S. Since I didn't want to sleep in the couch, I decided to sleep in my recently departed grandfather's room. It was my cousin's first time in our condominium. The morning after, during breakfast, while my mom and her sister were laughing, my cousin, out of nowhere, says, Shh. Grampy's still sleeping, while pointing toward the room I just slept in. Note that it was his first time there. Nobody ever told him that it was my grandfather's room. But we have a belief in the Philippines that infants and toddlers could see ghosts, 
and I'm quite convinced after all of that. Me and my brother have seen ghosts since being young teens, now being in our late 20s. So I was 16, my brother was 14. We had both always had an overactive imagination as very young kids, and had always been scared of being alone at our grandparents, because their crib was always creepy. One day I had to use the bathroom, and my grandparents were outside, they were fixing up our vegetable garden. As a wuss, I asked Nick, Yo dude, would you follow me into the house so I can go use the bathroom? Nick judgingly disappointed goes, Fine. As I'm in the hallway bathroom, my brother begins looking at the photos hung on the walls of our family, and I'm quickly tending to my business. The next thing I know, as I'm about to walk out of the bathroom, Nick says, Dude, there's someone in the gaming room. I walk out and peer into the same room that he's looking into. And for the first time in my teenage life, I froze with utter confusion. Because obviously, this person was not a person, and clearly wasn't a human being. Description there was a translucent gray ghost that was floating at least eight inches off the floor, staring at a cross that was nailed to the wall in the game room. It had thin white hair, looked like it was thinning out from old age. It was also wearing a long nightgown, which was also a gray whitish color. The weirdest thing that I'd noticed was the strange smoky mist coming from it which seemed to be evaporating into the air. In a floating-like style, it turned around and looked at us. This ghost had no face. Its face looked like those depictions of Slender Man. To this day, I still can't believe how fast we ran out of that house, screaming, laughing our asses off. Two days later, I came back over myself and found that the cross had broken off the wall. It was made of marbled clay. Pieces of it were still on the wall, strangely enough. Even to this day, Nick and I can describe what we saw and what happened. Our description of this ghost are both the same. We never believed in this stuff as teenagers, but that day made us into believers. The Haunted Ass Abandoned Mansion So in my city at the end of the street that I live on was a beautiful mansion that has been abandoned for 30 years, chilling near the lake, crucial to the story. A couple of friends and I decided we wanted to go explore it because of how long it had been abandoned. Keep in mind, I'm an 18-year-old male, with all females, 17 to 19. We decided to at first sit by the water, have a couple cigarettes. After about five minutes, we heard some blood-curdling screams coming from a child. And as we looked around, and there was no one there, we got scared, so we decided to go inside of the house through a broken garage door because everything had been boarded up. The minute you walk into the garage, you see a door which goes down one hallway into the main room, as well as a set of stairs that goes upstairs to the bedrooms. I wanted to look at the main room. My friends went upstairs, which isn't a problem because obviously I can handle myself if I encounter someone crazy and human. After about ten minutes, I found the basement, which had its own little movie theater, and in the corner, what I thought would have been a broom closet was in fact a child's bedroom with a padlock on the door. So in the pitch black, I decided to use my flashlight and look around. And I had found a picture of a burning man beside a rock with engravings on it. I had left a peace offering and left the room. 
I sat in the movie chairs for a second, and not even two minutes later I felt choking, really, really cold hands around my neck after trying to pull up something that wasn't there, but felt so real. I heard a man tell something to let go of me, and told me to run away and get my friends and go. According to this masculine figure I saw, and heard, we were not safe there. Then I heard my friends scream, and I ran upstairs knowing where they were. There was blood dripping from the walls, and it was not just me that had seen it. And the woman had come out of the fireplace, and in a partially burnt, I'd like to say, 1960s dress, open burn wounds on her hands and neck. I grabbed my few friends and we left and sat outside, recuperated. But before we had left, my back was burning and my best friend's leg was feeling, quote-unquote, wet. We had lifted up my shirt and I had three scratch marks down the back. We rolled up my friend's pant leg and saw a huge gash on her leg and three claw marks on her arm. To this day, we don't know what happened there. We have not gone back to find out. I was awoken to a growl in my ear. One night, while I was in a state of drifting to sleep, I wake up in a panic to a deep, evil-sounding growl in my ear. I say in my ear because it sounded so clear to the point where it was as if someone or something was lying next to me made this horrible noise directly into my ear, ASMR style. For context, this was a few years ago. This is when I shared a bedroom with my younger sister. I woke up with my heart racing, shaking. I stayed awake for hours after. I didn't want to be vulnerable to anything evil in my sleep, as I have a feeling it's easier for spirits to mess with you when you're in that state. A few weeks before this happened, I had gone to visit an old abandoned castle and church with my family in the Isle of Wight. We did this because my mom loves all things horror, and she loves exploring creepy places. While we visited, we messed about, didn't take it seriously. I remember me and my mom found a little underground part of the building that had metal bars to block it off. Since we were messing around, I vaguely remember we grabbed the metal bars and shook it while saying, Help! Thinking that it was funny. I now realize I probably provoked an evil spirit. I also remember at the time I had a close friend who was involved in spiritual things could see spirits. I'm not sure if it believes me, but it was certainly believable and interesting to me. She used to tell me when she would see spirits. She told me she had one that followed her at the time. I'm not sure if it was evil, but I suspect it could have been from that as well. Maybe the spirit noticed me being close with her, was curious about me. A few nights after that, well, the growling happened. I would get woken up a lot by this thing that sounded like a man crying and whining, like an echo in my ear. As soon as I would wake up, it would fade away. I eventually ended up saying out loud, Go away, leave me alone. It worked. It's been at least four years now since that happened. I've not experienced it again. I still wonder if maybe I was going crazy, or if it was actually paranormal. I'm not sure if this belongs here, but I need answers. This happened several times at this point. It started about 16 months ago. I was cleaning my house around 12 a.m. My husband, boyfriend at the time, worked nights. So I had to adjust to his schedule. I usually kept the blinds open during the day. I'd go around closing them at night. 
That was while I tidied up before bed. Our room was my last stop on the first night. The curtains and blinds were open as I was sweeping the floor when I felt the sensation of being watched. I looked around me when my eyes focused on this silver sedan parked outside my house. Mostly in the grass in my front lawn. Now for context, my bedroom window is about 15 yards from the road at the front of my house. It's a small front yard in a pretty densely populated neighborhood. Anyway, I saw the car before I saw her or him, I'm not sure. But there was clearly someone sitting in the driver's seat of the car, and another person standing about five yards from my window. They were clearly staring at me. The only reason I could see this is because the moon was fairly bright this night. I shrieked, dropped to the floor, crawled to the light switch to turn it off so I could be seen. I called my husband to ask him what I should do. He told me to call the cops. Duh. I did, and of course by the time they got there, the car was gone. They asked if they could see my security footage. I agreed. But the footage from that section of time was just gone. It skipped over the few minutes that they would have been outside. This has happened several times since then, and I've completely given up on calling the police, as I feel as if they'd think I'm crazy. I have no proof that this is happening, but I'd like to have some opinions as to why they may be doing this. In the past 16 months has happened mm, probably 10 times. Sometimes the person is standing in the yard. Sometimes they aren't. Also, the car has been like, at a different, well, been different every single time. But the light is always inside the cabin of the vehicle. But when I go to look, the people inside are never looking to where I can see their faces. I'll run to grab my phone to call someone. Anyone. They'll already be gone. Ghost Kid Weird Experience So a few years ago, I was 10 or 11. During one family gathering, my dad and his siblings, my aunt and uncles, talked about their past experience in the old house they were renting way back when. Well, when they didn't have kids. Me and my cousins. They talked about this ghost kid that's in the house running around and playing, making fun of them once in a while too. I can tell you the detailed story about the experience with this ghost kid, but let's focus on mine. They keep talking about how the kid also lived in the same old house and died in the house, and the kids didn't receive proper burial. Anyway, I didn't believe in this ghost kid. Didn't believe he existed until this experience of mine happened a few years ago. Me and my younger sister visited my cousin's house, otherwise known as the old house that they rented way back then. Since we lived in the same neighborhood, this cousin of mine was only four years old at the time. It was only me, my cousin, my younger sister, and my aunt that was in the house. So we hung out and played until lunchtime. My aunt had to go out to buy us some food. So me and my sister had to babysit our little cousin for a bit. And here's where it gets weird. We were in my little cousin's room. My younger sister was in the bathroom taking a dump. I realized that we forgot to turn off the TV because I can hear it from my cousin's room. So I went downstairs, turned off the TV, went back up. But as I was heading into my cousin's room, I heard him laughing and giggling. So I assumed my sister was already done with her business. Went back to my cousin's room, perhaps. But when I went inside, 
there was no one else in the room but my cousin, giggling and facing the corner of the room. So I asked him, Hey, buddy, why are you laughing? My cousin answered, We were playing. And I said, We? He didn't answer. He just continued to giggle. So I carried him out of the room, went back downstairs with my little sister, waited for my aunt to get back. Ask Reddit. In general, as a rule, I didn't believe in dreams as messages from the dead. I do believe that we see things in dreams from time to time, but that it's more often than not a mixture of some conscious cues playing in our head, or maybe some pure dumb luck. That said, I remember this so vividly that to this day it's shaken my perception of the whole message from beyond the grave talk. My mom died on December 20th, 2015. It was sudden. It was unexpected. I was not ready, not in the slightest. Not even as I held her hand, stroked her hair, and wondered if she could hear me in the comatose state as I told her it would be okay. I was grown enough that she didn't have to cling to Shred's life for my sake. A couple of days later, I had the weirdest dream of my life. My mom, shortly before she died, told me she was seasonal affective. I always knew the winters were hard for her. She hated the cold. It often seemed to make her very bitter and tired. But I had no idea how serious it was, to my chagrin. It was the middle of summer, and we were driving down the road. It's a road very near to my house. One that I pretty much have used, well, pretty much have to use to get anywhere. And the site we were at is one that I would drive by incredibly f Jesus, incredibly frequently. We were in her car. She didn't look like how she did when she died. She looked vibrant, radiant, and alive. The bright summer sun made everything almost surreally vivid. And I remember feeling so, so calm. We were at the stoplight. I turned to her. I remember the wariness in my tone that you only really have when repeating a grim fact, like the death of a loved one. And I said, What am I going to do? You're dead, Mom. Her reply was a bubbly laugh, and I hadn't heard it in years. She looked at me right in the eyes with all the love and care and softness of a mother's gaze and said, Kato, I may be dead, but I'm still going to watch out for you. And that was it. The dream ended there just as abruptly as it had began. I woke up so intensely full of peace and joy that it broke the cloud that had been hanging over me since she'd been sick. At least for a little while. Since then, I've had dreams with my mom in them. She's been there like it was just ordinary life. It's never been anything like this again, and that's what makes it stand out all the more. I'll never be certain of whether it was just my psyche desperate for comfort, or if it really was her reminding me that she'd always be my mom. Saw a spirit of a girl who died long before. What's some of your freakiest experiences? Around 12 years ago, I had a friend whose house was very old and unfortunately full of items at the moment due to reasons. We would hang out there frequently. His mom would let us green out. What's that? And after this event, it turned out many of us had experienced paranormal encounters. One day, while I was helping move some stuff around the house, I'd walked through his kitchen and out the front door. Upon looking to the left while walking through the kitchen to the back porch, I had noticed this apparition blacker than anything I've ever seen, in the shape of a little girl. It freaked me out so bad I had to sit outside for a bit, and I was going that way when I saw her. I also fainted in this kitchen some time after, while not under the influence of anything, and I was healthy at the time as well. The fainting was due to the vibe of the room suddenly feeling extremely heavy. I hadn't felt sick or anything before or after this fainting. But anyway, 
I had waited about a week or two to mention it to him, and turns out, at the same point in the history of this house, a girl had died in a cellar directly above where I had seen her. For some reason it was a closed-off room, but it had a small hole coming from that room all the way to the main part of his basement, about forty feet east that was probably a one-by-one one square pattern. He even showed me this hole and shining a light down it, surely enough. You could see all the way down toward where I saw the apparition. To this day, when I'm thinking about it, I can still vividly remember seeing it. Turns out the house has a long history to it. Even has one piece of giant Freemason's table in his attic that the house was built around. It even has those Indian windows in the attic as well. I've always wondered about seeing that girl, and why I fainted in the kitchen not long after. It's as if a spirit was trying to possess or reach out to me in some way. It's how it felt before I fainted. i never fainted before or after in my life, except once due to drugs. That was ten years later. I always felt uneasy in that house. There was another instance where we were in a room on the second floor, laying on a bed. I could feel what felt like someone licking my forehead. Anyway, I've always loved paranormal stuff, and hope more happens to me in my lifetime. I just thought I'd share a crazy experience I had in the past. Moved into a new apartment. My husband and I have lived in our current place for a little over two years. It's a duplex that was built in the 70s. It was both our first time living without roommates, so neither of us had a lot of furniture. I remember the living room only having a rocking chair, a TV stand, and a coffee table to put out pillows to use as a couch. The house was very bare for the first few months. I've always been pretty sensitive to the paranormal. I have a lot of experiences throughout my life. I remember being so on edge that we had moved here. It always felt like there was someone else in the house with you. I tried to tell myself it was all in my head because I knew it was an older place. I tried not to think about it too much. I was working at a nearby hospital during this time. I had to be able to work early in the morning. Got up, got ready, and was ready to leave. The only problem was I couldn't find my keys anywhere. My husband and I searched the entire house. Like I mentioned earlier, the house was bare. There wasn't a lot of spots where it could be. Don't remember how I got to work that day either. I think my husband ended up taking me. We spent days looking for those keys. Pretty sure that we were just going to have to pay to have a new key made. However, one evening we were sitting in the living room. My husband goes, Are those your keys? They were sitting underneath the rocking chair in plain sight. I'd taken the cushions off that chair, flipped it over, moved it across the room while trying to find the keys, and suddenly they were there. There'd be a couple more times where things went missing but randomly appear over the counter, or somewhere else obvious, but the keys have always stuck out to me. My husband also reminded me of another time when we first lived here. We were laying in bed one night in our phones and talking. We weren't sleeping yet. Out of nowhere, there was a pounding on our bedroom door, like someone had hit it as hard as they could. We both jumped up quick, thinking someone was in the house. But when we opened our bedroom door and looked around the house, it was empty. I don't think someone could have hit it and ran out in that time, without us hearing them. The floors are old, and every step you take is greeted by loud, creaking floorboards. So we would have heard someone. After that, we decided to sage the house. It had such a cleaner feeling in the air afterwards. I don't know how to describe it, really. Things stopped going missing, too. It finally didn't feel like there was someone else there. We ended up saging pretty regularly after that. Fantastic Coincidences February 28th. My father died on February 28th, 1996. 
In late February 2013, as my hospitalized mother became aware of her own imminent death, she said at least twice that she wanted to die on February 28th also. On February 27th, she took a turn for the worst. The decision was made to stop artificial life support, as per her advance directive. We spent the night of the 27th and 28th with my mother in her hospital room. Fairly early in the morning of the 28th, a medical team arrived. She was removed from life support. The doctor apologized to us because the intent to remove her from life support on the 27th, but something had gone wrong. So my mother got to die on February 28th. This was as she wished, because of a mix-up by the medical team. About a year later, we bought a new car with some of the money that we had inherited from Mom. We had the new plates mailed to us, and the plates were, slash R, 228. I don't know what, if anything, the letters might signify. I don't want to publicize the full license number, but the letters are interesting. But the 228? That is one in a 999 chance when the possible three-digit combination starts with 001, correct? Skippy and the Reddit Post My mother's first dog, which she had as a girl, was a fox terrier she named Skippy. When I was growing up, she several times talked about her memories of that dog. About two years before she died, she decided to get another dog, a grown Yorkshire terrier, whose last owner had died. She decided to name him Skippy, not knowing its original name. After Mom died, another home was found for poor Skippy, with another elderly lady. Soon after my mother died, I noticed an interesting post on Reddit. It said, So this cute little dog we call Skippy comes to my dad's house every day for treats. Today he brought his duck friend, Henry. The attached photo showed a dog and a duck standing outside an open door looking in. The dog in the photo was named Skippy, and it was a Yorkshire Terrier and my father's name was Henry. And guess how many comments there were when I first saw the post? 228. Screenshot. Ask Reddit. I've had a few different experiences. But the weirdest that comes to the top of my mind is a few incidents at a friend's house. He lived in a very large Edwardian house. It was in rural England, on account of having two brothers and three sisters. Kind of looked like a mini mansion, quite idyllic. We would sit in the basement playing video games all day and occasionally go out for a spliff. When the family were out quite often, we would hear what sounded like small children running down the stairs in the hall above us like exactly the same sound as when his brothers and sisters were in and around playing the house like lunatics. The first few times we assumed it might be the dogs, even though it sounded like multiple bipedal footfall. So went up to check. Nope, two of the dogs were locked outside playing in the garden. The third was asleep on the top floor. This really freaked us out. Combination of how real, audible, and unexplainable the situation was with a little dash of ganja-induced paranoia. Eventually, after a while, we just got used to it and tried to avoid going upstairs when no one was home, but just happened most times I was there over a span of seven years, give or take, before they moved out. The other weird experience in his house was when I used to sleep in the basement when I stayed over. His brother's room was in the basement, so I'd pinch his bed if he was out. It was quite comfortable and cozy. The only problem with it was, is a hole in the ceiling above your head where presumably a furnace pipe had been previously. This hole led straight through the dining room, which had terracotta tiles on the floor, and a large wooden table and chairs. In the night, and only after everybody else was in bed, I would hear the chairs being dragged around above me. This terrified me. With the hole, I felt like it was too close for comfort. Like whatever it was in there could see me, but I couldn't see it. Especially when I plucked up the courage to investigate and found all the chairs neatly round a table as they always were. And trust me, I ran up that basement stairwell just to make sure my friend wasn't fucking with me. Nothing, no one. 
Needless to say, I avoided sleeping there at all impossible and stuck with my highly uncomfortable fold-out sofa bed in the other part of the cellar. My friend definitely heard the running noises, but none of the family heard the chairs scraping the floor. The only things they noticed were things disappearing for long stretches of time and then miraculously turning up in plain sight. Keys and wallets, etc. But in a house of six kids, things get borrowed all the time. An Aswang stalked me. An Aswang is a monster in Filipino mythology that preys on pregnant women. Unlike the grisly attacks that usually are shown in horror movies, However, these monsters apparently just prey on the life essence of the unborn baby until it dies and the mother miscarries. The scary part is, is that these monsters are also part human, meaning they could literally be anyone during the day. This happened in Metro Manila around 2011. My cousin told me, The old man with the new neighbors asked me if you were pregnant was shocked and never even told my family yet. I was 21, I worked nights in a call center. I never go outside when I'm home, and I was only a few weeks long, so I know I wasn't showing yet. How did this nosy old man know? The said neighbors were new in town, coming from one of the more popular provinces in the Philippines where witchcraft and uswangs are still the norm. They were friendly enough, though. So no one really had anything bad to say about them other than the nasty rumor that they know about us swang. When I was about eight months along, I was watching late night TV with my brother at around 2 a.m. Something big landed on our little tin roof, strong enough to rattle the windows. My brother and I looked at each other with wide eyes as we listened to the footsteps. Yeah footsteps stop right on top of me. I was never a prayerful person, but at that moment I called on gods and saints and angels to protect my baby. Then I remembered my grandmother's story about how she escaped an Aswang attack by placing a pillow between her legs to mask the baby's scent. So I did just that. We had no idea how long we waited, seconds, minutes. But we heard another jump, then silence. Until this day I was glad that my brother was with me to vouch for me. I still couldn't believe it happened, and it happened to me. Then I remembered the nosy old man. Could it have been him? Something weird and mysterious and unfinished, I suppose. What should I do? I feel like there's a powerful entity in my home attacking me. When the house I live in went up for sale over eight years ago, we were informed that the previous owner had died in him while in the medical room in his home, which is now my bedroom, and his wife died 14 hours later in our bathroom. They were both older people and their family had already prepared, and the house was sold a month after their death. A year after we moved into the house, shit started to go down. My grandfather had passed away, my friend had passed away, my dog had passed away, and my uncle passes away on or near our home. Now, I didn't really see the coronation of the deaths until I had my first contact with the dead. In 2018, when I was 10, I saw light flickering, and I asked into the air, If anyone or anything is present... Make yourself known. And one light bulb exploded from the fixture. As a ten-year-old girl, I was petrified and screamed out in fear. But my mom blamed it on cheap quality. And I was being dramatic. So I kind of forgot about it and tried to be normal. Then I went into my edgy tween years. When I was twelve, I went online to use a Ouija board. And I never said goodbye. So I believe I 
kind of spend a door. That's when my life continued to spiral. But this time the spiral was quicker. It felt like every week something bad happens. So I looked into witchcraft stuff, and I saged my room down, and the torture stopped until recently. This past month I've been seeing shadow people, but they were 3D. My life has spiraled down again. But this time this thing has gotten stronger, has been showing up in my dreams and putting thoughts in my head. I just can't do it anymore. I've been pushed and scratched by this thing. Just last night I was pulled by my leg and had scratches all over. If I find photos or take photos, I'll include them later on, but I really need help on what to do. I can't ask my mom or dad for help. They don't believe me in this. The only person keeping me going, my boyfriend broke up with me, so I have no one to turn to and no one to help me. If you know what this thing is and know how to get rid of it, I'd be forever indebted to you. The thing I see in my dreams is a tall, three-headed creature with a bull, man, and a goat or a ram head. So if you know what this is, please tell me. My first paranormal experience with ghosts. In brackets, fucking real. I didn't believe any of these things until one day. I was in a rush because my father was in a hospital on the other side of Spain. When I reached the town, I didn't have a place to stay, so I just jumped inside an abandoned house. It was a huge, immense house with four levels and like 30 rooms. It had a huge hole in the center, just like if a meteorite blasted there. It felt very silent and deep, a dark and creepy energy inside the house. So I decided to camp on the rooftop. I only stayed there for about a week on the fifth day. I got a new house with a friend, but I still had to stay there two more days. I decided to explore that house in the daylight, went through many rooms, had at least three big rooms for children, maybe. No pictures of the people from the house. The energy went stronger and stronger in the back of the house. I reached the back and there was a wall. It was the house limits. So after that, it was another neighbor. I listened to a voice inside my head. Put your hand inside the wall and grab it. I was like, what? I said to myself, I may just be crazy, but let's try. Put my hand above the wall and inside into a hole grabbed an x-ray. That was when I went to my hands and I looked close to it. It was the x-ray of a child, by the size of the thorax. It had a problem. It had a tumor the size of an eight ball. Immediately I was in shock, realizing stuff, put the picture back. I was scared because I felt a presence in this house all the time, like someone was behind me or watching me. When I climbed the debris back, I found this picture in a hole in the wall and it was near the entrance where it belonged to a hall, before that hall was destroyed. I grabbed the picture, asking myself how the heck I didn't realize it was there. I gave it a close look. It was a picture of a seven-year-old child smiling, very happy and healthy almost, as if he was staring at me. The strange thing was, well, the picture was the exact same wall I was staring at that was now destroyed. I put it back in the hole and was just about to happen after it just being traumatized to this day. The picture was swallowed to the left. I looked left and there was no hole. The picture was pulled like a magnet, very fast, very clear. Thought it was a rat, but nope, the damn wall had no holes. I grabbed my stuff and just ran. Paranormal Activity Advice for Haunted Room I recently moved into a new room. Things have been unexpectedly moving and strange knocking on my door. I live in the barracks, so at first I thought it was my buddies. Eventually I approached my buddies and told them to stop knocking on my door at midnight so I can sleep. They assured me they weren't knocking, but I didn't believe them. A week ago, while I was asleep in the middle of the night, I heard my tough box lids being thrown on the floor. I woke up in a panic due to the loud noise. 
turned on my lamp, saw two lids scattered on my floor. My first instinct was that they had slid off, but upon further thought, there was no way they could have slid across two other sides of the room. I started telling my friends that I think my room is haunted. They just laughed like usual. I began asking other people about my room, and one individual told me stories about the previous occupant, complaining about furniture being moved around, knocking on the walls, and items being thrown. This information started freaking me out even more. Despite my fears, I continued to sleep in the room until the weekend. On Saturday, I left to stay over at my girlfriend's house. When I returned the next day, my room was a mess. A coffee cup was thrown on the ground. Tide pods were scattered on the floor, and my tough box lids were once again thrown on the floor. I immediately called my friends, and we all went inside. After ten minutes, we heard knocking on the wall. At this point, I got mad and cursed and taunted whatever was causing this disturbance. A few minutes later, I threw my pre-workout on the ground, knocked five times on that wall, that's when me and my other four friends ran out of my room. I then decided to sleep in my buddy's room. Fast forward to today. I haven't been to my room in the last three days because we were out in the field. When I entered my room, I found my tough box lids thrown on the floor again. Both of my chairs had been moved with one facing my bed. My coffee cup was laid on my bed. My pictures of me and my friends were moved to the top of my trash can. And a rock was placed in the center of the chair facing my bed. To add to the strangeness, the wall it knocks on is now cracked. I'm at a loss for what to do in this situation. My Brother Me, a now 19 white male, and my brother, a 16-year-old black male, have usually had a good relationship. They got arrested for beating a kid who said he should be hung because he's black. It was his birthday. After that instant, I always looked after him. Besides the instance where I had to step in, I always knew he could handle himself. I'm a wrestler, played football and boxing, very well trained and can do some serious damage, not bragging. But the point of this story is when we were younger and why I kind of backed off of them and lost that good relationship. So since I was younger, I've had this nightmare that still scares me, even today. There's a part I'll explain later. In the dream, I wake up and look down the hallway. My mother's giving him a bath. His head slowly turns towards me, smiles with razor-sharp teeth, and blood comes pouring out. I scream, he pulls up his bottle and drinks what looks like blood. My mom then drops, and I'm pretty sure dies. He stands up and tells me one day I'll come closer. So the part I'm talking about is I guess what people call lucid dreaming, which happens very frequently to me. I have no clue why. But one day it's a lucid version, and I'm probably 15 when this dream happens. I seem to have aged with the dream. I finally gather courage and walk down the hallway to go warn my mom, but no words come out. Again, she drops and my brother looks at me and says, Come in. I do. He said, I'm not the scariest thing about this dream. It's you. I never really understood what that meant. Until I got arrested. I put the kid in a coma because I couldn't control my anger. Our brains know much more than we believe. What I believe is the dream was somehow a warning of my self-control. I've told my brother about the dream, but he doesn't believe me, and I guess that's why I backed off. I really want to get back in how we used to be. Can I get some support, or am I wrong, or should I try to rebuild the connection? He's very into God, and I don't believe he's a bad person, but that dream always pulls me away farther. At least for a few days, like I'm scared of talking to him. Maybe I'm just paranoid, but I'd like some help. I keep getting 
visited by my dead wife. When I was about 16, I met my now deceased wife. We were childhood lovers and stuck with each other with relative ease through our teen and adult years. We didn't argue that much, and when we did, it was finished as quickly as it started. We have two kids together, and we're a pretty normal household. My wife was a very spiritual person. She was very much into magic and spirits. She wasn't a loony, just a tad obsessive. Anyways, she passed away two years ago due to a lost battle with cancer. It pretty much destroyed me. Felt as though the light of my life was taken away from me. I hadn't experienced that pain in my life often, but when I did, I rarely got over it. Just a few months ago, I started having problems with my sleep. At first, it was little things. Waking up in a sweat, having difficulty breathing, waking up and crying. But then it slowly began to get worse. I started seeing my wife in my dreams. She kept calling out for me. I couldn't move toward her, and I couldn't speak either. I always woke up from these as soon as my wife came close to me. Didn't stop there. A few days after I started having dreams, I began seeing my wife's face and reflections of stuff. Things like the windows, pots and pans, kitchen utensils. Anything that was reflective. It showed her standing behind me. And when it didn't, it showed her standing a few feet behind me in the corner of the room. During this time, I had my children sent to my parents. Due to the fact I was on medication, didn't want them to see me going through it. Anyways, I've started hearing her. Not speak, more like when you think you hear someone call your name, but you're not 100% sure whether you actually heard someone or not. Objects in my room are moved. Not by a lot, just a few centimeters. But I can still tell. It's just one of those things, you know? But yeah, stuff is still getting worse. My first paranormal experience happened when I was six years old. When I was six years old, my mom and I moved into a new apartment building. The first night there, I believed that I was psychically attacked by something. I didn't get any bad vibes at all when we were moving our belongings in that day. She had put my bed in my room against the farthest wall near the window, hung up a sheet as a temporary curtain. That night, I fell asleep fine. I was never a kid that was afraid of new places or the dark or anything of that nature. After I fell asleep, I had a dream that I was lying in bed. Suddenly, the Barbie suitcase that was lying on the floor across the room began moving. The lid kept opening and closing slightly, like someone was using their hand to lift and lower it. Then the curtain that was covering the window fell, and I felt a sharp searing pain in my lower leg that was closest to the edge of the bed, like somebody had grabbed it from under the covers. I immediately woke up, and after I woke, I could still feel the pain in my leg. Then what I had dreamed began happening in reality. The Barbie suitcase began moving like it had in the dream. The sheet across the window fell. Before anything could grab my leg, I bolted out of the room, scared shitless. My mother's room was right next door to mine. I pounded on the door and kept looking back into my room afraid that something was going to grab me. Seconds were feeling like hours, and she didn't answer right away, so I barged in as her boyfriend was about to take off his boxers. I told her what had happened, so she checked my room. She couldn't find anything, so she just hung the sheet back up, put me back into bed. I lied there, just staring around the room in fear, expecting to be attacked. At some point, exhaustion took over, and I fell asleep. No more weird dreams that time, 
But when I woke up, I had this remarkable, peaceful feeling, like something had watched over me that night. I also felt incredibly well-rested. I don't think I've ever felt that well-rested in my life. There were no more incidents like that after that night. We ended up having to move again about a month later, though. We were on the bedroom, bottom floor, which ended up flooding when we got hit with a bunch of rain, ended up losing almost everything we had due to water damage. The Green Woman When I was a kid, around seven years old, I think, I spent the whole day at a cousin's house in my old hometown. He lived right in the middle of town, so we could ride our bikes pretty much everywhere. This was back in 98, in a tiny place that I come from. Everybody knows everyone and keeps an eye out for the safety of any kid that they see. When my mom dropped me off at my aunt's house that morning, she gave me some money to be able to go to the corner store for snacks for my cousin and I. After a while, hunger struck, and I took off on my bike to Reed's Grocery. It was the best stocked store in town. There were only two stores. Pulling up, I noticed an old maroon-colored car parked outside. Reed's storefront had a store brick wall with about a quarter of the way up, but from the brick up to the roof was all glass. The type of glass that you see through one side, but a mirror on the other. I didn't pay the car too much mind at first. I rode up into the sidewalk and gently rested on the handlebars of my bike against the wall. Hopped off my bike and by force of habit I looked into the store window. In the reflection behind me, in the old maroon car, sat an old lady in the passenger seat. She was dressed in all green, dark green, wearing a beret, and she had one of those crocheted Afghan blankets draped around her shoulders. She looked very, very old. Deep wrinkles covered her face to the point that I couldn't even see her eyes. Her skin had a gray tint to it. She smiled sweetly at me in the mirror, but when I turned around to wave and smile back, she wasn't in the car. Confused, I glanced back at the store window, and I could still see her sitting there in the passenger seat smiling at me. Fight or flight kicked in, and I aborted all thoughts of 3D Doritos and Gatorade and raced off as quick as I could. I didn't even get onto my bike, I just grabbed it by the handlebars and pushed it as I ran as fast as my little legs would go. Looking back, the little old lady really seemed to mean me no harm. Her wrinkled face looked kind, and her smile was warm. But my seven-year-old brain yelled, Ghost! And told me to run. When I told my mom about it a few days later, she told me sometimes spirits get stuck or have unfinished business they can't pass on. I remember this encounter fondly these days, though, and wish I could have better reacted to the situation. Maybe I could have helped the green lady somehow. Is my house haunted? I'm a 16-year-old girl situated in India, my parents and my sister. We live in a street which is quiet. We don't get sounds except for occasional things like somebody's wedding, things like that. I live in a building where everyone moved out, leaving only my family and another guy's family. For a few months we were experiencing paranormal stuff, but they were unnoticeable. But for the first few days, it had been getting out of hand. And it's noticeable. Even after I did everything in my mind, like using sage. I'll list a few of my experiences here. But before that, I'll explain how my house is. The main door in the living room is attached together. And it has a small washroom for guests. We don't use that washroom except, you know, cleaning it once in every week and two rooms. The very first experience happened in the living room. Me and my sister and my mother were chilling, sitting on the couch, when my sister pointed at something. I didn't care at first, but then I saw something in front of the living room washroom. The door was open. It was the shadow of a whole person, walking. Then it disappeared. We instantly checked the washroom. 
No one was inside there. There wasn't something there that would cause a shadow of a moving person. Then we saw stuff like sculptures moving, doors automatically opening. Then this experience happened in the living room once again. The washroom door was open and I looked at it. I caught a glimpse of a white face. Fully white, black spots in the place where the eyes are supposed to be. Then it vanished. This morning, I placed my pair of earphones in the middle of the stool. I sat down on the bed. After a few minutes, I heard a noise. Naturally, I looked up to see my earphone floating in midair for half a second. Then it fell on the ground. The same incident happened to me when I was doing chores one day in the kitchen, but with a spatula. I had more experiences about this, but my biggest question is, is my house haunted? My Paranormal Encounter Or was it? I was lurking on the subreddit tonight while watching some spooky movies. I happened to unlock a memory of something that happened to me while I was working as a CNA. This was a few years ago, and in the midst of the pandemic. So needless to say, I just brushed it off with the craziness, but it stuck with me. I was a new CNA having on-the-job training, working on my 10th or 11th shift. The mid-shift is from 2 to 10. It was the middle of winter. I'd never been on this unit before, so the patients were all new to me. The other C and I, and I were just splitting patients. So when she went to take her lunch at around 6.30, I covered hers. I went into a room with the call light on, asked the patient what I could do for them, the patient told me my name before I could introduce myself, asked where my watch was. I'd forgotten to wear it that day, but there was no way the patient could have known. We talked for a bit, I moved her water closer, and left. Almost immediately after leaving, the call light was back on, so I went back in to see if I'd missed anything. The patient had no idea who I was, I went back in. An hour or so later, I went back in to check on her. She remembered me at this point. She told me before I left, grabbing my arm while doing so, that the shadow man wanted to take her. I was a little confused. Asked what she meant. She pointed to the corner of her room and repeated that the shadow man was talking to her at night, but that she didn't want to go. I turned the light on, but of course there's nobody there. Unnerved, I started to leave. I was heading for the door. She called out that he wanted to take me that night as well. That night on my drive home, I hit the black ice twice. The first time I managed to keep myself on the road. The second I barely avoided hitting a truck, nearly flew off the road. I'm not sure how I didn't crash. When I came in the next morning at 6, I picked up a shift. I was told she had passed around 3 a.m. I asked what had happened. As she appeared to be in decent enough condition the night before. They weren't sure. The overnight nurse came in to check on her during rounds, and she was gone. They said around one o'clock she'd been hollering, but they'd been unable to figure out what had really gone wrong. A ghost story from my teacher in Yorkshire. In 1981, when I was 10, my teacher, Mr. Bailey, told her class about a ghost story he'd been told as a youngster. I've often thought about this story and wondered if it was genuine or not. This would have taken place most probably in the 1960s in Yorkshire. For those of you unfamiliar with terraced housing at that time, it was common for the layout of a house to consist of an entrance into a front room or a parlor, then a partition wall where the stairs were, and the kitchen area behind it. A modern extension was then added to the back of the kitchen where there is a bathroom. At the bottom of the stairs, there was a door. It was kept closed to keep the heat in. If you ascended the stairs, there were two bedrooms directly above the front room in the kitchen. A young family had moved into this style of house. 
They were generally built around the turn of the century, and had been consistently kept awake by very specific sounds, which always seemed to happen when the youngest child, a boy, was stopping there. The sound would be ba dum dum ba dum dum never varied. It was rhythmic and constant. And it lasted until someone from the family opened the door to the stairs. The parents obviously knew something was amiss, but couldn't explain it. It wasn't a sinister happening. Moreover, it was a sad vibe which left the family unnerved and unhappy. At this point in our teacher's story, you can understand that the entire class was transfixed with the idea of this ba dum dum ba dum dum and what it could possibly be. Mr. Bailey explained that the parents had contacted the local vicar, who had attended the parish for several decades. He recanted a story of a boy whose illness meant he was unable to get downstairs. Instead, he lived in the bedroom of the house, and his nurse, each night as a treat, allowed him to play like the other boys with the ball. He sat in his wheelchair at the top of these stairs and bounced the ball down them, but dum dum so they hit the steps at the right angle to capture the ball back into his arms and start the process again. This is what the family were hearing. It was quite frankly petrifying. The image of the boy sat on top of the stairs bouncing his ball down has always stayed with me. It still gives me hackles today. See ya. Nursing Home Night Shift I've been a CNA for six years. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences during the night shift, between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. The first place I worked, I got a call light in a room where somebody had recently passed away. I was the only person working in that part of the building. When I got to the room, it was locked like usual. When I unlocked it and went into the cord and the wall was pulled needing to be reset, but no one was in there. That same place had an activity room with a couple armchairs and a couch. I was laying on the couch one night playing on my phone. I had my pager sitting next to me. It suddenly flew off the couch so fast like somebody had smacked it as hard as they could. That same place also had a basement that had a motion detecting light in all three rooms. I walked into the first room to grab something. When I walked back out, every single room in the hallway had the lights on. You could always hear people running up and down the halls or across the ceiling. But if you went to investigate, no one was ever there. The scariest time was when I was working a bunch of double shifts. I decided to take a nap in the break room in the basement during my lunch break. I had sleep paralysis where I was stuck on the couch. There was an old man in the corner of the room watching me but keeping his face hidden from me. I tried to move to get away, managed to break three and run out of the room a couple of times only to suddenly appear back on the couch. However, the second my break ended at 30 minutes, I was suddenly able to move. I sat up and as soon as I did, the lights went out. There was a timer. We should have turned it off after five minutes, but they stayed on the entire time until my break had ended, as if they had detected the person in the corner the whole time. The last crazy thing that I experienced was at a new center I was working at. I would always hear doors opening and slamming shut, or a lady's voice yelling at the end of the hallway. Is anybody here? But when I'd check, all the rooms everybody would be asleep in their beds. At the same facility, I went to a room to help somebody use the bathroom. When I got him, sat him up on the edge of the bed, and had him grab my arms, I said, I'm going to help you stand up, so we can use the toilet real fast, okay? and a woman right behind me, almost as if she was leaning over my right shoulder, said, Okay, in reply. Obviously, no one was there. Dreams affected by spirits. I need advice. I have a problem that started years ago, and it's escalating. I've always seen things. And I've had paranormal events in my life that I've ignored. We moved into our current house 16 years ago, and the events continued but escalated so it ended up where I smudge our home on a regular basis. This keeps things quiet, 
and I've noticed as the bad dreams start, the corners of the room get darker. So, time to smudge again. I know that they affect our dreams, as I had audio recordings from years ago of the spirits affecting my children's dreams. Talking to them, there were two male and two female spirits in the recording, and the sound would always come before anything started that I could only describe as Velcro being pulled apart. Recently, things have changed. I'm having dreams where I'm getting attacked within the dream, but when I wake, no bruises are visible. But where I'm injured in the dream, I feel the pains while awake for days later. Problem I can deal with by smudging. This is where it gets tricky, though. I work as a support worker in a one-to-one -one environment within this house, and it's following me there. I've spoken to the company, and I'm not allowed to smudge his home because I'm forcing my belief on him. I smudged my home two days ago, and last night while sleeping I had a dream I was attacked, and I hit back, punched, and kicked a demon from my dream. I was overpowered, and it stood on my hand saying I shouldn't fight back. I woke up, and the foot I had been kicked with was bleeding, and the hand that had stood on was swollen badly. I could still sense something was in the room. It's around eight hours later. The swelling is almost gone, but the bones still hurt. Where I sleep, there is nowhere I could have injured myself to that extent. So here's my problem. Can anyone suggest anything I can do to protect myself that would not be classed as forcing my beliefs that I think? While I'm purchasing a white sage plant to keep in the staff room where I sleep, but didn't know whether that would do anything. I've tried to post things in the past to tell what I've been through, but... Out of the last 30 years, I've been scratched, had my hair pulled, things thrown at me, burned. And I also have seen things constantly. But every time I start to type it out, I get really sick until I have to stop. Even just typing this, my body started to ache from head to foot. Got a violent migraine. Entity is imitating my mom, and it hates me. Now I want to preface this story by stating that I'm a very analytical person. I'm a technical business analyst, for God's sake. So my livelihood is to analyze and find reasoning behind every situation. So it's to the point where I can't deny that something is living in my family home, and it imitates my mom. I live in Queensland, Australia. In about 2004, we moved into a very old Queenslander home. You can Google Queenslander home, and you'll see the type of house I'm talking about. It was a big fixer-upper, with very high ceilings and a beautiful deck that caught the summer breeze perfectly. It was the first house built in the entire street over 150 years ago. It used to be a celery farm. And I might know. About 15 years ago, my cousin was sleeping over one night. We were very close. She told me about all of her paranormal experiences. For context, she grew up in Indonesia, and her mother was apparently into black magic. So she's seen and experienced a lot of the paranormal. There anything in my house? I asked her. Yep, she replied. She sits on the windowsill of your mom's room. Is it bad? I asked. Not too sure if I wanted to actually hear the news. Just don't bother it, she said, shutting down the conversation. Fast forward a few years. I'm sitting on my bed studying with the door open. I then see my mom walk down the hallway with the washing basket, about to put on a load of laundry. About five seconds later, I see her walk down the hallway with the washing basket, going to the same direction she was before. I was baffled. How could she walk the same direction twice? tried to shake it off, thinking it was just my tired mind playing tricks on me. After all, I was studying and it was late. About a year passes, I'd forgotten the spooky incident of my mom walking in the same direction twice. It was a Friday afternoon and I had my best friend over. We were hanging out in the kitchen talking to my mom. Mom was cooking dinner. Me and my friend were just chatting away. But my brother then appears from his room. Where's dinner? he asked. Still another 30 minutes away, Mom replies. I 
I lived in a house that was built by a World War II vet that passed in it. I lived in a house that had a death in the title, was built very close to an old one-room schoolhouse. It was boarded up due to the headmaster shooting all of the students and his wife, burying them on the school's property, and hanging himself in the attic. Keep in mind while reading this, I've always had security cameras surrounding my house and pointing towards the street. One night my friend and I had gotten home from a camping trip. We were 16 at the time. We'd been sitting on the couch at around 1 a.m. as we were waiting for some episode of some TV show or something. We had the Apple TV on, and anyone familiar with Apple products knows how easy it is to mirror your device onto another one. I had a monitor in my living room with all my security cameras on a constant stream. They would record 24-7, but stored motion with high sensitivity. Next to the monitor was my TV. The TV glitched over to another image, not the mirroring screen, and it was an image directly into the bay window behind us. You could see my CCTV monitor as well as the TV it was playing on. It was us on the couch. The cameras picked up no motion and nobody outside. They were pointed where they were supposed to be. It stayed on for about 10 seconds before the power went out. We went down to the basement to check the breakers. We're trying to decide if calling the police is worth it. Even though the cameras didn't pick up anything, the breakers were all on. When we came back upstairs, the power came back. All of the cabinets in the kitchen were open as well as the fridge. And the doors on my entertainment center too. Where we decided not to call the cops and it wasn't someone hacking into our TV or on the cameras was all of the windows were still locked. Both entryways were dead bolted shut. From then out, I'd come home to cabinets open, lights on that had been off, stuff moved around. We'd hear footsteps throughout the house as well as kids laughing. Spooky story Get spooky evidence. My grandpa bought an old small house on a mountain like 60 years ago with a lot of forest. As he bought it, there was already a lot of talking in town about it being haunted. The story behind this house is that a hunter and his family lived in there, and he got killed in a quote-unquote hunting accident, which was more likely a murder his wife, not able to keep the family together, killed herself in the cellar. At first, I thought all that was just clever marketing, because he rents it out to other people in the summer, even though I've also heard the priest talk about this place independently. So, now, on to the paranormal stuff. There's a guest book in which people can write how they enjoyed their stay, so on and so forth. And a few people even know the legends of what happened there and make jokes about that. Perhaps they would say things like, The ghost was friendly this night. Things like that. But there's also a lot of entries of people from other parts of the world who couldn't possibly have known what happened there. They were always writing about the same things. Very, very loud steps from the cellar and outside asking if somebody was here at the time, a very bright light from the middle of the forest and in the middle of the night. There's at least ten acres of forest in each direction, and rarely some white-dressed woman walking in that forest. Now on to a personal experience. I've never believed in anything like that. That's why sometimes I slept up there myself. If always heard the steps, but never saw a light or a woman in the forest. This one night, though, was different. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning and needed to take a piss. I still don't know why, but I decided to go outside instead of the very nice wash closet we have indoors. 
as I started, suddenly an extremely bright light shined directly in my face, ran to my car, never slept up there again. A Nautical Ghost Story for My Sailor Uncle I was just talking to my uncle, who's a retired sailor. He told me a story that I felt was perfect for this subreddit. My uncle used to work on board the Great Lakes Freighter, the SS Arthur M. Anderson, and would haul iron ore and limestone across the Great Lakes. One day at around 7 p.m. in November 2007, they were crossing Lake Superior on the way to Cleveland, Ohio. That's when they started receiving distress calls on the radio from an unknown vessel claiming to be the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. The SS Edmund Fitzgerald famously sank in 1975, taking all 29 crewmen with it. Well, he said at first they all thought it was some kind of distasteful prank. That was until they checked the radar, found that there were no other ships around for at least 70 nautical miles, and the range on the radios are only 60 nautical miles. He said that the voice they heard from the radio described a heavy storm and high winds, that they were having a hard time holding their own. My uncle said you could hear true fear in the man's voice from over the radio. But the thing was, there was no storm at all. In fact, the water was calm, the night was clear. At around 8 p.m., my uncle described this distress call on the radio when we came to an abrupt stop, leaving the whole room in a terrifying silence, and the radio stayed quiet for the rest of the night. Nobody was able to sleep that night, haunted by what they had witnessed. When it comes down to it, there's a sense of irony in this event, being as not only is the ship my uncle was on, the SS Arthur M. Anderson, the sister ship to the Edmund Fitzgerald, but it was also the last ship to make contact with the Edmund Fitzgerald in 1975 when she sank. Could my uncle and the shipmates have actually made contact with the ghosts of the crew of the Edmund Fitzgerald? Or could there be another explanation to this event? We'll never know, but it made one of the creepiest stories I've ever heard. My ghost story is a person who doesn't believe in ghosts. So when I was younger, about 16 at that time, 2016, I had an encounter at the place we used to live. Now let me be clear, I don't believe in ghosts, and my family is very down-to-earth as well. That being said, all of us have witnessed something at some point that made the hairs on the back of our necks stand up in that house. Usually we talk about it and come up with a reasonable explanation as to what happened. It must have been a shadow cast by a passing car, things like that. However, there is one experience that I cannot explain to this day. And absolutely freaks me the fuck out. The point where I caught myself gaslighting myself for the longest time, as years after I experienced, I was fully convinced it must have been a spooky fever dream. I also deal with sleep paralysis, until I talked about it again with my dad a month ago and he confirmed it absolutely did happen. So the story is as follows. Me and my family were having dinner sitting at the dining room table, I have a pretty good view of the door we used to enter the house. The area is fitted with a motion sensor that lights up the area whenever movement is detected. The signal has to be strong, as our cat couldn't send it off. As we're eating, the lights go on, and there are two people standing in front of her door, weaving at me, as to ask for some help. My family also responds as the lights coming on and are also looking outside. I wave back and hop onto my chair and go out to the door to ask them how I can help them. Here's the kicker. I open the door. There's no one there. I walk outside to see where they went. Nope. Nowhere to be seen. 
I walk back inside and I say, huh? They just walk away. My entire family is looking at me pale as all hell at this point until my dad just goes, who the fuck are you talking about? Turns out none of them had seen anyone at the front door. They were just creeped out about the motion sensor turning on the lights. To this day, I have no clue who the people standing in front of our door are, but still it creeps me out. Dream Visitation in the Form of a Movie My father passed away from cancer almost 11 years ago. I was in my 20s when he died. Sometimes I'll have dreams of my father, but this one was so different. I felt different in my dream and felt different the following day when I woke up. I was in a small movie theater. There were five to six rows of chairs. I was sitting in the back or the second back row. Other people are coming into the movie theater to sit down. My awake self doesn't know these people, or at least I can't recall anyone specific, but my dream self felt comfortable around all these people. The movie starts playing, it's in black and white. It reminds me of a movie that you would see in the 40s or 50s. Suddenly my father appears on the screen in the movie. My dream self is shocked and surprised. My dream self knew that he had recorded this clip of himself before he died. He looked healthy and well. He looked like my dad that I knew before he was diagnosed with cancer. In the movie, he's looking at the camera and audience and says, Hi, the garbage gan. I just wanted to let you know that I love you. My dream self is still in shock and speechless. I remained speechless and all I could do is just wave hello at him at the screen. Other people in the audience remained silent and also started waving at the screen at him. This was all that happened in that segment of the dream that I can recall. I'm tearing up as I'm writing this even though this dream happened a couple of weeks ago. If this wasn't a visitation dream, then I don't know what is. I previously was a skeptic and didn't believe in any sort of afterlife or spirituality. Over time with other experiences I've become spiritual, and I believe that there are certainly things that can happen after we die, but we just don't have the tools or human intellectual capacity to measure it. Situations like my dreams are more proof to me that there is something else going on. Sleeping Shadow Person A number of years ago I awoke after an afternoon nap to an unexplained shadow near the edge of my bed. It seemed strange, but I didn't think it was something paranormal, initially. I sat up slightly, began to look around the room for what could be maybe casting the shadow thinking I'd find a jacket hanging in front of a light source. I found nothing. I sat and looked at it a bit longer. I then had the realization that there's no way a shadow could be suspended in the air like that. It wasn't cast against a wall or an object. It was just sticking into the air, coming up from my bed. At this point, I was completely bewildered. It was a formless mass with no discernible features. Couldn't figure it out. I decided I'd have a smoke while I continued to look for an explanation. As soon as I shifted to reach for my cigarette, the shadow moved. As soon as it moved, it could make out its rough shape. The initial movement was its head raising from a slumped position. Its head then turned and looked at me. As soon as it saw me, wide-eyed staring at it, it jumped to its feet, ran straight away through my bedroom wall. 
This shadow person had sat on the edge of my bed and seemingly fallen to sleep. It's the most surreal thing I've ever experienced. The entire thing played out in about 60 seconds. Never had anything like this happen to me before or since. I was going through some stuff at the time. My doctor said it was likely some form of hallucination. But I'm not really sure. Has anybody else had something like this happen? I've read many stories about ghosts and shadow people, but never heard anything similar to my experience of a sleeping shadow. Knocking on the door late at night. So recently, we've been hearing knocking on the door to our apartment. A couple small knocks, dogs go crazy, we all get goosebumps. All is quiet for a while. The knocks don't happen every night, and when they do, the time is very inconsistent and often infrequent. I live with my mother, stepfather, three dogs, and a cat in the apartment which is in the basement of my grandmother's house. Before it was finished many years ago, as far back as the 80s and 90s, this basement was my mother's room, and leading up to her moving in at the age of 21, she would hear knocking on the door. It would freak her out, but she blamed it on recurring dreams, or someone in the house possibly messing with her. Recently, my mother heard it again, and it mildly alerted one of the dogs. I feel it is safe to note that we're moving out in a few months. We've just gone into the final stage of securing a house. Something consistent with when my mom heard the knockings at a younger age. Later in the same night after my stepdad woke up for an unrelated reason, they both heard it. And this time, two of the three dogs started barking the other one woke up. The first knock, according to them, was around 2230, and the second was around 0300. I thought they were trying to mess with me. Until today, the dogs began to bark around 1400, and later at around 1830, I actually heard the knock myself before they were alerted once again. Yesterday, I brought up the old dog camera, I don't use it anymore, since my mother's working from home due to COVID. We set it up out there. Upon checking today, for some reason it wasn't recording during the first knock. Probably her own fault. And when we checked on the second knock, there was nothing on either side of the door. Dreams about dead people. Started middle school. A friend from elementary school moved away from middle school. In seventh grade, he died in a car accident. At the viewing, I remember hugging his mom and how wet her shoulder was from all the people who cried while hugging her. I didn't cry though. I didn't even know how to mourn or go through the grieving process. I'd never known anybody who died before. About a year later, his death hit me and I cried for days about it. All the pent-up grief came out at once. Then one night I had a dream that we were back at our elementary school, played on the playground for hours. When it was time to go, he told me that he was okay, and that it was all going to be okay. When I woke up, it was like my grieving process was over and I finally came to terms with his death. In my early 20s, I dated a guy for a few months. A few times he took me to his parents' house while he cut the grass. I sat at the kitchen table and talked with his mom, and she really liked me. Our relationship didn't last too long, didn't end poorly. We just weren't right for each other. We both moved on with our lives. Time passed and I was dating someone else. I heard that his mom had died a few months after being diagnosed with lung cancer. I messaged him my condolences and didn't talk to him again for about a year. I had a dream 
a dream where I was at the kitchen table with his mom. And as we were talking, she was getting older and sicker by the second, like time was speeding up. She told me to let her son know that she's okay. I texted my ex the next day to say I had a weird dream about his mom. He texted back that it was odd because they had just spread her ashes the day before. Last story, again in my mid-twenties. A friend's mother's died. I'd never met her and she lived about three hours away. A few of us from the group of friends decided to drive to the funeral. The night before I had a dream that we were at the funeral and they dropped her coffin and she fell out. I'd never met her or saw any pictures before the funeral to know what she looked like. But when I saw her, at least her pictures at the funeral, it looked exactly like the woman in my dreams. The Cat Said Goodbye I worked the graveyard shift for a residential habilitation company, meaning I work inside the client's home. When I first got started with this company, I had two specific clients I would work with every week. They lived in the same house. I was going on three months at the company at this time, and my clients were super high-functioning and would go to bed super early. They usually wouldn't wake up until their morning staff arrived. This meant that I could frequently get away with sitting outside to vape for extended periods of time. During these first three months, there was a collection of neighborhood cats. They would wander around, and frequently they'd come up to me and let me pet them. I feel like I'm a cat whisperer because I've never met a cat that didn't like me, and I have three cats of my own. Well, one day when I was out for work, the next-door neighbor's house caught fire and started burning down. I had to call the fire department and try to keep it from spreading to my client's house because of the proximity. It was a whole ass mess, not very fun night. Well, about a week later, the owners of this house asked me if I'd seen any of their cats, showed me pictures, and I'd seen one of them because he would come up to me all the time and get pets when I'd sit outside. Side note, it was hard to get this cat confused with other cats in the neighborhood because he was a chonker. He was blind in one eye, had a mustache with the way his coat looked. They got really excited to hear the house, and mind you, I literally pet this cat the night before they came asking about him. That was the last time I saw the cat. Well, eventually they started clearing out the house, and unfortunately they found all three of their cats dead in the house, including the one I thought I had pet. As soon as I heard what had happened, a chill went down my spine because I realized I was possibly petting a ghost cat. I guess he liked me enough to come say goodbye before he passed on. I try not to think about it, though, because it's my only ghost encounter where I can't explain it away with logic. The only logical explanation I can come up with is there was somehow another fat, partially blind tuxedo cat with a mustache in the neighborhood. But the fact I never saw the cat again makes me feel like that's not the case. Precognitive Experience and EMS. Anyone? My theory, really a phenomenological observation, about precognition and presentiment is that it's more likely to happen when one, the event will be emotionally charged, and two, The chain of events that will cause the events is already determined. What I mean by number two is that it's far less likely you predict a random event, like the lottery numbers, than something that relies on events that have already been set into motion and are basically unavoidable. My personal example is that I would wake up a minute or two before my 911 pager went off. I work in EMS. For the skeptics out there, no, I didn't sleep. But I assure you, I enjoy my sleep, meaning that I didn't keep a tally. It got to the point that, well, I would take a minute or two to go to the bathroom before the page went out so I could get going faster. Since I started the job, I seemed to get better and better at it until I couldn't remember not waking up before the tones, over a period of two or three months. Furthermore, 
I'm not the only one at my workplace to have this experience. This fits my theory, because a 911 call is somebody's emergency, and by then, somebody was already on the phone with the dispatcher, so the chain of events resulting in the page was already rolling. Twice, I also had an auditory precognition, where the dispatch voice popped into my otherwise empty head. Once during meditation, and the call was pediatric, so highly emotionally charged for everyone involved. Another was while I was mindfully washing the ambulance. In those cases, a clear memory-like voice popped into my head with the magic dispatch preamble. However, in both cases, it was the voice of a different dispatcher than was on duty that day. Still, a minute later, the page went out. This never happened any other time. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. I feel like something is attached to me. In the past few years, I've experienced some odd things. In 2020, I was frantically searching for my deceased grandmother's rosary. I'm not religious, but it was incredibly special to her, therefore special to me. I looked everywhere, and nothing. Days later, it was sitting on my coffee table out in the open. Again, I'm not religious. I wasn't using it. Why did it appear in such an obvious place? It felt eerie. In 2021, I lost a bottle of very important prescription medication that I take. I searched up and down under the bed all around for days and days. I showed up five days later, and you guessed it, the coffee table. This time it felt mischievous, like the joke was on me somehow. This year I woke up and was definitely fully 100% awake. My husband wasn't in bed. I felt the weight of a human being sit down on the bed next to me. I was facing the opposite direction. I felt immediately like it was not my husband. I could hear him distinctly in the kitchen, but its presence was warm and loving. Additionally, every cat I've owned and have been attached to has seen things. Every time I've gone to, like a psychic of some sort, they always tell me they sense or see an older male presence with me. It's always an older male, which makes me think of my paternal grandpa. His last words were, My dear sweet Natalie, my name, so I guess that made sense. He passed when I was eleven, so I don't remember much about him. I don't know if it's him at all or anything. I've just been told this bullshit, maybe. Anyway, these aren't the first instances or my experiences with the paranormal, just the most recent that I remember in detail. I often feel or sense things, like energy. But I'm not very educated in details. Are these all separate entities or just one? Is it a ghost, a spirit, or a spirit guide? Most importantly, is it good? My gut says yes, but should I be entertaining the idea of keeping it around? Me and my family think there's something in our house. We live here over five years, but about a year we had some feelings that this place has something. First, my sister said she's hearing footsteps in the room. In the kitchen, we said maybe comes from somewhere else, and we didn't take it serious. Months pass, and my father started hearing it too. There would be nobody home when he would hear it. We didn't really care about it at first, but it got worse. At this point, even me heard it. <laughs> I was asleep in the living room and woke up. Nobody was home, but I heard footsteps in the kitchen and room. I was so sure that someone is home, I started yelling, Dad, is that you? No answers, so I got worried. Went to the room, but there was no one there. My sister sometimes even come out of this room and ask if we did call her name, and says she heard somebody called her name clearly. This happened more than a few times. One time I was smoking and left the butt on my desk. Went to get some water, then came back, sit in my chair after a few minutes. I looked at my shirt, and the cigarette butt was on my shirt. Had no idea how it ended there. 
There was no way for it to just lay on my belly. All of this wasn't serious to me, but tonight I got scared shitless. I was trying to sleep in this room and was about to fall asleep. Started feeling a goddamn hand on the side, and then got scared immediately. I wasn't awake or asleep, but I feel something behind me was sleeping on my side. Tried to talk, but I got sleep paralysis, so stayed like this for a few seconds. When paralysis was gone, I just yelled my sister's name. It took me a few seconds to realize everyone was asleep, and was thinking what the fuck just happened. To be clear, I get sleep paralysis a lot, so it wasn't about this. I'm thinking I wasn't awake enough to process to feel a hand on me, and when did I get sleep paralysis right after that? And when I felt the hand, I immediately thought of these things my family was talking about. What should I do? Don't really have any idea about this. Possessed? My wife and I are German, and we live in Canada about 10 years now. We decided to move back to Germany, and as part of our preparation, we had to visit our parents. We visited them before together, and always slept in the same room, my wife's old bedroom. This time it was different. What happened is as follows. Her parents gifted us a car as a startup help sort of a thing. We had, pretty much like always, a couple of drinks together, about two. When we went to bed, she asked me how I was feeling about the gifted car, a few other things. Then she started being sexual, like most nights. Meanwhile, we were doing it, she's on top, I don't know why we're telling me. She started getting violent, told me to shut my mouth. She covered me up and hurt me physically. This is weird. I saw her once looking at me and her eyes looked black. Could also be a reflection of some sort of me not seeing her eyes right. After she came a few times, she got off and played with her phone. Okay. She didn't say a word. Bothered me a lot. What happened? I get it. She was literally choking me and told me to shut the fuck up, but enjoyed the sex a lot. Later, <laughs> later that night, I asked her why she did that. She had no recollection of it. Liar. Not even of our conversation about the car. When we were talking, we also heard and saw things dropping in the room. Probably an old house, and it was windy outside. Not sure. I still think it was her subconscious because of all the stress with the move and her needing an outlet. Nothing goes as planned, and it's partially her fault. We have a lot of tension because of it. I predicted that if it didn't go her way, something like this might happen. We also were talking about her past that day. And her abusive ex-husband. Anyway, many thoughts. My buddy thinks that she was possessed and told me to ask you guys. Some people here know about, maybe they, this is hard to read. Some people here know about thinks like that. Cheers. What do you guys think? Felt presence in bed. Staying in a hotel. Last night, as always, before going to sleep, I check all the door windows. I was laying in the bed, and I heard the sound as if somebody had moved the chair aside. I thought the sound probably came from another room. I believed it because I could see nothing and the lights were on. Played on my phone for a half hour and then turned the lights off. Twisted, turned to the left side of my bed, fetal sleeping position, closed my eyes. After some time, I felt as if somebody walked inside the room. I could hear bare feet rubbing against the ground and then pressure on the side of the bed. Like a person moved in and climbed on. I just thought it's all in my head and the sound is coming from another room beside me. I was gathering up all the strength in my body to turn and punch if there actually is someone in my room, but at the same time convincing myself that these sounds are from the other room, just like earlier. Before I could make up my mind, I felt that someone grabbed me tightly from behind. I could feel the hands, feet, and the whole body pressuring against my back. I was trying my hardest to turn. I even screamed and asked who it was. I could only hear breath. I applied all my strength to get out of his hold. I could feel it was a male. 
couldn't turn my neck. After a few moments of struggle, I felt my neck was free, and then it felt like it was gone. I felt free. I turned my head, and there was nothing. I turned the lights on, Googled whatever I was feeling. I was relieved that many others have felt the same. A feeling of pressure. A feeling of presence. FOP. I couldn't turn and see the face, but I felt like someone with a dark, demonic-like face was there. I also took God's name when trying my hardest to get this thing off me. It was terrifying. Couldn't sleep and felt like I had ten cups of coffee. I slept peacefully after a few hours. Couldn't tell if it was real or something in my head because I could feel the touch. It came from a walk, and while walking, I was thinking of the encounter that the same thing was going to happen tonight. I called up my girlfriend and asked her not to hang up and stay on the call until morning. I don't want to ever experience whatever that was. I dreamt that my uncle passed away. A few years ago, I had this really, really weird dream. I was so bothered by it that I woke myself up when I got too strange and it ended. For context, my uncle, who I'll call Tito for this story, was really sick at the time. Never really saw him throughout my childhood, but that year, which I think was 2016 or 2018, I'd see him every Sunday at my aunt's beach house. I wouldn't talk to him aside from saying hello and goodbye, so it creeped me out that I had this dream about him. The dream started out with me and my mom. We were walking around what looked like New York City, but then slowly morphed into one of the mega cities with all these tourist spots from other countries. Sometime in the dream, my mom left me to do something else, and I signed up for this helicopter tour and happened to see my uncle signing up for it, too. The staff asked us to leave all of our phones and tablets and jewelry with them before we got into the helicopter, which made me confused, but I didn't really think of it at the time. He was in the wheelchair, so I helped him get into the helicopter. And after a few minutes, we took off. We talked about I don't know what, but then the pilot announced that we do a parachute-free skydive. Tito started to wheel himself toward the open door. I tried to follow him, but he said I was too young, and it wasn't my time to skydive yet. He then rolled himself out of the helicopter after saying bye to me. Then I woke up, checked my phone. It was 11.46 exactly. I just thought it was weird. Went back to sleep, since I've had weird dreams about family members before. The morning after... My mom told me that, sadly, Tito passed away the night before at 11.46 p.m. My family regards this as him saying his final goodbye to somebody who could handle it, otherwise known as me. I'm known to never freak out. Just wanted to share this story, because I think it's quite creepy and quite cool. I'm ready to go. I have a few unexplained ghost stories that I've experienced over the years. A really quick one. I was working at a steel fabrication shop for like 25 years. Our regular start time was 7.30 a.m. And when overtime was scheduled, we would work to it prior to start time. We would go through periods when we'd work overtime for months on end. So much so, I wouldn't really need an alarm clock to wake up as my body was so used to it. Anyways, I was in the middle of this period of OT. Starting work at 4 a.m. till 4 p.m. Took me about 45-50 minutes to get to work from my house. So I would wake up at 2.30 a.m., get dressed, pour a cup of coffee down my throat, get another one for the road to go. I live in a rural area, so there usually isn't anybody awake in my neighborhood at that time in the morning, except me. So I go out to my back door. My car, 2000 Honda Civic, was about 15 feet slightly to my right of the back door. There's a woman sitting in the back seat. Stopped dead in my tracks, just watched her. She looked to be white or Hispanic, long dark hair and pale, in that lighting anyway. Just sitting there. 
She was sitting in the back seat on the left side, behind the driver's seat, not looking at me. I don't think she noticed me at all, and I'm just paralyzed. She was looking out the left hand of the window, looking at somebody who was riding in a car on a not-so-exciting drive. After probably a minute or two, her gaze drifted to the front windshield, still not at me. She just sort of melted back into the seat, and the shadows disappeared. I told my wife later that day, and she just looked at me like, yeah, sure. And yeah, it was dark out at that time of day, but same people are sound asleep. But nope, I wasn't dreaming or half asleep. My adrenaline was pumping as soon as her presence registered in my brain. My heart was pounding. I approached the car, shining my flashlight over the interior. No one there. Strange feeling. Okay, guys and girls, probably many people have this feeling and ask about it here, but I have to talk about it. Every time I have strange feelings about being watched. At day I can ignore this, but the worst are nights. I feel this even in the rooms where I have all the doors closed. I have dreams which ones I feel are really realistic, and sometimes I miss some people from those dreams, but I never seen these people. And the most important, I have strange luck in my life. Once I drank too much and finished hanging above a fence with spikes. Once I slept in a car where I drive with a hundred kilometers an hour and end up in a trench, but somehow I get through it. Cars look like a total disaster, but I made it. I remember when I wake up because I drive through chainage post and going down through the trench. Now this was a little divine altar, but next day when I go there, there was nothing destroyed. Everything was good and like I was never there but my car was still full of grass and scratches. That's my dog. In other times, I had a really bad year and tried to end myself. And I'd take some sleeping pills and drink with two beers. I think it was just too small of a dose. Once I read something about a multiverse or something like that. Not sure if there's a different name for that in English. And if you die here, you still live in another dimension and that one goes on. And also I heard many stories about some kind of spiritual guardian. I'm very skeptical, and I know I'll never find answers for sure, but I'm curious if anybody has the same feeling or has ever read or heard more about answers of these things. Ghost. Well, how did my daughter know? My partner's blind, so a nanny takes her daughter, she's three years old, out for walks on weekends. She likes to go see horses which are in a field at the end of an alley, just around the corner. That alley has a few row houses and one farmhouse at the end. It's named after a cave and a well that used to be there. Now that it's closed off, let's call it a pit road, not to bother the translation. Today my daughter came back from her usual Sunday walk, almost in a panicky state. Water, she yelled. Someone's fallen to the water, must be saved. Our nanny, thinking she was afraid of the deep puddles in the field after the heavy rains from the past days, she didn't think much of it. When she came home, my daughter cried for me. She heard a man scream from the water. He called her name and asked for a hand to be saved. She said the man was fallen. She said something was with him, and that person too needed help. I never told her this story, but in that exact alley used to be a cave and a water well in the front garden of a little house. And sometime close to maybe a little bit after World War II, a man in a wheelchair fell into that well and drowned. After the incident, they filled up the cave and the well was shut off. 
A few years ago, another man committed suicide in the same lot. He drowned too, but in his bath after taking tranquilizers. I never told my daughter these stories as she was too young. We tried to calm her, primarily thinking she was afraid of the deep puddles. But then she became angry with us because we didn't take her seriously. She insisted that two men were screaming for help calling her name and asked for a hand to be saved. My hair stood up right as she told that story, that the one man couldn't move his legs and had no hair, which matches the description of the man in the wheelchair. What should I do? I guess the cat sat in the box now. Nightmare that's supposed to mean something. So it's currently 2.30 a.m. I was awoken by something bothering. To start off the dream, it was like 1 a.m. if I remember. I went down to get some water fell asleep on the couch a few moments later. Woke up and there were no lights on at all. Tried opening up some lights. They weren't working. So I opened my flashlight. It was very dim for some reason, so I rushed upstairs into the room I was staying with and got sleep. A few minutes later, I was woken up with my heart racing, decided to go down again to check if the lights opened, to check if they were just faulty. Still nope. Still faulty. Do note this is still the dream, and I woke up in a dream. So I decided to play with the lights upstairs and some of them working, so I turned off the lights downstairs. Working or not, decided to go upstairs to investigate. Some lights were working and some weren't. My flashlight was still very dim, so I turned them off and my dad woke up, went down, went to the core, drink water. While I was waiting for him to come up, my mom suddenly went out of the room and was walking toward me. I hurried walking into my room without looking back. While I was closing the door, she caught up and wouldn't let me get close to it. She was forcing herself, as if she wasn't my mom at all, or something pretending to be my mom. I noticed because my mom doesn't enter my room unless she really needs to. Then I found out she wasn't my mom. Directly told the woman she's not my mom, she went full psychotic. She barged into the door and transformed into this entity-like thing, who's somewhat after me and wants to hurt me. For some reason, I saw like comments of teenage girls, kind of like flashing before my eyes type, saying stuff like, She's so me. Me and her are the same. So real. I hate men. Stuff like that. There was a name, but I forgot. When I woke up, my heart was racing. I got nothing on that one. Ask Reddit. I'd been on my old laptop, and I decided it was time to catch some shut-eye. Normally when I close my eyes, I see these red and blue closed-eye hallucinations. They move left to right and disappear pretty fast. When I closed my eyes this time, there were none. Instead, I saw a ring of white light. Then I realized it wasn't a ring of light at all. It was a circular black shape. It was backlit. The image faded like after an image does when you see something murky. Like two dim lights getting closer and closer. As it got closer, I began to see more definition. They weren't lights, they were reflections off a pair of dark glossy surfaces that were surrounded by a beige-colored shape. Finally, what came into focus were two large, black, empty, void-like eyes. It was the face of, well was the face of what they commonly describe as the Grey. I immediately felt terrified and disgusted of this thing. It was right in my face and I wanted to leave or run away from it. I opened my eyes, feeling very uncomfortable. I leaned over and jokingly told the Discord server that I'm in that the aliens might have gotten to me, but I laughed it off. Closed my eyes again and a few minutes later went back to sleep. What I... Well, I didn't see the face again, although I can still picture it if I think about it. But every time I think about it since it happened, I get this uneasy knot in my stomach. I get this... Uh, 
plenty of horrifying dreams and nightmares. None of them have left me with any kind of lingering tension. Some suggested it might have been sleep paralysis, but I never had the chance to actually fall asleep the first time I closed my eyes. My laptop was right there and open. Hadn't even gone to sleep yet. Didn't feel like it was something happening in the moment. Honestly, it felt more like a memory that had strong negative motion attached to it. Like the after image had triggered something I'd forgotten. This happened to my friend. The scariest part for me is that I know the person who told me about it, and I know that she's completely sane and very unlikely to tell a lie. The way she told me the story also made it evident that this did indeed happen. People have told me frightening stories of paranormal things that they've witnessed before, but this story stood out to me. Maybe because there were four people together and they all witnessed the same thing. The woman who told it to me is from Thailand. I've known her for quite a while and can vouch for the fact that she's not a flake. And here's what she told me. Several years ago when she was around 25, she went out for a drive with three friends. One other woman and two men. After they'd been driving for quite a while, their surroundings suddenly appeared to be completely changed. All of a sudden, there was a fog around them and an eerie atmosphere. They could see a man on a bicycle standing very close to the car. They continued driving for a bit. And they suddenly see the same man. They tried convincing each other that perhaps there were two individuals, you know, dressed very similarly. But deep down, they didn't believe it. They then drive quite a bit longer, and the same man on the bicycle appears in front of them. My friend tried to see his face, but it appeared as though he had none. At this point, all four became terribly frightened and grabbed small Buddha statues that they had in the car. They continued driving, and all of a sudden the car stopped. The place where the car stopped was by a shrine where many people had died. And there in that place, the same faceless man on a bicycle appeared right in front of them. They were petrified, but they eventually managed to get the car started again. They continued driving until the fog lifts. Things become normal again. My friend said that it felt as though they had, well, as though they had traveled to another dimension. The four people in the car didn't speak to each other after this experience because it haunts them to this very day. Be careful what you wish for, because you might actually get it. It happened a long time ago when I was a child. My mother and her friends liked to visit places believed to be haunted. After ghost hunting one night, she told me that she was afraid she brought something home. Something evil. She told me she could feel an evil presence in the house and could hear whispering. I didn't hear anything, so I just thought she was imagining it. I heard screaming that night. I was frozen in my bed with fear. After the screaming stopped, I waited a while, then went downstairs to see what happened. My mother was sitting on the sofa. She was shaking. She told me that she woke up because she heard a baby crying. She said she followed the sound through the house and down into the basement. When she got down into the basement, the baby stopped crying, and a woman started screaming. She frantically looked around for the woman, but couldn't find her. She looked out the basement window to see if the woman was outside. That's when she seen her reflection and realized she was the woman screaming. She turned around and started running back up the basement steps and she could hear a baby giggling. After that, I started hearing the whispering, someone walking around the house late at night. There was a foul odor and chill that seemed to move from room to room. My mother believed that she was possessed sometimes, because she would find herself standing in the yard or basement with no memory of how she got there. This went on for a few years. We tried having the house blessed to get rid of it, but nothing worked. Finally we moved, hoping it wouldn't follow, and it didn't. Whatever it was stayed at that house. 
Every now and again, I think about stopping at that house and asking the people that live there now if there's any strange things going on. But how do you ask someone something like that without seeming crazy? Ask Reddit Over winter break one year, I agreed to babysit my six-year-old niece. My sister and niece had moved into their house about six months earlier. They were settled in except that my niece repeatedly complained a dog kept her awake. The neighbor's dog barked constantly, and a ravine across the street caused echoes. My sister had to leave for work at 5.30 a.m., so as soon as she pulled out of the driveway, I grabbed a blanket curled up on the couch. I was just drifting off when I heard the steady click-click of dog nails on the kitchen floor. The noise moved through the kitchen, into the dining room, and into the living room where I was. Once in the living room, dogs circled around the couch. I was half asleep and used to frequently babysit for a family with a dog that liked to roam around at night. So it took several seconds for me to realize that. One, my sister didn't own any pets, and two, the living room was fully carpeted. Once these two realizations hit, I sat straight up just as the clicking came directly in front of me. The instant I opened my eyes, the noise stopped and nothing was there. I realized there was no way a dog had slipped in the house, so I started to try to figure out the source. The furnace wasn't blowing, so nothing was being moved by the vents. No electronics were running. I vaguely knew about hypnagogic hallucinations, so I reasoned that maybe that's what happened. Eventually, I settled down and lay back on the couch, just drifting off again when the click started back again. At that point, I gave up on sleeping and watched infomercials until my niece woke up. I mostly dismissed the noise. My brain was maybe overacting or something, but I remembered my niece's complaints about the neighbor's dog thought about it for a few days, and then asked her if the dog's barking was still keeping her up. She calmly told me, It's not that dog barking. It's the one I hear walking around the house. Ghost dog is a bit far-fetched, but I have no idea what we both heard. Another weird experience I had. This happens every so often, so I'm not going to put my age. But a little bit of explanation before the story. I never met my grandma, who I call Nanny. She died in February of 2005. And I was born October 2006. Well, then we know your age, sir. Anyway. My mom was told that she wouldn't be able to have kids because of scar tissue. Shortly around February 2006, my mom found that she was pregnant with me and said I was a miracle baby and believes that her mom gifted her with having a baby. Now on to the experience. I remember sitting downstairs with my stepfather who was watching TV. My mom went upstairs to do laundry. A few minutes later, we heard a shout from my mom, which sounded like it was right upstairs by the downstairs door. She came down and we asked her why she yelled. She told us she never yelled. And we told her we heard her yell. All well, my family who knew my nanny told my mom that. And told her that, she, well, my nanny sounded the same. One personal experience I had was I came out of my bedroom. It was kind of late at night looked up and saw a figure which looked like an old, short, slumped-over lady with short white hair and a blue fancy suit like top on, with a white shirt underneath it. The figure had no facial features and had no bottom half, and I watched it walk through the wall. When I looked around my mom's house, I found an old photo of her sitting in a chair with short white hair and that blue fancy suit-like jacket and that white shirt. My nanny died peacefully in her sleep at the house on the couch. We believe that she haunts the house because things disappear and then are in different places. And I've seen the figure a few other times, but not as great as I saw this one. It's 
ceiling girl haunting. Every house I've ever lived in has had some strange characteristics that came with them. When I was a child, the house I lived in had a little bear that came with it. The rental house I lived in before moving into my current house frequently felt freezing in the washing room, even when the washing machine and dryer had been on all day. Waking up to rattling in the bathroom happened a lot. My current house had been the only one without any weird or suspicious paranormal happening. Until around last year, when I got back from a camping trip. My brother was staying with me at the time. I just ended a serious relationship. I needed the support. My brother slept in the lounge. I slept in my room. But that night was probably the scariest night I've ever had. I woke up after a pretty weird dream about being chased by a rabid animal. Probably not as bad as I remember it, though. When I turned to face the ceiling, there was a woman clinging onto my ceiling like in a classic horror movie. She kind of looked like the girl that climbs out of TVs. Sticking to the ceiling was a pile of bones in the shape of an eight. And there were scratch marks everywhere. I just stared at that for a while before my pet started drinking water really loudly and the girl on the ceiling, she snapped her neck to look at me. My first instinct was just to lay on my side, force myself to sleep, at least through whatever was happening. My brother told me the next morning that he slept great, had no idea what I was talking about. Since then, the exact same thing has happened at least once a month. I'm really looking for what she is, or what she's doing. Sleep paralysis demon keeps following me around everywhere. I come from a culture that believes in the superstitious and paranormal stuff. So, of course, when experiencing sleep paralysis and telling my family about it, they, including me, began to suspect that some spirit or demon is attacking me. I'm using the present tense is because it's still happening. My recollection of the first time it happened to me, seven years ago, was when I was sleeping in the living room during the day, and suddenly I felt my whole body go numb. I couldn't move a muscle. Being the first time I experienced this, I was scared. I didn't understand what was happening. I felt something lay down next to me, but I couldn't see what it was. All I felt was the negative energy radiating from it. After what felt like a long time... I could feel my body regaining its strength to move, and the negative energy just vanished. Fast forward to two years after my first experience. It happened again. Only this time, I had already moved to another place and had educated myself on sleep paralysis and how it's linked to beliefs of demon attacks. Coming from a religious household, my mother had told me to pray whenever this happened again. To which I did, and became my weapon of choice whenever I experienced sleep paralysis. Although using prayer as a defense against this dark energy and having moved four times, for other reasons, I've noted that whenever I experience sleep paralysis, it's always the feeling of the same entity, but with more and more dark energy. It's even got to the point where I don't feel scared anymore. But just angry at whatever it is that keeps attacking me while I'm sleeping. What do you guys think? Is it possible that something has latched itself onto me and is following me around? My girlfriend and I are having some weird run-ins. Where do I start? For a little over a year now, I, as well as my girlfriend, have been having the same set of problems, and they arise at the same time. The oldest one is the Shadow Monster. 
or at least that's what we call it. It's tall, all midnight black, has a humanish body, but it can do things like shapeshift, which makes it look a little different each time. We've never gotten a good look at its face, but there's definitely a head. But like the rest of its body changes form. It doesn't seem overly hostile, except for scaring us. The only thing it does, I'm not even sure if it's the entity or just our minds, but it actively invades dreams, which I always chalked up to just nightmares about it. Another thing I should mention is that our experiences that are pretty much exactly the same, they're when we're together, but we don't live together, which makes some of the experiences with the shadow monster separate, but they can and have taken place at both of our houses. Around three months after that is when we started hearing voices that come more often from my girlfriend than I, but they're almost whispers, and they're mumbled or maybe in a different language that neither of us can understand. The final thing is something that started around three months ago. We kept hearing a train, more specifically the horn. It might sound stupid, but this one almost always heard at the same time for both of us, regardless of whose house that we're at. We live so hard, excuse me, we live so far out from any train tracks that we shouldn't be able to hear any train or a horn. But the craziest part is that the sound is like it's almost on the street. Now, of course, you might just be insane about one thing or the whole thing, but it's driving us crazy. I think it's time to start looking for answers to see what we can do, or if there's anything to do to change it. Enchanting singing in the night, then the strange sounds after. Hi. I just want to ask if what I experienced back when I was 13 was paranormal. For context, me and my family were living in this big old house, situated inside a pile foundation plant. Since my dad worked there, we were given a place to stay for free by his employer. The house was beside a river going to the ocean, as the plant used the sand of the beach for production. We were occupying the whole second floor, as another family is living on the ground floor. Anyway, it was past 12, maybe 2 or 3 a.m., when I got awoken by an enchanting singing coming from the river. I was enthralled by it making me walk till the kitchen overlooking the river when I snapped out of it and everything was quiet after. I didn't see anything. I felt scared. The singing was just so enchanting, but it creeped me the fuck out after I realized what happened. I tried to sleep, but couldn't. I had to wait till daylight before I could comfortably sleep. Till this day I ponder what happened. It made me question if sirens are real. The singing was like an opera singer, but the words I can't understand. A few days after this, as I was sleeping, I got awoken by our maids who rushed to my room. My room was near the living room where we heard an old man choking outside like the sound of someone choking, gasping for air before dying, just below the balcony. The balcony is attached to the living room. But as soon as they investigated by peering on the windows of the living room, the sound transferred to the balcony, then to the windows like it was facing them. I wonder if it's a ghost changing, haunting through sounds. They didn't see anything as well, just the sound. But their experience was way creepier. Oh. That balcony was near the kitchen, if I add. The place where I snapped out of being enchanted by the song. My Paranormal Experience In the spirit of Halloween, a few years ago my friends and I rented an Airbnb for the weekend. One of the rooms had a bunk bed where my friend and I chose to sleep in the lower level. The first night I wake up around 3 or 3.30 a.m. Now I'm on the bottom bunk, and as my back is facing the door, I feel the bed move and my friend getting out of bed. I hear feet go down the metal ladder steps, the bedroom door open, and the door to the bathroom close. Thought nothing of it until I continued to hear breathing coming from the top bunk. I immediately become alert 
think maybe this was all in my head, as I just woke up. I get up and look to find my friend passed out, the door to our room wide open, which we closed before we went to sleep, and the bathroom door closed with no one inside. I'm a little freaked out, so I decided to go upstairs, watch some videos, since I can't fall back asleep. I didn't want to be down there. All my other friends are passed out, by the way. It's like 5.30 a.m. and I'm tired enough where I'll easily fall back asleep if I tried. So I went downstairs, opened the door, which was not closed when I left. My friend was awake on the top bunk and on his phone, and he jumps up and looks at me in confusion. He asked me how long I'd been gone. He said about two hours. His face whitens, and he told me that when he woke up about an hour ago, he heard the door close. Someone walked to the beds and get into the bottom bunk. And he's been hearing breathing right up to the point where I opened the door. The whole time he thought it was me, and he didn't wake me up, so he's just been on the phone the whole time. No one was in the bed, and I didn't tell him my side of the story yet either. Nothing happened the second night, but the day we leave, I decided to do a last-minute check and make sure no one was forgetting anything. I went to the bathroom on the lower level before we leave, and as I go open the door, I hear someone whisper, Did you wash your hands? No one was down there when I opened this door of all my friends that were already outside waiting for me. Possible Sleep Paralysis as a Child Hat Man When I was a child, I refused to sleep by myself. When I did, I'd always end up screaming and crying for mommy or daddy. I remember very vividly on several occasions not remembering going to sleep, but waking up to my entire room being black and red. Yeah, like in the movie Insidious, I know how this sounds. But I would wake up and see what I can only describe as a hat man figure standing either in front of my window or in the corner of my room next to my closet. I had several encounters with this. I would run and climb into my parents' bed, tuck myself under the covers and he would stand and stare at me in the hall. Sometimes I ran to my parents' room to try to wake him up, but no one would wake up. Other times they would wake up and just tuck me in bed. I didn't talk about what scared me, though. I would just tell them that I'm scared. Until one night it got really creepy. I don't remember falling asleep. It's storming out. Everything is red and black. I'm terrified. I run to my parents' bed and cuddle up between them. And I shit you not, this hat man figure stood in the doorway, whistling some weird tune. Couldn't wake either of my parents up to save my life, so I hid under the blanket. After I hide under the blanket, the whistling stops. I wait a second to peek my head back out. This figure was standing over my parents' king-sized bed, looking down at me. Hat off, staring at me. I couldn't see any eyes, just pits of black, and I could make out weird grooves and bumps on his face and head. No hair. I don't know. Hat Man visited me a lot as a kid, and I had times where I would wake up on the floor of my bedroom after encountering him and losing consciousness. That's the best way I can describe it. Everything after seeing him would just be gone, and I'd wake up on my bedroom floor instead of on the top bunk of my bunk bed. This happened up until 5th or 6th grade. I hear my boyfriend's voice walking up the stairs, but he wasn't home. My boyfriend said I could post this here to get it off my chest, see if y'all can help me figure out what happened. So a couple of years ago, my boyfriend and I downloaded Life360 so we could know the exact location of each other's in case we needed to call the police to each other's locations. I had a rough living situation. I moved in with my boyfriend and his mom right after I turned 18 to their apartment they lived in since my boyfriend was a kid. Well, about two months into me living there, my boyfriend's mom was taking him to work. I got a notification that he left. Well, since I would be home alone for an hour, I would run myself a bubble bath to relax. A little bit after I heard my boyfriend's footsteps coming up the stairs. He was the only one out of the three of us to wear heavy boots so his footsteps were very distinct. Then I hear his voice call out to me, 
while still walking up the steps. Baby, I'm home. I was really confused because he had just left. There was no way he could be home already. Picked up my phone to see if he had texted me. Maybe work was called off. But as I unlocked my phone, I got a notification that he had just pulled into work. I started freaking out and slowly getting out of the tub, wrap a towel around me, trying to listen out for whoever must have broken in. The footsteps start again. And my boyfriend's voice calls out again. Baby. The footsteps come right to the bathroom door and stop. I stand there for God knows how long until I just rip the door open expecting the worst. The hallway was empty. Checked all three rooms upstairs. They were empty too. Checked downstairs, but no one was there and all the doors and windows were locked. We moved out a couple of months later and whatever mimicked my boyfriend's voice and footsteps followed us to a new place and mimicked my voice to my boyfriend. Death does not exist. When we die, what happens? Do we cease to exist? The answer is no, for one reason. Where were you before you became? Think back to when you were a child and try to remember. Wasn't there a day that it all began? A day that you woke up and thought, where am I? No matter who you are, don't you remember being a baby? You don't remember until a certain age, and I believe that's because that is when you finally gain consciousness. You see, you've lived before, and thus you will live again. When you die, I believe seeing is how time is made of mankind and does not exist. When you pass on, your soul energy moves from your body, travels to another reality where you enter the body at the same age that you finally gain consciousness as a child. We have deja vu because subconsciously we retain memories like an imprint on our soul so that in our next life, we can do things different without realizing that we are. Have you ever even once thought to wait and have a feeling like I shouldn't do this or go there? That is your subconscious memories from your past life because you already did that. So the point I'm making is death is irrelevant and does not exist due to death being man-made as well in the physiological aspect. We cannot measure death by body because we are the soul, the energy, and our body is just a vessel. Experiences that cannot be explained. I'm an open-minded skeptic and will naturally go to every logical explanation before admitting what I experienced was real. When I was a teenager, I was in a relationship with somebody who had lost his mother at a young age. She had unintentionally killed herself, and he and his younger brother had discovered her after school. I lived with them from the ages of 16 to 19, and what went on in that house was mental. I've noted a few experiences, but not all. Myself and the brother were downstairs one afternoon with no other person in the house. From the bedroom above the living room, there were three loud bangs on the ceiling, followed by footsteps which can only be described as running away across the landing. We cautiously investigated, but there was nobody there. We blamed each other and nervously sat back in the living room to finish our film. It happened again three times. I was convinced the brother had someone upstairs and was messing with me, but I soon realized that he was terrified. We had a party not long after, and one of the girls got sick. We put her in my room and went downstairs. Within ten minutes, she ran downstairs screaming that a lady was stroking her face and whispering to her. Then she disappeared. 
The girl described the boy's mother as the person she had seen. Their mother was a very distinctive person, but this girl had never met her, and there were no photos of her around. When nine months pregnant, I saw her standing at the bottom of the hall just staring at me. I put this down to hormones, but even before I was pregnant, I would hear wailing and doors slamming and see women's legs walk from a particular room. I moved out after the baby was born, and the house was sold years later. I have since found out that one of the families that have lived there reported stuff going on that they could not explain. General Inquiry About Ghosts, Spirits, and Water Recently moved to well-known haunted town in New England. Haven't had any issues. Sometimes when we go to town and enter some of the old antique shops, we can feel a real thick tension in the air. Even some of the shopkeepers appear to be off. We have a smudge station at the front door in preparation for our return. A couple of weeks ago, we came from our shopping and put our stuff on the counter. Immediately while unpacking, we saw everything was wet. Our newly acquired goods and groceries and the counter holding them, even the boxes on the floor, had water dripping on them. Thought at first that we had a leak. Started checking the ceilings and walls, etc. Found that even the cabinet sides that were above us also splashed in a big puddle on our stove. The tops of the bags were splashed and I just can't find the reason. We have no idea where this water could have come from. My girlfriend's phone and keys, also on the counter, miraculously were left unscathed. We have zero leaks. My girlfriend wants for me to react as I'm the one that's less interested in the spiritual world, you could say. I am dumbfounded. There was so much water and no explanation. We opened a few windows and smudged ourselves in the house with big bundles of sage. We were surprised we didn't set off the smoke detectors. I haven't had any issues since then, but I'm still wondering about the water, where it came from, and if anyone else has experienced anything like it. I don't usually put too much thought into ghosts or spirits, but this one event has me thinking. I also cannot explain the feeling that we get in the antique shops, but it's almost like someone is thinning the air. When you leave, it's like you were watching a 3D movie for two hours and you step outside the theater. I'm pretty scared right now. So I'll start out by saying I think there's a spirit or something talking to me. No, I'm not trying to sound crazy or anything, but at my house we have a shed in the woods where I work on my lawnmower. It's just stuff. It has lights and everything. So anyways, tonight I went up there to just hang around. I had a flashlight with me. When I got in the shed, I went in and closed the door, still using the flashlight. Keep in mind, it was like 10.30 and the shed is pretty far in the woods. I went to turn on the light switch and it didn't come on. So I was just like, whatever, I'll go check and see what's wrong. But then my flashlight started flashing really fast and crazy. And a few seconds after doing that, it started flashing slowly. Like staying on for two seconds, staying off for two seconds. So I was a little creeped out, so I walked outside the shed about 10 feet or so. It started working perfectly fine again. Weird, right? Now this is where it gets really interesting. After I got the power back on in the shed I was in, I was still a little creeped out by, but I went to walk back down to the house, turned around to the shed, and while pointing a flashlight at it, I said, If anything's out there, make my flashlight flash two times. I waited a few seconds. Nothing happened. So I said, Yeah, that's what I thought. Turned back toward the house and started walking, and I'm not kidding, the flashlight flashed two times, nice and slow. And so, yeah, I sped it up on the way back down, but I'm actually being serious, and the flashlight had never done anything like that before, nothing since then. But even for a while, every time I'm at that shed and it's dark out, I always feel like something is watching me every time I turn my back. I just feel like something's in there. 
So do you guys think I should get one of those boards where you talk to ghosts or what? But I'm very interested, but I'm also a little worried. House in the Woods I will start by saying that this happened in summer of 2000. Kind of long story. My friends, J.F. and J.D. for short, and I grew up in our small town in Ohio. We frequented the woods behind our home and would play games like hide-and-seek or catch the flag very often with the neighborhood kids. Needless to say, we all knew the woods like the back of our hands. One day while bored, J.F. and I just started to go hiking in the woods. We did this all the time back then, mind you. About 30 minutes into the hike, we stumbled upon an area with eight perfectly lined up pine trees with a small white house hidden behind them. We had never seen these trees or house before in this area, so we were thoroughly confused. We could see no trails or driveways leading to the property, so we had no clue how this house could have been built out in the middle of the woods. The house, from all outward appearances, seemed to be in good condition for the most part, and it was mostly unassuming. We both started getting an uneasy feeling, decided to turn back and leave the area and head back home. Go to a couple weeks later. I'm over at my friend JD's house to play some PS2. At some point, we start talking about the woods, and he tells me about a little white house he came across in the woods. He goes into detail about the same rows of pine trees and how he got a creepy feeling when he got close to the house and he split. I then told him how J.F. and I stumbled upon the same house a couple of weeks earlier and got the same feeling. Later that weekend, all three of us decided to go back to the woods, go explore this house. We spent a good four to six hours combing those woods, couldn't find the house or the row of pine trees again. They weren't just missing. There was no trace that the house or trees were ever even there. To this day, all three of us get the heebie-jeebies when we all recall that summer and the mysterious house in the woods. I think I saw a ghost last night. Since I was a teen, I've had an interest in the supernatural. Though more as an artistic and cultural expression, rather than a real phenomenon. Overall, I'm a pretty difficult person to spook. Both because I've been around horror media for years, and because of my family history. But something happened last night that I just can't explain. I was sleeping with my husband. I woke up to someone calling my last name kind of urgently. My first instinct was that there was some sort of problem in the building. These were firefighters or first responders of some kind. I sat right up and I could clearly see an old lady standing by the side of my bed. I adjusted myself, completely shocked to see her there. She didn't seem evil or angry, just... A nice, if a bit surprised, old lady in a dress and a cardigan. When I reached out to her, she dematerialized in front of my eyes. My head started to hurt immediately after she basically dissolved into thin air. I know it wasn't a dream. I had to make the very conscious decision to go back to sleep and deal with it in the morning. I spent the whole day looking up what could possibly have caused this. Some people say it's sleep paralysis, but I had full control of my body, and she didn't feel threatening in any way. I actually was just surprised to see someone in my bedroom in the middle of the night. I've had vivid dreams before, but this wasn't that at all. Maybe it was just sleep paralysis, but it felt so real I figured I'd share the story. See if somebody else had been through it too. I keep waking up at 3 a.m. feeling really anxious. I live on a big city student residency on the ninth floor with my sister as my roommate. 
That said, she's mostly traveling. So in practice, I pretty much live by myself. I always felt kind of uneasy, sometimes having anxiety attacks unprompted. But I only realize that it's not normal while I feel extremely secure in my hometown's house for the holidays as I type this. In my residency, I constantly feel watched and sometimes feel like something's tapping my shoulder. Like someone would then try to get your attention, kind of like that. It also is weirdly hot in here, even with windows open during Canadian winters. Even friends and families have found it overbearing. I also keep waking up every night between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. with immense anxiety, trying to hide myself in my bed sheets as I feel like something scary would happen if I looked around my room. Why I'm hesitating on calling that paranormal is because of two main things, hypersensitivity and restless leg syndrome. My autism makes me hypersensitive to sensory overstimulation, especially touch and hearing, prone to anxiety attacks. Sometimes, even in my hometown, I get chills from subtle temperature changes, hear sounds my family doesn't. That said, it's more frequent in my residency and it feels so much more severe. I have restless leg syndrome, which used to wake me up about four times a night due to leg twitches. So I'm always woken up around 3 to 4 a.m. Been medicated for about half a year now, and it's improved enough that I only wake up maximum once per night at 3. In my residence, in my hometown, it's pretty much gone. I sleep peacefully and I feel secure. I just wanted to share a run-of-the-mill hospital ghost story. I'm an RN, and I've worked on our float pool, traveling nurses with the same system. I was floated to the closed, sometimes opened, old locked psych unit. It's usually used for overflow patients and staffed by float pool when needed. Working night shift, I had a patient ask during night med pass if I could ask housekeeping to not empty your trash in the middle of the night, as it apparently kept waking her up the night before. I thought weird, but okay. I called housekeeping and they said they don't have anyone cleaning on nights on overflow unit. This patient was fully oriented, walkie-talkie, not weird at all, not a sundowner in any kind of way whatsoever. 3 a.m. rolls around and the patient rings her call bell. As I'm walking down the hall to her room, the double doors, locked requires bat swipe, close. I answered a bell and she's mad that she asked for housekeeping not to come in and they did. She said they emptied her trash and she heard the can open and the trash bag rustle. I profusely apologize and insist it won't happen again. I call housekeeping, who again stated they don't have someone covering her floor at night because it's just an overflow unit. So I call security since the doors were badge access only. They pulled the badge swipe logs for the doors and no one had accessed the doors after the kitchen staff picked up the dirty trays at 9 p.m. They pulled the footage of the whole corridor and can clearly see one of the doors open halfway, close, not a single person in sight. We still have no explanation to this day. It's just well known that the 11th floor is haunted. Apparently it was making the psych patients go crazier, so they moved the unit to a new wing of the hospital and only use this floor now for short-term overflow. I think a peaceful spirit is trying to get my attention. There's this one location my friend and I regularly walk past, where some strange things happened, specifically around one particular street lamp in a partially wooded area. The first thing was a bicycle bell. We both heard it, but there was no one in sight. Happened shortly before dusk and we could see pretty far. We were definitely alone. Then on two different days at dusk, all street lights were lit up except one. They're numbered, it was number 22. That one lit up the exact moment we walked past on both occasions. No motion detectors or anything. The second time I half-jokingly said, Hi. 
as we had already talked about something being weird here. Finally, my friend was walking there again, this time alone. When he noticed lamp number 22 being dark again, he started filming with his phone as he approached it. When he walked past, he turned his phone around, filming over his shoulder while he kept, you know, walking still. The lamp stayed dark while he was filming, but he told me as soon as he put his phone down, it lit up. When I saw the video, I noticed a tiny glowing dot, like a spark. It was repeatedly flashing across the screen. The lamp even tried to ignite once after the spark went toward it, but it failed to light up. We brightened and slowed down the video, and there's clearly some kind of spark erratically flying, swirling, and jumping around. Weird thing is, although my friend filmed over his shoulder, at most being able to glance at his phone from the side, the camera seems to precisely follow the unpredictable movements of the spark. On the Brighton video, you can even see it constantly autofocusing on it. Dining Room Door For just some background information, in my dining room there's a door to the basement. It's a crawl space, and I've always been creeped out by it. Ever since I can remember, I had an unsettling feeling about the room, especially when the lights were off. When I was probably around four or five years old, I remember I was walking past the room to go upstairs to bed. That's when I saw a tall human-like figure. I remember I screamed, fell to the floor, and started crying. I wouldn't move until my dad picked me up and brought me to bed. After this, I would have a recurring dream where I would be standing in the dining room and talking to my mom who would be in the kitchen. The light would go off, and I would be violently dragged by something down into the basement. I would never see what would drag me in my dreams. These dreams happened for a while, but they eventually stopped. It would seem that it was just my overactive childish imagination, and I could think of many explanations for other spooky things that have happened to me in this house, except for the following story. I was ten years old. My mother had ran to the store really quickly, so I was home alone. It was right after school, so I settled down to do my homework at the dining room table with my back to the basement door. I had been working for a while when all of a sudden, someone loudly whispered my name into my ear. I whipped around because I literally felt the breath on my ear. When I turned around, nothing was there. So freaked out that I immediately grabbed my homework and did in the front porch until my mom came home. To this day, I cannot explain it. It was especially scary to me at the time since it happened in broad daylight, and everything related to the dining room before then has been associated with the dark. Seventeen years later, and the room still makes me feel uneasy. Ask Reddit When I was maybe six or seven, I lived with my grandma in a double wide. You could sit in the living room couch, you can see all the way down the hallway. You'd see my bedroom doorway, the bathroom doorway, and then my grandma's bedroom doorway. Anyways, my grandma decided she wanted to play hide and seek for whatever reason. I saw her clear as a day turn the corner and run into the bathroom. The bathroom door was in the middle of the hallway before the bedroom. I ran into the bathroom after her, turned the lights on, and I don't see her. I pull back the shower curtain. She's not there. There's literally nowhere else to hide. It's a small-ass fucking trailer. At this point, I get really freaked out and sad and start to cry, backed up facing the bathroom door until I hit the living room couch. Called out to my grandma a few times. No answer. This was super fucking weird for her. She never, ever let me cry. My eyes flashed to the bedroom doorway for a second. Then my fucking grandma standing there with this face that just put a pit in my stomach. Except she's not, because I hear her start talking from the bathroom, apologizing for making me cry and asking why I didn't come look for her. While she's talking, the fucking bedroom lights flickered on and off, the bedroom door is empty, and my grandma walked out of the bathroom. 
I brought it up so many times, and until the day she died, she swore that I never came to look in the shower for her, that she was never in the bathroom, and that she'd never play a trick on me. She never once made me cry in my life, and I don't think she was the one who made me cry that day either. I'll never forget it. Seems silly now that it's all typed out. Such a silly thing to remember. My Encounter with My Great Uncle's Ghost in Her Old House This happened in the very first house I'd lived in with my family when I was quite young. The house had belonged to my great aunt and uncle. My great uncle, we called him Uncle Hooper, passed away in the house in my brother's bedroom, actually. And ever since then, we all had a strong feeling the house was haunted. We had a cat at the time named Sam, and Sam's food, water, and litter box were down in the basement. She would sit at the top of the stairs leading into the basement. She would just sit there and stare for hours. She would also hiss at something that she could sense down there. She would eventually venture down there to do her business, but we could tell she didn't like it down there at all, so we eventually moved all of her stuff into the main floor. One very strong memory I have thought that this house was when my brother and I were playing in the basement with a ball in the corner near the stairs where we had an old TV that had been off while we were down there playing. But all of a sudden, the TV turned on by itself, and it just happened to be playing an old cartoon, Alice in Wonderland. We were a bit shocked, but then all of a sudden we heard a loud pounding sound coming from the door behind us, which really spooked us being that this door led to a small closet. We opened it, found nothing inside except for boxes and some clothing. So we went upstairs right away and told our parents. They seemed to believe us, being I'm pretty sure they'd noticed the paranormal activity as well. To this day, we still talk about that old house, and we're all convinced still that it was haunted by a great Uncle Hooper. He definitely wasn't a mean spirit. He just wanted us to know that he was still around. Dark Shack and Red Eyes Encounter that still spooks me to this day. So I was in my early teens when I had this encounter staying over at my uncle's house for the holidays, which had sort of like a shack out in the back. The clothesline was near the shack, and I'd hung my towel out to dry during the day, but forgot to take it in as I fell asleep in the afternoon. I ended up waking up sometime around 9 p.m. I had been very tired that day, decided to take a shower, so I had to grab my towel from the line. As I approached the clothesline, my eyes were focused at the back of the shack, because it was a particularly pitch-dark area, and for some reason I had an eerie feeling. As I'm reaching for my towel, I saw a pair of shiny, yet dim circles in the dark behind the shack. As I watched, they only seemed to grow bigger and red. I stood frozen, staring at a pair of what I can only imagine as being eyes staring back at me. For about a minute, I didn't think to move or scream as I was frozen on the spot. I was still looking at the pair of red eyes when my body reacted to flight mode, and I ran as fast as I could back to my house. With that being said, that house has had its fair share of haunted encounters by those who've been in it. So when I told my family about it, they just brushed it off as another one of those haunted stories for this house. My guess is because it's a very old house. Anyways, I can still remember this encounter as clear as day, and it still holds the same feeling as it had years ago when I think of it. Strange Light in the Woods So the following happened to me one night a few years ago that I still don't quite understand what I could have seen. 
I live on an acre in a neighborhood. Toward the back of my property, front half is fenced. Back half is my shed surrounded by trees. There's sparse woods that separate my property from my neighbors. One night as I'm walking to the back to get something out of my shed, carrying my phone with a flashlight on so I can see, I open the back gate and take a few steps past and I suddenly see a strange white light blink into existence about 50 feet in front of me, to the left, just inside the tree line. Best I can describe the light is it looked like a round Christmas light, except it didn't radiate the light outward like a light bulb does. It lasts about one to two seconds, then just blinks out of existence. That is, until it blinked back on only a second later, but about ten feet closer to me. It did this multiple times, always staying just inside the tree line, arching toward me. Staying at the same height from the ground each time, maybe three or four feet in the air. The last time it blinked on, it was only a few feet in front of me, just outside the tree line this time. And in a panic, I raised my phone's flashlight. Saw nothing there, no lightning bug, which I've never seen in the woods around my house, though they do live in my state. Or any other insect flying. I fast walked right back to my porch, Looked back where I was and stayed there for several minutes, waiting to see it again. Never appeared. After a few years later, I have never encountered the light again, and still have no logical way of explaining what I saw. Ask Reddit I looked up the definition quickly. And this is the first thing that popped up. Do you see the same apparition doing the same things all the time? Do you hear the same noises, possibly at the same time of day? Each time that they're heard, too. Does that ghost seem to not even realize that you're there? If the answer is yes to any of these, you may be witnessing what is known as a residual haunting. Some of the most famous hauntings appear to be residual ones. A residual haunting is a playback of a past event. The apparitions involved are not spirits. They are what you might call recordings of the event. I believe that this will be the first type of haunting that mainstream researchers will, researchers will recognize and study. There are numerous theories on how these residual hauntings come to be. The main one will be discussed here. Video and audio tapes capture sounds and images on a film of sp excuse me special material that's been oxidized or rusted. Certain building materials, such as slate used in older castles and stone structures and iron nails used in many older buildings, have properties similar to that of the tapes. When a traumatic event occurs or a time of heightened emotions, these materials record the event for future playback. Everything is made up of energy, and energy cannot be destroyed. The materials store the energy created by these traumatic events, and they play them back at a later time. I know this particular source isn't exactly scientific, but it's the first thing that popped up, and I thought it will explain the phenomena pretty well. Ask Reddit 20 years ago, I was at a small army camp just outside Uijongbu, South Korea, the city north of Seoul, but south enough of the DMZ that I figured we'd have some heads up if the north attacked. At least time enough to jump in the Humvee and do whatever the plan was. One night I was on the airfield, and instead of the usual skyline I was used to seeing 15 miles away, all I saw was an orange glow as if the city was consumed by fire. I remember seeing pillars of smoke and flashes of light. I thought there were explosions in and around the city. I honestly truly thought the North Koreans were invading. I thought the city was burning. I ran back into the office and told the shift supervisor that Ujong Bu was being attacked. I started going down the list of things that we had to do and wondering if the Humvee had fuel and stuff like that that I was supposed to be in charge of. And just generally freaking out, 
but trying to stay focused on what I was supposed to do, like what we were trained for. Well, the supervisor asked me to go outside with her and show her what I was talking about, but of course we go out and nothing. The night is dark and starry with clear skies, and the city lights are still there off in the distance. Thought I was going crazy, wasn't on drugs and the shifts were overnight, but not long enough that I was, like, sleep deprived. I was in the groove of working mids. The environment was tense, but I loved Korea and had a good time there in my off time. I wasn't obsessed with war or anything like that. I wasn't a mental case who had hallucinations. I know what I saw wasn't fog or haze obscuring the city. Random flashing red lights. I live in a two-story house, a bit far from the city. It's surrounded by valleys and houses like mine. Let's say I live in a quiet and secluded place. For the last three days, I'm experiencing red lights in my vision. The first time I saw the red flash from outside. I have a small terrace on the second floor. I saw the light outside from the empty valley. It was distant and lasted for about a second, quickly disappearing completely. It was a single flash of red light. I blamed it on my sleep schedule, and I ignored it. The second time I saw it in the bathroom, the lights were dimly lit, and I was getting ready to take a shower when I saw the same red flash, but this time closer near the sink. It didn't emit from anything, it just flashed for a moment. It was weird. Since it didn't come from anywhere, but still, you know, I ignored it. The third time, however, I saw it right in front of me, in my room. It flashed near a cabinet, which is in front of my bed. I was laying on my bed and it flashed like before. That time, I got quite concerned and didn't blame my eyes or my sleep schedule. I decided to post about it. I did my research, but there is nothing. It all happened at night, three days in a row. I don't know what to blame anymore, so if anybody had such an experience, please tell me what does that red flashing light mean? Anything supernatural? Or are my eyes joking with me? I have no idea. My Encounter Hey, so this happened back in, I think, 2008 or 2009. 22 now. So back when I was 8, my mother and baby sister shared a birthday, and we were celebrating it. I'm Mexican, so back in these little parties lasted way into the night. Needless to say, it was dark. I was jumping on my trampoline with my cousin that was positioned to my right side of my house, looking toward my neighbor's backyard. While I was jumping around, playing with my cousin, I remembered falling to my knees to rest. I looked toward my neighbor's yard and saw this white translucent figure. It was kind of deformed, really. I remember it having two deep dark holes where its eye should be, and a gaping black hole of a mouth opened, and a fourth hole directly in the center of its head. And no, it wasn't small either. I remember it being decently sized. I would estimate a two in radius, maybe. Either way, I also recall it having arms, no visible hands, and its bottom half kind of dissolving to nothing, like a gradient effect. I remember it so well, yet I only ever saw it once in my life, probably for roughly a minute, because my cousin and I looked at it and got scared when we realized it's a ghost. Then we ran out to tell parents. That's basically it, though. Has anyone experienced an encounter like this? Or maybe even the same entity? I've had other encounters like shadow figures and hearing my name called out. When I went to ask any of my sisters if they called my name, they all denied it. Even though I'm 100% positive my name was said. Scent of Souls 
What causes the distinct sense in patients as they approach the end of life? In the intensive care unit, they dubbed me a witch, a label that stuck since my days working in the ambulance. What began as a heavy intuition transformed into something more profound when I stepped into the department and sensed the unmistakable odors of death. Each person carried a unique scent of death, from the pleasant aroma of freshly cut grass or wildflowers to the repulsive, earthly, rotten stench. During every shift upon entering the department, the smell guided me to a specific patient, and the time of death seemed to materialize in my mind. Understandably, many colleagues distanced themselves from me. Imagine being told, Get ready, this person's going to pass away at five in the morning. That's the way it unfolded. The strangest part, though, was that a person without a fixed residence, commonly referred to as homeless, could emanate the fragrance of lily flowers. On the other hand, someone who appeared well-groomed might exude the unpleasant odors of rotten potatoes or public toilet. For instances where we managed to extend a person's life temporarily, and they could communicate, I discovered that the homeless person with the floral scent was often a wonderful, spiritual individual. Meanwhile, those emitting the stench of decay turned out to be unpleasant and harmful. How could I explain this mysterious connection between scent and character? It was watching me. Over ten years ago, I was home from college and sleeping in my room that my mom had made up for me. It was a newish apartment. My mother was renting it. My mom had fallen asleep on the couch. I was half asleep in bed and felt like someone was watching me. I was so tired I told myself I was imagining it. Stop being ridiculous. I was laying on my left side and it felt like something or someone was watching me from the right side of the bed behind me. Figured I would just turn around and see nothing's there and go back to bed. I turned around and opened my eyes and to this day I see absolutely vividly a tall, disheveled older man looking down at me with the most hateful of eyes. His arms were at his side and he was just staring at me with a vile expression on his face. He had short, sandy hair. He looked corpse-like. He was wearing an ill-fitting loose suit. He had some cuts on his face. His eyes were cold and evil, and I felt unsafe and in imminent danger. I started screaming bloody murder and bolted out of bed, ran to the other side of the house and woke up my mom. She said I was probably dreaming. I said, Mom, I was awake. I felt it looking at me for a while, and he had this gnawing feeling. I wanted to disprove it. I must have laid there a good few minutes not feeling like I wanted to open my eyes, but I couldn't sleep. So, I turned around. We crept back into the room and no one was there. Well, me as an adult spent a good three days sleeping with my mom, and then never had a good night's sleep ever again in that room. To this day, I question the experience. Sleep Paralysis or Paranormal Experience Around the age of seven, they started occurring almost daily. Yes, Gecko. My trick to overcome it was to kick the air or make any movement to snap out of it. Over time, I had fewer episodes until they stopped completely. On a weekend when my parents were away, I decided to sleep early but ended up waking up around 4 or 4.30 in the morning. Upon opening my eyes, I was confronted with a disturbing figure. A girl with very voluminous hair, braids covering her face, standing on the left side of my bed staring directly at me. Some important details about my room are it's narrow, can't cross it without passing by my bed. The door makes a very loud noise, especially at night, and the TV is always turned off on its own due to the sleep mode. 
the first thing I thought was how my sister got there without waking me. That's when I realized it might just be another episode of paralysis. I could kick, and it would all end. However, this time was different. Besides the trick not working, I felt the presence of it. Everything happened in about one minute. I could finally move. I sat in the bed in the dark, in total denial. I did something I would never, not in a million years, do again. I lay back down and went back to sleep. In the morning, I asked my sister if she had been in my room during that night. She said that she had slept downstairs with the dog. It's been about three years since that episode, and now I lock the door even my family's not at home. Or even when they are at home, perhaps. Could a haunted place itself be the one behind the paranormal activity? I live in a place that's very haunted. Place is old. Witness to a bunch of deaths in it. I've done seances, experienced a lot of stuff, and felt in scenes, kind of familiar faces, you could say. However, these past few days have been experienced stuff out of the normal for this house. I've heard metal clanking on the door downstairs that leads to the street, as if someone was banging it. When I went to check, there was no one, and no traceable leftover energy or presence. I've heard noises in the kitchen, but the same thing happened. Yesterday, when I was getting ready for bed, 2.30ish a.m., if it's important, I turned the TV off after a late night snack, went back to the living room to turn off my computer and the LED lights, and as I was heading upstairs to my room, the TV was turned back on. My aunt, who lives with me and gets up for work at this time, was already working in the bakery downstairs, so it wasn't her. Today, every time I went in the kitchen, I left the light on since we don't like having all the lights off at night time, and every time I went back for water or anything, the light was off. I purposely remembered leaving it on the last time so I wouldn't think, did I turn that off on accident? And when my aunt woke up and went to have breakfast, it was off again. My headset was also turned off a few times on its own. So I have my LED lights, but I haven't felt or seen anything or anything close. Could this be the house itself? The Screaming Hills Per usual, I brought up the topic of ghosts. All the adults around the campfire retold their own experiences, but my dad kept his story to himself. You'll get chicken poop, he would say when we begged him to tell the story. In the end, he told us. The story takes place in the old days, when there was no electricity in our village and everybody lived in shacks deep in isolation. At the bottom of a large hill there were a few houses in the sandy beach that ran for miles in either direction. My dad was just a child then. The sun was setting and lanterns lit the houses. The kids were laughing and yelling so loud the adults told them to quiet down. My dad and the rest of the kids continued yelling and laughing. I heard about that. A blood-curdling scream from over the hill. The kids went silent immediately, stood there, frozen. They listened for a moment, when the trees on the hill started moving, as though something big was coming their way. The kids ran inside, their faces full of fright. When the adults asked them what was wrong, they didn't say anything. The adults didn't hear anything except for the kids playing. My dad said, there's an old burial plot at the top of the hill. None of us got any sleep that night. Advice needed, please. I've had 
issues with the paranormal for over 35 years. It follows me to anywhere I go. Relevant later. I can ignore most things when it's directed toward myself. I hate when it affects my family members. This morning, my two-year-old woke with scratches down the leg. Myself or partner can't really see how we could have done this to himself, but other than that, seems fine. During the day today, my partner's pupils changed to slits. Only way I can describe is like a cat's eyes. She said she could see fine and couldn't tell the difference. I work in supported living and I'm required to stay 24-hour shifts. I've had a few things happen while at work. One night around five years ago while at work, I had a phone call off from a work colleague who was spooked due to paranormal things happening to him. I was talking to him to calm him down. My wife at the time turned and looked at me and had the same issue with her pupils, but returned to normal shortly after. This was the only time I'd seen it when we were together for 20 years. My partner see my eyes go black, even the white of my eyes. This was last year and it freaked her out. Then another time my eyes fogged as she was talking to me and she saw me like age in seconds. Aged to the point of being an old man and dying in front of her. Then seconds later returned to how I actually look. I was wondering if anybody had any idea what's happening or how I can protect my family. I can provide more info of encounters if needed, but I said I've had things happen over 35 years and I've had quite a few encounters over this time. Accidentally saw a dark cloud in my living room. This happened last week. It was around six o'clock in the evening and it was very dark out. We live on the second floor of an apartment. My wife was busy cooking dinner and I was washing dishes in the sink. Both of us had our backs turned away from the living room. The TV in the living room was on and I watched it passively through the reflection in the kitchen window. As I glanced up at the reflection, that's when I saw it. A dark, oval-shaped cloud. The cloud thing moved from the left side of the TV to the right, momentarily blocking my view of the screen. It moved at the speed of someone walking. The TV has a screen diagonal size, you could say, of 43 inches. But the cloud thing was slightly smaller, perhaps 37 inches diagonally. I turned around immediately, but there was nothing there. That night was somewhat windy, so we blamed it on a branch of leaves distorting the TV's reflection. However, this explanation doesn't convince me. The cloud's movement was solely on the x-axis, and it didn't happen again. The distance it traveled seemed unrealistic for leaves blowing in the wind. The next day I looked out of the window and the reflection of the TV fell on the trunk of a tree devoid of any leaves. So the furniture and objects in our living room are very old heirlooms, 1930s bookshelf, 1900s curved glass china cabinet. If what I saw wasn't an illusion, maybe one of these objects has something paranormal attached to it. Heard my first EVP last week. I'd started hanging out with a new friend who I'd begun to really click with on a heck of a lot of different interests and topics, similar humor, and was just a really nice person. Well, one day we're hanging in his basement, just kicking it, when we get on the topic of unexplainable happenings in the paranormal, to which I've always been a huge, logical fan of. He asks me if I know of or believe in EVPs, to which I replied, of course. He looks at me with the most dead serious look straight in my eyes and goes, You can believe me if you want, but I guess I understand if you think this is just some bullshit. As he pulls out his phone and brings up an 18 second long video of mostly darkness, but just a smidge of the night sky and the moon, where he gives me a heads up for his reason for recording that night, it was to have a recording of the wolves in the distance howling. Thought it was cool. Fast forward to later in the same night that he recorded it. He remembers it and puts in headphones as he's laying in bed listening to the video for the first time. He gives me the phone and turns the volume all the way up and says, listen to the first 10 seconds. 
Tell me if you hear anything. Needless to say, about seven seconds in, you can clearly hear over the howling two to three heavy breaths, and then a low male voice saying something along the lines of, He's your friend here, or something like, I'm your friend here. I wish I'd gotten him to send me the MP4 of it. If anyone's interested, I'll definitely try to reach out to him to get it and post it on here. It was hella cool seeing how much I've never encountered anything like that. What is the clearest evidence of ghosts? Do digital and analog cameras make a difference? Skeptics will question any video, but what photo or video is the hardest to refute? The math we used to discover in black holes also suggests that there's ten dimensions. We can interpret three, and we travel in a single point through the fourth, which is time. Fifth dimensions introduce the multiverse. I strongly feel that ghosts are a glitch or an entity moving and glitched through the third and fifth dimension. I'm going to use Ouija boards to try to summon them, and then using consumer electronics and a few angry adept pagans get hard to refute evidence. I'm super experienced with Ouija, or Ouija, excuse me. Can anyone say that they are a pro? I have electronics to test for EMF, thermal, gravity, and all the cringe stuff that you can think of. The pagans are ready to rock, but I need a more worldly interpretation of what I may be trying to interpret or record. Also, will digital versus analog recordings matter? I've heard of so many occasions where hardware completely fails and all the recordings are erased. Has anyone ever heard about this happening on analog? Any posts? Greatly appreciated. Any info about the closest possible thing to evidence? I'll start. The Philip Experiment, 1972. Check out the wiki. Communicating with ghosts that they created. Moving Chair 2022. So about a year ago when I used to live with my parents, I stayed in my old room I had with a desk and an office chair. So I was on a Discord chat with a friend I made over the internet. We were talking about their experiences with a demon. A very sad story, honestly. It was late into the night and I was actually sleepy, so this probably had something to do with being sleepy, but while I was telling them something I had my eyes closed because it's nice to talk on the phone with my eyes shut. But suddenly I hear the wheels of my office chair. I always tuck it under my desk and it rolled. And I opened my eyes, whipped my head toward the direction of my desk, and all I see is my chair like two feet away from where it's supposed to be. And the jacket I put on sway a bit as it had just moved. Now again, I was sleepy and it could have been my head making it up, but I saw my jacket on that chair move. I had like two jackets on that chair shouldn't have been able to move without my assistance, not to mention there was a rug behind it, too. So it would have needed some force to move it like two feet away. So yeah, I freaked out, had a little panic attack, and I hung up the call with my friend and told my parents. So I told my mom and my dad to give me this liquid, maybe holy water, my grandma gave them. My mom said I had to dip my finger and dab the back of my knees and inside of my elbows and the back of my neck. Does anybody know why that is? I need some explanations. Anyways, that's all, and next time I'll tell you all about some shadow figures I witnessed. Okay, this is the best title so far. There very well might be an evil chicken ghost in my mom's house. Please help. A few months ago, one of my mom's neighbor's chickens started coming into her yard to hang out. At first, they liked the chicken, because why not? A free chicken. Duh. Anyway, there was an instance when the chicken had became aggressive toward my mom's boyfriend, tried to peck him. So, 
he threw it over the threw it over the dance back into her neighbor's yard. Must be a chicken term. It came back the next day. The trouble began very recently. My mom's dog attacked and severely wounded the chicken. My mom panicked and called a friend who then mercy killed, in air quotes, the chicken in the bathroom. Since that happened, strange things have been happening. And I could tell their mood has not been the best. And they've told me that their animals started acting different. I went to the house and prayed to God to have any negative energy removed from the house. When I got home, I had a fresh cut on my index figure. Oddly enough, it looks like a chicken pecked my finger. Later, after noticing that, my brother called me. He and his girlfriend have been taking care of the animals while my mom and her boyfriend were out of town. He explained to me that he was putting his kid's car seat in, and while he was gone, his girlfriend heard him talking to the dog that attacked the chicken. My friend's mom had some spooky experiences in a house that they used to live in. One day she was laying in bed after her husband left for work. She didn't work at the time, so she slept a little later than he did before getting up to do stuff. She heard someone walking around the house and figured maybe he hadn't just left yet. A few minutes later, she felt the sheets behind her rise, as if someone was getting into bed with her. No one was there. She felt breath on her neck as whatever it was laid down next to her. She bolted out of the house and waited for her husband to come home before returning to the house. Months go by. She starts working. One day, she comes home from work and found her hubby on the ground in the backyard. He told her he fell but it turned out to be a brain aneurysm. It passed away not long after that. She was heartbroken. A couple of weeks later, she got back to work after grieving the loss of the love of her life. She was talked to her co-worker and standing next to her printer with her computer in full view. Only her computer could print from that printer. The printer started printing something out. All the paper said was SSDD. Her husband had used to always say, same shit, different day. Guess he wanted to let her know that he was okay and still there for her. She hasn't dated since he passed away and raised their child, my best friend, who was a wee baby at the time, on her own. Seven Footsteps pacing back and forth on pine floors in a 125-year-old home. We live in a 125-year-old Victorian-ish old home in a small town. The house was built by a doctor at the turn of the last century and has been expanded twice as his family grew. We renovated the house but kept as much as possible original or in style with the original construction. I have insomnia and sleep in an extra bedroom regularly to keep my wife, give her some peace. Most nights I read at night before turning off the lights. And two nights ago I heard footsteps coming from a room through a central room in front of my room to the kitchen while I was reading. Usually when she's in bed for the night, she's in bed. So it was odd. After a few seconds, the footsteps went back the other way. At that point, I thought, Oh, she forgot her mobile phone in the kitchen. That made no sense, really. But she does charge her phone in two places, so that's how I processed it at the time. Our house has old pine floors and sits on a high crawl space, so there's a distinct sound when someone's walking in the old part of the house. Yesterday morning at breakfast, I told her I heard her get up and she looked at me all puzzled. She said, Don't you remember? I got out of bed and got my phone when we were watching TV. I told her what happened. I even inspected for uninvited critters yesterday.
grandma stopping by to say hello at Christmas time. I've had two odd encounters the past two Christmas seasons, and both involving something with my grandmother. The first time was last year. We lost my grandma at 94. She loved Christmas, so even though she passed in the spring, we all received a Christmas ornament in the shape of a bell with her name and the date of death from the funeral home. It had been on my tree for years. Last year it randomly just started swaying by itself for no reason one night. It was the only ornament moving, and it did it a few times during the Christmas season. Really interesting, and I thought she was just saying hello. There was no logical reason for this ornament to move on its own. I also have a snow house that lights up that was hers and I inherited after she died. A few days ago I walk into the family room after I got up in the morning with it lit up. It wasn't on when I went to bed. I'm absolutely sure of it because we were gone most of the evening and I didn't turn it on when I got home that night. I would have noticed it being on when I went to bed because it's pretty bright and it really glows when you turn the Christmas tree off. It being on was the first thing I noticed when I walked into the family room that morning. Again, I think it's her saying hello. Just a couple of neat encounters. Ask Reddit Years ago, I almost froze to death in a cabin. I was deep in the mountains, a little hut that was set up for long hikes like mine. At some point in the night, the wind threw open the door, and all the heat I had made with the furnace was now gone. I woke up so cold, I thought I couldn't move. I had a strangely calm feeling, and I was pretty sure I would just freeze to death. I even had some weird vivid vision of the next hikers walking in to find my blue corpse. After what felt like an hour of going in and out of consciousness, I started feeling really warm, and the night suddenly became as illuminated as day. The door, flapping the wind, gave me a short glimpse of this tall, slender, glowing figure with long hair standing in the snow. I had an undying urge to get up and talk to them, so I got out of my sleeping bag and without throwing in my external layers I walked out into the blizzard looked up at this glowing woman. She was taller than anyone could be, and she just looked down at me, smiling. I walked around the woods with her for a while, then made it back to the cabin and fell asleep. I think it was all a dream or a hallucination. But in the morning, the furnace was burning wood. Wood had been chopped in front of the cabin, and a fire had been started. Creep, or something else. Happened about 12 years ago, and I was 16 at that time. I was working home from my girlfriend's house, and halfway home I started to feel that someone is walking behind me. And as I got closer to the street where I live, that feeling of someone following me got more intense, almost like it was laterally a few centimeters behind me. And then I decided to turn around fast, saw nothing. It was nighttime, but the street light was on and there's not much space to hide fast, only if you decided to jump over the fences. But I think there would be some kind of sound of somebody jumping over the fence, so I started walking faster toward the house. That feeling of someone following behind me doesn't stop. I get closer to my front door and as I get through the door immediately locked it. Doorknob suddenly started to shake started to shake crazy, as if someone was trying to get in. I immediately turned on the light outside and watched through the window that was by the door. Shaking stopped. No one was there. I don't believe and still don't believe in paranormal stuff. So, if it was like a pro-creep or something else, why did they, you know, didn't take me when I was walking through the street? 
Or was it something paranormal? And from that time till now, I don't like to be alone outside in this dark. It creeps me out. Haunted Guitar I thrifted a 50th anniversary Fender Strat from Goodwill for 16 bucks. And I was ecstatic, despite it being beat to hell like rusted and the finish was damaged. I leaned it against my wall and throughout the night I kept waking up and my attention was immediately drawn to it every single time. The next day I cleaned it up and since then it's felt like there's just a whole other person in my room with me at all times. It doesn't feel evil or malicious. Take this next bit with a grain of salt, because I have no way to prove it. I downloaded one of those spirit box apps that scan through radio waves and decided to try talking to it. I got pretty much nothing at first and told it I'd leave it alone. After asking a few music-related questions... Anyway, later on, my mom and I are in my room just chatting, and suddenly her Pandora app opens to a station. I decided to open the app again, and this time I swear we both heard kill yourself three times, and then a piss off. We kept asking questions and asked what kind of music it wants to hear, and my mom heard giants. So we played They Might Be Giants. We asked what it thought, and got a beautiful. A few more questions were answered, and that's when me and my mom left the room. Everything else I asked was ignored. Ask Reddit. This will probably get buried, but when I was like 14 or so, I used to stay with my grandparents who lived out in a forest area in the back roads of a small town. The place is really quiet, and the closest house is like one kilometer down the road. So at night it's quite deserted, aside from kangaroos, because you can't see anything on either side of the house. One night, as I was just getting ready to go to sleep, I heard their front door rattle a bit. It's a really heavy door, and it has a distinct sound when you touch it, because it's old. I got scared, so sort of froze and tried to ignore it. As I had been woken up, I had the urge to pee, so I got up to go to the toilet after I calmed down. The room I stay in leads directly into the front room where the door is, and there's huge windows with no curtains. Naturally, it was pitch black when I looked out the windows, but I stared for a bit longer. I caught something moving that looked like a man's figure. Immediately, I froze, felt my heart pounding. Suddenly, my head went fuzzy, and I just blacked out. I woke up, however, many hours later. It was just getting light outside. But here's the kicker. I was outside in the ground in the driveway about a hundred meters from the house. Nearly shit myself, then, well, the door was locked when I went to go back inside. But I knew where the spare key was, so I got myself back in. Still have no idea what the fuck happened. Something's beating me up when I get into sleep paralysis. This started when I was in high school. The typical sleep paralysis to me starts with me feeling terrified. The feeling like something electric and ticklish at the lumbar part of my back. Then the tickling sensation spreads and boom, sleep paralysis. I also remember I died by suffocation by my thick blanket and I can't fucking move. Anyway, that experience pushed me into learning how to get in and out of sleep paralysis. I sleep on my stomach. Scary image, feel the scared feeling really electric on my back. And to get out, a friend told me to move my toe. Other thing that works for me too is placing my knuckles on my neck. Just little movements, and I can feel my real body again. So that goes on for, I don't know, years. And all of that, I can't see anything. And there's always something beating me up like kicking and punching my back and neck and head. If there's no pain, I can only feel the ticklish electric feeling. And I always try to shout and talk to those things. but never got a response. 
My ability to force sleep paralysis is lost after 18 or 19, but I still get sleep paralysis very, very rarely when I sleep late and I sleep on my stomach. To this day, I'm still craving for that feeling. I still want to find a way to communicate to those things. My nightly talks with a ghost when I was young. So as the title says, I used to have nightly talks with what I can only assume to be a ghost. I used to stay at my dad's on weekends in a nice house. He rented in a place called Long Ridge in Scotland. I think, honestly, not too sure, but pretty sure that's where the house was. I no longer talk to my dad, so can't really confirm. So anyway, it was a three-story house, and my room was at the top to the left of the stairs on the second floor, where I was able to see the banister in the top step. Every night, this thing would appear and just talk to me. It's kind of yellow, translucent. Its head looked like a lemon on its side, like Stewie Griffin's head on its side. Huge eyes. I called him the Lemon Man. However, I can't remember many or any of the conversations, but I do remember it being friendly. We had chatted every night and it kept me calm. It was my friend. It told me to never tell anybody about it or he wouldn't come back. I know that sounds very cliche, but it's really what happened. One day I brought it up to my dad and his girlfriend. My dad never believed in that kind of thing, but he told me later that it scared him out of the house. Probably not really why we moved out. He was terrible at keeping jobs and with money. After I told him, he said I shouldn't speak to it anymore. Though we did still stay there a good while after. Never ever seen the lemon man again. I was really upset about it. Is this a ghost or just my imagination? Hey, I just want to know if this is something explainable or if this is a ghost kind of thing. To be honest, this could just be a mimic. I don't really know anything about them, but it happened so long ago and nothing similar has happened since. One night when I was roughly 14, I was taking a shower at 10.30ish. My brother knocked on the door saying to hurry up because he had to take a shower. He did this often because I would accidentally take showers when he did. So I hurried up, got my stuff together before leaving. Walked out of the bathroom and thought I saw him in the room next to my room. It was dark so I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't like seeing him, it was like sensing he was there. So I just walked on to my room without a second thought. It seemed a bit weird, but I thought he was holding his phone up to his face like he normally does, but I didn't see any light but again, didn't really think about it until afterward. As I was walking, I kind of walked a bit cockeyed, almost bumped into him. So as soon as I reached my room, I turned around to say sorry, but no one was there. Turned on the light to see, and he wasn't there. Mind you, we could have just walked away without me noticing. He's not that quiet. He was right next to me. So I quickly walked back into my room, completely freaked out. And still have no clue whether this was a ghost or just me being tired. Romanticizing the afterlife from a young age due to reoccurring dreams. I'm unsure if anybody else has had an experience like this. But from a very young age, I've romanticized dreams about the afterlife. Well, an entity in the afterlife. The earliest I remember it was probably around seven or eight, but I had a dream that there was a ghost girl in my room, and me and her watched from my window as my childhood friends played outside without us. It was also a very somber mood, and even though words weren't spoken, I just knew that she wouldn't believe that we'd be there very long because she had to move away. I get similar dreams maybe twice a year, while they differ, they always have the same ghost girl. Long black hair, everything else hidden in a dark purple, almost black cloak. I've never seen the skin color, eye color, or anything else. Just the hair. The dreams always seem to have a somber mood. Though aside from the first initial dream, I can't recall if anything causes that mood. 
This also has led to me having nearly no fear of ghosts. And although I personally am a non-believer, I heavily romanticize the thought of human-ghost interactions because of it. As in, it makes me believe that there is an incident that happened that would make me become a believer, it would have no chance of being a negative interaction. A Creepy Phone Call This happened around eight or nine years ago. I was in a mall with my daughter, and as a weekend treat, decided to go to a local cape shop to sample a slice of their chocolate mousse. A few minutes after getting seated, my phone rang. It said my sister was calling. She was at work at the time and wasn't allowed phones in the production area, so I was concerned that it may be important. When I picked up and said hello, a really creepy and really oily voice I didn't recognize said, Oh, so you're just here eating cake, are you? I think I may have said a few other things, asked the name and why they were calling, something like that. The voice just laughed and laughed. It was difficult to identify as male or female. All I know is that it was really, really wrong. I looked around and remember thinking that I was probably a victim of one of those gag shows. But then again, why go through all the effort of using my sister's name and number just for a prank call? I hung up and looked at my daughter. She was still eating cake. The people around us were minding their own business. The world stayed the same. Photos and video disappearing, altered. So my wife and I were on a weekend holiday, staying at a nice hotel known for its Christmas decorations. We were watching the carolers. My wife was emotional as I was taking a video of the scene behind the carolers, swinging around to record the carolers from behind. When I stepped up to join my wife in the small crowd, a caroler was embracing my wife, whispered in her ear to calm her. My wife had taken some pictures prior to this. When we went to look at the pictures, every one she had taken was distorted, just a green screen or pixelated. It was the only one of the pictures that she took of them. Keep in mind that a caroler was embracing my wife as I went back to join her in a small crowd of seven to ten people. We immediately watched the video I'd taken to see if it was distorted like her photos. They weren't, but what we saw was even stranger. When I turned to record the carolers from behind, no one but my wife and the carolers were in the picture. The one lady was not embracing her. They were apparently singing just to her. We studied the video. There were no shadows of people as if there were an illusion of the crowd standing in a way that were blocked by the singers. They simply weren't there. Again, the woman was embracing my wife when I joined her. I know I had to walk around some people to get to her too. Ghost Prank, Sorta I was living in an older for a Western Canada house, probably built in the late 50s or early 60s. I had a couple of roommates. My room was just off the kitchen and had two doors, one on the south wall, connected to the kitchen, one on the south end of the east wall, connected to the back hall. North and west wall had windows, North end of the east wall had a closet. I'd been kind of afraid to open closets since I had seen Poltergeist on VHS when I was 13 years old. I also tend to disregard weird things that happen around bedtime, because you can apparently be in an REM state even though you're awake, so you can literally be dreaming while you're awake. So one night while I'm lying in bed facing the west wall, my back to the closet, blanket pulled up close to my ears as when I hear someone say my name. It sounded like a woman who's very polite and slightly quietly trying to get my attention. First I was going to roll over, 
Then I realized what was going on, that no one was in my room, and I snapped back, facing away from the closet, and just thought to myself, Nope. Then I swear I heard her chuckle like she was amused that she had scared me. Nothing else happened after that. Ask Reddit. I was stationed in Osan, AB in South Korea in 07 and 08. This wasn't me, but a friend of mine. Back then during exercises, it was common for those of us in the QRVs, quick response vehicles, to hide in a local HAS, a hardened aircraft shelter, during simulated attacks. It was common knowledge that there was one HAS on Bravo Diamond that did not, or rather that you did not hide in. When I asked him why, he said that they broke that rule once because they couldn't find another HAS that was empty. So they squirreled themselves away and during the next missile attack, they shut the doors and sealed themselves inside. Apparently during the entire 90 minute attack and post attack recon, they heard creepy noises from random shuffling to voices. He swore he heard someone very clearly say, please no. The generally accepted cause for this was something like an urban legend. Apparently during the Korean War, the pilots left the maintainers behind in the airbase that was about to get overrun. When captured by the North Koreans, they were tortured and hung by their necks with safety wire, and their spirits still supposedly inhabited that hangar. Knocks at my bedroom door. Earlier this evening, I was on my computer in my bedroom. I heard two or three knocks on my door and the sound of someone trying to turn the doorknob. The door was unlocked, but it sounded like somebody trying to force the knob to turn when it's locked. Didn't think anything of it because my parents were home. I figured it was one of them. I paused my game and paused my movie while telling them to come in and that the door should be unlocked. When the door didn't open and I didn't hear any response, I got up, opened the door myself. No one was there, so I walked further out of my room and looked around. I found my parents upstairs in a separate room. Neither knew anything and would have the knocking. My mom likes to mess with me and my dad, but I feel like I would have heard her if she tried to run back upstairs. I didn't wait that long to get off my computer. I would have easily spotted her if she was going back upstairs in a rush. Finally, she would have either confessed or been smiling the entire time and I confronted her. The previous residents had two people who died at the house. One was an accident and the other was a heart attack, I think. I've experienced one other weird happening, I guess you could call it, while living here. But nothing that blatant. My niece has claimed to have seen shadow people upstairs, but I haven't seen anything like that myself. Ask Reddit. When I was a kid, we used to cover up all of our notebooks before school year began and place stickers with our names, standards, and subjects on them. So what happened was, is when I was around seven or eight, my mom brought home this roll of cover paper and those stickers and told me to get done with the covering by myself. She was helping me for all those years when the school began and she thought it was about time I started doing it myself. And what I was doing instead of placing those newly acquired rainbow colored stickers all over the house. <sighs> on the bathroom door, on the floor, on the wall, everywhere. So my mom, being the responsible parent she is, takes them away and hides them someplace. I start crying, but she says that she doesn't tell. I go to bed crying in the mid of noon. And in my sleep, I dream that I'm out of my body and floating. I move from one room to another looking for stickers she hid from me, and I see them lying over on a high shelf, high by the standards of a seven-year-old, in the room above. I get up and look around for the chair and carry it all the way upstairs, climb on them and bam, there they are, lying on the top of the same shelf I dreamt of. It's one of the few memories I can so clearly remember of my childhood and it's still kind of unexplainable. 
at least to me. Oakland, California Haunted House Prankster Ghost So I moved into this house with a couple of guys. One guy owned the house and was renting rooms to help with his mortgage. I remember asking him if he knew what happened to the previous owner. He asked why I said it. it just feels like that type of house with history. Fast forward about four to six months, my girlfriend's taking a nap in my room, and I'm watching television. Clear as day, I hear her call my name. Not once, but a couple of times. We get up and go to the room and basically wake up to her asking what she wants. My girlfriend is mad as all hell that I woke her and she swears she can call my name. Maybe she was talking in her sleep. Nope, 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 check this out. I tell this story to my roommate and everyone thinks I'm crazy. About two weeks later, my roommate's two dudes are watching TV. One of the roommate's girlfriend is watching TV in his room on the opposite side of the house. She comes out to the living room asking us what we want. We all ask her what she's talking about and she says we were calling her name. My roommates look at me and said, no way. Immediately told you, this house is haunted. Talking Cat why? I know the title sounds silly, but I had a cat that would talk at times. I'm not sure if this is paranormal or if she was just smart. When I was five, I got a kitten named Fluffy. One day, she was getting out of her litter box. I was trying to see her poop. I was a curious five-year-old. And she said, At, 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 at. When I tried looking, so I stopped. I tried again, and she said it again. Six years later, my mom's sister and I were trying to give Fluffy some medicine. Mom put some medicine on her nose to lick it off, and when she licked it off, she clearly said, Yum, yum. We all heard it. There were other times, not as obvious, where she sort of understood what was being said. She got angry when I told my mom that she fell off the window ledge. She would get angry when we would say outside the cat's name. And another time, when I told her to leave my room, she got up and left. All these stories of her happened over a span of 17 years. I'm not trolling at all, I just want to know what the reason for this was. Was she just smart, or was there something else going on? Strange Happenings in My Kitchen I've had a few strange things happen in my kitchen within the last three to four months. Things I can't explain. I haven't been scared at all, which is odd. The first thing that happened, I had the microwave on. I had a few seconds left. It stopped and the door opened by itself. I still had time left to open the door. One has to tug hard on the handle. My electric Breville coffee machine has gone off three times by itself. The last is weird. I was opening a bottle of wine, and as if something hit the bottle out of my hands, put the bottle down and left the kitchen. These could all possibly be random weird occurrences, but they're all in my small kitchen, and I have no good scientific explanation for them. Laying on the couch right now, typing this, looking into my kitchen doorway at night, wondering if it's just random, or if it's something that was interacting with me. Something hurt my dog. So when I was around 15 years old, I was sat at home watching TV. After a while, I noticed my dog sat in the corner looking absolutely petrified. Called over to me numerous times, but she didn't want to come near me. Eventually, she started coming closer, but very slowly and still acting scared. As soon as she got within touching distance, I went to stroke her head, and just as my hand was about to touch her, she yelped and went flying halfway across the room as if I just kicked her. 
As soon as this happened, I felt a cold, hard grip on my wrist that lasted a few seconds before slowly being released. After this, I grabbed the dogs, stood in front, waiting for my parents to get home. I lived in the house all my life, and nothing like this ever happened before or after. It's been 20 years now, and I'm still 100% that this happened. It's the only paranormal experience I've ever had, but it stayed with me.